As soon as these words were spoken, two thugs approached with lecherous grins. Rong Zidong maliciously threatened to publicly humiliate Han Ruayun, and the atmosphere became extremely tense. The two thugs approached laughing and promised viciously to strip Han Ruayun naked for Rong Zidong. Meanwhile, Ji Bo made derogatory comments about Han Ruayun that were lewd and insulting. At that moment, Ji Wuli also sneered, his memory of the humiliation a few days ago still fresh in his mind, determined to seek revenge tonight. The onlookers had mixed feelings, some reluctant in their hearts, but no one dared to speak out against Rong Zidong's dominance. Instead, some people were so indifferent that they took out their phones, intending to record the impending disgrace. Facing the impending shame, Han Ruayun bit her lip, her eyes flashing with determination and anger. She had made her final decision, willing to sacrifice herself rather than submit. Rong Zidong was smug, completely ignoring Han Ruayun's dignity and feelings. However, at this critical moment, a burly man suddenly walked in from outside, he was none other than Zhang Xiaohu, the leader of the Black Tiger Society in Jiangnan City. He clasped his fists to Rong Zidong, asking to stop this senseless torture. The scene erupted in an uproar. No one could have imagined that Zhang Xiaohu, who usually only dealt with the underworld, would suddenly stand up for Han Ruayun. Zhang Xiaohu's intervention was due to his deep friendship with Yi Tianzi, knowing how highly Yi Tianzi regarded Han Ruayun. Faced with Rong Zidong's provocation and disdain, Zhang Xiaohu felt displeased but remained calm, sticking to his position. Rong Zidong sneered contemptuously, even publicly questioning Zhang Xiaohu's authority and strength. At this point, Rong Zidong remembered the grudge of the Ji family and announced that he not only wanted to punish Han Ruayun, but also settle the score with Zhang Xiaohu. Although Zhang Xiaohu knew the gap in strength between himself and Rong Zidong's guest, he accepted the challenge for the sake of Han Ruaya. Rong Zidong excitedly declared that if Zhang Xiaohu could withstand five minutes under any of their hands, he would let Han Ruayan go. Immediately, Huang Shirlong stepped forward, sneering, Let me relieve Rong's worries. They have both just fought. It's time for me to warm up. Huang Shirlong, pinnacle martial artist, ranked 73 on the Tiger list. Rong Zidong was confident in his strength and the onlookers were all excited and looking forward to it. Originally, they had come to attend a bidding business meeting tonight, but they didn't expect to witness a real-life duel. So, with tacit understanding, everyone in the venue cleared a circular space for the duel. Huang Shirlong raised a hand mockingly and said, Come on, let me see the weight of the underground emperor of Jiangnan City. Zhang Xiaohu did not dare to be careless. He took off his suit, revealing his muscular body. With a low roar, Zhang Xiaohu charged forward. Raising his sandbag-sized right fist, he aimed straight for Huang Shirlong's face. Zhang Xiaohu's punch contained an astonishing force of thousands of kilograms. If it were to hit an ordinary person, it would be enough to confine them to bed for the rest of their life. However, facing this blow, Huang Shirlong seemed unfazed. He quickly reached out his right hand, firmly grasping Zhang Xiaohu's fist instantly neutralizing the force of thousands of kilograms. With just this bit of mediocre skill, you dare to dominate in Jiangnan? It's laughable. Huang Shirlong coldly sneered. His left hand turned into a claw, aiming directly at Zhang Xiaohu's chest. With a loud bang, Zhang Xiaohu was pushed back five or six meters, barely managing to stand firm. Feeling a sharp pain in his chest, he looked down to see his white shirt torn by Huang Shirlong's claw with bloody marks visible underneath. I didn't expect you to practice the eagle claw technique, Zhang Xiaohu said solemnly. Huang Shirlong snorted. You should consider it a great honor to experience my ultimate skill. With that, his agile figure flew out, claws waving like a hungry eagle, launching a fierce and rapid attack on Zhang Xiaohu. The claw shadows were heavy and the speed was dizzying. Zhang Xiaohu dared not be careless, trying his best to defend. However, due to the huge gap in cultivation, he soon added several bloody wounds to his body. Your skills are so inadequate that you don't even deserve to warm up before me. D. Huang Shirlong roared angrily, seizing the opportunity when Zhang Xiaohu was defending to strike with full force at his chest. Zhang Xiaohu was sent flying like a kite with a broken string, 
landing heavily more than 10 meters away, spitting out a mouthful of blood that instantly dyed his tattered shirt red. Just a warrior in the later stage, and you dare to show off in front of me? Huang Shirlong disdainfully shook his sleeve. Rome, this guy is already at his last breath. Who knew? But before he could finish his words, Zhang Xiaohu unexpectedly gritted his teeth, climbed up from the ground, wiped off the blood from the corner of his mouth fiercely, and said, Old man, you haven't knocked me down yet? Huang Shirlong narrowed his eyes, feeling slightly surprised. He had used his full strength in that punch just now, which even the best among the later stage warriors would find it hard to endure. How could Zhang Xiaohu still get up? Rong Zidong became a little impatient. Huang Lao, since this guy is so stubborn, let him taste your power again. With pleasure. A killing intent flashed in Huang Shirlong's eyes as he swiftly approached Zhang Xiaohu, launching a fierce flying kick straight at his face while he was not fully stable. Zhang Xiaohu instinctively raised his arm to block, and with a loud bang, he rolled on the ground like a kite with a broken string for seven or eight rounds, before knocking over a table and chairs, finally stopping. But just a few breaths later, he forced himself up, swaying unsteadily. I'm still standing. Zhang Xiaohu gritted his teeth. Seeing this scene, Huang Shirlong's clenched fist made a creaking sound. This guy had taken two full force blows in a row, yet he could still get up. It was simply unbelievable. Little did he know, Zhang Xiaohu had endured inhuman torture and beatings in the dungeons of the fallen city every day. Compared to that, Huang Shirlong's attacks seemed insignificant. Han Ruayun couldn't bear to watch, anxiously shouting, Master Hu, you don't have to risk yourself for me. This has nothing to do with you. Please stop. Mis Hen. Zhang Xiaohu firmly shook his head. You are Mr. Ye's friend. As long as I have a breath left, I will never let these people harm you in the slightest. My mind is made up. No need for more words. Zhang Xiaohu interrupted Han Ruayun and turned to Rong Zidong, saying, As long as I can hold on for five minutes under your hands, let Miss Han go, deal? This statement caused a stir in the whole room. It turned out that Zhang Xiaohu was helping Han Ruayun solely out of respect for Yi Tianzi. It was truly puzzling that a prominent figure like him would willingly sacrifice himself for Yi Tianzi. Even Lu Ruyin couldn't help but mutter softly, Even the leader of the Black Tiger Gang is so loyal to Yi Tianzi. Is he really as useless as his sister says? The more I look at it, the less it seems true. Rong Zidong sneered repeatedly, Zhang Xiaohu, do you really think that Yi Tianzi cares about your life or death? He's already hiding, leaving you alone here to die. Is this kind of person worth your defense? Zhang Xiaohu coldly snorted. Stop speculating about Mr. Yi with your pig brains. When he arrives, you will have to face the consequences. Is that so? Well, I'd like to see how long you can hold on. Rong Zidong smirked coldly. Huang Lao, take action. Five minutes later, there will be one more corpse. The killing intent flashed in Huang Shirlong's eyes. He took a deep breath, turned his hands into eagle claws again, filled with a chilling murderous intent, and pounced towards Zhang Xiaohu. Meanwhile, in a hidden and upscale private club in Jiangqing, reserved for the enjoyment of the upper class, ordinary people have no chance of entering. At this moment, in a luxuriously decorated private room, a woman dressed in a black formal dress sat at the bar. She had a curvaceous figure, with long and slender legs subtly revealed under the split skirt. Her feet were adorned with black high heels, and through the sheer black stockings, one could vaguely see her fair skin. This outfit would exude charm on an ordinary woman, but on her, it added a touch of cold elegance and nobility. Especially her deep eyes, as if overlooking all beings, carried an inviolable dignity. If an ordinary man were to meet her gaze, he would probably be intimidated and dare not look directly at her. However, when this imposing presence faced Yi Tianzi, it was nothing to him. He was the one who dared to use a whip on the notorious criminals in the fallen city. So what was a mere woman to him? Yi Tianzi confidently met her scrutinizing gaze and calmly asked, May I ask what business you have with me? The woman lifted her glass, gently swirled the drink inside, and with a condescending tone, asked, For our first meeting, 
Should I address you as Mr. Yi or as the actual person in charge of the Tianlong group, that important figure? Liu Yinji's opening remarks took Yi Tianzi by surprise. This woman actually saw through his true identity. It's worth noting that, in the entire Jianan city, apart from Zhao Hailong, no one else knew that Yi Tianzi was the actual mastermind behind the Tianlong group. Despite being shocked internally, Yi Tianzi remained composed and calmly replied, Forgive me for being direct, miss, but I truly do not understand the identity you mentioned. Liu Yinji paid no attention to his denial. She threw a thick stack of documents on the bar counter and said calmly and confidently, These are all the detailed information I have worked hard to collect about you. Whether you admit it or not, I am well aware that you are the true master of the Tianlong group, and Zhao Hailong is just your puppet. As for the recent bidding meeting, on the surface, you lost to the Ji family, but in reality, it was just a tactic to lure the enemy in and then capture them all, right? Her melodious voice and gentle tone carried a subtle yet undeniable sense of authority and pressure. Is this the rumored aura of the Empress of Jiangnan? Seeing Yi Tianzi neither confirm nor deny, Lu Yanji took the initiative to pour him a glass of red wine and playfully said, I am very interested in you. Why don't you come over and have a drink and chat with me? Although Yi Tianzi was skeptical of her intentions, he sat down in front of the bar without hesitation. The two of them sat facing each other across a table less than a meter wide, and this was the first time Yi Tianzi had such a close look at the woman known as the Empress of Jiangnan. Even though Yi Tianzi had seen countless beauties, he had to admit that Lu Yinji had an unforgettable charm. Her long hair cascaded like a waterfall, her skin was fair as snow, and a black mole at the corner of her eye added to her allure. However, the most striking aspect was the contrast between her mature charm and cold arrogance, which made her exude a queen-like dignity even in a dark evening gown. Do you find Miss Yinji's appearance appealing, Mr. Yi? Lu Yinji raised an eyebrow and chuckled, interrupting Yi Tianzi's reverie. Yi Tianzi was somewhat embarrassed, rare for him, and he cleared his throat, getting straight to the point. I wonder what Miss Lu asked me to come here for so late? Lu Yinji did not rush to answer but instead lifted the wine glass, took a sip, and left a dark red lip print. She rested her chin on her hand, and her flowing hair swayed gently, exuding charm and elegance. I have always been straightforward, Lu Yinji said calmly. I admire your talent and would like to invite you to work for me, to become a capable officer under my command. With your abilities, confining yourself to Jiangnan City is too limiting. What? Yi Tianzi was puzzled. To let him work for Lu Yinji? Was this woman out of her mind? Seeing through his doubts, Lu Yinji continued, I know this proposal is quite sudden, but I have a full understanding of your abilities. You are the orphan of the Yi family, who mysteriously disappeared 15 years ago. After returning to Jiangnan three years ago, you changed your ways, secretly supporting Zhao Hailong and quietly helping the Xiao family through difficult times. It's a pity that Xia Qingcheng, that foolish woman, willingly divorced you, losing such a good husband. Understanding this, Yi Tianzi breathed a sigh of relief. It seemed that although Lu Yinji had investigated many things about him, she seemed unaware of everything about the fallen city. I am not like Xia Qingqing, Lu Yinji said proudly. I am well aware of your worth. Yi Tianzi finally showed some interest. He wondered what Miss Lu wanted me to do. Unify the business world in Jiangnan? What's so difficult about the Jiangnan business world? Lu Yinji sneered. If that's what I wanted, I could have achieved it five years ago. My goal is to make the entire business world in Tianan province submit to me. Of course, when I say me, I mean Lu Yinji, not the Lu family. What an ambitious woman. Yi Tianzi silently praised in his heart. You see, the Tianan province is vast, with many family forces intertwined. Even the top families in the capital dare not easily talk about unification. I am dull-witted and find it difficult to understand Miss Lu's grand ambitions, Yi Tianzi politely remarked. Lu Yanji shook her head with a smile. Unifying the business world in Tianan is just the first step in my plan. The real goal, I can't reveal yet, but I can assure you, as long as you are willing to help me, the benefits you will receive in the future will far surpass what Rong Meiyin can offer you. Her words were full of confidence, not a hint of joking. Yi Tianzi just smiled faintly. Thank you for your kindness, Miss Lu, 
but my ambition lies elsewhere. Indeed, you are a man of principle, Lu Yinji squinted her beautiful eyes. What if I used the truth about the Yi family tragedy 15 years ago as leverage, would you reconsider? Bang! This was like thunder on a clear day, shaking Yi Tianxi to his core. He had hoped to extract some clues about the Yi family tragedy from Lu Yinji, but he never expected her to bring it up herself. It seems that the Lu family is indeed connected to that tragic incident. Yi Tianxi's face suddenly turned cold. He said in a stern tone, Are you implying that the tragedy of my Yi family is related to your Lu family? Misunderstanding, Lu Yinji shook her head with a faint smile. I don't mean to insinuate anything. I just happen to know some undisclosed secrets. So, are you trying to blackmail me into working for you? Yi Tianji sneered. If Mr. Yi insists on thinking like this, I can't argue. But there is one thing I must make clear. If one cannot be of use to me, there is only one way to go, death. Lu Yinji elegantly lifted her wine glass, took a sip, and proudly stated, I can't use the talents I have. I might as well die. In Lu Yinji's calm tone, there was a chilling cruelty that sent shivers down one's spine, as if it was not a threat, but a fact she was absolutely certain of. In her eyes, those who couldn't be controlled by her either had to submit or face a dead end, with no room for refusal. Faced with this naked threat of life and death, Yi Tianzi just found it laughable. He shrugged indifferently and said mockingly, I'd like to see what skills the renowned Empress of Jiangnan has to take my life. Seems like I underestimated you. Lu Yinji's pupils constricted briefly, a fleeting look of astonishment passing through her eyes. Since I can't kill you, Mr. Yi, please go ahead and kill me, she said with determination. Yi Tianzi frowned feeling that the woman in front of him was rather peculiar. He said in a deep voice, Just reveal the truth of the Yi family tragedy 15 years ago, and I might consider sparing your life. No. Lu Yinji shook her head resolutely. I would rather die than reveal that secret. Do you really think I will show mercy to you? Yi Tianzi sneered. Unexpectedly, instead of showing fear, Lu Yinji smiled strangely. Then, Mr. Yi. Please make your move. I doubt you have the courage to kill me. Arrogant. Yi Tianzi erupted in anger, flipping the table in front of him and grabbing Lu Yinji by the neck, pressing her hard against the wall. The white-clad bodyguard outside the private room rushed in upon witnessing his master being humiliated. Filled with righteous indignation, he roared and launched a fist towards Yi Tianzi like a cannonball. With the cultivation of a grandmaster, this punch was enough to severely injure a peak martial artist. However, Yi Tianzi just coldly snorted. He lifted his left foot lightly and swept it, unleashing an unimaginable force. With a loud bang, the bodyguard was slammed into the wall like a kite with a broken string, blood spurting from his mouth. The wall bore a large dent from the impact, showing the terrifying power of that kick. Before the bodyguard could recover, Yi Tianzi delivered another kick, knocking him unconscious on the ground. Are you ready to talk now? Yi Tianzi's grip tightened gradually, and Lu Yinji's elegant face had turned crimson, her feet dangling helplessly as she struggled. Most people, facing the brink of life and death, would instinctively resist fiercely, but Lu Yinji suppressed this instinct. Her eyes showed no fear, but rather a kind of relieved satisfaction. Kill me, go ahead. Lu Yinji's voice was barely audible, causing Yi Tianzi to furrow his brows. Having personally executed numerous criminals in the fallen city, even the most wicked ones couldn't hide their fear before death. Yet, this woman before him showed no fear of dying. Could she be using him to end her life? This thought crossed Yi Tianzi's mind as he glanced at the scars on Lu Yinji's exposed wrist, hidden by black stockings but still discernible. Those were the marks left by repeated wrist cutting. You think I'll help you die? Yi Tianzi sneered, releasing his grip. Dream on. Lu Yinji slid down the wall, her long and slender legs emerging from the disheveled skirt. She covered her throat, coughing violently, tears blurring her cold and distant eyes. Why? Why don't you kill me? Lu Yinji's eyes were full of unwillingness and excitement as she looked up at Yi Tianzi, her voice hoarse. You clearly could have done it. Why spare me? Yi Tianzi coldly looked down at her, 
the illustrious Miss Lu, so eager for death. What is the reason for this? This has nothing to do with you. Lu Yinji gritted her teeth. Didn't you want me to help you unify the business world in the South? Yi Tianzi sneered. Now you want to seek death. Isn't that contradictory? What's contradictory about it? Lu Yinji stubbornly lifted her head. Yi Tianzi was momentarily speechless, cursing inwardly. Is this woman out of her mind? He inadvertently caught sight of several fierce scars under Lu Yinji's slightly open neckline, the result of cigarette burns. At this moment, Yi Tianzi was convinced that the woman before him, known as the Empress of the South, must have secrets unknown to others. Sensing his gaze, Lu Yinji quickly tightened her neckline. She forced herself to stand up, straightened her messy hair, and restored her previous air of arrogance and coldness. With her index finger lightly touching the corner of her lipstick-smudged mouth, Lu Yinji's lips curved into a seductive smile, her tone flirtatious. Since Mr. Yi is unwilling to kill me, why not continue discussing our cooperation? Yi Tianxi frowned, feeling increasingly uneasy about Lu Yinji's mental state. She seemed to see through Yi Tianxi's thoughts with a self-deprecating tone. Yinji was indeed a deeply troubled lunatic, asking Mr. Yi to please be lenient and not stoop to her level. She continued, giving Yi a week to consider the cooperation. During this time, she would not reveal his true identity or disturb him further. After a week, if he agreed, she would reveal everything about the tragic incident 15 years ago. If he refused, it would be a life and death situation. Are you not afraid that I will really take your life next time? Ye Tianji sneered. Lu Yinji's deep eyes flashed with a hint of complex emotions, saying it would be perfect if that were the case. Ye Tianxi was momentarily speechless, finding this woman's way of thinking truly unfathomable. Lu Yinji then said, It's late, Mr. Yi. You don't need to waste time here with me. Otherwise, your companions may not make it through the night. What do you mean by that? Yi Tianxi furrowed his brow. Why don't you guess? Lu Yinji smiled with deep meaning. A flash of realization crossed Yi Tianxi's mind, and his expression changed instantly. That scoundrel Rong Zidong, he had forgotten about being manipulated by Lu Yinji. With this realization, Yi Tianxi didn't hesitate and rushed out of the private room. Lu Yinji walked barefoot to the French window, the glass shards on the floor piercing through her stockings, puncturing her fair soles, staining the black stockings with a trail of crimson footprints. However, Lu Yinji remained expressionless, as if she couldn't feel the pain. She picked up a box of women's cigarettes from the table, lit one, took a deep drag, exhaling smoke that partly obscured her cold and stunning face. Suddenly, she tore open her collar, revealing the countless burn scars left by cigarette butts on the snowy peaks of her chest. She pressed the glowing cigarette but against her skin, sizzling, turning the fair skin a bloody red. Yet. Lu Yinji remained indifferent, her eyes full of desolation, unable to feel pain or pleasure. Inside the hotel venue, Zhang Xiaohu fell heavily to the ground again, emitting a muffled groan. He was already covered in injuries, his left leg deformed, blood flowing profusely, a pitiful sight. Huang Shirlong gasped for air, sweating profusely, his eyes filled with disbelief. Who on earth was this Zhang Xiaohu? Clearly only at the intermediate stage of martial arts, yet he seemed indestructible, repeatedly being knocked down and getting back up, incredibly tenacious. Despite this, Zhang Xiaohu gritted his teeth and crawled up from the ground, trembling all over, bleeding profusely, but still persevering. Five minutes. I've lasted for five minutes. You should keep your promise and release the person, Zhang Xiaohu said intermittently, causing a stir in the audience. Tiger Lord is truly a tough guy, being beaten like this and still able to stand up. For an ordinary person, they would have run out of breath by now. He truly lives up to his reputation as the head of the Black Tiger Society, tough enough. Indeed, dignity cannot afford to lose. Shouldn't Rong Xiao release the person now? Han Ruayun and Rong Meiyin also breathed a sigh of relief, as Zhang Xiaohu had finally made it through. Even Liu Ruyin was amazed secretly wondering, what kind of charm does Yi Tians have that makes Zhang Xiaohu willing to go through fire and water for him? But would Rong Zidong be willing to accept this? 
He sneered coldly and said, Zhang Xiaohu, I admire your perseverance, but it's a pity that you started first, didn't even give me a chance to start the countdown. So those five minutes just now don't count. From now on, you have to endure another five minutes. The crowd was in an uproar at his words. Zhang Xiaohu widened his eyes, almost spitting fire. You're playing dirty. Rong Meiyin angrily scolded. Rong Zidong, have you no shame? Han Ryu Yun gritted hartit, shameless scoundrel. Shameless. Even Lu Ruyin couldn't help but curse. Even the onlookers booed in disapproval of Rong Zidong's actions. However, Rong Zidong didn't care at all. He disdainfully looked around and sneered, This is my territory, and what I say goes. If any of you have objections, feel free to speak up. The audience fell silent instantly. Rong Zidong looked smug and instructed Huang Shirlong. Huang Lao continue. I want to see how long he can hold on. Huang Shirlong's eyes flashed with a hint of malice. This guy is already on his last legs, won't last much longer. Before the words had even finished, he charged forward. A hook punch hitting Zhang Xiaohu's jaw squarely, sending him flying. He then leaped up, his right leg sweeping down harshly, kicking Zhang Xiaohu hard. Bang! Zhang Xiaohu crashed heavily onto the ground, raising a cloud of dust and sending nearby tables and chairs flying. Puff! Zhang Xiaohu lay on his back, blood gushing from his mouth, his subconscious telling him to get up, but his body had reached its limit and could no longer support him. Huang Shirlong spat disdainfully, turned to Rong Zidong and flattered, Rong Xiao, he's done for. You've won this bet. Well done. Rong Zidong licked his lips, leered at Han Ruayun and said, Next, should my men strip you in public, or do you want to undress yourself? Han Ruayun raised his head high almost using all his strength to squeeze out the words from his clenched teeth. I-F asterisk 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 your mother. Rong Zidong's eyes twitched fiercely. He didn't expect that in such a desperate situation, Han Ruayun not only remained fearless, but also dared to curse at him. A surge of anger erupted, and he bent down, delivering a resounding slap to Han Ruayun's face. With a loud smack, a bright red palm print immediately appeared. Rong Zidong couldn't contain his rage and roared, You dare to curse at me again? Do you believe I will kill you right here? Han Ruayun endured the intense pain on his cheek, but showed no fear at all, challenging. If you have the guts, then just do it. Stop the nonsense. Do you think I won't dare? Rong Zidong raised his hand to slap again, but at that moment, a displeased voice suddenly rang out, Rong Zidong, stop it. Everyone turned to see a charming figure striding out from the crowd, exquisite features, a high-nosed bridge, and a pair of slender and attractive legs that caught everyone's attention. Isn't that Lu Ruyin? The popular celebrity. Oh my. I thought I was seeing things. How could she be here? I heard she was blacklisted. Does she know Rong? Ignoring the surrounding gossip, Lu Ruyin marched up to Rong Zidong, her face full of displeasure. Rong Zidong, that's enough. Don't go too far. Rong Zidong frowned. Ruyin, didn't this Han Ruyin offend you before? Why are you speaking up for her? Lu Ruyin coldly glanced at Han Ruayun, her eyes full of complexity. Before this, due to Xiao Qingqing's influence, she had always thought Han Ruayun was a loose woman who seduced married men. But just now, she saw admirable strength and courage in Han Ruayun, qualities that were rare even among other women and men. If she offended me, that's our business, Lu Ruyin said firmly. But bullying her like this is just not right. Let her go, don't make it difficult for me. This righteous stand surprised both Han Ruayun and Rong Meiyan. Rong Meiyan nodded secretly, thinking, although Lu Ruyin always acts arrogant, she is clear-headed at critical moments. Hopefully, she can buy us some time. Rong Zidong's face darkened even more, Ruyin, you know my feelings for you. Some things I can listen to you, but today is not up for discussion. This has nothing to do with you, step aside. Lu Ruyin stood her ground, hands on her hips. I won't. Do you have the guts to strip me as well? Rong Zidong gritted his teeth in anger. He dreamt of stripping Lu Ruyin, but that was something for the bedroom, not in public. Firstly, he considered Lu Ruyin his woman and couldn't bear to let other men see her like that. Secondly, 
Lu Ruyin came from a prestigious family. If he really angered her, not only Rong Zidong but even his father couldn't handle the consequences. Helplessly, Rong Zidong coldly ordered, I said it's none of your business here. Don't interfere. Guards, take Ruyin away. Two thugs immediately stepped forward, forcefully lifting Lu Ruyin's arms and dragging her away from the scene. Despite Lu Ruyin's struggles and protests, it was all in vain. Miss Han, who can save you now? Rong Zidong looked around triumphantly, his gaze sweeping over the fallen Zhang Xiaohu. Could it be him? Zhang Xiaohu, struggling to maintain consciousness, squeezed out a few words from between his teeth. Rong Zidong, you better stop, or Mr. Yi finds out, you will all die. Yi Tianjie. Rong Zidong sneered repeatedly, he's long gone. This coward. He dares to scare me with him? Exactly. He used to show off in front of me all the time. But now he's backing down when faced with a challenge. Ye Boduan disdainfully echoed. You can run on the first day, but not on the 15th. Rong Zidong grinned. Tonight, even if I have to dig three feet into the ground, I will drag him out. Huang Lao, stop wasting your time with him. Take action. Everyone burst into strange laughter all waiting to see Zhang Xiaohu's joke. Huang Shirlong nodded, raised his foot to step down, and at this critical moment, bang, the door of the venue was suddenly kicked open, the iron door whistling with astonishing force, instantly pinning Huang Shirlong to the wall. With a loud bang, the entire venue seemed to tremble. Everyone looked in horror at the entrance, only to see the deformed iron door deeply embedded in the wall. Smashing Huang Shirlong into a pile of flesh, not even having time to scream. A man's figure walked in slowly, exuding a cold killing intent that almost enveloped the entire hall. Yi Tian stared at Rong Zidong firmly, his voice low as if coming from hell. Are you ready to face punishment now? At this moment, the entire hall fell into a deafening silence, with only the sound of Yi Tianzi's footsteps echoing. He looked around his gaze sweeping over Zhang Xiaohu lying in a pool of blood, Han Ruayun being trampled under Rong Zidong's feet, and Rong Meiyuan being controlled by Zhao Wuji. In an instant, an uncontrollable rage surged within him. These bastards actually dared to harm the people around him while he was away. All eyes were on Yi Tianzi, with various expressions. The ordinary audience members were all horrified because just a moment ago, Huang Shirlong, who was still lively and kicking, suddenly died. His body smashed into a pulp by the iron gate and embedded in the wall, a gruesome sight. Only Rong Meiyuan and Han Ruayun had a glint of joy in their eyes. Yi Tianzi had finally returned. A sense of unprecedented security washed over them. Meanwhile, Rong Zidong and the Ji family members stared wide-eyed, as if they had been immobilized, not daring to move. Wasn't this kid scared off earlier? How did he suddenly show up? Ji Buodwan felt his eyelids twitching, a sense of foreboding washing over him. Instinct told him that tonight's gathering would likely become a living hell. He quietly moved towards the crowd, hoping to escape in the chaos. Yi Tianzi swiftly approached Zhang Xiaohu, who still had crimson blood trickling from the corner of his mouth, weakly saying, Mr. Yi, I don't speak. Save your strength. Yi Tianzi bent down, applying pressure to several acupoints to stop the bleeding, carefully examining him. Although the injuries were not light, there was no immediate danger to his life. This was all thanks to the tough training he had undergone in the fallen city, which had forged his resilience. Yi Tianzi took a deep breath, his tone grave. I'm sorry for being late. Rest assured, none of those who hurt you tonight will escape. Zhang Xiaohu nodded gratefully. He knew Yi Tianzi too well. The suffering he endured tonight would surely be repaid twofold to those responsible. Yi Tianzi gently laid Zhang Xiaohu on the ground, slowly rising to face Rong Zidong and the others, coldly asking, How do you want to die? Do you want to go together, or line up to die one by one? His words caused a commotion throughout the hall. Damn, this guy is serious. He's actually making everyone line up to die. He's out of control. Although Yi Tianzi was formidable, Rong Zidong still had two great experts by his side, as well as dozens of henchmen. How could he possibly win alone? Many doubted Yi Tianzi's confidence. Lai Jingye shared the same thoughts. With a flash of inspiration, 
He saw this as a great opportunity to show off in front of Rong Zidong. So he walked out of the crowd, chest puffed out, shouting, Kid, stop boasting here. I'll be the first to go. I don't believe you dare to kill me in front of young Master Rong. Yi Tianzi's eyes turned icy, as you wish. Before the words had even left his mouth, he had already teleported in front of Lai Jingya, delivering a heavy slap. With a crisp sound, Lai Jingya's head spun several times on his neck before coming to a stop. Upon closer inspection, his neck had twisted into a spiral shape, and he collapsed crookedly, his wide eyes filled with shock and regret. If I had known it would end up like this, I would never have bravely volunteered to wait in line for death. The other members of the G family took a cold breath and secretly rejoiced that they didn't step forward to seek credit. Otherwise, they would have been the first to suffer. As for the onlookers, they were even more frightened and scattered in panic. Oh no, another person has died. The Chairman Lai, with assets of over a billion, is gone just like that. Oh my god, with just a slap. Yi Tian Si ignored the discussions around him. He slowly retracted his palm, looked around at the crowd, and asked calmly, Who's next? This sentence was like a bolt from the blue, shocking Rong Zidong and others to the core. How long has it been? In less than a minute, Yi Tian Si had already killed two people in a row, truly a ruthless figure. Just then, the top expert Sun Fong on the tiger list, with veins bulging on his forehead, roared, Rong Xiao, watch me avenge Huang Lao and kill this villain. He rushed forward with a big step, but Yi Tian Si met him with even faster speed. With a bang, his fist heavily smashed onto Sun Feng's forehead, instantly shattering his skull and splattering blood everywhere. However, due to inertia, his body staggered forward a few steps before falling heavily to the ground. The bright red blood gushed out and pooled on the ground. Oh no. Another life lost. The timid spectators couldn't bear it anymore, some scared to the point of wetting their pants, some covering their mouths and retching, and others panicking and fleeing in all directions, fearing for their lives. Even those seasoned warriors had pale faces and weak legs at this moment. They looked at Yi Tian Si as if they were staring at the Grim Reaper. Yi Tian Si remained calm, wiped the blood splattered on his face with his finger, and continued to stare at Rong Zidong and his group, coldly saying, Next, step forward. This sentence was like a thunderbolt, making Rong Zidong and others' scalps tingle. They thought they were fully prepared to deal with Yi Tian Si, but they never expected him to be not only formidable, but also beyond imagination. Especially Rong Zidong, he felt the chilling gaze of Yi Tian Si on his back, making him shiver. Trembling lips, he ordered Zhao Wujin, Zhao. Zhao Lao, aren't you going to make a move? You are a top 10 expert on the Dragon Tiger list. As long as you take down Yi Tian Si, I will personally recommend you for a reward when we return to the provincial capital. Zhao Wujin's eyes twitched, almost bursting out in anger. Screw the Dragon Tiger list. Although I'm in the top 10, just a few moves from Yi Tian Si made me feel deep fear. This kind of fear, not to mention the Dragon Tiger list, he has never experienced it even in Tianan province. In his heart, he cursed Rong Zidong. Damn it. How did you provoke such a star of death? Tonight, I'm afraid there's no escape. Seeing Zhao Wujin silent, Rong Zidong had to order the thugs. What are you standing there for? Don't you hurry up? Beat him to a pulp for me. The group of thugs looked at each other, none daring to step forward. Frustrated, Rong Zidong gritted his teeth and shouted, Whoever can injure Yi Tian Si today, I will reward him with 10 million. If anyone can kill him, I'll reward him with a billion. No, 10 billion. Stimulated by the money, these thugs were filled with blood and disregarded their own safety. As long as there was a one in a million chance, they would take a gamble. Brothers, charge. Kill him without mercy. 10 billion is beckoning to us. Dozens of burly men rushed forward wielding all kinds of weapons, surrounding Yi Tian Si from all directions. The killing intent was evident in Yi Tianzi's eyes as he licked his lips. Since leaving the fallen city three years ago, he had been suppressing the bloodthirsty factor in his body, striving to return to a normal life. But today, he no longer needed to restrain himself. If they wanted to die, then so be it. Facing the approaching thugs, 
Yi Tianxi was like a fierce tiger, diving straight into the crowd. In his eyes, this group of lackeys was not even worth comparing to sheep. They were just a group of lambs waiting to be slaughtered. Bang! 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 Wherever Yi Tianxi went, bodies piled up. Some had their heads blown apart, some had their chests pierced, and others had huge holes kicked in their stomachs. In just over a minute, when Yi Tianxi snapped the last thug's neck, nearly 40 bodies lay stacked like mountains, blood flowing like a river. Everyone was numb at the sight. Even the most explosive movies couldn't match this bloody scene. People secretly thank their lucky stars for staying neutral and not siding with Rong Zidong. Otherwise, they would have ended up like these corpses. Even Han Ruayun and Rong Meiyu were shocked by Yi Tianxi's ruthless methods. Though his actions were brutal, it was necessary to deal with these shameless scoundrels. Lu Ruyin's beautiful eyes widened, her legs trembling. She felt a tightness in her abdomen, almost losing control. Yi Tianxi was so powerful and terrifying. But under this terror, there was a faintly comforting feeling. Why was that? Yi Tianxi tossed the body in his hand aside, narrowed his eyes, scanned Rong Zidong and the others, and coldly asked, Have you reached a decision? Who's next? Boom! Everyone took a step back, avoiding his gaze. Rong Zidong was terrified, backing away, almost stumbling. Zhao Wujin was sweating profusely, having forgotten to restrain Rong Meiyu. She immediately broke free, helped Han Ruoyan up, and whispered, Are you okay? Han Ruoyan bit his lip, I'm fine, thank you. Don't mention it, let's step aside and not get in Mr. Ye's way. The two quietly retreated to a corner. Ji Wooly's face was pale, his heart pounding, almost bursting from his throat. He suddenly remembered how he had provoked Yi Tianxi before, and immediately regretted it. His instincts told him that if he didn't run now, it would be too late. He turned to discuss with Ji Buodwan, only to find that he had already disappeared. Damn, this unfilial son actually ran off first? Didn't even say goodbye. Yi Tianxi looked around and calmly said, Since no one is volunteering, let me make the selection. Before he finished, his sharp gaze had already landed on Ji Wuli. In an instant, everyone backed away, leaving Ji Wuli alone, afraid of being caught in the crossfire. Very well, it's you, Yi Tianxi smirked. Ji Wuli felt like the sky was falling, and the next moment, he knelt on the ground with a thud, begging repeatedly, Mr. Yi, Ancestor Yi, Grandpa Yi, I was confused for a moment. Please forgive me this time. It's really the last time. I've made a few dents in the ground with my head. Yi Tianxi looked down at him, coldly saying, I remember you said something similar at the Han residence last time. Ji Wuli stammered, I did say that. But this time I was really coerced by Rong and the others, it wasn't my intention. Rong Zidong and Zhao Wujin nearly fainted at the revelation. Ji Wuli, you bastard. You always sell out your teammates at critical moments. Do you have the guts to face me alone? Yi Tianzi's gaze fell on the bloodstains on Ji Wuli's shoe tips, and he sneered, Was kicking Zhang Xiaohu just an accident on your part? Ji Wuli stammered, sweating profusely, unable to complete a sentence. As the saying goes, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Yi Tianzi approached him step by step, determined to avenge Zhang Xiaohu. With a fierce aura surrounding him, Ji Wuli kept retreating, stumbling, and begging for mercy. Please spare my wretched life. I'll give you anything you want, even the entire Ji family fortune and the billion dollar deal I just closed. Yi Tianzi ignored his pleas, advancing relentlessly. With each step, Ji Wuli felt like his heart was being trampled upon, almost on the verge of collapse. Suddenly, Ji Wuli's hand touched something cold and hard. He quickly grabbed it, aiming it at Yi Tianzi's chest. It was the handgun that Rong Meiyin had dropped earlier, which Ji Wuli had opportunistically picked up. The atmosphere changed instantly as everyone present realized the gravity of the situation. Ji Wuli smirked, believing he had the upper hand, and pulled the trigger. However, before the bullet could reach Yi Tianzi, he had vanished into thin air. The bullet missed its mark and hit another member of the Ji family, who fell lifeless to the ground. Confused and shocked, Ji Wuli turned around only to hear a chilling voice behind him, Stop looking. I'm right here. Before he could react, 
Itienza kicked him in the back, causing him to fall awkwardly. The gun slipped from Ji Wuli's hand, but Itienza caught it smoothly. Without hesitation, Itienza aimed the gun at Ji Wuli and pulled the trigger. The gunshot echoed through the venue. Gunshots rang out, and Ji Wuli let out a piercing scream. He looked down and saw a bloody hole on his right leg, with flesh torn apart and blood gushing out. Ah! My leg! My leg! Ji Wuli instinctively reached out to cover it, but another gunshot rang out, this time hitting his left leg. Ah! He cried out in pain, rolling on the ground, his voice almost hoarse. Don't kill me. Please spare me. I won't do it again. G. Wooly's facial muscles twitched grotesquely, trembling all over. At that moment, he was truly scared and regretful. If he had known this would be his fate, he should not have offended Yi Tianxi from the beginning and should have flattered him instead. However, now, due to a moment of folly, he had pushed himself into a desperate situation. Yi Tianxi looked down at him, coldly asking, Do you really want to live? Ido, Ido. Yevule nodded frantically. All right. Ye tianji simirket kuruelle. If you can crawl to the entrance of the venue within a minute, I will spare your life. Ji Wuli quickly looked towards the door. Despite his leg injuries, it was only about 30 meters away, and there was still hope of crawling there. I promise I'll go now. Ji Wuli couldn't afford to delay for a moment, crawling on the ground, dragging his body with his arms towards the door, leaving two glaring bloodstains behind him. Everyone gasped in shock. It was clear to everyone that if Yi Tianxi wanted to kill Ji Wuli, it would only take one shot. Yet he chose to torture and humiliate him in such a cruel way, which was more chilling than killing directly. They couldn't help but speculate. What had Yi Tianxi experienced at such a young age to develop such a ruthless character? It was too terrifying, and in the future, no one should provoke him. Rong Zidong, sweating profusely, forced himself to remain calm and asked Zhao Wijin in a low voice, Zhao Lao, what are the chances of you winning against Yi Tianxi? Zhao Wujin's face darkened, probably three to seven. That's not bad. Just as Rong Zidong was about to breathe a sigh of relief, Zhao Wujin added, What I mean is, Yi Tianxi can kill me seven times in three minutes. Rong Zidong was taken aback, Zhao Lao. In the face of absolute strength, any cleverness is futile. Instead of scheming, it's better to think about how to save your life. Remember, as long as you can stay alive, dignity and face are worth nothing. I understand. Rong Zidong nodded reluctantly, continuing to watch Ji Wuli. At this moment, Ji Wuli had crawled more than 20 meters, only less than 10 meters away from the door, all in just 30 seconds. Almost there. I can't die here. The Ji family is still counting on me. He pushed forward with all his might, while Yi Tianxi followed behind, like a grim reaper. Just when everyone thought Ji Wuli was about to succeed, a bang. A bullet pierced through his left arm, splattering blood all over his face. Yi Tianxi, you liar. Ji Wuli shouted in a mix of shock and anger. I haven't killed you yet. Why are you so worked up? Yi Tianxi casually blew the smoke from the gun barrel. You still have 20 seconds. Bastard. Son of A-B asterisk 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 H. G. Wooly cursed in his heart, but had to endure the excruciating pain, using his right arm to support his body and inching forward bit by bit. Eight meters, seven meters, six meters, bang. Another bullet shattered G. Wooly's right arm. Ah. The pain made his eyes bloodshot, body convulsing, veins bulging on his forehead but the instinct to survive drove him to continue wriggling, leaving a more horrifying trail of blood behind him. Four meters, three meters, two meters, the gate was within reach. Ji Wuli felt a slight relief in his heart. However, just one meter away from the gate, a pair of shoes suddenly blocked his path. Time's up, Yi Tianxi said coldly. Unfortunately, you failed the mission. Now, speak your last words. Ji Wuli struggled to lift his head, meeting the cold gaze, trembling with fear and pleading in his eyes. Please, spare me. I swear I will turn over a new leaf from now on and never provoke you again. He kowtowed like a beaten dog. He had lived for most of his life, never experiencing such a miserable situation. You will never change, 
Yi Tianxi's tone was resolute. Death is your only destiny. He aimed the gun at Ji Wuli's head. Suddenly, Ji Wuli thought of something, grasping at a last straw for survival. Wait, I can tell you more about the secrets of the Yi family tragedy 15 years ago. As long as you spare me, bang. Before he could finish, Yi Tianxi pulled the trigger without hesitation. The bullet pierced Ji Wuli's forehead, leaving a bloody hole. With a thud, Ji Wuli fell to the ground, lifeless. The head of the Ji family, one of the three major families in Jiangnan City, died in front of everyone. Yi Tianxi coldly stepped over the body, saying, Someone has already revealed more truths to me. The secrets in your mouth will go to the king of hell. This scene was shocking and terrifying. No one had expected the once arrogant Ji Wuli to meet such a tragic end. The other members of the Ji family were scared out of their wits, as both Lai Jingya and Ji Wuli were their pillars. Now that the two had died tragically under Yi Tianxi's gun, the psychological impact on them was beyond imagination. Yi Tianxi didn't even spare a glance at these rubbish people, instead raising an eyebrow at Rong Zidong, sneering, Rong, do you remember what I said earlier? Tonight, I will make you wish you were dead. Are you ready to face doomsday? Rong Zidong's heart trembled, remembering Zhao Wuji's warning. Without caring about his dignity, he knelt down with a thud, tears streaming down his face as he said, All of this was instigated by Ji Wuli. It has nothing to do with me. If you want to settle the score, go after him. Yi Tianxi sneered repeatedly, shifting all the blame onto a dead person. It's incredible that you can even say such things. Rong Zidong shamelessly argued. I spoke the absolute truth, without a hint of falsehood. If you don't believe me, you can ask Zhao Lao and the others. Before he could finish his sentence, Han Ruoyin walked out from the crowd, her beautiful eyes filled with anger. Yi Tianxi, don't listen to his nonsense. This whole thing was orchestrated by him. Just look at his face and hands, all thanks to him. Even the beatings that the Tiger Lord received were at his command. With these words, Han Ruoyin pierced through Rong Zidong's lies, making his blood run cold, his face turning pale. It's over. He's been exposed. Yi Tianxi looked at Han Ruoyun's swollen cheeks and hands, feeling a pang of pain in his heart. She was his fiancée. Their relationship had long surpassed that of ordinary friends. How could he allow others to bully her like this? Thinking back to what happened at the Han family a few days ago, he asked softly, Do you still want to seek justice personally this time? Yes. Han Ruoyun nodded firmly. From having her hand stepped on by Rong Zidong to being publicly threatened to have her clothes stripped off, her anger could no longer be contained. This account, she must settle it herself. Yi Tianxi smiled indulgently. All right, you can go ahead and deal with him. With me here, no one dares to stop you. Han Ruayun nodded happily, picking up two bidding plates from the bidding area. Holding one in each hand, she walked up to Rong Zidong. What do you want to do? Rong Zidong looked up at her nervously, swallowing hard. He still remembered how Han Ruayun had dealt with Ji Xiao at the Han family before. For this seemingly delicate but actually fierce beauty, he had a foreboding feeling. I have a problem. If someone bullies me, I must pay them back double. Han Ruayun said coldly. You slapped me in public just now. I can't let you off easily. With that, she raised her right hand high and slapped Rong Zidong's face hard with the bidding plate. The bidding plate was made of plastic, with raised letters on the surface, making the slap much more painful than a palm strike. With just one hit, an S-shaped mark was left on Rong Zidong's left cheek. Rong Zidong winced in pain, tears welling up in his eyes. He quickly begged for mercy. Miss Han, I was wrong. Can't you forgive me this time? Please spare me. Han Ruoyun coldly snorted. Now you regret it, but it's too late. The bidding plate in her left hand whizzed down and imprinted AB on his right cheek. The two letters combined to spell out SB. Haha, look, you're a big SB. How coincidental. Just like the ancient punishment of prisoner carved on the face. Now we have SB imprinted on the face. Well, Han Ruoyun's methods are truly ruthless. Who asked Rong Zidong to mess with the wrong person? Onlookers were discussing, and Rong Zidong felt ashamed and furious. How could a man of his stature be humiliated in public by a woman like this? 
He wanted to stand up in anger, but saw Yi Tianxi's gun pointed directly at him. Behave yourself, dare to move, and I'll shoot you. Yi Tianji var net koldi. Rong Zidong had no choice but to kneel obediently, looking to Zhao Wuji for help with pleading eyes. The latter, however, remained indifferent, not daring to make a sound. Just as Han Ruayun had struck the bidding cards countless times, with a snap, both cards were broken. At this moment, Rong Zidong's face was covered in bruises, with blood flowing from the corners of his mouth, several front teeth knocked out, a pitiful sight to behold. Han Ruayun stopped, panting heavily, staring at him with her chest heaving, the pair of e-cups on her chest swaying unpredictably, making people dizzy. Rong Zidong, with tears in his eyes, begged for mercy. Miss Han, have you vented enough anger? Let's just call it quits, please. Han Ruayun spat, threw the broken cards in her hand at his face. Who said I've vented enough anger? We've only just begun. With that, she kicked Rong Zidong in the chest, knocking him to the ground, then ruthlessly stomped on his right hand with a high heel. The sharp heel brought excruciating pain, and Rong Zidong screamed in agony, Ah, my hand, my hand. Ignoring his cries, Han Ruayun intensified her assault. Oh, I remember you just said you wanted to strip my clothes off and ruin my reputation, didn't you? She sneered. Since you enjoy stripping people's clothes off so much, should I have someone strip you naked, let you taste the humiliation? No, Grandma Veran. Rong Zidong shook his head frantically, begging loudly, I won't dare anymore. Please spare me this time. Whether out of fear or pain, his legs suddenly trembled and a large wet patch appeared in his crotch, a foul stench emanating from it. He actually wet himself. The onlookers covered their noses and stepped back, showing disdainful expressions. Rong Mei-Yin watched her brother, who cared deeply about his reputation, make a fool of himself, feeling secretly delighted. Having lived for so many years, this was the first time she had seen Rong Zidong being bullied to such an extent. While Yi Tianzi played a part in it, Han Ruayun's ruthlessness was the key. A heroine who was willing to go to great lengths for her friends and confront enemies head-on was exactly to her liking. Moreover, with someone like Yi Tianzi, there would inevitably be women following in his footsteps. She had to form an alliance with Han Ruayun in advance to gain an advantage in future competitions. Nearby, Lu Ruyin was also shocked. She had thought Han Ruayun was just sharp-tongued, but she was even more ruthless in action. How much courage and boldness did it take? She made up her mind to warn her best friend, Xiao Qingqing, not to offend Han Ruayun in the future. It was better to endure her bullying than to oppose her. Otherwise, if she provoked her, who knew how much she would lose? After some abuse, Han Ruayun finally stopped. She retrieved her high heels, which had already left a pit, and walked towards Yi Tianxi. All right, I've vented enough. I'll leave the rest to you to handle. Han Ruayun wiped the sweat from her forehead, looking pleased with herself. Fine. Yi Tianxi nodded, stepping in front of Rong Zidong, coldly looking down at the pitiful creature. Rong Zidong, clutching his right hand and groaning in pain, saw Yi Tianxi approaching and quickly begged for mercy. Please spare me. I really know my mistake. I won't dare to provoke you again in the future. Your words are too easy. Yi Tianxi sneered. I'd rather kill you today to prevent future troubles. Before Rong Zidong could scream, Yi Tianxi kicked his left knee with a crisp sound, causing the leg to bend unnaturally, with the knee joint shattered. Ah! Rong Zidong howled in pain, his eyes almost popping out. But Yi Tianxi remained unfazed, stepping closer and saying calmly, rest assured, I won't easily kill you tonight. I promise to make you wish you were dead and I have plenty of ways to torture you. With another swift kick, Rong Zidong's right knee suffered the same fate. Flesh tore, bones protruded, blood gushed out. Damn, my legs. Rong Zidong wailed, saliva and snot flowing, his eyes unfocused. Onlookers gasped in shock, cursing Yi Tianxi for his cruelty, but also feeling a twisted sense of satisfaction. Yi Tianxi, chin in hand, pondered, both your hands and feet are disabled. What protruding part is left to deal with? Care to guess? 
Terrified, Rong Zidong begged, Please, not there. Spare me, please. No way, Yi Tianzi chuckled. Even if you beg the king of hell, it won't help. Just as he lifted his foot to step down, a voice interrupted, Wait, Mr. Yi. Yi Tianzi glanced aside to see Zhao Wujin approaching, his face serious and his tone earnest. Mr. Yi, it's true that we were in the wrong tonight, but we've punished and taught the necessary lessons. Can we call it quits now? Unmoved, Yi Tianzi asked, Why should I listen to you? Insulted by being called old, Zhao Wujin's eyes twitched but he held back. He explained, Young Master Rong is the only male heir of our second master, the last hope of the Rong family. If you disable him, it's like ending their lineage. I'm afraid you can't bear that consequence. What's that got to do with me? Yi Tianzi shrugged. Besides, doesn't the Rong family still have Rong Meiyin? With her figure, she looks like a good childbearer. Let her have a few more, problem solved, right? Zhao Wujin was speechless. Can he really think like this? Rong Meiyin blushed, her body trembling slightly, eyes flirtatious. Was she being flirted with by Yi Tianzi? Meanwhile, Han Ruayun's face darkened with jealousy. You shameless rascal. You actually want Rong Meiyin to have a child with you? Do you think I'm dead? I can give birth to a whole football team by myself. Lu Ruyin sneered, thinking to herself, if a woman like Rong Meiyin has a child, wouldn't it be a bunch of little troublemakers? Seeing Yi Tianzi unmoved, Zhao Wujia had to resort to tough talk. Mr. Yi, leave yourself a way out as a person, so we can meet again in the future. Do you think the Rong family is easy to deal with? With just your own strength, you want to go against the entire Rong family? I advise you, don't bring destruction upon yourself. Oh, is this a threat? Yi Tianzi squinted his eyes. Indeed, nodded Zhao Wujia. As long as you stop now, I will take Rong Xiao back to the provincial capital tonight, and we will never set foot in Jiangnan again. Let's end all grievances here, shall we? Yi Tianzi sneered repeatedly. You may have misunderstood two things. First, in my eyes, your Rong family is just a group of clownish characters. Do you think I would take you seriously? Don't make me laugh. Second, I hate it when others threaten me. The more you do this, the more I will stand up to you. With that, he swiftly delivered a lightning-fast flying kick, hitting Rong Zidong right in the crotch. Bang! Flesh and blood flew between his legs, leaving nothing behind. Rong Zidong stood stunned for three seconds, then he realized what had happened. His face twisted in agony, his eyes bloodshot. He howled, My balls! My balls! Like a rooster being slaughtered, he convulsed and struggled on the ground. But this struggle lasted only a few seconds. He fainted from the extreme pain and excessive blood loss. Silence fell. Everyone in the venue was stunned. The illustrious young master of the Rong family was publicly castrated and disabled. If this news spread to the provincial capital, wouldn't it cause a huge uproar? Zhao Wujie stared in disbelief, his mind blank. He never expected Yi Tianzi to dare to go this far. Is he insane? Lu Ruyin frowned, sensing trouble. The Rong family would never let this go. She turned to Han Ruayun and complained, It's all your fault for not stopping him. Look at what a mess it has become now. Why should I stop him? Han Ruayun shrugged nonchalantly. Besides, I find it quite satisfying to watch. You silly girl, don't you understand? Lu Ruyin stomped her foot in frustration. Once the Rong family gets serious, it's not something Yi Tianzi alone can handle. No one will be able to help him then. As the legitimate daughter of the Lu family, Lu Ruyin knew well the terror of a powerful family. That's why she was so worried about Yi Tianzi's situation. If things get really bad, I'll just take him and leave, go to a place where no one knows us, so the Rong family won't be able to find us, right? Han Ruayun muttered, already scheming in her mind. Imph, then it will be just the two of us together, and no one will come and try to steal my man. Just the thought of it is so satisfying. Rong Meiyin furrowed her brows, already thinking about how to deal with the upcoming changes. All of this was beyond her expectations. On the other hand, Yi Tianzi remained calm, as if nothing had happened. He glanced at Zhao Wujie and casually said, Old man, with Rong Zidong's actions, you are also implicated, aren't you? So, how do you want to die? 
Upon hearing Yi Tianxi's words, Zhao Wuji's eyelids couldn't stop twitching, and he was drenched in cold sweat. He knew very well that although he was one of the top 10 experts in the tiger list of Tianan province, in front of Yi Tianxi, he was no different from a kindergarten kid and could be defeated in minutes. What a do! Zhao Wuji was at a loss. Just when he thought his time was up, a sudden tumult of footsteps came from outside the venue. Nobody move. Police. Suddenly, 30 or so law enforcement officers with loaded guns filed in, surrounding the venue. This unexpected turn of events shocked everyone present. It seemed that the commotion tonight had finally alerted the law enforcement department. Zhao Wuji and the remaining forces of the Ji family breathed a sigh of relief at the sight. Fortunately, the police arrived just in time. Otherwise, they would have been completely wiped out by Yi Tianxi tonight. Two figures walked in, one after the other. The leader was a middle-aged man with a big belly, and the badge on his shoulder gleamed brightly. Following him was a familiar figure, Ji Bo Duan. It turned out that Ji Bo Duan had slipped away from the venue earlier not to escape, but to call the police and bring the director of the Nanhu District Police Station, Feng Dalong. It was well known that the Ji family had a close relationship with Feng Dalong, with many covert exchanges of interests. With such a major incident happening, Ji Bo Duan naturally sought Feng Dalong to ensure justice. As Feng Dalong and Ji Bo Duan entered the venue, they were stunned by the scene before them. This was no longer a bidding venue, but a living hell. Even Feng Dalong, an experienced veteran police officer, had never witnessed such a horrifying scene. Ji Bo Duan trembled all over, his eyes filled with fear as he surveyed the surroundings. When he saw the body of Ji Wu Li, his face instantly turned as white as paper. Dad! Ji Bo Duan screamed in agony, stumbling to his father's body, tears streaming down his face. In just a few minutes, his dear father was gone, without even a last farewell. Without a doubt, this must have been the work of Yi Tianxi. Director Feng, that bastard killed my dad. Ji Bo Duan pointed at Yi Tianxi with hatred, his voice choked with tears. You must order to have him killed. At this moment, Feng Dalong was still in shock. He glanced at the bodies on the ground. The deaths of those dozens of lackeys meant nothing, as they were just scum of society. But Ji Wu Li, the head of the Ji family, the two prominent guests of the Rong family, and even Lai Jingya, they were all influential figures, and the death of any one of them would be explosive news. And now, four of them had died in one night. Not to mention Rong Zidong who was barely clinging to life. Unbelievably, all of this came at the hands of a young man in his twenties? If not handled properly, his position as director would definitely be at stake. Feng Dalong's face darkened, and he sternly shouted at Yi Tianxi, Don't move! Put your hands on your head and crouch down immediately, or I will shoot. Yi Tianxi turned around slowly, his gaze icy and uncooperative. Stared at by those eyes, Feng Dalong felt his heart pounding, as if he was being targeted by a fierce beast. But thinking of the thirty or so fully armed police officers behind him, he quickly mustered up his courage. Haven't you heard me speaking? Hurry up and get down on the ground. Do you think you can order me around? Yi Tianxi sneered. You're just a dog, committing murder in front of so many witnesses. You have already committed intentional homicide. I'll have my men take you down. Feng Dalong shouted angrily. All officers, get ready. However, a cold female voice interrupted Feng Dalong. Rong Meiyin walked out of the crowd gracefully, with a stern gaze. Chief Feng, please forgive me for being blunt. You have no right to use violence against Mr. Yi. Who do you think you are? Feng Dalong disdainfully looked Rong Meiyin up and down, daring to obstruct law enforcement. Be careful or I'll arrest you too. I am Rong Meiyin, the beautiful woman said with a faint smile. If the chief thinks I'm causing trouble, feel free to shoot me as well. What? Rong? Rong Meiyin? Feng Dalong was dumbfounded. Oh my, could this lady in front of me be the legitimate daughter of the Rong family, the queen of the business world in the provincial capital, Rong Meiyin? Although he was the chief of police, he was just a small figure in the South Lake District compared to the four major families. How could he dare to offend the Rong family's young lady? Miss Rong, please don't misunderstand, Feng Dalong explained with a wry smile. I dare not lay a hand on you. I'm just enforcing the law against Mr. Yi. 
I remember the laws of the Dragon Kingdom clearly state that martial arts masters are not under the jurisdiction of ordinary law enforcement agencies. Rong Mei-in gave him a cold glance. Chief Feng, you talk so much about law enforcement. Have you forgotten about this rule? Feng Dalong was speechless. Indeed, once a martial artist's strength reached a certain level, they were no longer under the jurisdiction of the police. There was a mysterious organization in the Dragon Kingdom specifically responsible for the criminal activities of martial artists, which even the police found it hard to reach. Yi Tianxi had killed dozens of people, including two martial arts masters from the Rome family. His strength was already that of a confirmed martial artist. The police did not have the authority to deal with him. Just as Feng Dalong was in a dilemma, Ji Buodwan jumped out and roared, Who cares if he's a martial artist or not? Take him down first. People can't come back to life once they're dead. Who can find out his true identity then? Zhao Wujia also took the opportunity to step forward and flatteringly said, As the chief guest of the Rong family's second young master, as long as the chief is willing to get rid of that kid, avenge young master Rong and master Ji, I will have the second young master speak highly of you in the province, guaranteeing your promotion by three levels within three years. As the saying goes, for the sake of wealth and power, some officials can do anything immoral. A greedy glint flashed in Feng Dalong's eyes, gritting his teeth. All right, today, I will uphold justice, avenge the Ji family and the Rong family, and execute Yi Tianxi according to the law. Upon hearing this, Rong Mayan spoke solemnly, Director Feng, as an enforcer of the law, can you really ignore the most basic legal principles? Feng Dalong sneered arrogantly, Miss Rong, I'm sorry, but the interpretation of the law is in my hands. Please don't obstruct our law enforcement. Rong Mayan's face changed slightly, surprised by Feng Dalong's audacity. Ji Buodwan added fuel to the fire, Director Feng, my father's death cannot be overlooked. Make Yi Tianxi kneel and apologize first, then shoot him. We can't let that scoundrel off easy. As long as you help with this, I guarantee you won't be treated unfairly. Hearing the opportunity for personal gain, Feng Dalong was secretly pleased, but maintained his composure. The Ji family has made significant contributions to the development of Jiangnan City. As an enforcer of the law, I must ensure justice and clear Ji's name. Pointing at Yi Tianxi, he sternly ordered, Do you hear me? Quickly kneel and apologize to the Ji family. If you cooperate, I can make it quick for you. Otherwise, I don't mind wasting a few more bullets on you. Yi Tianxi narrowed his eyes, showing disdain. The people pay taxes to support you, not to breed parasites like you. When it comes to apologizing, shouldn't you scoundrels be the ones apologizing to the people? The onlookers whispered among themselves, This young man is bold daring to speak out like this. It's common knowledge that Feng Dalong is corrupt and does all sorts of bad things. People are just too afraid to speak up. Feng Dalong, with a smirk, said, Kid, don't think you can act tough in front of me just because you're a martial arts expert. You're nothing in front of the government. He raised his hand, about to give the order to fire, but a figure dashed out from the crowd and stood in front of Yi Tianxi. If you want to kill Yi Tianxi, you have to step over my dead body first. It was Han Ruayun. With determined eyes, she stared at Feng Dalong without flinching. Are you crazy? Ye Tianji Fronet. This is not your business. With me here, they can't touch me. Han Ruayun said seriously, I know you're powerful, but even so, you can't go against the government. Let's talk it out. There's no need for violence. She turned to Feng Dalong and loudly questioned him, Tonight, the troublemakers were clearly the group led by Rong Zidong, almost causing harm to innocent people. Yi Tianxi was just trying to help. Is that wrong? Director Feng, why are you targeting Mr. Yi without distinguishing right from wrong? Where is the fairness and justice in that? Feng Dalong was speechless and enraged by the questioning. Miss Han, out of respect for your father, I won't argue with you. My police uniform represents the law and justice. It's not your place to question here. Be wise and step aside. Don't push me to be impolite to you. In the past, Feng Dalong would never dare to offend the Han family. But thinking of Zhao Wujie's promise, the opportunity for a promotion if he killed Yi Tianxi, he didn't care about the Han family anymore. Moreover, faced with his harsh words, 
Miss Han would surely back down. Who would joke about their own life, especially a pampered rich girl? However, Han Ruayun did not back down. Instead, she stood tall and said solemnly, I won't hide. If you insist on abusing your power, I will definitely report you for dereliction of duty after tonight. Feng Dalong was furious, wondering why this girl was so stubborn. Since that's the case, don't blame him for being ruthless. No matter what, we can't let this matter escalate. He signaled to the trusted police captain beside him, who immediately stepped forward with a gun, coldly saying, Obstructing official duties is no different from colluding. I, on behalf of the people, will punish you according to the law. With that, he didn't hesitate to pull the trigger towards Han Ruayun. Bang! At the critical moment, Yi Tianza flew out and grabbed Han Ruayun, pulling her aside. The bullet narrowly grazed Han Ruayun's waist, leaving a bloody wound. Oh my god, the police opened fire. They even didn't spare a defenseless girl. How despicable. Are they even real police? They are clearly thugs in uniforms. The scene immediately erupted, with emotions running high and everyone feeling indignant. Even Lu Ruyin looked shocked, gazing worriedly at Han Ruayun. Yi Tianzi held Han Ruayun in his arms, anxiously asking, Are you okay? Han Ruayun endured the pain and forced a smile, saying, I'm fine, just a flesh wound. Rong Mayan hurriedly took out a handkerchief and carefully bandaged Han Ruayun's wound. Yi Tianzi's eyes darkened, exuding a strong killing intent. He instructed Rong Mayan, Take care of Ruayun, leave the rest to me. He stood up slowly, glaring fiercely at the police captain who fired the shot. Though feeling somewhat guilty, the police captain remained arrogant, saying, Kid, why are you staring? Hurry up and follow Director Feng's orders. Kneel and confess to Master Ji? Is this how you police uphold justice and protect the people? Yi Tianzi sneered, Miss Han is obviously an innocent bystander. Instead of protecting her, you shot at her. That's an abuse of power. Even if I did abuse it, what can you do to me? The police captain was smug, taunting, Just you? Dare to challenge the police? Do you know what the police represent? The surrounding officers also looked haughty, mocking, Exactly. With power comes recklessness. What can you do to us? Yi Tianzi remained indifferent, his tone icy. Just you police? In my eyes, you're all useless. What did you say? Enraged, the police captain raised his gun and advanced, threatening. Do you know who I am? I can shoot you right now. Don't get close to him. Zhao Wujin's face changed drastically as he quickly warned. But it was too late. In the next moment, Yi Tianzi flashed to the side of the police captain, snatching the gun from his hand and pressing it against his temple. The gun was chilling, like the scythe of death. A cruel smile played on Yi Tianzi's lips as he coldly asked, Tell me, do you want a few more holes in your body? I can fulfill your wish tonight. Yi Tianzi's actions shocked everyone present. Oh my god. He actually dared to hold the police chief hostage? This is clearly a challenge to the authority of the police. Isn't he afraid of ruthless suppression? Even Rong Meiyu and Han Ruayun were dumbfounded. Feng Dalong was furious, roaring, Drop the gun! Don't resist in vain! However, Yi Tianzi turned a deaf ear, instead pressing the gun against the police chief's temple, coldly asking, Didn't you understand what I just said? Have you thought about how many holes you want on your body? In the moment when the police chief publicly shot Han Ruayun, and uttered the absurd words of being entitled to be willful, he was already a dead man in Yi Tianzi's heart. The police chief nervously swallowed a mouthful of saliva, sweating profusely. He never expected Yi Tianzi's speed to be astonishing, something he had never seen in other martial artists. Despite his shock, he still tried to maintain his composure, sneering, Kid, do you know what you're doing? Openly confronting the National Law Enforcement Agency, just based on this, is enough to sentence you to life imprisonment. The laws you keep talking about, can you freely trample on them? Yi Tianji retorted. Laws are for governing you common people. Who says they also govern us police? The police chief disdainfully snorted. Don't be foolish. Release me quickly, or else bang. Before he could finish, Yi Tianzi pulled the trigger. The bullet pierced through the police chief's temple, blood splattering on the ground. 
Since the law can't control you, then let me deliver the judgment. Yi Tianxi's tone was icy. This scene once again caused a stir in the venue. Killing a policeman? What else wouldn't he dare to do? Jibo nervously swallowed a mouthful of saliva, feeling that Yi Tianxi must be insane. Zhao Wujin wiped off a cold sweat with a faint sense of ominous premonition. He furtively took out his phone and dialed a number. Feng Dalong was trembling with anger, his eyes spitting fire. That police chief was his trusted confidant, who had assisted him in his tyranny for many years, doing a lot of dirty work for him. Now, being publicly killed by Yi Tianxi, how could he swallow this anger? All police officers, get ready. Feng Dalong roared, and the police officers aimed their guns at Yi Tianxi one after another. Let's see who dares to shoot. Suddenly, a majestic voice echoed through the venue. Immediately, 70 to 80 special police officers filed in, surrounding the entire venue. Fully armed and imposing, they were many times more powerful than the police officers brought by Feng Dalong earlier. The crowd was in an uproar. What's going on? Why are there more police officers coming? Are they also here to deal with Yi Tianxi? Soon, two figures walked into the venue. Upon closer inspection, they turned out to be Lin Wanda, the secretary of the Jiangnan Municipal Party Committee, and Wang Jigua, the deputy director of the Jiangnan Public Security Bureau. These two are Feng Dalong's superiors. Seeing this, Feng Dalong's heart skipped a beat, quickly stepping forward to salute. Secretary Lin, Director Wang, why are you here? Wang Jigua frowned and said, with such a big incident in your jurisdiction, how can we not come? Feng Dalong sweated on his forehead, hurriedly saying, I have been negligent in my duties, poorly managed, leading to such a serious incident. Don't worry, I will execute Yi Tianxi according to the law and bring peace to Jiangnan. Unexpectedly, Lin Wanda became furious and questioned who gave the authority to arbitrarily execute others. What kind of law are you referring to when you talk about according to the law? Feng Dalong was speechless and couldn't understand the situation at all. Put down your guns. Lin Wanda scolded. Secretary Lin, but why? You won't even listen to me? Feng Dalong hurriedly waved his hand, signaling his officers to lower their weapons. Lin Wanda coldly snorted and quickly approached Yi Tianxi, asking with concern, Dr. Yi, are you okay? Yi Tianxi shook his head. The few police officers were no threat at all. However, he was curious as to why Lin Wanda suddenly appeared. Rong Mei-in took the initiative to explain that she sensed something was amiss when Ji Bujuan brought people over, so she secretly informed Uncle Lin and told him everything that was going to happen tonight. Yi Tianzhi suddenly realize it. This woman was truly calm and composed in the face of danger. No wonder she could dominate the business world. The onlookers were stunned and started discussing. Oh my god. So Secretary Lin and Yi Tianxi actually know each other. He just called him Dr. Yi. Could it be that he was the one who saved Lin's father a while back? Definitely. I heard that the Lin family treats that doctor as an honored guest. No wonder he's so arrogant. He's relying on the power of the Lin family. Upon hearing this, Feng Dalong felt like he had hit a brick wall. He represented the police force with great momentum, but he didn't know that Yi Tianxi had an even bigger backer. This was a big mistake. Feng Dalong looked at Ji Bujuan with frustration and gritted his teeth. You said that Yi Tianxi had no background, so how the hell did he become an honored guest of the Lin family? Ji Bujuan was at a loss for words as he had also heard about Yi Tianxi saving Lin Wanda's father, but he had always been skeptical since he had never seen it with his own eyes. Lin Wanda, upon seeing the wound on Han Ruayun's waist, was shaking with anger. How could the daughter of the Han family be injured like this by the police? It was simply outrageous. He turned slowly, his eyes sharp as knives, staring at Feng Dalong. Feng Dalong trembled and hurriedly tried to explain, Secretary Lin, the situation is not as you think. Actually, no need to explain. Lin Wanda coldly interrupted him. I am officially informing you that from now on, you are relieved of your position as the chief of the Nanhu District Police Bureau. Upon hearing this news, Feng Dalong's eyes widened in shock and disbelief. Secretary Lin, I don't understand. Why are you removing me from my position? He stammered. Secretary Lin Wanda sternly stated. 
as the chief of the Nanhu District Police Bureau, you have shown a lack of discipline, allowed your subordinates to kill innocent people indiscriminately, and committed serious breaches of duty. Shouldn't you be held accountable and dismissed for this? Feng Dalong, unwilling to accept this, tried to defend himself. Secretary Lin, you are mistaken. It was Etienne's arrogance and contempt for police authority that forced my hand. Oh, what a convenient excuse, Secretary Lin Wanda coldly retorted. So, your embezzlement totaling 2 billion, possession of 25 properties, 15 luxury cars, numerous antiques and paintings, and alleged involvement in five murder cases, as well as sheltering criminals, was also due to being forced? The words hit Feng Dalong like a thunderbolt, leaving him stunned. What? How? Wang Jigua said coldly, just before we arrived, the city was discussing your disciplinary issues. With all the evidence and witnesses, do you still want to deny it? Hearing this, Feng Dalong's legs turned to jelly, and he fell to his knees, begging for forgiveness. Secretary Lin, Director Wong, I was truly confused. I promised to confess all my corrupt activities, reform myself, and never make the same mistake again. Please give me a chance to turn over a new leaf. Take him away. Hand him over to the city commission for discipline inspection. Lin Wanda waved his hand, ignoring Feng Dalong's pleas. Several special police officers stepped forward, dragging Feng Dalong out. His accompanying officers were also controlled by Wang Jigua's men, awaiting investigation. No leniency will be shown if any illegal activities are discovered. The onlookers applauded this scene. It's a relief to see such scum being punished. Secretary Lin truly has the courage to crack down on corrupt officials. With such good officials, we, the common people, can live in peace and contentment. Rong Mei-in, Han Ruayun, and Lu Ruyin were also relieved. Only Lin Wanda remained solemn. He turned to Yi Tianche, speaking seriously, Dr. Yi, although you are a martial arts master and not under police jurisdiction, Causing such a commotion may soon attract the martial arts action team. You should be prepared to deal with them. Han Ruayun puzzled. Martial arts action team? What is that? Rong Mayan explained, they are responsible for managing martial arts masters nationwide, just like the police deal with ordinary citizens. It is said that everyone in this organization is a top-notch expert and wields considerable power, reportedly only taking orders from a mysterious department of the state. Lin Wanda nodded. That's correct. There are a total of 34 martial arts action teams nationwide, with each province having one. Each team is further divided into several squads stationed in major cities. For example, in our Jiangnan city, the third squad of the Jiangnan province martial arts action team is stationed. Despite their small numbers, around 50 people in total, they hold immense power, even beyond my authority. Hearing this explanation, Han Ruayun felt a sense of unease, Uncle Lin. According to what you're saying, Yi Tianche might be taken away by them. It's indeed a possibility, Lin Wanda nodded, but there are reasons for this. It was Rong Zidong's group that provoked the situation first. As long as the truth is revealed, I believe the martial arts action team won't make things too difficult for Dr. Yi. But Han Ruayun still worried. Why don't you leave before they arrive? I'll help you book a flight right now. As long as you leave Hua Country, not even the martial arts action team can touch you. Yi Tianza comforted her, saying, Don't worry. This minor injury won't affect anything. Let me bandage your wound for you. It's already this late, and you're still concerned about my minor injury. Han Ruoyan looked anxious and said, The most important thing now is that the martial arts action team will come after you. Upon hearing this, Zhao Wujie sneered repeatedly, Yi Tianza, you are too arrogant. Even the top-ranked experts on the dragon list have to be cautious, and not even the top-ranked experts on the god list dare to provoke easily. Yet you seem to disregard them completely? Yi Tianza gave him a cold look and said, Old man, if you don't speak, I almost forgot about you. Both of the guest officials who came with you today are gone. Isn't it your turn to go play cards with the king of hell? Zhao Wujie's face changed drastically, and his body hair stood on end. Just then, a disdainful voice sounded at the entrance of the venue. You? You still want to kill someone in front of the martial arts action team? I want to see what amazing feat you have. All eyes in the crowd were drawn to the entrance of the venue. For men in blue and white uniforms strode in, 
each carrying a flag of the Dragon Kingdom on their shoulders and a golden shield-shaped badge on their chests. They were all robust and agile, clearly seasoned warriors. Following closely behind them was a man in his forties, of medium build with dark skin, and a prominent scar below his left eye. His eyes gleamed with confidence and authority, as if he feared nothing, not even the sky falling down. It was the martial arts action team. Lin Wanda furrowed his brow, thinking they had arrived too quickly. Upon hearing this, Rong Mei-in and Han Ruayun's faces changed color, filled with worry. Ji Buodwan, on the other hand, secretly rejoiced. After Feng Dalong was dismissed, he had almost lost hope, but now a turning point had appeared. With the martial arts action team here, Yi Tianxi was definitely in trouble. Zhao Wujia hurried forward, smiling warmly. Captain Pan, you finally made it. If you had come any later, that Yi would have wiped me out completely. It turned out that Zhao Wujia and Captain Pan were old acquaintances. Pan Wuyuan was the head of the third squadron of the martial arts action team in Jiangnan City, wielding great power. They had met at a martial arts exchange event and exchanged contact information. Sensing trouble, Zhao Wujia had secretly sent a distress signal to Pan Wuyuan. Pan Wuyuan chuckled, not expecting that a top 10 expert on the Southern Tiger list, the chief guest of Jiangnan City, would be frightened into such a state by a young upstart. Zhao Wujia explained with a wry smile, Brother Pan, that kid is really something, almost a madman. Please help me get justice. Pan Wuyuan snorted disapprovingly, his gaze sweeping over the scene of carnage in the venue. Ji Wuli, Sun Feng, Huang Shirlong, all martial arts veterans, lay dead on the ground. A scene so brutal that even Pan Wuyuan, a seasoned warrior, couldn't help but shudder. This kid is too ruthless. I haven't seen such a bloody scene in Jiangnan City for years. Shocked as he was, Pan Wuyuan quickly regained his composure. He coldly told Yi Tianxi, killing innocents in public, you, as a martial arts master, have seriously violated the law. Now, come with us quietly, or don't blame us for not being polite. Yi Tianxi remained calm, calmly asking, does your martial arts action team conduct investigations without regard for the facts, only knowing how to arrest people? The martial arts action team is a law enforcement agency. It's not your place to question us. Pan Wuyuan sneered, stop talking nonsense and come with us, less talk. The four attendants also adopted a disdainful attitude, as if they despised everything in the world. In their eyes, the martial arts action team was the nightmare of martial artists, and anyone who dared to defy them was seeking death. Unexpectedly, Yi Tianxi remained unmoved. He said nonchalantly, If you haven't even figured out the case, why should I go with you? This statement caused a stir in the entire venue. Oh my god, is this kid insane? Daring to defy even the martial arts action team. Even if he's invincible, he can't possibly be a match for the official armed forces, right? He's done for this time. Even Rong Meiyun and Han Ruayun were trembling with fear for Yi Tianxi. This guy is way too reckless, isn't he? Pan Wuyuan squinted his eyes, exuding a strong aura of hostility. He grimly said, Kid, you are completely ignorant of the situation. The martial arts action team represents the national authority of violence. How dare you openly provoke us? It's like seeking death. Can you bear the consequences of your actions? Before he even finished speaking, four of his followers were already poised to strike, ready to act at any moment. Wait a minute. Lin Wanda hurriedly stepped forward, clasping his hands together in front of Pan Wuyuan. Captain Pan, there are reasons behind this matter. Please allow me to explain. Oh, Mayor Lin, what insights do you have? Although Pan Wuyuan had no jurisdiction over Lin Wanda, he didn't want to offend such a powerful figure. Moreover, the Lin family was not to be trifled with. With Lin Wanda's two elder brothers being a military general and a high-ranking official in the provincial capital, causing trouble would be as easy as pie. Lin Wanda recounted the whole story in detail. The more Pan Wuyuan listened, the more furrowed his brow became. As it contradicted Zhao Wujin's description, he gave Zhao Wujin a fierce glance, causing him to avert his eyes. Even if Zhao Wujin was not at fault initially, 
resorting to violence had already violated the regulations of the martial arts action team. Despite this, Pan Wu Yuan remained unyielding, insisting that the kid must come with them today. Lin Wanda glanced helplessly at Yi Tianzi. According to the rules, he couldn't interfere with the martial arts action team's handling of the case. Mayor Lin, you don't need to worry about this matter. I can handle it myself, Yi Tianzi said casually. He then turned to Pan Wu Yuan and asked, How do you plan to deal with Zhao Wu Jin's actions tonight? Pan Wu Yuan didn't hesitate. Since he didn't kill anyone, it's not within our jurisdiction. But you, on the other hand, must come with us for investigation. With a definitive answer, Zhao Wujian felt smug, leaning in close to Yi Tianzi and threatening in a low voice, Kid, you better behave. Once you're gone, your friends will be like a headless dragon. I have plenty of time to settle the score with them, whether it's Miss Han, Zhang Xiaohu, or even your almost father-in-law. In Zhao Wujian's eyes, Yi Tianzi wouldn't dare be audacious in front of the martial arts action team so it was the perfect opportunity for retaliation. However, he underestimated Yi Tianzi's dominance. With a cold laugh, Yi Tianzi swiftly moved to Zhao Wujin's side and kicked him in the chest with a resounding bang. Zhao Wujin's sternum shattered, and his body flew out like a kite with a broken string, crashing violently into the wall of the venue, splattering blood everywhere. A human-shaped dent was left on the wall. While Zhao Wujin lay motionless, bleeding from every orifice, his eyes bulging, clearly lifeless. With a loud bang, Zhao Wuji was kicked by Yi Tianz and slammed into the wall, instantly killed. His tragic death shocked everyone present, leaving them stunned and speechless, with their scalps tingling. Who would have thought that Yi Tianz would dare to kill in front of the martial arts action team? Rong Meiyin, Han Ruayun, and Lu Ruyin couldn't help but worry for Yi Tianz. Even Lin Wanda and Wang Jigua couldn't help but gasp. In their eyes, Yi Tianz was probably in deep trouble, but Yi Tianz seemed indifferent, even casually cleaning his ear with his pinky finger. If you don't have the strength, don't be so arrogant, or you won't even recognize the word death, he said lightly. Pan Wuyuan glanced at the body on the wall, his eyes twitching fiercely. Kid, you're the first one to act recklessly in front of the martial arts action team he said coldly, all on high alert, prepare for a show of force. Yes. For attendants immediately responded, their expressions becoming particularly serious. They knew Zhao Wuji's strength very well. Although he had been careless and underestimated his opponent earlier, being kicked to death was definitely not something an ordinary warrior could do. But they were confident that as long as the four of them joined forces, even if he Tiants was strong, he wouldn't be able to match them. After all, each of them had perfect martial arts skills, and in the whole Jiangnan area, they were among the top experts. For against one, victory was assured. Pan Wuyuan shouted sternly, This is your last chance, surrender now, or don't blame us for being ruthless. I never knew what surrender meant, Yi Tian said calmly. If you have the ability, just come at me. You're asking for it. Pan Wuyuan roared in anger. Attack together. The four attendants pounced like wolves, their punches fierce and powerful, each blow capable of easily breaking through a wall. They coordinated seamlessly, launching a fierce attack towards Yitians from all directions. Faced with the onslaught, Yitians remained calm, dodging and striking with ease, neutralizing the attacks with simple moves. Bang! 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 For consecutive muffled sounds, before the four warriors could react, they felt a sharp pain in their chests. They flew out like kites with broken strings, crashing heavily to the ground, unable to get up again. In the blink of an eye, Yi Tians had beaten the four top experts, leaving them bruised and battered, howling in pain. Oh my god, isn't this too exaggerated? Those are four top martial artists, yet they were killed in seconds. The martial arts action team is really not as strong as they claim to be. At that moment, Everyone was discussing and marveling at the scene. In their impression, the top 10 of the Tiger List were the peak of the martial arts world, but they never expected the elites of the martial arts action team to have such skills. If they hadn't seen it with their own eyes, they wouldn't have believed it. Don't underestimate the Tiger List, not all experts are willing to participate in the rankings, and the list is updated annually. Many top martial artists can't be bothered to join. Moreover, 
Official organizations like the Martial Arts Action Team usually keep a low profile and don't bother with the Tiger List competition. No wonder those martial artists fear them so much. It turns out the Martial Arts Action Team is full of hidden talents. Hmph. Even hidden talents can't beat a true dragon. Once he tyants makes a move, all those martial arts masters turn into paper tigers. Listening to the discussions around him, Pan Wuyuan felt increasingly uneasy and angry. Although he was only at the early stage of a grandmaster, he wasn't confident in defeating the four top experts under him in a short period of time. However, the young man in front of him, with just a few breaths, had already beaten them black and blue, showcasing his extraordinary strength that truly shocked the world. Kid, do you think you can escape punishment just by winning against a few of my men? Pan Wuyuan gritted his teeth. Today, on behalf of the martial arts action team, I will personally bring you to justice. Yi Tianzi smiled indifferently. I'm curious to see what tricks the mighty martial arts action team can come up with. Arrogant. Pan Wuyuan roared, leaped towards Yi Tianzi like a cannonball, his fists fierce and directly aimed at his face. However, Yi Tianzi effortlessly dodged the thunderous attack by just slightly shifting his body. Despite Pan Wuyuan's consecutive assaults, he couldn't even touch the corner of Yi Tianzi's clothes. On the other hand, Yi Tianzi remained calm, hands crossed over his chest, casually moving his feet to render all attacks ineffective. Damn it! Stand still! Pan Wuyuan, drenched in sweat, pale-faced and panting, glared at Yi Tianzi. Despite exerting all his strength, he couldn't land a single punch. This feeling of powerlessness left him feeling defeated and humiliated. Does someone with such limited ability deserve to be the head of the martial arts action team? Yi Tianzi sighed, looking disappointed. I see you are just all talk and no action, not worth a fight. In the next moment, he suddenly reached out, firmly grasping Pan Wuyuan's throat, lifting him up like a chick. Let go of me. Pan Wuyuan's face turned red as he struggled and kicked desperately, but couldn't break free. Feeling suffocated, he had to swallow his pride and said, our deputy team leader is about to inspect Jiang An. She is known as the Bloodthirsty Rose. If she finds out you've hurt me, she will surely tear you apart. Bloodthirsty Rose? Yi Tianzi's eyes narrowed slightly, a cold and stunning figure flashing through his mind. Could it be her? With that thought, a mysterious smile played on his lips as he casually dropped Pan Wuyu into the ground and ordered from a position of superiority, Lead the way. I'm eager to meet this bloodthirsty rose. Yi Tianzi's words once again caused a stir on the scene. The crowd erupted into a buzz of discussion, shocked by Yi Tianzi's bold statement. This kid is too arrogant, daring to challenge the deputy leader of the martial arts action group. Exactly, who hasn't heard of the notorious blood rose? She's a famous female demon. This kid is so ignorant, he's in big trouble now. In the crowd, Lin Wanda's expression suddenly changed, furrowing his brows. How could it be her? This is troublesome. Han Royan saw Lin Wanda's uneasy look and quickly asked, Uncle Lin, do you know this blood rose? Is she very powerful? Lin Wanda nodded, introducing with a serious tone. The martial arts action group in Tianan province has a leader and three deputy leaders, who have high authority and formidable strength. Even the top experts on the dragon list have to show respect to them. Among the three deputy leaders, Blood Rose is not only the youngest, but also the only female. It is said that she is not only beautiful and hot, but also exceptionally talented, ranking among the best in the entire martial arts action group of the Dragon Kingdom. However, Blood Rose is known for her extremely ruthless style, and the fate of the martial arts experts who fall into her hands is either severe injury or a miserable death. That's why she has earned the terrifying title of Blood Rose. Many martial arts experts would rather deal with the leader than meet this female demon. Rong Mayan also frowned, I've heard of Blood Rose's reputation in the provincial capital. It is said that she despises men, so male martial arts masters who fall into her hands often suffer much worse than females. Although the martial arts action group has rules against mistreating captured martial artists, Blood Rose ignores them and frequently uses torture as if it's routine. What's most frightening is that she has never been punished. Many speculate that she must have a terrifying background. 
This woman is absolutely untouchable. Rong Mayan's words made the crowd even more fearful. Han Ruayun, upon hearing this, gasped in shock and said to Yi Tianxi with concern, Tianxi, don't act recklessly. Blood Rose is so terrifying. What if something bad happens? It's better to leave Jiangnan City before she arrives. Yi Tianxi looked puzzled, not expecting Blood Rose's reputation to be so vicious and terrifying. However, he felt something was amiss because when he first met Blood Rose in the fallen city years ago, she was friendly and amicable towards him, showing no signs of being a female demon. Unfortunately, his master was watching, so Yi Tianxi didn't dare to do anything inappropriate. Now, after five years without any contact, Yi Tianxi was unaware that she had become a deputy leader of the Martial Arts Action Group in Tianan Province. In fact, when Yi Tianxi mentioned Blood Rose tonight and wanted to see her again, it wasn't to fulfill any past promises. It was for something extremely important to him, as instructed by his master. Pan Wuyuan, who had just gotten up from the ground, took two steps back and said coldly, Kid, if the title of deputy leader scares you, you still have time to run away now. But I warn you, if she catches you one step too late, the consequences will be unimaginable. Yi Tianxi remained calm and replied, Enough chatter. I've said I want to see Blood Rose and I won't back down. Do you want me to slap you a few more times before you agree to lead the way? Pan Wuyuan's eyes twitched sharply. In his nearly 20 years with the martial arts action team, it was the first time he had encountered such a brazen individual. But since the other party was determined to seek death, he couldn't be bothered to stop him. Pan Wuyuan sneered, All right, it's settled then. He then instructed his subordinates to show the way. Han Ruayun wanted to persuade them again, but was pulled back by Rong Main. Ruayun, trust Mr. Yi, don't distract him anymore. Han Ruayun nodded helplessly. All right then, Tianxi, please be careful and stay safe. Yi Tianxi nodded, and under the watchful eyes of everyone, he left with Pan Wuyuan and the others, nervously leading Yi Tianxi away. After Yi Tianxi left with Pan Wuyuan and others, Lin Wanda immediately arranged for the law enforcement team to clean up the scene, demanding all guests to keep tonight's events absolutely confidential, especially not to let the media know. The injured Zhang Xiaohu and Aqing were urgently taken to the hospital for treatment, fortunately only seriously injured and not in danger of life. Han Ruayun only received simple bandaging and did not seek medical treatment. Rong Mayan asked about Han Ruayun's injuries with concern, but Han Ruayun was worried about Yi Tianxi's safety. She was concerned that Pan Wuyuan had malicious intentions and might frame Yi Tianxi. What's even more frightening is the blood rose, which targets men specifically. Just thinking about these, Han Ruayun's heart was in turmoil and she was restless. She decided to spare no effort to find ways to help Yi Tianxi out of trouble even if there was only a glimmer of hope. With this in mind, Han Ruayun immediately called her father, Han Tianzheng, for help. Rong Meiyan also looked worried and sought help from Lin Wanda. Lin Wanda reassured her that Yi Tianxi was his father's lifesaver and an honored guest of the Lin family, he would not sit idly by. He would immediately try to smooth things over and do his best to ensure Yi Tianxi's safety. He admitted that if it were other deputy leaders or even leaders who came, he would have the confidence to handle it. But this Blood Rose's temperament is extremely unpredictable, full of variables, and he can only do his best. Meanwhile, in the crowd, Lu Ruyin also hurriedly bid farewell after Yi Tianxi left, preparing to report tonight's events to Xiao Qingcheng and hesitating whether to help Yi Tianxi or not. Ji Bujuan first arranged for someone to take Rong Zidong to the hospital, then stepped aside to call Rong Tianli and detail the situation. Hearing that his son had been beaten to unconsciousness, Ji Wuli died tragically, and three major clients under his command were killed by Yi Tianxi. Rong Tianli was furious and cursed angrily. Ji Bujuan was so scared that he trembled all over, crying and begging Rong Tianli to uphold justice. Rong Tianli coldly said that Yi Tianxi's crime was unforgivable, and he would not show any mercy. It so happened that Pan Wuyuan owed him a huge favor, he would personally call Pan Wuyuan to ensure Yi Tianxi's demise. Ji Bujuan was worried that Pan Wuyuan might not be a match for Yi Tianxi, and Lin Wanda and others were working to pressure and lobby, it might not be easy for Pan Wuyuan to act. Rong Tianli sneered, he had his ways to make the Blood Rose show no mercy to Yi Tianxi. As long as the charges were sufficient, 
No matter who came to plead, they would not escape death. Ji Bujuan worried that tonight they were in the wrong first, and if Yi Tianxi was not sentenced to death, Rong Tianli categorically stated that if there were no charges, they would fabricate them. Why worry about finding an excuse? He asked Ji Bujuan to rest assured and go back to take care of Zidong, and soon sent someone to support him as the new head of the Ji family. At the same time, Yi Tianxi was taken to the Wudao Action Office in Jiangnan City, Tianan Province. Pan Yuan said the deputy leader would arrive in over an hour and asked him to wait in the waiting room. His subordinates were puzzled as to why he was so polite to Yi Tianxi. Pan Yuan sighed and explained that he had received calls from big shots like the Lin family, Han family, Rong Meiyin, etc., all interceding and pressuring for Yi Tianxi, so he had to pass this hot potato to the deputy leader to handle. At this time, Pan Yuan received a call from Rong Tianli. Rong Tianli asked him to find a way to put Yi Tianxi in a life-threatening situation, and Pan Yuan immediately expressed full cooperation. After hanging up the phone, he instructed his subordinates to immediately mobilize people and secretly surround Yi Tianxi's waiting room to prevent any accidents. Another team has been dispatched to gather evidence of Yi Tianxi's crimes, with the goal of finding enough evidence to sentence him to death before the deputy leader arrives. The subordinate smirked smugly, knowing that Yi Tianxi, the son-in-law expelled from the Xiao family, must have left plenty of handles during his time with the Xiao family. He was determined to convict Yi Tianxi, to condemn him to death. Ha ha ha. In Jiangnan City, Xiaojia, in the villa's living room, Xia Qingqing, Zhang Huilan, and Xianan sat nervously on the sofa, listening to Lu Rian vividly recounting the shocking incident at the Bidding Merchant Association. Yi Tianxi, that despicable scoundrel, actually killed Ji Wuli, the three guest officials of the Ji family, and dozens of thugs? Xian and took a sharp breath, nervously swallowed. Isn't that too ruthless? But thinking that he only beat me up twice before, I feel a bit more balanced. Zhang Huilan gritted her teeth. That bastard didn't enjoy his happiness for long. He deserves to be arrested by the martial arts action team, preferably sentenced to death. She regretted persuading Xia Qingqing to reconcile with Yi Tianxi before. Now it seems to be in vain. Girl, from now on, you should have nothing to do with Yi Tianxi, so as not to be implicated. Our Xia family can't afford this kind of trouble. Xia Qingqing did not respond, still in shock. Why did Yi Tianxi escalate the situation to an irreparable point? Isn't teaching him a lesson enough? Since the divorce, this guy has been going further down the wrong path. Lu Ruyan cautiously asked, Qing Cheng, Yi Tianxi has been arrested. Now Rong Meiyuan, Han Ruayun, they are all trying to rescue him. What are you going to do? What does Yi Tianxi's trouble have to do with my Qing Cheng? Zhang Huilan impatiently interrupted, It's good if that despicable scoundrel dies in there. If he really dies, I'll set off firecrackers to celebrate. Xianan also sneered, Exactly, he's just a poser without the ability, getting caught by the martial arts action team. It's entirely his own fault. We have no reason to care about him. Xia Qingqing bit her lip, hesitated, but Yi Tianxi and I haven't formally divorced yet. Nominally, we are still husband and wife. Are you stupid? Zhang Huilan was exasperated. Since you filed for divorce, that Yi has been living a debauched life outside, surrounded by beauties, he doesn't care about this marriage at all. What are you expecting? Listen to mom. Let's not get involved in this matter so as not to be dragged down by him. Just as she finished speaking with a loud bang, the villa's front door was kicked open. More than ten armed personnel in uniform filed in, each with a fierce look. The leader was a tall man with a shining golden shield-shaped badge on his chest, showing unquestionable authority. Who are you people? Breaking into a private residence in the middle of the night? Believe it or not. I'll call the police to arrest you. Zhang Huilan stood up abruptly and cursed. Slap. The tall man directly slapped Zhang Huilan in the face, causing her to fall backwards with blood at the corner of her mouth. Damn it. Xian An was enraged, breaking into a private residence and even hitting people. Is there no law anymore? Your mother's law. The tall man kicked Xian An back onto the sofa, took out a small blue booklet with the national emblem on the cover, I am Du Song. Deputy Captain of the 3rd Squadron of the Martial Arts Action Team in Jiangan City. I am here to search your house on orders, representing the law. Martial Arts Action Team? 
Xian An's face turned pale, cold sweat instantly pouring down. The martial arts action team is an officially authorized special agency, with powers even above law enforcement departments, definitely not something they can provoke as a small household. Why do you have the right to search my house? Xia Qingcheng stepped forward, blocking Du Song, with eyes as cold as ice. Du Song looked her up and down secretly admiring the beauty of the top female CEO in Jiangan City. Her features were delicate, her figure graceful, and her demeanor ethereal. He sneered, Your husband, Yi Taiyans, committed a heinous crime tonight, and we suspect he's involved in other criminal activities. We're here to search for evidence. It's in your best interest to cooperate, or you'll be aiding and abetting a criminal and face the consequences. The leader, my daughter has already asked Yi Tians for a divorce, and he moved out a long time ago. Zhang Huilan explained with a touch of flattery, if you want to search, you should go to his current residence. Du Song snorted, thinking, if I knew where that kid lived, would I bother coming here? Impatiently, he said, filing for divorce doesn't mean you're divorced. You're still legally married, so we have the right to search. Obstructing us is impeding official duties. Believe me, I can arrest your whole family on the spot. Zhang Huilan paled in fear and quickly agreed. Of course, we wouldn't dare shield that jerky tyants. Feel free to search, no need to be polite. She then pulled Xiao Qingqing aside, whispering a reminder not to provoke the martial arts task force. After all, when Yi Tyants came to their home, he was penniless, and he didn't take anything valuable when he left. They won't find anything. Zhang Huilan comforted her daughter. She thought to herself that apart from the strange golden token she found in Yi Tian's torn clothes back then, which she secretly kept, it might be worth something. But that thing shouldn't have anything to do with the crimes. With a command from Du Song, his men immediately began a thorough search of the villa, ransacking it rudely, leaving a mess with vases and books scattered on the floor. It's all Yi Tian's fault, causing us to suffer innocently. Xiao Nan complained angrily. Zhang Huelan's face was grim, wishing for Yi Tian's demise. A few minutes later, a subordinate rushed out of the bathroom in a panic, holding two packets of white powder, placing them on the coffee table. He reported loudly, Captain, we found these in the bathroom. Initial tests suggest it's methamphetamine, with a weight of about 1,000 grams. Du Song's eyes gleamed with a sinister light as he stared at Xiao Qingcheng and her family, sneering, In Longwa, Drug trafficking and production are capital crimes, especially in such large quantities. Since these drugs were found in your home, I suspect your accomplices of Yitians, involved in drug production and trafficking. Come with us. The news of drug manufacturing and trafficking? Xiao Qingqing and others were all shocked. How could this be possible? Xiao Qingqing immediately explained, Captain Du, is there some misunderstanding here? There's no way we would have such things in our house. Zhang Huilan, pale with fear, said, Leader, please investigate carefully. This, this must be a frame-up. Someone is deliberately trying to frame our Xiao family. We are decent people. How could we dare to do such things? Du Song sneered, Esh? Whether it's a frame-up or not, we won't know until we investigate. Take these few people away. Wait. Lu Ruyan suddenly spoke coldly. She stared at Du Song and said, Sister, I saw you at the venue before. You were one of the people defeated by Yi Tians with one move. You must hold a grudge against Yi Tians, so are you framing him? Du Song furrowed his brow and said coldly, Miss Lu, you used to be a popular female star in Longwa. You should understand a principle. Speaking requires evidence. Baseless accusations and rumors will lead to legal consequences. Lu Ruyan retorted, Sister, where did I spread rumors? We all used the restroom before you arrived and never saw any drugs. But after you came, it didn't take long to find them. Isn't this framing and framing? Hearing this, Xiao Qingqing and others immediately realized what was happening and said, Captain Du, are you going too far? We refuse to accept this framing and persecution. Leader, let's talk about it. Manufacturing and trafficking drugs are serious crimes and not a joke. Du Song's eyes flashed with a hint of coldness. My captain said you're trafficking drugs, so you are. Take them all away. Yes. 
his subordinates immediately stepped forward. They handcuffed Xiao Qingqing, Zhang Huilan, and Xiao Nan, paying no attention to their resistance, and forcibly took them away. As for Lu Ruyin, she was driven away by them. On one hand, Lu Ruyin was not a member of the Xiao family and had no relation to Yi Taiyans. On the other hand, they knew that behind Lu Ruyin was the Lu family in the provincial capital, a huge family that should not be easily offended. After completing these tasks, a bald subordinate asked, should we also arrest other members of the Xiao family, including the head of the Xiao family and various relatives? Du Song shook his head. Time is pressing. Let's forget about those people. Threaten these few people severely to admit that Yi Taiyans is the mastermind behind drug manufacturing and trafficking. Then we can convict him. But I'm worried that these charges alone may not be enough. By the way, besides the planted evidence, have our brothers found any real evidence? The subordinate seemed to have remembered something. He took out a palm-sized golden token from his pocket. On the front of the token were three ghostly fire ghost patterns, surrounded by white bone textures, looking very eerie and cold. We found this during the search. It feels strange. Can you take a look? Hmm. Du Song took the token and looked at it, then turned it over. On the back, there was a poem written in seal script, rust stains behind the iron gate. Deep in the dark alley, ghost shadows linger. The city of despair, the road of no return, only decadence without redemption. These familiar verses echoed in Du Song's mind, as if he had heard them in a distant memory. Despair, decadence. Suddenly, a terrifying presence flashed in his mind, causing his pupils to dilate and sweat to pour down. This couldn't be absolutely impossible. His bald subordinate cautiously asked, Du Song, what's wrong with you? Du Song urgently pressed, Where did you find this thing? Tell me. The bald subordinate, seeing Du Song in such a state for the first time, honestly replied, I found it in Zhang Huelan's jewelry box while searching her room. Is there something wrong with this token? Du Song wiped the cold sweat from his forehead, forced himself to calm down, and asked in a low voice, You've been working in our task force for two and a half years. You should know that we only have the power to capture and interrogate, while the power to judge and execute lies in the hands of other organizations, right? The bald subordinate nodded in agreement. Yes, the power to judge and execute lies in the prison managed by martial arts experts, where criminals of higher danger levels are held in corresponding level prisons. Dusong continued to inquire, Do you know where the most dangerous prison is? The bald subordinate answered without hesitation, It's definitely Qin City in the capital. It appears to house political and economic prisoners on the surface, but in reality, it harbors brutal martial arts experts, imprisoned deep underground, under strict surveillance, making it the top S-class prison in the Dragon Kingdom. He went on to describe the experience of escorting a silver badge killer from the Tian Kin Min into the prison last year, leaving Du Song in awe, You still don't understand enough. There is a prison in the world more dangerous than Qin City, where unimaginably dangerous criminals are held. The low-level criminals imprisoned, there would be considered big shots in Qin City. In the dark world, hearing the name of that prison evokes fear in people's hearts. The bald subordinate curiously asked, What is the name of that prison? Du Song took a deep breath, nervously saying, It is the City of Despair, rated as an SSS-level prison. It holds supreme law enforcement authority, and our martial arts task force stands no chance against it. The bald subordinate swallowed nervously, asking, So, what's the connection between the city of despair and us? Why bring it up all of a sudden? Du Song's eye twitched as he said, As far as I know, the city of despair has 1,008 powerful wardens, with prestigious status and formidable strength, wearing badges that allow them to freely enter and exit the prison. It is rumored that the badges bear the image of ghostly flames and a poem and this poem. His gaze fell on the back of the golden token in his hand. The bald subordinate suddenly realized the seriousness of the situation and couldn't help but shiver, trembling as he said, Are you referring to this token, the symbol of the fallen city? Oh my goodness. But how did it end up in the Xiao family's possession? I had no idea at all. Du Song's face turned very ugly. If this is indeed the token of the fallen city, once we get involved, it will be extremely difficult to get out of it, even with a few more heads. 
The bald subordinate started to panic. So what should we do? Du Song frowned and said, Whether this token is truly related to the fallen city needs further verification. I will immediately report this to Captain Pan. Remember, this must not be leaked. Yes. Twenty minutes later, in the office of the martial arts action team in Jianan City, Xiao Qingcheng and others were brought to the interrogation room. The interrogation room was dim, cold, and oppressive, making it almost suffocating. Zhang Huilan was so scared that she kept crying and blaming Yi Tianza for bringing bad luck, leading to their arrest and imprisonment. What if they were sentenced to death? Xiaon and trembled and said, I'm not married yet. I don't want to die. Can anyone save us? Xiao Qingqing's face also turned pale. For so many years, it was the first time being detained in such a place. Who wouldn't feel fear in this situation? Suddenly, the door of the interrogation room was pushed open. Du Song walked in coldly. He exuded a powerful aura, making the three people in the interrogation room uneasy. Du Song slammed a stack of documents on the table. He said coldly, Time is running out. I don't have time to talk to each of you in detail. I'll give you two choices. First, admit that you were involved in drug trafficking with Yi Tianza and share the responsibility. Second, as witnesses, expose Yi Tianza's drug manufacturing and trafficking activities, and I can guarantee your safety. Upon hearing these words, Xiao Qingcheng and the other two were shocked, realizing why Du Song had brought people to cause trouble at the Xiao family. So, it was to frame Yi Tianzi, to set him up. Du Song continued, Xiao, I have checked. You have long been dissatisfied with Yi Tianzi. Now is a perfect opportunity. Just sign the document as a witness, expose his crimes. Then, he will no longer disturb your life. Why not do it? Xiao Qingcheng frowned and said seriously, The law emphasizes fairness and justice. Facts are facts. I, I will not commit perjury. Du Song looked at her coldly and asked in confusion, Haven't you already filed for divorce? Aren't you eager to see him in trouble? Xiao Qingqing interrupted, Whether we are divorcing or not has nothing to do with it. Even if you want to frame someone, I will not sign a false statement because I cannot betray my conscience. Ha ha, what a conscientious person. Du Song sneered. He turned to Zhang Huilan and Xiao Nan, asking, What about you two? Zhang Huilan and Xiao Nan said in unison, Of course, we want to survive. We can sign. Xiao Qingqing interjected, Do not listen to him. Perjury is a serious crime. Once exposed, you will not escape punishment. Xiao Nan said in a aggrieved tone, But sister, if we don't sign, we will be accused of drug trafficking. This charge is enough to lead us to death. Xiao Qingqing said firmly, Can't you stay calm? The martial arts action team only has the power to investigate and interrogate, not to judge and execute penalties. Besides, Yuru is still outside. She will definitely find a way to help us clear our names. We must persist and absolutely cannot commit perjury. Although Xiao Qingcheng did not understand why Du Song wanted to frame Yi Tianxi in this way, her intuition told her that the other party must be in a hurry, which is why they acted so clumsily, leaving behind numerous loopholes. As long as the three of them delay, the situation will be more favorable for them. Upon hearing this, Xiao Nan and Zhang Huilan also calmed down slightly. Xiao Nan shook his head and said, I, I don't want to commit perjury. Zhang Huilan also said, Exactly, you only found drugs in my house, without any evidence of drug production. Accusing us of drug trafficking is purely a false charge. When your leader arrives, I will report. Du Song's face turned ugly. He looked deeply at Xiao Qingcheng, finding this woman more difficult to deal with than he had imagined. If it were an ordinary person, they would have been scared and at a loss long ago. However, he sneered, whether you admit to drug trafficking or not, because I found something even more interesting. With that, he took out a gold token from his pocket and placed it on the table. Are you familiar with this? Xiao Qingcheng and Xiao Nin glanced at it shaking their heads in ignorance. Zhang Huilan was first stunned, then shook her head. I don't know either. Don't know? Du Song stood up, walked to Zhang Huilan, and unceremoniously slapped her. Du Thong stared at Zhang Huilan with cold and ruthless eyes. This thing was found in your jewelry box. After investigation, 
It was discovered that this is a forged badge from a mysterious and powerful organization, classified as a state secret. According to the laws of Longwa, forging such a badge is as heinous as leaking national secrets. Not only will it result in the death penalty, but it will also lead to the confiscation and exile of the entire family. Don't you understand? Zhang Huelan's eyes widened, almost able to fit an egg, completely stunned by fear. Without mercy, Du Song slapped Zhang Huilan again. Speak. Why did you forge this badge? Who instructed you to do this? Du Song deduced that the badge was forged because he had just sent a photo of the badge to Captain Pan Wu Yuan for review. Captain Pan replied that the real badge of the fallen city prison guard was black, with only a ghostly flame pattern on the front. However, the badge found in the Xiao family had three ghostly flame patterns on the front and was even gold-plated. It was most likely a forgery. Forging such a badge is an absolute crime, and if discovered by the fallen city, the consequences are more terrifying than falling into hell. So Du Song and Pan Wuyuan decided to use this badge to coerce the Xiao family into submission. Zhang Huelan's ears were buzzing, her cheeks swollen like a full sesame ball. Leader, please spare me. This is not mine. I really don't know what's going on. Not yours? Then how did it end up in your jewelry box? Zhang Huilan choked. When I was sorting through Yi Tian's tattered clothes, I found this in his pocket. I saw the shiny surface and thought it was valuable, so I secretly kept it, completely unaware of the serious crime behind it. Hearing this, Du Song's face showed a hint of joy. He had intended to use the forged badge to threaten the Xiao family and frame Yi Tian's for drug trafficking. But he didn't expect that the badge belonged to Yi Tian's himself. Now with solid evidence, there was no need to frame him further. Xiao Qingqing asked disapprovingly, Mom, why are you hiding Yi Tian's things? Zhang Huilan sneered, That waste has been free-loading in our house for three years. What's wrong with me taking his stuff? I didn't expect this thing to be intentionally created by him to frame me. I will never let him off. Xiao Nan was already frightened and weak, pleading, Leader, Please don't implicate our Xiao family because of Yi Tian's forgery. Please don't confiscate and exile us. Let him bear all the responsibility himself. Zhang Huilan quickly agreed, Yes, I am willing to testify that this badge was forged by Yi Tian's. I am also willing to admit and provide evidence for other crimes. As long as you show mercy, I am willing to do anything. Du Song smirked triumphantly, Ha ha, almost there. Then, he turned to Xiao Qingqing and asked coldly, So, Xiao, do you have anything to say? On a highway in the outskirts of Jiangnan City, a red off-road motorcycle zoomed past, reaching a speed of 180 km per hour. The female rider on the motorcycle was wearing a black leather jacket and pants with a graceful and sexy figure. Although she was wearing a helmet, her calm and steady control at such high speeds showed her exceptional mental composure and driving skills. However, at that moment, suddenly, a powerful Hummer car rushed out from the roadside, heading straight towards her. The speed was so fast that she couldn't evade it in time. However, she showed no fear, as if she had already prepared for it. She quickly took out a crimson whip from her waist and lashed it towards the Hummer car. The whip seemed to be filled with endless destructive power. With a loud bang, the Hummer car was split in half by the red whip tearing apart from the middle. The two halves of the Hummer car rushed past the woman on either side and collided on the roadside in the distance. Soon, a fierce fire erupted, with flames soaring into the sky. The woman glanced at the direction of the explosion, then swiftly turned her motorcycle and stopped, removing her helmet. Her face was well-defined, with delicate features, slightly tanned skin, exuding a rare feminine strength especially her long red wavy hair, under the glow of the fire, appeared alluring and imposing. She shook the red whip in her hand and said expressionlessly, Come out, all of you. Immediately, dozens of masked figures quickly emerged from the roadside, holding various weapons. Leading them was a burly man wielding a huge axe, exuding a powerful fighting aura. Bloody Rose, do you still remember me? He roared. The woman known as the Blood Rose, expressionless, shook her head as if indifferent to the giant man in front of her. The giant man ripped off his mask, 
revealing a scarred face, and angrily demanded, Do you remember now? The blood rose remained coldly indifferent, shaking her head. I don't recall. The giant man's eye twitched, gritting his teeth as he said, Listen up. I am the vice leader of the Black Wolf Gang. Half a year ago, you attacked us, killed our leader. I still bear these scars, luckily escaped. Now, I have been leading my brothers in hiding for half a year. All for today, to avenge the Black Wolf Gang. The Blood Rose spoke coldly, then whipped the giant man fiercely. Before he could react, the whip coiled around his neck. With a swift pull, the giant man's head separated from his body, blood gushing like a fountain, ending his life in a pool of blood. The Blood Rose scanned the terrified remnants of the Black Wolf Gang coldly, saying, Since you are all remnants of the Black Wolf Gang, a bunch of stinking men, then all of you shall perish. With that, she turned into a black phantom, diving into the crowd, whip dancing, blood spraying. Within two minutes, dozens of Black Wolf gang remnants lay dead, blood saturating the ground, the stench nauseating. The blood rose remained expressionless, stepping through the blood, heading towards an off-road motorcycle. At that moment, a black special armored vehicle stopped beside her, and several female members in blue and white uniforms, adorned with gold shield medals, disembarked. They gazed at the scene expressionlessly, seemingly unfazed. A short-haired female member spoke, Vice Leader, Pan Squad has sent a message. The suspect we captured is involved in drug trafficking and production, and has forged a guard badge from the fallen city. The Blood Rose responded coldly, Drug trafficking and production? Unbelievable. Upon hearing, Fallen City, her expression finally changed, a familiar face flashing through her mind. For five years, she had been searching for news of him, to no avail. Perhaps, he had long forgotten about her. Frustrated, she decided to personally apprehend the forger and bring him to justice. Donning her helmet, she rode off on her motorcycle. In the waiting room of the Jiangnan City Martial Arts Task Force office, Yi Tianzi closed his eyes to rest. Suddenly, the door was kicked open. The sound of footsteps echoed as more than a dozen figures rushed in from the door, each holding a handgun, all aiming at Yi Tianzi. Following them, two people swaggered in. They were Pan Wuyuan and Du Song. Pan Wuyuan sneered and said, You, surnamed Yi, you really hide your true colors daring to engage in drug trafficking and manufacturing? He placed two bags of white powder on the table and took out a document. Just now, my subordinates found this drug in the Xiao family villa. Your mother-in-law Zhang Huilan and your younger brother-in-law Xiao Nan are willing to testify against you for drug trafficking and manufacturing and have signed their testimonies. Yi Tianzi instantly realized that this was a frame-up. He crossed his arms and calmly said, Ha! Huh. You're considered an old member of the martial arts action team. Using such despicable tricks, is it interesting? Pan Wuyuan sneered. I know you're highly skilled, and you have many big shots supporting you. Even if you were really involved in drug trafficking and manufacturing, maybe nothing would happen to you. But forging this thing privately, even if the big shots supporting you are powerful, it won't help. He placed a golden token on the table. This thing was also found during the search at the Xiao family. Your mother-in-law has identified it as the one you forged. Yi Tianzi looked at the token on the table, reminiscent of the token he took when he left the fallen city three years ago. Different from the ordinary prison guard's token, it not only had a different material and appearance, but also possessed the highest command authority in the fallen city. Seeing it was like seeing the owner of the fallen city. He thought it was lost, but here it was, reappearing. Yi Tianzi smiled faintly and said, is it possible that it is the real token? Pan Wuyuan and Du Song exchanged a glance and sneered, Ha ha, don't daydream. Du Song took out the document and coldly threatened, Sign this document, admit to drug trafficking and manufacturing, as well as forging the fallen city token, otherwise. Yi Tianzi asked, Otherwise what? Have someone shoot me? Despite being surrounded by a dozen gunmen, they were no threat in Yi Tianzi's eyes. Pan Wuyuan frowned, feeling uneasy as the Blood Rose had instructed him to keep Yi Tianzi alive. Du Song confidently said, Captain Pan, we have a way to make this Yi sign. 
two members of the martial arts action team escorted Zhang Huilan and Xiao Nan in. Du Song threatened Yi Tianzi. If you don't sign and admit, these two family members of yours will suffer tonight. Unexpectedly, Yi Tianzi leaned back, almost laughing. When faced with the difficulties of others, he always takes pleasure in their misfortune, as if only by seeing others suffer can he feel satisfied. He fails to understand that others' misfortunes do not bring him any benefits, and schadenfreude will only make him lose the trust and respect of others. Perhaps he should reflect on his own behavior and try to treat others with empathy and kindness, in order to truly gain the recognition and friendship of others. Pan Wuyuan was feeling agitated, while Du Song was also puzzled. They were surprised to find that Yi Tianxi was so cold and indifferent. Du Song speculated in his heart, wondering what thoughts Yi Tianxi was hiding behind his calm facade. Suddenly, Du Song couldn't control himself and slapped Xiao Nan hard. With a crack, blood started flowing from Xiao Nan's mouth. His cheeks swelled, and he let out a painful cry. Xiao Nan felt wronged, thinking why they were targeting Yi Tianxi, but ended up hitting him instead. In Yi Tianxi's eyes, he wasn't even worth the threat. However, Xiao Nan couldn't express his grievance directly, so he could only silently endure and swallow his resentment. Du Song once again grabbed Zhang Huilan by the hair, pressing her face against the table, and said in a cold voice, Yi, I'm not joking. We will take action. Yi Tianxi shrugged helplessly and said softly, Don't your martial arts action team have other methods? Like torture, electric shocks, or even whipping? He wasn't interested in such brutal methods. Hearing this, Zhang Huilan angrily scolded, Yi Tianxi, you heartless scoundrel. Do you have no conscience? It was clearly your family who stole my token, yet you want us to bear the consequences. Why not confess quickly? Shaonan gritted his teeth and said, We've all been ruined by you. If you still have a shred of manhood, you should bravely take responsibility and confess. Yi Tianxi smiled lightly and replied, It's your family's own doing, hiding my token. Now you want to escape? It's too late. As long as I don't confess, you two have the suspicion of perjury. If that bloodthirsty Rose comes over, she might handle the three of us together, and we'll all end up in the same boat. This statement frightened Zhang Huilan and Xiao Nan to the core. Although they didn't know who the bloodthirsty Rose was, Lucian had described her as a ruthless female demon. Yi Tianxi's plan to drag others down with him was shocking. Xiao Nan quickly knelt down to beg for forgiveness, hoping to be pardoned by Pan Wuyuan. Zhang Huilan trembled, insisting they couldn't be handed over to the bloodthirsty Rose, as they didn't want to die. Du Song's expression turned grim, kicking Zhang Huilan and her son to the ground, filled with anger. Two members of the action team dragged Zhang Huilan and Xiao Nan out, while Pan Wuyuan, looking at the time, struggled to conceal his anxious expression. Before the deputy leader arrives, if Yi Tianxi does not confess and sign the document, the situation will become very bad. Captain Pan, I have a plan. Du Song walked towards Yi Tianxi, squinted his eyes, gritted his teeth and said, even if you don't care about the safety of your mother-in-law and younger brother-in-law, what about your wife, Xiao Qingcheng? She is in the interrogation room upstairs right now. If you don't confess and sign today, I swear I will make her suffer. Yi Tianxi narrowed his cold eyes slightly and said, don't you know? She has already asked for a divorce from me. Du Song sneered, Of course I know. But so what? You two haven't officially divorced yet. Just now upstairs, your mother-in-law and brother-in-law agreed to testify against you as soon as they were scared. And Xiao Qingcheng, no matter how I threatened, even if I hit her, she refused. She's really tough. Du Song did not notice that when he said this, Yi Tianxi's expression had become indifferent. Du Song licked his lips and continued. Not only is Xiao Qingqing beautiful, but she is also said to be a virgin. If she is thrown into prison for those men to enjoy, think about how much betrayal she will face. How much humiliation will she endure? Yi Tianxi's voice became even colder. The purpose of the Longwa Martial Arts Action Team is to restrain martial arts masters and prevent them from harming ordinary people. And now... You law enforcers are violating the original intention to harm the innocent. For your own despicable purposes, don't you feel ashamed? Hearing this, Pan Wuyuan coldly snorted, Don't be so harsh. 
We have been defending countless ordinary people for many years. Now we have only harmed a few people. What's the big deal? Besides, as long as you confess and sign, I guarantee not to trouble them anymore. How about it? Du Song took the opportunity to say, even if you don't consider Xiao Qingqing, don't you think about her grandfather, Xiao Hongming? I heard you respect him a lot, but if your recklessness leads to his harm, I'm afraid. Are you willing to take that risk? Yi Tianxi's eyes flashed with killing intent. As the saying goes, if a dragon has a reverse scale, it must be killed, and if a phoenix has a vulnerable neck, it will die. Yi Tianxi came here to see blood rose but he didn't expect these people to repeatedly trample on his bottom line. There is no forgiveness. Although Du Song felt a little uneasy under Yi Tianxi's gaze, when he saw his brothers holding guns vigilantly around him, he felt a little relieved. He continued arrogantly, What's there to be afraid of? I admit your martial arts skills are strong. We have seen that at the Cloudtop Hotel before, but you should have heard an old saying. When two strong men meet, the one who is seven steps away is faster with the gun and the one who is within seven steps is more accurate and faster with the gun. No matter how powerful you are, today you must obediently confess and sign. Otherwise, before he could finish his words, Yi Tianxi suddenly exploded, his fist hitting Du Song's chest heavily. Bang! The immense force sent Du Song flying backwards, crashing through the wall of the interrogation room, continuing forward, and finally hitting the wall of the corridor before coming to a stop. With a loud rumble, the entire interrogation room corridor shook for a few moments. Du Song's chest was deeply caved in, leaving a clear fist mark. He convulsed in pain and finally closed his eyes forever. Yi Tian Su lowered his fist, expressionless, and said, It seems that within seven steps, my fist is fast and accurate. Pan Yuan snapped out of his shock and immediately ordered, Everyone, open fire! Quickly! Open fire. The gunman around immediately pulled the trigger, and bullets poured out like rain. However, Yi Tian Su's figure had long disappeared, easily dodging all the bullets. When he reappeared, he had already grabbed Pan Wu Yuan by the neck and slammed him hard against the wall. Tell your men to drop their guns, or I'll snap your throat right away. Pan Wu Yuan was sweating profusely. Although he knew Yi Tian Su's speed was beyond imagination, he didn't expect it to be so fast. He realized clearly that Yi Tian Su's strength was enough to end his life in an instant. Driven by the instinct to survive, he immediately ordered, Everyone, drop your guns, quickly drop your guns. His men all dropped their weapons. Nervously, Pan Wu Yuan said, Yi, Mr. Yi, we can talk it out. Impulse is the devil. It's the devil. Yi Tian Su's lips curved into a sly smile. Congratulations, you got it right. I am the devil. With that, he delivered a fierce knee strike, hitting Pan Wu Yuan's right knee hard. Crack. Pan Wu Yuan's right knee instantly burst, bones and flesh separating, making a chilling sound. Ah! A heart wrenching scream echoed through the entire interrogation room. Yet Tian Ses' actions left the people around him dumbfounded. In a short period of time, he first defeated the vice captain of the martial arts action team, and then destroyed the knee of a captain. His courage and determination made people wonder if he had turned into a raging beast, or perhaps he really was the devil from the legends. Yet Tyants looked expressionless at Pan Wuyuan and coldly asked, Tell me, who made you deliberately frame me? Pan Wuyuan, tormented by intense pain. His face turned red, veins bulging on his forehead and muscles trembling uncontrollably all over his body. He gritted his teeth and said, No! No one instructed me. Yet Tyants responded indifferently. The next moment, he forcefully struck Pan Wuyuan's left knee again. With a cracking sound, the left knee twisted and deformed instantly, a sight that was shocking. Pan Wuyuan screamed in pain, almost fainting. Despite being a martial arts expert, he found it hard to endure such intense pain. Yet Tyants continued to ask coldly, I'll give you another chance, who instructed you? He firmly believed that Pan Wuyuan was manipulated by someone, as his attitude had been inconsistent when taking him back to the office. Moreover, the framing scheme was so crude, obviously done on impulse. There must be someone pulling the strings behind the scenes. 
Pan Wuyuan, panting heavily, sweating profusely, said, I, I beg you, please don't hurt me anymore. Trembling, he said, it's Rong Tianli, the second young master of the Rong family in the provincial capital, who asked me to do this. Yet Tiance was not surprised by this answer. After all, he had already defeated three guest officials and lackeys of Rong Tianli tonight, and left his son disabled. Rong Tianli would definitely seek revenge. However, yet Tiance still had doubts. Although the Rong family had a certain status in the province, as members of the martial arts action team, they should be loyal to the official authorities of the Dragon Empire. Why would they obey Rong Tianli's orders and risk framing someone? Once exposed, the consequences would be unimaginable. Pan Wuyuan replied, because I owed Rong Tianli a favor, I had no choice but to help him. Yet Tiance continued to inquire, what kind of favor is worth you doing this? His intuition told him that there was more to this than just a simple favor. Pan Wuyuan clenched his teeth and said, I, I can't say. He knew that revealing this would bring him more painful consequences than death. Yet Tiance sneered, not willing to talk, huh? Torturing people. That's what I'm best at. He took out a silver needle from his waist and accurately pierced Pan Wuyuan's crown, starting to exert his internal force. Suddenly, Pan Wuyuan felt a sharp pain and intense itching all over his body, as if being gnawed by millions of ants. This sensation was far more intense than the satisfaction he felt when Yi Tianxi broke both his knees just now. Pan Wuyuan's body convulsed, his face twisted in extreme pain his eyes bloodshot as if about to shoot fire. He let out a scream similar to a pig being slaughtered, full of terror, sending shivers down the spines of his subordinates. Although these subordinates were accustomed to interrogation work and considered themselves cruel, witnessing Pan Wuyuan's reaction made them realize the cruelty of Yi Tianxi's methods, which left them in disbelief. They were so frightened that not a single one dared to make a sound, quietly watching. Pan Wuyuan could only hold on for less than 10 seconds before he couldn't bear it anymore. Trembling, he said, I, I'll talk, I'll say everything, please spare me. Pan Wuyuan felt that he couldn't even last 10 seconds, far inferior to the criminals of Fallen City. Yi Tianxi removed the silver needle from Pan Wuyuan's head and coldly asked, Speak. Pan Wuyuan's body was still convulsing, his voice hoarse as he said, I'll talk, I'll talk here's what happened. He then went on to detail the sequence of events. It turned out that 12 years ago, Pan Wuyuan was just a member of the martial arts action team. During a mission, he was captured by the enemy and forced to disclose the mission plan, resulting in the ambush of the entire team, except for him. Once such an act of betrayal was discovered by the organization, the consequences were unimaginable. Fortunately, Rong Tianli appeared to help him, sending people to eliminate those criminals, and Pan Wuyuan ended up gaining merit. Since then, he had been doing some shady things for Rong Tianli, fearing exposure. So no matter what Rong Tianli asked him to do, he would agree unconditionally, including participating in the operation to assassinate Rong Tianhong and his wife. After hearing Pan Wuyuan's account, everyone present was shocked. They never expected Captain Pan, who appeared upright and just on the surface, to be so cunning and deceitful behind the scenes. Even Yi Tianxi furrowed his brow in response. Ten years ago, Rong Meiyan's parents were assassinated and Pan Wuyuan was involved? This discovery caught Yi Tianxi by surprise. However, in the moment of his hesitation, a flash of malice passed through Pan Wuyuan's eyes. Seizing the opportunity, he suddenly shouted, Seize the chance! With that, a bald man among his men rushed out, the same man who had previously investigated the Xiaojia family with Du Song. Without hesitation, he immediately raised his gun and aimed it at Yi Tianxi's temple, pulling the trigger. Bang! The gun went off. The bald man was extremely confident, standing less than five meters away from Yi Tianzi. While the latter was slightly distracted, he couldn't avoid the gun pointed at him. One shot could bring him down. However, what happened next left him dumbfounded. Just as the bullet was about to hit Yi Tianzi's temple, he quickly raised his right hand, extending his index and middle fingers, firmly catching the bullet. This scene was like something out of a movie, just like the fire cloud evil god catching a bullet with his fingers. How is this possible? 
Everyone present widened their eyes, as if there were thunder roaring in their minds, completely shocked. Being able to catch a bullet barehanded was beyond extraordinary in terms of reaction and strength. Even martial arts masters, even grandmasters, couldn't do it. Perhaps only legendary war god level experts could. Could it be that the man in front of them, named Yi Tianza, was a war god level expert? Realizing this, everyone felt uneasy. War god level experts were extremely rare, holding a special status in Longhua. Regular members of the martial arts task force were not qualified to arrest them. Only provincial deputy team leaders, team leaders, and a few top figures at the Longwa headquarters had that authority. The young man in front of them, who looked to be only 25 or 26 years old, might actually possess war god level strength, which was simply unbelievable. The bald man turned pale with fear, but then a hint of madness flashed in his eyes. He understood that things had escalated to a point of no return, and he had to take down Yi Tianza. He prepared to pull the trigger again. However, this time, Yi Tianza's speed was noticeably faster. With a casual flick, the bullet held by his two fingers turned into a streak of light, accurately hitting the bald man's forehead. The bald man was dumbfounded, falling to the ground in disbelief, his eyes wide as copper bells. Yi Tianza didn't spare him a glance, instead looking at the others and coldly saying, Who else wants to challenge me? The others all stepped back in fear, their minds reeling like a drum. Faced with war god level strength, where would they find the courage to try? How could such timid people join the martial arts task force? It was ironic. Yi Tianza sneered disdainfully, staring at Pan Wu Yuan, exerting a bit more force in his hand. He said, as a member of the martial arts task force, you have committed many treacherous and unjust acts and should be punished. Any last words? Pan Wuyuan gritted his teeth and said, The deputy team leader will be here soon. No matter how powerful you are, she won't let you get away with it. Yi Tianza raised an eyebrow slightly, showing a nonchalant expression. Just then, the sound of a motorcycle breaking outside could be heard. Immediately, a black figure flashed by, kicking through the window's iron railing and leaping into the interrogation room. The movement was smooth and domineering. Without any hesitation, Pan Wuyuan and his men were overjoyed. The deputy team leader is here. The Bloody Rose glanced around the interrogation room, everything under her control. After the shocking moment, anger ignited in the heart of bloodthirsty Rose. Who dares to cause trouble in the martial arts action team? Such blatant and arrogant behavior is intolerable. Yi Tianzi's figure was in front of her. She hadn't even had a chance to see his face clearly before quickly swinging her whip. Anger filled her mind as she thought, Go to hell! The whip, carrying the power to destroy everything, aimed directly at Yi Tianzi's back, as if to break him in half. However, before the whip could strike, Yi Tianza suddenly raised his hand and effortlessly caught it. How could this be possible? Bloodthirsty Rose's eyes trembled for a moment. She had put at least 60 to 70% of her strength into that whip, and ordinary martial arts experts would probably find it difficult to dodge, let alone an early stage master who would undoubtedly be seriously injured. To be caught so easily by the other party? However, as an experienced warrior, Bloodthirsty Rose's shock was only momentary, and she immediately rushed forward. She raised her long and powerful legs, aiming a fierce kick at the back of Yi Tianzi's head. Wearing a pair of black high-heeled leather boots, the heels were exceptionally sharp, and if they hit the back of the head, it would surely be a fatal blow. However, Yi Tianzi was faster. He threw Pan Wu into the ground, quickly turned around, and grabbed Bloodthirsty Rose's ankle. In an instant, the two were face to face. Yi Tianzi held Bloodthirsty Rose's whip in one hand and her ankle in the other, less than 30 centimeters apart. Leather jacket, leather pants, whip, high kick. These elements made their posture look somewhat awkward. Pan Wu Yuan, lying on the ground, saw Bloodthirsty Rose as if seeing his last hope. Enduring the intense pain in his legs, he hoarsely said, Deputy Team Leader, this guy killed Dusong seriously injured my subordinates, committed heinous crimes, and posed a great threat. Stop him now. Hearing this, 
Some of Pan Wuyuan's loyal subordinates echoed, Deputy Team Leader, you must avenge Pan's team and Du's team. We cannot tolerate such arrogant behavior. However, at this moment, bloodthirsty Rose seemed indifferent to the cries around her. Her eyes were slightly trembling, filled with shock and excitement. Is it really him? The man who had been haunting her thoughts for the past five years, he was actually here. This couldn't possibly be a dream. Yi Tianzi's lips curved into a smirk as he teased. Wearing high-heeled leather boots in the summer, don't you feel hot? As a beautiful woman, you should pay attention to hygiene, or else foot odor could be a big problem. Hearing this, Pan Wuyuan and others were all stunned. This guy is too brave, isn't he? In the martial arts action team, everyone knows that Blood Rose is extremely disdainful of men. Countless male colleagues have pursued her in the past, but as soon as they try to strike up a conversation, they end up beaten up all over, let alone flirting. Blood Rose is an absolute taboo that no one dares to touch. However, Yi Tiants dared to flirt with her? He's done for now. Even if he hadn't made a mistake before, the moment he flirted, he was doomed. Not even Jesus could save him. Everyone thought so. However, the following scene overturned their understanding. Because Blood Rose didn't get angry, instead, an unprecedented shy expression flashed on her stern face. Ah, even if my feet stink to high heaven, it will only be you who smells it. It'll stink you to death. Yi Tian smiled gently and said, Su Changwei, long time no see. Upon hearing this long lost greeting, Blood Rose's eyes were instantly filled with tears. She put down her right foot and whip, then threw herself into Yi Tian's arms, complaining with a choked voice, You bastard, do you know how hard it was for me to wait for you? I thought you had forgotten about me a long time ago. Bastard, if I had known it was you earlier, I would have whipped you to death just now. Oomph. Although her words were filled with complaints, the excitement and joy in her heart could not be hidden. At this moment, everyone in the interrogation room, including Pan Wuyuan, was stunned, shocked and at a loss for words. Hey, can someone tell us what's going on here? Pan Wuyuan's mouth trembled uncontrollably, feeling like his brain was no longer functioning properly. Wasn't Die Bloody Rose the most detestable towards men? Didn't she say that those who harassed her all met with a bad end? Then why did everything Yi Tianzi did turn out unscathed, and he even became popular? Wait a minute. Yi Tianzi just mentioned that it had been a long time since he last saw XV Quan Wei. Did he actually know the deputy leader's real name? Had they known each other for a long time? The intimacy between these two was far beyond the ordinary. Pan Wuyuan's heart sank, a sense of foreboding washing over him. Oh no. Things might get really bad. Just then, XV Quanwei broke free from Yi Tianzi's embrace, a rare blush appearing on her heroic face. She asked in confusion, What's going on? Why are you the one brought here? Yi Tianzi smiled and briefly summarized what had happened at the venue and waiting room tonight. XV Chuanwei's expression immediately turned serious, reverting to her usual seriousness and aloofness. A bunch of scoundrels. Her gaze fell on Pan Wuyuan, coldly questioning. As the highest authority of the Wudao Action Group in Jiangan City, do you not realize your abuse of power, violation of laws and regulations, and false accusations against him? Pan Wuyuan trembled all over, Deputy Leader. You? Please listen to my explanation. I did have some negligence. Please forgive me. Explain my foot. XV Quanwei cursed, kicking Pan Wuyuan hard on the chin. Bang! Pan Wuyuan was kicked to the ground, rolling and crawling hitting the door frame, his head bleeding. XV Chuanwei's eyes flashed with a cold light, murderous intent overflowing. Her beloved man had been maliciously framed by Pan Wuyuan using despicable means. Even though Yi Tianzi had not suffered physical harm, the mental trauma was not to be ignored. Feeling the killing intent emanating from XV Quanwei, Pan Wuyuan's face turned pale, scared out of his wits. Deputy Leader, Please listen to my explanation. I did make a mistake. But this guy named Yi forged the emblem of the fallen city. The facts are clear. You should know that such crimes not only lead to the death penalty, but once the fallen city finds out, our Wudao action group will be in an extremely passive situation. 
He thought mentioning the fallen city would calm 15 Quanwei down a bit, but he didn't expect her to kick Pan Wuyun's cheek again fiercely. Smack! Pan Wuyun's cheek caved in, blood oozing from the corner of his mouth, looking miserable. XV Quanwei said coldly, You foolish fool! Yi Tianzi is originally from the fallen city, and you actually wronged him for forging the emblem of the fallen city? Your deliberate framing should receive the appropriate punishment. With a loud bang, Pan Wuyuan felt like he had fallen into an ice cave. The other members present looked at each other in shock. Yi Tianzi was originally from the fallen city? The status and position there were beyond their imagination, surpassing their Wudao action group. My goodness, what kind of terrifying existence had they provoked? They had no doubt about 15 Xuanwei's words, for two reasons. Su Qiangwei is a straightforward and sharp woman. She never beats around the bush and never lies. It is rumored that she set foot in the Fallen City five years ago, a feat achieved by few in the entire Dragon Kingdom martial arts action group, so she definitely has more intelligence about the Fallen City than anyone else. Su Qiangwei looked down on Pan Wuyuan. She declared, Your position as the head of the martial arts action group in Jiangnan City is hereby revoked. The organization will investigate all the crimes you have committed over the years. With a loud bang, Pan Wuyuan seemed to be struck by lightning and trembled all over. Dragging his already useless legs, he crawled in front of Su Qiangwei, choking and begging for mercy. Vice Captain, please, spare me for the hard work I've put in over the years, just this once. With a bang, Su Qiangwei didn't even look at him. She kicked him away directly. Someone, take him to the underground interrogation room. I will personally question him. Several people quickly came forward, dragging Pan Wuyuan away as if dealing with a dead dog. Su Qiangwei scanned the remaining people in the waiting room with a glance. All of you get out, I'll settle the score later. The remaining people were scared and quickly left. In the room, only Yi Tianzi and Su Qiangwei were left. Su Qiangwei closed the door, turned to look at Yi Tianzi, staring at him intently, without blinking. Yi Tianzi felt a bit creepy. Just say what you want to say. It's strange that you're staring at me like this. Su Qiangwei sighed and said, It's been five years. Things have changed. I didn't expect you to be married already. That's why you never looked for me. She smiled and said, Maybe you're already a dad? That's why you wanted to forget about me completely. Just now, during the search of Pan Wu Yuan, she learned that Yi Tianzi had actually been married. Most of her anger was vented on Pan Wu Yuan at the time, so she temporarily put this matter aside. Now that she had calmed down a bit, she naturally remembered it. Yi Tianzi was speechless. Marriage is true, but I got divorced a while ago. Su Qiangwei widened her eyes and asked excitedly, Really? Tell me what happened. Yi Tianzi didn't hide anything, briefly recounting the marriage with Xiao Qingcheng after returning to Jiangan City three years ago. After listening, Su Qiangwei waved her fist excitedly. That's great. Yi Tianzi helplessly rolled his eyes. I was the one who got divorced. After three years of a sexless marriage, and you're happy? A hint of joy flashed in Su Qiangwei's eyes as she patted Yi Tianzi's shoulder. I'm happy that you got rid of a foolish wife, who won't hold you back anymore. As for the three years of sexless marriage, that's just a minor matter. If you're feeling frustrated, feel free to vent. Although I haven't seen your ex-wife, my figure and looks should be enough, right? She straightened her chest, displaying her well-proportioned figure, dressed in black leather jacket and pants, exuding a wild and commanding beauty. Su Qiangwei shook her long red wavy hair. Five years ago, Su Qiangwei jokingly said that if they were still single in five years, they could consider being together. Now, Su Qiangwei is alone, and Yi Tianz is still on his own. Perhaps driven by emotions, Su Qiangwei suddenly became bold. Without hesitation, she unzipped her leather jacket to reveal a black sports tank top. Even though tightly wrapped, the contours still showed her amazing 36 D cup size. The charm of a D cup is irresistible. The next moment, Su Qiangwei pushed Yi Tianz without hesitation making him sit on the chair. She bravely straddled his legs, close to him. A hint of shyness appeared on her striking face, her slightly parted lips revealing a hint of confusion. I've never tried anything like this before. Can you teach me? Yi felt a bit awkward, 
as if he was back to the moment when he taught her martial arts. Su Qiangwei is tall, standing at a height of 175 centimeters. When she sat on Yi Tianxi's lap, she was even taller than him, with her chest almost pressing against his cheek. This bold and ambiguous move made Yi Tianxi unable to help but swallow hard. Moreover, Su Qiangwei was wearing leather jacket and pants, exuding a special allure a scenario rarely seen even in Japanese romantic movies. Su Qiangwei gently swayed her hips and provocatively said, Hurry up! Don't tell me you're still a virgin, inexperienced. The soft yet firm touch almost made Yi Tianxi unable to contain the surge in his heart. He awkwardly coughed and said, Ahem, I do lack experience. Upon hearing this response, excitement sparkled in Su Qiangwei's eyes. You're still a virgin? That's great. I'll explore with you. Why don't you find a video, and we can learn together? Don't worry, no one dares to disturb us without my permission. With that, she reached out to undo Yi Tianxi's belt, swift as a cat spotting a fish bone. Wait. Stop. Yi Tianxi quickly grabbed Su Qiangwei's cold hand and intervened. Su Qiangwei furrowed her brows slightly, somewhat displeased. What's wrong? Don't you want to do this with me? Or do you think I don't meet your standards in figure and appearance? Not up to your level. Yi Tianxi shook his head and said, That's not what I mean. It's just that. You seem a bit different, a bit strange now. Upon hearing this, Su Qiangwei narrowed her eyes slightly. What do you mean? I don't quite understand. Yi Tianxi raised his head slightly, gazing directly at her, and asked seriously, Do you remember how we met, five years ago? Su Qiangwei's eyes flashed with a hint of recollection, nodding as she spoke. How could I forget? Five years ago, I was still an intern with the martial arts action team, on a secret mission, patrolling in a helicopter over the Pacific Ocean. Unexpectedly, we were attacked, and the helicopter crashed into the sea. I was the only survivor, drifting for three days and nights. You found me while swimming in the Pacific and brought me back to the fallen city where we spent seven days. As she spoke, a tinge of nostalgia colored her expression. During those seven days, I could only move around the outskirts of the fallen city, but being able to see the most dangerous and mysterious prison in the world made it an unforgettable experience for me. What's even more unforgettable is that during that time, I asked you to guide me in martial arts. I had just turned 18 at the time, and although I had seen many geniuses, you were the most outstanding young person I had ever met. Not only were you exceptionally handsome and skilled in martial arts, but you were also a guard in the fallen city, especially filial. Your master was always drunk and lecherous, with no skills to speak of, yet you showed great respect. So, from that moment on, I fell for you and made up my mind to be your partner. If your master hadn't been watching us at the time, I would have been with you long ago. Lastly, when we parted ways, I said if we were both single in five years, we should get together, and I wasn't joking. Listening to Su Qiangwei's recollection, Yi Tianxi also reminisced about the past. However, there were a few details that Su Qiangwei was still unaware of. At that time, he was already the junior city lord of the fallen city, a fact he had not revealed to Xu Qiangwei. She had always thought he was just an ordinary prison guard. Additionally, his master seemed unremarkable and unskilled, but was actually a very mysterious person. Even Yatayants knew very little about this master. Xu Qiangwei looked at Yatayants, puzzled, and asked, Why are you suddenly asking me this? What do you mean? Yatayants scratched his head, smiling bitterly, and said, Since you remember so clearly, you should know that five years ago, although you had a bit of a stubborn temper, you also had a gentle side. You always showed great respect towards me, giving off a neighbor girl vibe. How come in just five years, you've been disrespectful towards me, and your whole demeanor? Xu Qiangwei coldly self-deprecated, haha, suddenly becoming rough and losing my femininity, do you dislike me now? Yatayants immediately shook his head and said, I don't mean that. Xu Qiangwei said displeased, yes, you do. I know how I look now, not very likable, rough fierce, and lacking femininity. If you dislike me, just say it. I've anticipated it. As she was about to leave, Yatayans stopped her. He earnestly said, you've misunderstood. I don't dislike you. 
My intuition tells me that you must have gone through a lot in these five years to become the way you are now. I don't mind the fierceness and roughness on you. Don't forget, it was you who asked me to give you a domineering nickname when we parted ways, Bloodthirsty Rose, a name I came up with. If you trust me, tell me, what have you been through these years? Hearing this, Xu Qiangwei's beautiful eyes trembled slightly. So that's what he meant. Her heart felt warm yet lonely. As yet Tians had guessed, she had indeed experienced a life-changing event. Taking a deep breath, she began to tell her story. After leaving the fallen city and returning, under Ye Tian Ses guidance in martial arts, Xu Qiangwei's strength rapidly improved, excelling in missions. Soon, she was promoted from an intern to a full member of the martial arts action group and quickly became a role model for many younger members, including her own younger sister. To follow in Xu Qiangwei's footsteps, her sister also joined the martial arts action group. Beautiful and skilled in martial arts, she was considered Xu Qiangwei's successor. However, four years ago, an accident occurred. Xu Qiangwei's sister was ambushed and captured by a hostile organization during a mission. By the time Xu Qiangwei rushed to the scene upon receiving the news, her sister had already suffered the most despicable abuse by the enemy, who had long gone. Although her sister survived, she became mentally disturbed and chose to end her life by jumping off a building just half a month later. As she recounted this, tears uncontrollably streamed down Xu Qiangwei's face, blaming herself. The mission should have been mine, but my sister insisted because she saw how tired I was. If I had persisted, perhaps this wouldn't have happened. It's all my fault, all my fault. Yet Tian sighed, not expecting Xu Qiangwei to have experienced such a tragedy. Her hatred made her cold and ruthless, especially towards male criminals. Xu Qiangwei bit her lip tightly and said firmly, From that moment on, my only goal has been to avenge my sister. For this, I have been continuously practicing, forcing myself to become stronger. The outward femininity and sensuality have no meaning to me. I only want to become more ruthless and decisive. She recalled the efforts she had made over the years to find information about that organization, regretfully saying, Unfortunately, I have not yet found those few criminals who once hurt my sister. I am sorry, sister. Yet Tiance comforted her softly. Take care, you have done your best. Xu Qiangwei wiped away her tears and said firmly, It's not enough. I will definitely find them and make them pay for what they did. Yet Tiance looked at her and asked seriously, but are you sure your body can hold up until that day? Upon hearing these words, Xu Qiangwei was overwhelmed by a mix of emotions. She felt puzzled and uneasy about what Ye Tiance had said, yet couldn't completely deny it. Ye Tiance firmly held her ice-cold wrist and pointed out with a serious expression, despite your healthy appearance, your body is actually harboring serious issues. Xu Qiangwei tried to pull her hand away, claiming that everything was fine and there was no need to worry. However, yet Tiance bluntly exposed her excessive pursuit of power, experimentation with forbidden substances, and the potential serious consequences of these actions. Xu Qiangwei was shocked to hear this. How could yet Tiance know these things? Yet Tiance explained that he could sense the abnormal growth in Xu Qiangwei's strength, a change that couldn't be explained by talent or hard work. Xu Qiangwei tried to argue back. But yet Tiance insisted that the fact she had taken forbidden substances was undeniable. A surge of anger rose within Xu Qiangwei, yet she couldn't deny Ye Tiance's deduction. Ye Tiance continued to point out that the toxins in Xu Qiangwei's body were difficult to remove, posing a threat to her life. Xu Qiangwei sighed, acknowledging her body's issues long ago but unable to find a solution. She confessed her mistakes to Ye Tiance and expressed regret and reluctance for the future. Xu Qiangwei resolutely decided to leave her most precious possession to Ye Tiance, showing a courageous unwillingness to accept defeat. Without hesitation, she tore her vest apart, revealing her captivating figure, capturing Ye Tiance's attention and stirring his heart. In that moment, the atmosphere between them became subtly tense, Xu Qiangwei's action causing Ye Tiance's heart to race, as he couldn't help but marvel at this beautiful yet dangerous love. Su Qiangwei bravely faced Su Qiangwei's accusations and firmly stated that she volunteered and didn't care about titles. She knew her life was only left with a month, despair evident in her words, but she decided to make the most of the limited time. Yi Tianza, 
feeling a pang in his heart, couldn't help but sigh. Who said you were beyond saving? I have a way to restore your health and live a more fulfilling life. Su Xiangwei's eyes sparkled with hope as she asked excitedly, Really? She knew that as long as there was a glimmer of hope, who would easily give up? Yi Tianzi nodded solemnly, Of course it's true, but you need to tell me what forbidden drugs you've been taking. Su Xiangwei took out a yellow bottle from her pocket and poured out a red pill. She explained, I bought this from the black market, one pill a day, said to greatly assist in martial arts cultivation. Yi Tianzi sniffed the pill, a worried expression on his face. He pointed out, these drugs contain highly toxic ingredients like black dark grass and red shoe beetle, and are addictive, leading to toxin accumulation in the body. What you're doing is too risky, even for revenge, you shouldn't ruin your future. It's all harm and no benefit to your body. Su Qiangwei felt a bit ashamed after hearing this, but also warm inside because she knew Yi Tianzi cared for her. Yi Tianzi said he would first use acupuncture to control the toxins and then find an antidote. He began to needle Su Qiangwei, who obediently cooperated. Despite mischievously suggesting taking off her pants for easier operation, she eventually followed Yi Tianzi's advice. Yi Tianzi focused on needling, adjusting his state, undisturbed by external distractions. In the upper circles of the entire Jiangnan city, Yi Tianzi's actions stirred up a storm, with everyone waiting for his results, whether friend or foe. In the Lin family's mansion, discussions were heated and the atmosphere tense. Apart from the Lin family members, the Han family of three, Rong Meiyin, Master Xiaoping, Director Wu Xingya, and others were all present. Each of them looked worried because they had been trying their best to save Yi Tianzi, but to no avail. What's even more concerning is that not long ago, they learned that the Xiao family of three had been taken away by the members of the martial arts action team, claiming to have found drugs, which seemed to be related to Yi Tianzi. The most worrying news was that it was reported that the Blood Rose had already arrived at the martial arts action team office in Jiangnan City, and the situation inside was completely unknown. Suddenly, Han Ruayun stood up and walked straight towards the door. Han Tianzhong was stunned and asked, Yun Yun, what are you going to do? Han Ruayun bit her lip and said firmly, I'm going to rush into the office, find that blood rose, and even if I can't save Yi Tianxi, I'm willing to live and die with him. Li Ziyasin's face instantly turned pale. She quickly stood up and advised, Yun Yun, you must not act impulsively. That is the martial arts action department. Forcibly entering is a criminal act, and no one will be able to save you then. However, Han Ruayin firmly responded, I don't care, anyway. My life was saved by Yi Tianzi, and he is also my grandfather's arranged fiancé. No matter what, I will not stand by. If he can't survive, my life will lose its meaning. Hearing her daughter's resolute statement, Li Ziyasin couldn't help but tremble in her heart. She originally knew that Han Ruayan had feelings for Yi Tianzi, but she didn't expect this affection to be so deep. Since the last time Rong Zidong caused trouble at the Han family, her view of Yi Tianzi has also changed, supporting her daughter to be with Yi Tianzi. However, as a mother, she did not want to see Han Ruayan put her life in danger because of this. Just as she was about to continue persuading, Rong Meiyin also stood up, her eyes flashing with determination. I am willing to accompany Miss Han to go. No matter what the cost, we will beg the blood rose to spare Yi Tianzi's life. Han Ruoyin looked at Rong Meiyin with deep emotion and nodded, saying, Okay, let's act together. At this moment, Lin Xiaoyang raised her hand softly and said, How about? I also go. Han Ruoyun and Rong Meiyin glanced at each other, revealing a hint of surprise and wariness in their eyes. They were puzzled. Our relationship with Yi Tianzi is deep, why are you joining in the excitement? Lin Xiaoyang seemed to sense their doubts and explained, Although I don't think highly of Yi Tianzi, he once saved my grandfather and me. I don't like to owe favors, so I want to take this opportunity to repay the debt. Han Ruoyan hesitated slightly, but finally nodded in agreement. Okay, Yang Yang, let's go together. Just as the three of them were about to leave, an old voice sounded, Wait. How can the task of rescuing Dr. Yi be entrusted to you three young people to take risks? I am not dead yet. Everyone immediately looked towards Lin Yuanxuan, who was walking down the stairs with a cane. Han Ruayun turned to Lin Yuanxuan, looking at him in surprise. 
Not long after Yi Tianzi encountered an accident, Lin Yuanxuan learned about it and had been contacting his connections upstairs. Lin Wanda, Han Tianjing, Xiaoping, Wu Xingya and others all stood up, anxiously watching Lin Yuanxuan. Lin Wanda asked, Dad, any news? Lin Yuanxuan nodded. I just contacted an old comrade in arms, who happens to be the uncle of the captain of the Martial Arts Action Department in Tianan Province. After learning about this, he immediately contacted his nephew, who promised to assist in handling this matter. Everyone was delighted to hear this news, secretly amazed. Lin Yuanxuan could actually directly contact the captain of the Martial Arts Action Department in Tianan Province? Truly the strategist of the Lin family, still dominating the scene. However, Lin Yuanxuan's expression remained serious. He added, however, according to the captain, if the other two deputy captains arrive in Jiangnan City tonight, he is also 100% confident in resolving this matter. However, Blood Rose was only half convinced. Known for her rebellious and wild nature, sometimes she wouldn't even back down even if the leader spoke. Rong Meiyu said, Grandpa Lin, having some assurance is already good enough. I hope Blood Rose can be more rational and not cause trouble for Mr. Yi. Lin Yuanxuan nodded in agreement and suggested going to the martial arts action team office together. Although they didn't plan to force their way in, they believed that strength in numbers might increase the chance of persuading Blood Rose to spare Dr. Yi. Everyone agreed to follow Grandpa Lin's arrangement. Let's go. We're setting off. Han Ruayun clenched her fists tightly, unable to hide her anxious expression. She silently prayed in her heart, Yi Tianche, please be safe and hold on. As long as you return safely, I promise to let you enjoy the joy of victory to the fullest. Meanwhile, in a coffee shop, Lu Ruyin met with Murong Fan to ask for his help in rescuing the Xiao family. After the Xiao family was searched, Lu Ruyin was not taken away. She urgently contacted the family for help but was refused. Helpless, she turned to Murong Fan. Considering that Morong Fan's father was the vice president of the Four Seas Chamber of Commerce in Jiangnan City, she thought she could leverage his connections. After describing the situation in detail, Morong Fan was shocked by the unexpected turn of events tonight. This Yi Tianche was so reckless, jeopardizing everything just because Qing Qing asked for a divorce. Anxiously, Lu Ruyin said, Senior Morong, please save Qing Qing. I heard that the martial arts action team is very cruel to prisoners, and Qingqing Qing is innocent. Morong Fan reassured her, You've come to the right person. I know Vice Captain Du Song from the Four Seas Chamber of Commerce. I will contact him to help Qing Chung and her family get out of trouble. Excitedly, Lu Ruyin said, Senior Morong, you are amazing. It's nothing. But after this is over, I hope you can put in a good word for me in front of Qingqing. Qing. I have always admired her. That's why I helped her with the loan before. Lu Ruyin reluctantly agreed. Morong Fan picked up his phone to make a call, but no one answered. Frowning, he suggested going to the martial arts action team office in person to solve the problem with Captain Du. Lu Ruyin nodded in agreement and quickly set off to resolve the dilemma. At this moment, in a moving black Bentley, two people were sitting inside. One of them was wearing a white suit, looking slightly weary. It was the early stage Grandmaster bodyguard who was previously kicked by Yi Tianche in the VIP room at the Cloud Summit Hotel. Sitting in the back seat, Lu Yinji wore a black evening gown, looking cold and glamorous. The white suited bodyguard curiously asked, Miss, it's late. Are you going to the martial arts action group office? Are you trying to help him? He is our opponent. Lu Yinji's lips slightly curled up, mysteriously replied, who said I'm going to help him? I just want to see how he can turn the tables in a desperate situation. The white-suited man furrowed his brows and reminded, the martial arts action group is an official force. Even our Lu family dare not easily provoke them. Although that kid is extraordinary, it's not certain that he can turn the tables, especially with the Scarlet Rose personally involved this time. The situation is even more bleak. Lu Yinji looked out the window indifferently, her eyes flashing with a hint of contemplation. It seemed like she was pondering over something. In the waiting room of the Martial Arts Action Division office in Jiangnan Province, Yi Tianzi finally removed the last silver needle from Su Changwei's body. Wiping the sweat off his forehead, he breathed a sigh of relief. The toxins had been successfully suppressed, 
and there would be no problems for at least half a year. However, he reminded Su Chiang Wei not to take that forbidden pill again to enhance her strength, as there are many other ways to do so. Yi Tianzi was explaining in detail when he noticed Su Chiang Wei looking at him with a strange look in her eyes. It was not the usual domineering and fierce gaze, but rather with a hint of tenderness. Perplexed, Yi Tianzi asked, Um, what's wrong with you? Suddenly, Su Chiang Wei stood up from her seat, half naked facing Yi Tianzi. She said, You saved my life five years ago, and today you saved me again. I can never repay your kindness so I can only give you my life. So, do you want me now? With that, Su Chiangwei grabbed Yi Tianzi's hand and placed it on her chest. Yi Tianzi was stunned. Although he had already seen her upper body while performing acupuncture on her, and even had some accidental physical contact, his focus was solely on the treatment at that time and didn't think much of it. However, now that the treatment was done, feeling the softness and warmth transmitted through his palm, Yi Tianzi couldn't help but feel a ripple in his heart. This almost intimate touch was a first for him, coupled with the fact that the other party had a 36D figure that his hand could not completely wrap around. It made him feel unusually comfortable. Su Qiangwei's eyes flashed with mischief as she held Yi Tianzi's hand and gently squeezed it. Blushing, with a look of tenderness in her eyes, she asked, How does it feel? Do you want to go further? As a hot-blooded man, Yi Tianzi already had a good impression of Su Qiangwei. Moreover, her figure and appearance were impeccable, prompting him to take the initiative. If he were to retreat now, he would probably regret it for the rest of his life. Breathing heavily, he nodded. He he, that's about enough. Su Qiangwei's gaze shifted to between Yi Tianzi's legs, only to find his brother already standing at attention. With trembling eyes and a slight quiver in her voice, she said, I've long wanted to see what your country's protected bird looks like. As she reached out to undo Yi Tianzi's belt, he was already prepared. Tonight, he had decided to completely unleash himself, ending his 26 years of single life. However, just then, the phone suddenly rang. Yi Tianzi furrowed his brow, thinking who would make such an annoying call at this critical moment? Don't they know it could delay things? Just then, Su Qiangwei took out her phone glanced at the caller ID, and furrowed her brow, saying, it's the team leader calling. Urgently, Yi Tianzi said, hang up, we can call back later. But Su Qiangwei said, the team leader doesn't usually call me, so it must be urgent at this time. Wait for me a minute, it'll be quick. She answered the call, listening to the team leader's voice on the line. However, Yi Tianzi was too preoccupied to pay attention to the conversation between the team leader and Su Qiangwei feeling extremely anxious. The subconscious tightening of her right hand brought a hint of strength. Suddenly, Su Qiangwei couldn't help but let out a scream. She immediately realized she had lost control and quickly closed her lips. A blush spread across her cheeks as she gave a warning look to Yi Tianzi, indicating he should behave. Yi Tianzi helplessly smiled, indicating that it was not intentional. The team leader on the phone seemed to sense something was wrong and asked with concern, Chiang Wei, is everything okay on your end? No, nothing, just accidentally stepped on a cockroach. A cockroach? You're afraid of cockroaches too? How is that possible? Are you sure everything's okay? Su Chiang Wei replied impatiently, stop the nonsense, get to the point. Okay. The team leader, accustomed to Su Chiang Wei's attitude, continued, anyway, I need you to cooperate, let go of that guy named Yi Tianzi, even if it's for my sake, don't be too stubborn, okay? Su Qiangwei coldly said, Anyone who doesn't want to let go of Yi Tianzi, I'll fight them. The team leader looked puzzled, unable to understand. Su Qiangwei impatiently said, All right, I have things to do. I'm hanging up. After the beep from the phone, she awkwardly looked at Yi Tianzi and said, Sorry for wasting your time. Let's continue. With that, she reached out to search Yi Tianzi's pockets again. However, an accident occurred. There was a sudden, urgent knocking on the door. Yi Tianzi frowned, puzzled, and said, What's going on now? Trying to scare someone to impotence? Su Qiangwei also scolded impatiently. Who's knocking on the door? Don't they know I'm busy with important matters? A trembling voice outside the door said, Vice team leader. There? There's a major incident? What major incident? 
The voice outside answered, Just now, Pan, Pan will you and bit his tongue and committed suicide in the interrogation room. What? Yi Tianzi and Su Qiangwei were both shocked. Su Qiangwei frowned and said, Something's not right, I need to go see. She stood up, casually put on a black leather jacket, zipped it up. Suddenly, she remembered something, took out an envelope from the jacket pocket, and handed it to Yi Tianzi. This is what your master gave me years ago. He said if I had the chance to see you, I should pass it on to you. I haven't read it. Here you go. With that, she hurriedly left the waiting room, leaving behind a helpless Yi Tianzi. He had come to find Su Qiangwei, not for anything else. It had been five years since the master left the fallen city with Su Qiangwei at that time. The master said he would leave once he settled Su Qiangwei, but he would leave something behind to be retrieved from Su Qiangwei when the opportunity arose. Unexpectedly, Yi Tianzi found himself holding a letter in his hand. As he grasped the envelope, a sense of curiosity and anticipation welled up inside him. Without hesitation, he eagerly tore open the layer of parchment, as if he were opening the door to a whole new world. The envelope contained a letter written by Master himself. Yi Tianzi read it carefully, feeling the unique care and advice from his master. My foolish disciple, by the time you read this letter, we have been apart for five years. Have you found your own little disciples by now? The nine marriage proposals I left for you. Each one is a beauty waiting for you to cherish. However, I know that when you return to Jiangnan City, you may fulfill the marriage arranged by your grandfather and forget about the nine marriage contracts I gave you. Indeed, you are a straightforward fellow. Yi Tianzi felt his master's words striking deep into his heart, continuing to read with a hint of guilt. I have long anticipated that your destiny with the woman surnamed Xiao is not compatible, and the marriage is destined to be short-lived. Three years later, you will embark on a wider world of life. Your talent determines that you will have more than one partner, to take or not to take, no need to waste. Just like bullets in a clip, if all wasted, wouldn't it be a pity? Yi Tianzi couldn't help but smile bitterly, admiring his master's precise predictions. Although he didn't want to waste the bullets, he had yet to find an opportunity to hit the shooting range. In terms of women, I have two pieces of advice for you to remember. First, you must accept all nine marriage proposals, they are crucial for your future and also the will of heavens. Secondly, besides these nine fiancés, if you encounter a good girl who truly cares for you, do not disappoint her. For example, Miss Sue is a good choice, you should consider it carefully. Yi Tianzi furrowed his brows, feeling a bit troubled by the tasks left by his master. Did he really have to accept nine fiancés? Was there a hidden mystery behind this? Yi Tianzi hesitated as he continued reading. The second advice is, if you meet a woman named Lu Yinji in Jiangnan City, do not engage in any physical relationship, the consequences are unimaginable. Mentioning Lu Yinji, Yi Tianzi couldn't help but feel a sense of mystery and curiosity. Her beauty and aloofness made him feel awe, but he would never easily indulge himself. How did Master know about this woman? Yi Tianzi speculated secretly, could she have an extraordinary identity? Furthermore, Master also assigned two tasks that must be completed. Firstly, go to the mountaintop of Tiger Dragon Mountain on the night of the full moon of the 15th of July. An important mission awaits you there. Secondly, collect some wonderful Love War films, preferably locally made, to watch together after Master is done with his current tasks. Remember to keep your identity in the City of Vice before accepting the nine fiancés. Yi Tianzi felt a mix of emotions, Master's advice and care made him feel warm. It seemed that even in old age, Master's love for movies remained undiminished, which made Yi Tianzi chuckle. Master's letter left Yi Tianzi with a myriad of thoughts, and he decided to take his Master's instructions seriously, step by step exploring the mysteries and missions within. Hujiao Mountain is a steep and high mountain near the provincial capital, known for its rugged terrain. With less than half a month left until July 15th, Yi Tianzi was a bit puzzled, not quite understanding why his master sent him to Hujiao Mountain. As he was pondering, the door of the waiting room was pushed open, and Su Qiangwei walked in looking displeased. He actually committed suicide, causing me to miss the opportunity to interrogate him in person. Yi Tianzi teased, if he had fallen into your hands for questioning, 
Maybe he would have chosen suicide faster to avoid suffering. Hemph. Su Changwei gave him a glare and said seriously, Years of experience in the task force tells me that there must be hidden motives behind Pan Wuyuan's suicide. You mentioned his close relationship with Rong Tianli from the Rong family, right? Betraying the organization and harming teammates is not unheard of. I suspect that there may be similar individuals within the task force, maybe even a group, with Pan Wuyuan just being a small role. Yi Tianxi was not surprised and calmly said, Humans are social animals, social relationships are indispensable, and hierarchical structures are inevitable. Once someone gains power, it's easy to lose oneself. Even for martial arts masters, it's normal. Su Xiangwei gritted her teeth. I don't care about that. As long as there are traitors in the martial arts task force, I have a duty to eliminate them. What concerns me the most is that when I had my subordinates investigate Pan Wuyuan's actions and connections over the years, they found that four years ago he suddenly disappeared for a period of time. And during that time, it coincided with the mysterious organization's attack on my sister. Yi Tianxi raised an eyebrow slightly. Are you saying that Pan Wuyuan may be related to your sister's ordeal? Su Changwei said seriously. I can't be sure, but my intuition tells me that even though Pan Wuyuan is dead, he still harbors many secrets. I suspect his suicide may have been forced. So I plan to immediately take his body back to the provincial capital for an autopsy and report to the leadership to launch an investigation. Yi Tianxi felt a bit regretful. He almost made a move just now, but didn't expect Su Changwei to leave so soon. Looking at Yi Tianxi's expression, Su Changwei suddenly approached and kissed him on the cheek. With a slightly red face, she said, Don't worry, I won't go back on my word. Our matter will be resolved sooner or later. After I finish my busy schedule, I'll come find you again. Remember to prepare teaching videos in advance. I want to study hard. Yi Tianji not. I'll rikt. Su Changwei seemed to remember something. By the way, your ex-wife and her family of three were brought in for questioning. They are unrelated to the case and can be released. But your mother-in-law and younger brother-in-law committed perjury, although under duress. According to regulations, they still need to be detained for a day for education. Yi Tianxi frowned. Can't they be detained for a few more days? It's best to keep them in jail until they're old. I find them really annoying. Su Xiangwei was momentarily puzzled, not understanding how much suffering Yi Tianxi had endured in the Xiao family over the past three years to harbor such hatred towards his mother-in-law and younger brother-in-law. But it didn't matter, meaning that Yi Tianxi could never return to the Xiao family, but she saw another opportunity waiting for her. She firmly expressed that although she was willing to make sacrifices for the other party, as a member of the martial arts action team, she would never treat ordinary people lightly, which was a bottom line she would never cross, hoping the other party could understand. Yi Tianxi smiled and said, Of course I understand. If all members of the action team could have your foresight, it would be even better. Well, you hurry to the provincial capital. During this time, I will help you find those rare herbs to detoxify your body, hoping to completely help you detoxify next time we meet. Su Xiangwei nodded with red eyes and said, Yes. Thank you. I will wait for the next meeting and I will also strive to become a lady, so that you will be fascinated by me and we can stage a wonderful duel together. After saying this, she swayed her hips and left. Yi Tianxi held her chin and muttered softly, How can 300 rounds be enough? It would be perfect to have 3,000 rounds. After Su Xiangwei left, Yi Tianxi casually picked up the golden token on the table silently grateful that the woman did not realize his identity in the fallen city. Speaking softly to himself, he walked out of the waiting room. Just a few steps out, he encountered a round-faced middle-aged man in the uniform of the Jiangan City Martial Arts Action Team, showing both fear and flattery towards Yi Tianxi. Mr. Yi, I am Zheng Chun, the deputy captain of the Martial Arts Action Team in Jiangan City. I apologize on behalf of the team for what happened just now. Yi Tianxi glanced at him, and Zhang Chun quickly explained that he had been on an external mission and was not very familiar with the internal affairs of the team. Admiring Yi Tianxi's talent and strength, Zhang Chun was both impressed and excited. In his mind, Yi Tianxi thought, doesn't Zhang Chun feel embarrassed to be so proactive in flattering me? However, Zhang Chun continued to smile, feeling happy. He had long been suppressed within the martial arts action team, 
burdened with various heavy tasks and often made the scapegoat. But tonight's incident gave him a glimmer of hope, with Yi Tianxi's appearance becoming a turning point. Learning of the extraordinary relationship between Deputy Leader Dai Blood Su Qiangwei and Yi Tianxi, he became even more eager to befriend this influential figure. Perhaps through this relationship, he could have the opportunity to rise to the leader of the martial arts action team. Thinking this, Zhang Qin humbly invited Yi Tianxi to the office for tea, but Yi Tianxi politely declined, saying he had urgent matters to attend to. As Zhang Qin bid farewell to Yi Tianxi, he mentioned that Yi Tianxi could seek him out for any future needs. Yi Tianxi took the business card, thinking it might be useful in the future. After Zhang Qin saw Yi Tianxi off, the door opened again, and Xiao Qingcheng staggered out. She cast an unexpected look at Yi Tianxi, with a hint of worry in her eyes. Xiao Qingcheng had been locked in the interrogation room, hearing gunshots and fighting outside, thinking that Yi Tianxi had been killed. To her surprise, she received a notice stating that the incident was a misunderstanding and had nothing to do with her. Although she could leave, her mother and brother still needed to undergo further criticism and education. Upon coming out, she was astonished to find Yi Tianxi unharmed. This left her feeling confused and unsure of what to do. Yi Tianxi noticed the slight swelling on Xiao Qingqing's cheek, causing a sense of concern to well up within him. Looking back, Du Song once tried to force Xiao Qingqing to sign and expose Yi Tian's crimes, but Xiao Qingcheng resolutely refused and ended up being slapped a few times. That scene is still vivid in my mind. Yi Tian's wanted to express his gratitude, but Xiao Qingqing preempted him and said, Yi Tian's, I'm glad you were released, but I hope you will keep a low profile in the future and avoid trouble, despite not understanding Yi Tian's lucky escape tonight. Xiao Qingqing warned, The future may not always be so lucky. So be careful and don't cause trouble for the Xiao family. Hearing this, Zhang Chun felt awkward, realizing that this tumultuous scene was not where he belonged. So he quietly said to Yi Tianz, Mr. Yi, I have something to attend to, so I'll take my leave. With that, he hastily departed. Yi Tianz looked at Xiao Qingcheng, intending to ask if her cheek hurt after being slapped, but her words stung his heart, making him feel like maybe he deserved more slaps. He calmly said, I don't need your interference in my actions. If you're worried about implications, hurry up and urge the Civil Affairs Bureau to speed up the divorce proceedings to completely sever our relationship instead of just complaining. Xiao Qingcheng was stunned by the counterattack. Her advice had clearly come from caring for Yi Tianz, but she didn't expect such a response. She felt deeply disappointed. Biting her lip, she said, I will urge the Civil Affairs Bureau to expedite the divorce proceedings. Just then, Morong Fan and Lu Ruyin approached. Lu Ruyin quickly grabbed Xiao Qingqing's hand, seeing her swollen cheek, and anxiously asked, Did you get hit? What happened? Xiao Qingqing shook her head and said, It's nothing. Why are you two together? Lu Ruyin explained, After you were taken away, I thought Senior Morong could help, but then you were released. What happened? Xiao Qingqing replied, I'm not sure either. I was just told it had nothing to do with me, and then I was released. At that moment, Morong Fan smirked and said, Of course, it's thanks to my efforts. Xiao Qingqing and Lu Ruyin were both puzzled. Lu Ruyin asked in confusion, Senior, didn't you say you couldn't reach Du Song before? How did? Morong Fan explained, I sent him a text on the way, asking him to help release Qingqing. He must have seen it. Lu Ruyin praised, Senior Morong, you're truly amazing. Xiao Qingqing felt excited and said to Yi Tianza, Thank you. Yi Tianza smiled and replied, Hey, it's no big deal. Morong Fan looked at them, feeling proud and content in this moment. Suddenly, Yi Tianza shook his head with a cold smile, surprising Morong Fan. Morong Fan immediately said discontentedly, What are you laughing at? I just asked Du Dui to let Qingqing go. I didn't expect you to follow her out. Do you believe I can call Du Dui now and have him arrest you again? Yi Tianza calmly replied, Feel free to make the call, but I'm afraid that Du Song won't be able to answer it. Morong Fan asked in confusion, Why wouldn't he be able to answer? Yi Tianza smirked and said, Because he's already gone to meet the King of Hell, and he died by my hands. Upon hearing Yi Tianzi's words, Morong Fan, Xiao Qingcheng, and Lu Ruyin were all shocked, 
their eyes widened in disbelief. Yi Tianxi had actually defeated Du Song with his own hands. This was simply unbelievable. As the deputy team leader of the Wushu action team in Jianan City, Du Song held a prestigious and special position. It was unimaginable that Yi Tianxi would dare to take action against him. Morong Fan immediately doubted and retorted, Yi, you sure know how to boast. If Captain Du is dead, what about Captain Pan? Why didn't you mention him? Yi Tianxi nodded, You're right, Pan Wuyuan is also no longer with us. Morong Fan couldn't help but burst into laughter. You're really good at self promotion. Trying to show off in front of Qingqing Qing that you're better than me? This self aggrandizing behavior is quite ridiculous. Xiao Qingqing furrowed her brows, shaking her head in disappointment. Yi Tianxi, when will you be more grounded and not indulge in illusions? Although you may be slightly more outstanding now than before, it doesn't mean you can spout nonsense. In her eyes, both Pan Wuyuan and Du Song were unattainable figures. If they had really passed away, it would definitely be a big deal, and they would never easily let Yi Tianxi and her leave. Moreover, the legendary Blood Rose had also arrived to support and would not tolerate Yi Tianxi's actions. Lu Ruyin remained silent, as she had witnessed everything Yi Tianxi had done tonight, defeating the three guest officials of the Rong family and nullifying Rong Zidong's martial arts. He seemed daring to challenge everything in the world. Therefore, it was not impossible to put Du Song in a desperate situation. Yi Tianxi stared coldly at Xiao Qingqing and said flatly, Miss Xiao, please tone down your preachy tone, it's quite off-putting. Xiao Qingqing, visibly upset, said, I'm just stating facts. How did I offend you? If you think I'm wrong, show me evidence. Stop always arguing against me. Just as she finished speaking, roaring sounds suddenly came from afar. Everyone turned to see a red off-road motorcycle speeding towards them, finally stopping in front of Yi Tianxi and the others in a domineering and majestic manner. Su Qiangwei, wearing a helmet, took it off to reveal her exquisite features and flowing red hair. She was dressed in black leather jacket and pants, exuding a sense of dominance and wildness that made Morong Fan and others feel increasingly pressured and nervous. Everyone wondered, who exactly was this lady? She seemed absolutely formidable. Yi Tianxi looked at Su Qiangwei in confusion and asked, Why are you back again? Su Qiangwei playfully said, Hey, I just realized I haven't added you on WeChat yet, otherwise, I wouldn't be able to find you during this time. Hurry up and add me. With that, she took out her phone, opened her personal QR code for Yi Tianxi to scan and add her as a friend. Although Yi Tianxi was a bit speechless, he still took out his phone and scanned to add her as a friend. Su Qiangwei took the opportunity to glance at Morong Fan and the others, finally fixing her gaze on Xiao Qingqing. After tonight's events, she seemed no longer surprised by Yi Tianxi's actions. The subtle hostility in those eyes. Oh, is this Xiao Qingqing, the former fiancé of Yi Tianzi? She is quite beautiful, but her attitude is a bit extreme. Xiao Qingqing felt puzzled. She thought, I don't even know you. Why are you so harsh towards me? Beside her, Morong Fan immediately realized this was his chance to show himself. He stepped forward and coldly said to Su Qiangwei, Beauty, as the saying goes, hurtful words can be damaging. Why are you mocking Qingqing Jr.'s sister? She hasn't offended you, has she? Su Qiangwei glanced at Morong Fan and felt extremely disgusted by this seemingly sleazy man. Impatiently, she said, Who am I mocking? What's it to you? Say one more word and I'll have you locked up immediately. Morong Fan was taken aback by this rude remark. He didn't expect such words from a woman who appeared so refined. But if he didn't handle this situation well, it would be embarrassing in front of Xiao Qingqing and Lu Ruyin. So he lit a cigarette, arrogantly said, Let me tell you, my father is the chairman of the Four Seas Chamber of Commerce branch in Jianan City. Who do you think you are, a little girl, to have the authority to lock me up? He became more and more smug. Moreover, I know Vice Captain Du Song of the Martial Arts Action Team. He even personally helped my father with a loan. Compared to that, if you don't apologize, I'll call Captain Du to come and lock you up. Su Qiangwei didn't hesitate to slap Morong Fan. Smack! The force was so strong that he fell to the ground, blood oozing from his mouth and even some teeth falling out. Bastard! 
Morong Fan covered his cheek, about to erupt. Su Qiangwei took out a small notebook with a blue dragon emblem. What do you think I am? Let me tell you. I am Su Qiangwei, the deputy leader of the martial arts action team in Tianan province, known as the Bloodthirsty Rose. Even if your father is the vice chairman of the Four Seas Chamber of Commerce in Jiangnan City or even in Tianan province, I don't care. Do you understand? Morong Fan felt very confused. Xiao Qingcheng and Lu Ruyin also showed shocked expressions. This woman is actually the legendary bloodthirsty Rose. That ruthless woman? Morong Fan's lips trembled, unable to speak. Su Changwei said coldly, You just said Du Song was killed by Yi Tianzi? Ah. Uh. Some of the case clues on him also disappeared. You are now in my hands, and I must interrogate you thoroughly. Morong Fan turned pale. What? Du Song was really killed by Yi Tianzi? He wasn't lying. Morong Fan was completely panicked. He knelt down with a thud, pleading, Captain Su, you, you are a person of high status. Please don't hold me accountable. I only know Du Song casually. We are not familiar at all. I really don't know what cases he was involved in. Please understand. Su Qiangwei coldly said, Don't worry, I will investigate carefully. Call me. She suddenly shouted loudly. The door of the martial arts action team office opened, and Zheng Chun led a few people out in a hurry. Respectfully, he said, Deputy Leader. Morong Fan saw this scene and turned pale. Su Qiangwei is the deputy leader of the martial arts action group in Tianan province, known as the Bloodthirsty Rose. She is a decisive and resolute female character. She discovered an issue that made her anxious. Su Qiangwei ordered, This foolish guy is associated with Du Song. Take him in for questioning, and if he is guilty, he must be punished according to the law. Yes. Zhang Chun replied respectfully, ignoring Morong Fan's pleas and begging. They forcibly dragged him into the courtyard of the office building. Su Qiangwei, with an expressionless face, stared at the pale-faced Xiao Qingqing and said coldly, Hey, I criticized your poor judgment earlier. Are you convinced now? Xiao Qingqing lightly bit her lip. She did not expect things to suddenly evolve like this, nor did she understand why Su Changwei would speak up for Yi Tianzi. This feeling made her extremely uneasy. So she reluctantly spoke up, Team Leader Su, I don't understand the intention behind your words. Su Changwei coldly replied with a sneer, You're quite good at pretending, aren't you? Clearly, you could have a man as excellent as Yi Tianzi, yet you choose to ask for a divorce. Isn't that a problem with your judgment? Do you want to express that you know deep down that you are not worthy of Yi Tianzi, so you choose to take the initiative to leave? If that's the case, then I really have to thank you for giving up such a good man to me. I hope you formalize the divorce as soon as possible, and I will celebrate Yi Tianzi's liberation. With a bang, upon hearing these words, Xiao Qingcheng and Lu Ruyin were both stunned. Especially Xiao Qingcheng, her lips even began to tremble. In her eyes, the fact that Yi Tianzi and Su Qiangwei knew each other was already unbelievable. After all, one was Yi Tianzi, who had been secluded in the Xiao family in Jiangnan City for three years, and the other was Su Qiangwei, who worked mysteriously in the provincial capital. However, now, not only did these two know each other, but Su Qiangwei even openly expressed her desire to be with Yi Tianzi. Her attitude was even more proactive than that of Han Ruayun. What on earth was going on? Why is it that since asking for a divorce, Yi Tianzi has become like a hot cake, with women who like him coming one after another, and each one has a better background than the previous one? Haven't you ever considered my feelings? Thinking of this, a sense of resentment surged in Xiao Qingqing's heart. She gritted her teeth and said, I don't need you to remind me, I will definitely divorce Yi Tianzi, but I want to tell you, Yi Tianzi is not as perfect as you imagine. Don't end up deluding yourself and not even getting a name in the end. Su Qiangwei, however, replied indifferently, I never expected to get any status. As long as I have a place in his heart, that's enough. Xiao Qingqing's eye twitched, unwillingly saying, Now that Yi Tianzi is surrounded by a group of women, aren't you worried that he might have someone else in his heart? Su Qiangwei smiled and said, The more, the merrier. And I believe in Yi Tianzi's taste. He is attracted to tall, well-endowed beauties. It's a kind of enjoyment to look at them. Xiao Qingcheng was puzzled. Did she miss here? Su Qiangwei continued. 
As for you, since you have already asked for a divorce, please don't regret it after the divorce, and don't turn around later and beg Yi Tianzi to remarry you. Because with your abilities and appearance, I'm afraid even the lowest position won't accommodate you. Upon hearing this, Xiao Qingcheng was so angry that her chest was heaving, almost losing control. Even if I, Xiao Qingcheng, die of starvation outside, I will never regret it, and I will never beg Yi Tianzi to remarry. Su Qiangwei, with a hint of a cold smile, said, I hope you will keep your word. She turned to look at Yi Tianzi, showing a rare affectionate expression. I have to hurry back to work in the provincial capital. Remember to find some time to talk to me. With that, she turned and kissed Yi Tianzi on the cheek. Starting the off-road motorcycle, it roared deafeningly before quickly leaving the scene. Xia Qingqing looked at the lipstick mark left on Yi Tian's cheek, her originally irritated mood becoming even harder to control. Unable to help but taunt, ha ha, she's already gone far away. Yet someone still can't bear to wipe off the mark on their face? Planning to keep it for the rest of your life? Yi Tian's lips slightly curled up, casually responding, in a hurry? Xia Qingqing widened her eyes, gritted her teeth and said, you're the one in a hurry. You got kissed. What's it got to do with me? Whoever wants to kiss you can kiss you. Although she said so, she actually felt quite uncomfortable inside. After all, she hadn't officially divorced Yi Tian's yet and a girl kissed him in front of her. It was like putting a green hat on her. Fortunately, it only happened once, and she gritted her teeth and endured it. However, at that moment, a red Maserati suddenly stopped. Han Ruayun got out of the car and ran over, throwing herself into Yi Tian's arms. Involuntarily choking up, she said, Are you okay? I was so worried about you. Feeling the softness in front of him, Yi Tianz enjoyed it while gently patting Han Ruayun's back. I'm fine. The martial arts action team didn't do anything to me. Why did you come? Han Ruayun raised her head, grumbling and complaining. It's all because I was worried about you. You jerk. Despite her words, she then kissed Yi Tianz on the left cheek. Xia Qingcheng stared at the scene, feeling uneasy once again. She just said whoever wants to kiss Yi Tianz can do so but Han Ruayun immediately kissed him. It was infuriating. She was already angered by Su Qiangwei earlier, and now this. Anger surged within her. Han Ruayun suddenly noticed the lip print on Yi Tian's right cheek. Her expression immediately became alert. She turned to Xia Qingqing, questioning, why does Xiao Tian have a kiss mark on his face? Did you take advantage of him? Xia Qingqing felt wronged, her hands trembling. You kissed me in front of me, and now you're accusing me of taking advantage of Yi Tian's? How can I defend myself? She endured the grievance, saying, I don't care to take advantage of him. If you have doubts, ask him. Han Ruayun turned to look at Yi Tian's. Although Yi Tian's was a bit guilty, he told the truth that it was left by Su Qiangwei. Who is Su Qiangwei? Han Ruayun was a bit puzzled. Yi Tian's explained, she's the deputy leader of the martial arts action team. Blood Rose Su Changwei. Ah, so it's her. Han Ruayun suddenly realized, a hint of displeasure flashing in her eyes before disappearing. She said, since it's her, then forget it, I won't pursue it anymore. Hearing this, Lu Ruyin couldn't help but ask, why didn't you go after her? Han Ruayun replied matter-of-factly, Bloody Rose is too powerful. I am no match for her. Why bother seeking trouble? Lu Ruyin felt somewhat speechless, and Han Ruayun continued, Besides, for someone like Bloody Rose, the fact that she didn't kill Yi Tianzi tonight already satisfies me. What's wrong with having a slight advantage? I just didn't expect that the rumored ruthless killer like her would have this side to her. As she spoke, she seemed to remember something. Her gaze fixed on Yi Tianzi, and she asked seriously, Besides being kissed, did she take advantage of you in any other way? Did she also take advantage of the first time below? Don't forget, that's reserved for me. Yi Tianzi was slightly taken aback by the strategy, silently sighing at the directness of the lady. The sudden emergence of such a topic in this situation caught him off guard. Xiao Qingqing's face showed a hint of embarrassment, but she felt extremely uneasy inside. Was Yi Tianzi really planning to give his first time to Han Ruayun? Even though he and Xiao Qingqing had already filed for divorce, 
bringing up such a topic in front of her was quite inappropriate. Xiao Qingcheng wondered if they should discuss this issue in private instead. However, Xiao Qingcheng remained silent, simply instinctively pricking up her ears and waiting for Yi Tianzi's response. Han Ruoyan looked at Yi Tianzi's hesitant expression and asked anxiously, Hey, did that blood rose really take away your first time? It's despicable. As an official, she shouldn't have forcefully taken your first time. It's like rape and coercion. I. Yi Tianzi immediately raised his hand to stop her, helplessly saying, Miss, please reign in your imagination. Nothing happened between me and Su Qiangwei. How's your waist injury? Is it still hurting? This skillfully shifted the topic. Han Ruoyun's eyes flickered as she covered her waist with her hand, frowning, You didn't remind me. My wound hurts a lot now. It needs to be massaged to relieve the pain. She deliberately looked at Xiao Qingcheng with a coquettish and provocative gaze, full of provocation. Xiao Qingcheng gritted her teeth, feeling her blood pressure rising. She knew Han Ruoyun was being deliberate. This scheming woman, Lu Ruyun looked at Xiao Qingcheng with concern. She actually wanted to remind Xiao Qingcheng that, given her identity, she was no match for Miss Han and it would be best to avoid contact. She discreetly pulled Xiao Qingcheng, trying to signal her to step back. However, Xiao Qingcheng seemed stubborn, completely ignoring Lu Ruyun's reminder. She coldly said, Humph, someone's medical skills are indeed amazing. Even massaging a wound can heal it. I just can't believe it. Yi Tianzi snorted and reached out to help Han Ruayun bandage the wound. Part of her evening gown was lifted, revealing her snow-white, delicate skin, like jade. However, on the side, a piece of gauze was fixed, with some slight oozing of blood. Yi Tianzi couldn't help but feel heartache. After all, this wound was inflicted by the Enforcement Bureau captain to protect him at the venue. Yi Tianzi gently reminded, Bear with it, it'll be fine soon. Although Han Ruayun didn't understand Yi Tianzi's intentions, she obediently nodded in agreement. Yi Tianzi carefully unwrapped the gauze, revealing a two-inch long wound. Although not severe, it would definitely be painful. If not handled properly, it might leave a scar in the future, which would be unacceptable for a beauty like her. Yi Tianzi bent down, covering the wound on Han Ruayun's waist with his right hand, channeling his internal energy into his palm. Han Ruayun bit her lip, feeling a tingling, burning sensation. It was a bit painful, but bearable. Yet Tai and Sess' actions made her feel a strong sense of intimacy, so she unconsciously leaned her head on Yatai and Sess' shoulder, a satisfied expression gradually appearing on her face. Seeing this scene, Xiao Qingqing's mood became restless, as if she had become a ridiculous clown. Liu Ruyin lowered her voice and said, Let's forget about it, it's getting late. We should go home early. However, Xiao Qingqing stubbornly said, I don't want to. I want to see what Yatayans is up to. Liu Ruyin sighed. She could see that Xiao Qingqing couldn't let go of her feelings for Yatayans deep down, but due to her strong pride, Xiao Qingqing was unwilling to show weakness easily. So there was always an awkward atmosphere between them. Xiao Qingqing seemed to be tormenting herself, a situation that was quite helpless. After a while, Yatayans moved his palm away, and everyone looked at Han Ruayun, only to see that the wound on Han Ruayun's waist had completely disappeared, his skin restored to its original state, without any scars left. Han Ruayun exclaimed excitedly, Wow, that's amazing, how did you do it? Xiao Qingqing and Liu Ruyun also widened their eyes. Although they knew Ye Tai and Ses' medical skills were excellent, this miraculous healing effect still exceeded their imagination. Ye Tai and wiped the sweat from his forehead adjusted his internal energy, and said to Han Ruayun, it's a bit complicated to explain. I'll tell you next time when there's a chance. Han Ruayun nodded, admiration filling his eyes for Yatayans. Just then, several cars stopped in the distance. A group of people got out, including Rong Mei Yin, Han Tianjing and his wife, Lin Yuanxuan and other family members, as well as Xiaoping, Wu Xingye, and others. Yatayans asked, why did you all come? Han Tianjing. Seeing that Yatayans was safe and sound, breathed a sigh of relief and said, We came to find a way to rescue you, but since you're fine, that's good. Then he sternly said to Han Ruayun, Dad knows you were worried about nephew Ya, but driving over in such a hurry, we couldn't catch up, it was too dangerous. 
Han Ruiyun stuck out his tongue and said, I won't do it again in the future. Rong Meiyun approached, with a look of concern in her eyes, and asked Yatayance, Inside, did that woman called Blood Rose trouble you? Yatayance was about to answer, but Han Ruiyun interrupted and said, Not only did she not trouble him, she even kissed him on the cheek. Don't believe me? Look at his left cheek. Rong Meiyun looked and indeed saw a bright red lipstick mark on Yatayan Sess' right cheek. Although Rong Meiyun didn't understand the situation, she didn't ask further, but handed Yatayan's a tissue, saying, Wipe it off. Yatayan took the tissue, wiped off the lipstick mark on his right cheek, and casually wiped off the mark on his left cheek as well. Han Ruiyun pouted, You wiped off all the marks I left, do you dislike them? Yatayan smiled and said, If I don't wipe them off, should I hang them on my face forever? At this moment, Lin Zhaoyang said, Yatayance, you were able to escape this time thanks to my grandfather. He contacted the head of the Southern Province Martial Arts Action Team and had him call Blood Rose specifically, otherwise she wouldn't have let you go so easily. Yatayance's eyes twitched slightly upon hearing this, his expression complicated. When team leader Su Changwei suddenly called, it turned out to be for this reason. The call interrupted the good time he was about to enjoy. Lin Yuanxuan reprimanded Lin Jiaoyang. Jiaoyang, stop talking nonsense. Then he turned to Yi Tianxi and said, Dr. Yi, now that the matter is settled, although it's late, we rarely gather together. Why not go for a late night snack together? Wu Xingya nodded and said, Old Lin has a good suggestion. Xiaoping also nodded, Master Yi, please agree to join us. Everyone present agreed. Unable to refuse their warm invitation, Yi Tianxi nodded and said, All right. So, one by one, everyone got into their cars and left, with laughter and joy filling the air. Only Xiao Qingcheng and Lu Ruyin were left, feeling lonely and lost in the cool night breeze. Xiao Qingcheng bit her lip, her eyes flashing with frustration and grievance, her emotions like a roller coaster, fluctuating wildly. The prominent figures in Jiangnan city all revolved around Yitianza, but they seemed to overlook her, as if she were invisible. This feeling of being ignored filled her with a sense of imbalance and defeat. Since her divorce, she found the gap between her and Yitianza growing larger. He became more and more outstanding, while she gradually lost her former brilliance. Although she was not clear about the reasons behind all this, the harsh reality kept hitting her self-esteem. Every time she faced Yitianza, she tried to appear strong, only to hide the fragility of her self-esteem supporting herself. Xiao Qingqing forced a bitter smile and self-mockingly said, Yin Yin, maybe it's my fault? Perhaps I shouldn't have asked for a divorce in the first place. Now the distance between me and Yitianza is getting wider. I seem to have miscalculated. Lu Ruyin hesitated for a moment, then chose to remain silent. In the past, she might have directly refuted Xiao Qingqing's words, giving her encouragement and support, saying that Yi Tianzi was not worthy of you. Qingqing, you are the most outstanding, and so on. However, after this period of contact, she gradually realized that Yi Tianzi was not incompetent, but rather mysterious and excellent, fascinating. Therefore, Han Ruiyun would deeply adore him, Rong Meiyun would trust him, and Dai Blood Rose would protect him. A woman's judgment may be wrong, but the unanimous choice of multiple women is obviously not to be ignored. So, she couldn't agree with Xiao Qingqing's statement that Yi Tianzi is not worthy of you. Lu Ruyin hesitated for a moment and tentatively asked, So, what is your plan? Do you want to apologize to Yi Tianzi and try to win him back? After all, you have not officially divorced. If you show a sincere attitude, there may still be room for reconciliation. Apologize? Sincere? Win back? Xiao Qingcheng bit her lip, caught in hesitation and struggle. If there were no other women around Yi Tianzi at this moment, she might have tried to win him back without hesitation. However, now that the women around Yi Tianzi are one more outstanding than the other, how could she easily lower herself to apologize to him? Even if she successfully reconciled, what about these women around Yi Tianzi? What entanglements would there be between them? Should they continue to be in a confusing situation? Xiao Qingqing's dilemma does not stop there. She had sworn in front of her grandfather that she would be more outstanding than Yi Tianzi, making everyone who thought her decision to divorce was wrong take back their words. And she had already divorced Yi Tianzi, 
firmly believing that she would not regret it. Now, thinking of trying to win him back, how would she face Yi Tianzi in the future? Would he treat her as indifferently as she did to him in the past three years? Thinking of all this, Xiao Qingcheng felt heavy-hearted. In the end, it's all Yi Tianzi's fault. Why didn't he show his excellent side earlier? Setting aside reality, logically speaking, shouldn't he be the one apologizing and trying to win her back? As a man, can't he be more magnanimous? Why hurt me deliberately by courting other women? The more Xiao Qingqing thought about it, the more aggrieved she felt. She had a determined look in her eyes as she firmly said, I can't give up like this. I have to prove myself right. Even if Yi Tianzi becomes outstanding, I just need to be more outstanding than him. Lu Ruyan asked softly, How do you plan to surpass him? We are well aware of his current connections and abilities. Xiao Qingcheng fell silent, seeming lost in thought. Yes, how could she surpass Yi Tianzi now? She had thought that the opportunity to turn the tide was the 10 billion order from the Tianlong Group bidding conference, but not only did she not get the order, she also owed a large sum to the Four Seas Chamber of Commerce. Although there was still time to repay, it also meant that her hopes of turning the situation around were slim, and the contact she had worked so hard to establish with Morong Fan from the Four Seas Chamber of Commerce had been implicated at the most critical moment. It was simply adding insult to injury. However, at that moment, a black Bentley pulled up in front of them. The door opened, and a mysterious woman dressed in a black evening gown with black lipstick stepped out, exuding an aura of invincibility. She was none other than Lu Yinji. Han Ruayun and Lu Ruyin were both stunned, looking at Lu Yinji in confusion. In fact, Lu Yinji had been observing from the side, instructing her men to park the car at a distance. Although she couldn't hear their conversation clearly, the general situation was clear to her. Lu Yinji straightforwardly asked, President Xiao, have you considered cooperating with me? Xiao Qingcheng widened her eyes, somewhat surprised, and asked, What kind of cooperation? Lu Yinji, the female emperor of the business world in Jiangnan City, was shrewd, and she had to tread carefully. Lu Yinji said lightly, Your personality is somewhat similar to mine when I was young. I admire you. As long as you are willing to cooperate, I can guarantee that you will become a successful strong woman and break free from your current predicament. Xiao Qingcheng furrowed her brow. My success doesn't need others to define it, nor does it need your cooperation. Lu Yinji said expressionlessly, If you don't cooperate with me, no matter how hard you try, how outstanding you are, you cannot escape a mediocre fate. But if you cooperate with me, you will surpass all the women around Yi Tianzi, even Yi Tianzi himself. Are you willing to be mocked by them time and time again? Those words hit Xiao Qingqing's weak spot. She hesitated for a moment and tentatively asked, What are the conditions for cooperation? Lu Yinji replied indifferently, Very simple. Submit to me and serve me in the future. Although the words were calm, they exuded a strong and irresistible force. Xiao Qingqing's body trembled slightly, her expression contorted. As the proud beauty CEO of the Xiao family in Jiangnan City, how could she possibly be willing to submit to others? Even if it was the business queen Lu Yinji, she coldly replied, I, Xiao Qingqing, will not submit, let alone serve others. I would rather not have such cooperation. A trace of surprise flickered in Lu Yinji's eyes, but she quickly regained her composure. She said softly, I don't mind the refusal, Yinji never forces others. Take a week to consider, maybe you will change your mind by then and be willing to cooperate with me. With that, she turned and walked towards the vehicle. She then gestured to the bodyguard in a white suit to start the car and drive away. Xia Qingcheng and Lu Ruyin looked at each other for a moment, feeling puzzled. What secrets could this lady be hiding? In the late night, Yi Tianzi and his friends finished their late night snack and hurried to the First People's Hospital of Jiangnan City. With concern in his heart, he wanted to personally check on Zhang Xiaohu and A Qing's injuries. Earlier, the two were attacked by three guest officials from the Rome family. Although their lives were not in danger, their injuries were quite severe. Apart from Yi Tianzi, Rong Meiyin and Wu Xingya also accompanied him, while the others went home to rest. Upon arrival at the hospital, Wu Xingya led Yi Tianzi into the ward and introduced, Zhang Xiaohu and Miss A Qing have been examined and treated, and their condition is stable. 
Although it will take several months to recover, even martial arts experts need more than a month. Yi Tianzi smiled confidently, with me here, the recovery will be faster. He requested to go to the Chinese medicine store to prepare a healing prescription for them. Wu Xingye respectfully led Yi Tianzi to the Chinese medicine store. Rong Mei Yin, on the other hand, was worried about A Qing and went to visit her first. Shortly after, Yi Tianzi and Wu Xingye arrived at the Chinese medicine store. Wu Xingye said earnestly, Dr. Yi, please feel free to choose the Chinese herbs you need. If there is not enough, I will assist in preparing them. Yi Tianzi nodded and began to busy himself collecting herbs. An hour later, he brought out a jar of black medicine, tightly sealed, with a mysterious interior. Wu Xingye curiously asked, Can this medicine cure the injuries of Zhang Xiaohu and the others? Yi Tianzi nodded and handed over a piece of paper. I have a friend with a rare illness who needs this medicine for treatment. The Chinese medicine store lacks five kinds of herbs, so I need your help to find them. Wu Xingye looked closely at the paper, furrowing his brows slightly. Although red root snow lotus and ice heart flower are precious, they can be found. As for nine fragrance fruit, blue leaf wisteria, and green dragon vine. They are truly rare and elusive. Are you sure this is Chinese medicine? Yi Tianzi affirmed, it is Chinese medicine, just extremely rare. Su Qiangwei is suffering from a stubborn illness and needs these precious herbs to detoxify. However, these rare treasures are hard to find and require luck. Wu Xingye suggested, in that case, why not wait and discuss with the medicine king of Jiangnan in the future? He values Chinese medicine and may provide clues. Mentioning the medicine king of Jiangnan, Yi Tianzi recalled the hundred-year snow ginseng and the wild ginseng from the Lin family, both from the hands of the medicine king. Perhaps he could provide information on nine fragrance fruit and other herbs? Yi Tianzi nodded, all right, I'll leave it to Director Wu. Director Wu smiled, no problem, no problem. It's a great favor to learn medicine with Dr. Yi. The two went upstairs and first arrived at Ah Ching's ward. At this moment, Ah Ching was sitting weakly on the bed, her face pale. When she saw Yi Tianzi, Ah Ching's expression became complicated. She had never liked Yi Tianzi, feeling that she wasn't worth wasting too much emotion and energy on him. However, Yi Tianzi's actions always took her by surprise. Now, she had to ask Yi Tianzi to come and treat her illness a situation that left her feeling very conflicted. Rong Meiyin stood up and asked, Is the medicine ready? Ye Tianz nodded and placed the black medicine jar on the table, saying, Before starting the treatment, I need to take your pulse. Please extend your hand. Aching slowly raised her right arm. Due to the intense confrontation with Su Feng earlier, she had crossed her arms to block his attacks, resulting in both her arm bones being severely injured with slight fractures that caused a sharp pain with even slight movement. Yet Tian Ses' fingers gently touched A Ching's right wrist to check her pulse. Half a minute later, he said, Your external injuries and fractures are manageable, but the internal injuries are a bit troublesome. If not treated promptly, they will leave hidden dangers in your body, affecting your future martial arts practice at best and potentially leading to paralysis at worst. A Ching pursed her lips, looking somewhat skeptical. She asked, how could I not know about my internal injuries? Are they that serious? Are you trying to deceive me? Before she could finish, she suddenly started coughing uncontrollably. The cough was accompanied by pain, causing her whole body to ache. The most obvious sign was the feeling of oppression in her chest, making it difficult to breathe. Yet Tyants glanced at her indifferently and said, you must have suffered a heavy blow to the chest during the fight causing blood stasis in the meridians, compressing the nerves and respiratory tract. Believe it or not, I would never. Aching knew that Ye Tian Ses words seemed to make sense, but her stubborn nature made her subconsciously want to refute. Rong Meiyin frowned and reminded, Stop arguing. Just listen to Mr. Ye and let him treat your illness. Aching nodded reluctantly and asked Ye Tian What do you need me to do? Ye Tian calmly said, First, Take off your clothes. Aching widened her eyes, alertly saying, Are you trying to be a pervert? Why do I have to undress? Yet Tyants rolled his eyes and explained, I have no interest in a cups. I just need it for unobstructed needle placement. Aching frowned and said, That sounds strange. Yet Tyants continued, 
If you don't want to treat the internal injuries, that's fine too. You won't be able to practice martial arts in the future. Becoming a disabled person has nothing to do with me. Aching pursed her lips, feeling a bit embarrassed and reluctant, but still took off her hospital gown, revealing her upper body. Wu Xingye turned away considerately. Yet Taiyans examined Aching's body and noticed her fair skin, well-proportioned figure with no excess fat. Coupled with her outstanding looks, such a body and appearance could be considered top-notch beauty in the outside world. It's just a pity that her chest was flat, seemingly not even reaching an A cup, only at an A level. She was bound by a small pink bra, looking somewhat pitiful. The lady seemed to have a special fondness for pink. Even her underwear was pink. Aqing looked at Yitianza, her face blushing, her voice slightly trembling as she asked, Do, do I need to take off the bra? Yitianza shook his head, no need. Then he remembered the previous topic. But weren't you worried about affecting the acupuncture just now? Although I didn't expect you to be so slim, almost no hindrance, it won't affect the acupuncture. Aqing forced a faint smile, but couldn't help but curse inwardly, Yi Tianza, you jerk, you're the real blockhead. Your whole family are blockheads. Yi Tianzi was not clear about Aqing's thoughts, nor did he care about her opinions. He decisively took out silver needles, thoroughly disinfected with alcohol, and mercilessly inserted them into the acupoints on her chest. A total of eight silver needles were inserted. Yi Tianzi reminded her, straighten your body, take a deep breath. Aqing nodded obediently, straightened her body, and took a deep breath. Due to the deep breath causing pressure in the chest cavity, the piercing pain became even more intense, but she gritted her teeth and persisted. Yi Tianzi moved behind Aqing, massaging her smooth back with his right hand, his fingers dancing flexibly. The warm touch made Aqing's body tremble slightly. This was the first time she had been touched by the opposite sex like this, feeling a bit embarrassed and uncomfortable. She kept telling herself that this was for treating her injuries, forcing herself to ignore this detail. After a brief pause, she felt a warm flow coming from the acupoints where the silver needles were inserted on her chest, as if resonating with each other, making her feel very comfortable. Just as she was immersed in this comfort, suddenly, Yi Tianzi raised his right palm and slapped Aqing's back hard. Bang! Under this blow, Aqing staggered forward, spitting out a mouthful of black blood. Ouch! You almost killed me. Are you deliberately retaliating against me, you rascal? Aqing complained subconsciously, but then she realized something. Strange. The tightness in her chest was gone. Even the feeling of coughing disappeared. She tried to take a few deep breaths and indeed no longer felt the chest pain and congestion, her complexion gradually returning to a healthy color. My goodness, is the internal injury really healed? Aqing widened her eyes, full of surprise and shock. This guy is really skilled? Rong Mei Yin, standing by the bed, also breathed a sigh of relief and looked at Yi Tianzi with admiration. Yi Tianzi removed the silver needles from Aqing's chest, then said, Raise your arms. I'll apply medicine for you. Oh. This time Aqing did not hesitate, obediently nodding. Yi Tianzi opened the black medicine jar on the table, filled with black viscous medicine emitting a strong herbal fragrance. Wu Xingye curiously asked, Dr. Yi, can this medicine cure Miss Aqing's injuries? Yi Tianzi nodded and replied, Yes, this is the black jade continuation ointment I formulated, specifically used to treat external injuries. Whether it's fractures, bone cracks, or damaged meridians, all can recover quickly. Wu Xingye's eyes lit up. Could it really be that miraculous? But Aqing was a bit skeptical. Black Jade Continuation Ointment? Isn't that something from martial arts novels? Is it really effective? Yi Tianzi calmly said, I only ask if you want to get better? Aqing pouted and replied, Yes, yes, yes. You're always so harsh on me, really stingy. Yi Tianzi muttered, clearly, it's you who's always making things difficult for me, right? No wonder they say women with small chests have big tempers, seems to make some sense. But out of respect for Rong Mei Yin, Yi Tianzi did not argue with her too much. He took out the black jade continuation ointment from the jar, applied it to the fractures on Aqing's arms, and then secured it with a bandage. He asked, how does it feel? 
Aching gently moved her arms. Yi Tianxi exclaimed excitedly, feeling a rush of heat in his arm as if a force was penetrating from his skin to his muscles and bones, yet without any pain. As a martial arts master, he had gone through numerous battles, whether in training or protecting Rong Mei Yin, his body was always covered in scars, and he had used countless medications. However, he had never encountered anything as miraculous as the black jade healing ointment. His intuition told him that his injuries would heal in less than three days. Then, somewhat shyly, he asked, Um, my buttocks still hurt a bit. Can this black jade healing ointment cure it? As she spoke, her cheeks turned red. After all, it was embarrassing to let a man she called a pervert apply ointment to her. Yi Tianxi was taken aback for a moment, then nodded and said, Of course it can cure it. But he had wanted to ask if Qing was available, and if so, he was willing to do it for him. Unexpectedly, Rong Meiyan said, Mr. Yi, let me handle this. You go check on Zhang Xiaohu. His condition is more serious than Qing's. Applying the black jade healing ointment is not difficult. All right, I'll leave it to you. I'll go to Zhang Xiaohu's place. He poured out some of the black jade healing ointment and left with Wu Xingya. Qing sat on the sickbed, staring blankly at the door, absent-minded. Rong Meiyan jokingly said, What's wrong? Feeling down because Mr. Yi didn't apply the black jade healing ointment to your buttocks? Do you like being touched by him? Ching's face blushed slightly, and she immediately retorted, No way. I would never let that pervert touch my butt. Humph. Rong Meiyin said matter-of-factly, Mr. Yi has helped me so much. A little touch doesn't matter. No loss. Ching sighed, feeling that her mistress was beyond help. She seemed to think of something, and her expression became serious. Miss, although Yi Tianxi caused serious injury to Rong Zidong tonight, the 10 billion order from Tianlong Group still belongs to the Ji family in the end. Your assessment is still ongoing. If you can't complete it within a month, you will be transferred from Jiangnan City, and in the end, we will be defeated. You supported Yi Tianxi to take charge of this order in the first place, and now the result is like this, you? Rong Meiyin interrupted. Since I chose to believe in Mr. Yi, I will remain steadfast. I understand him. He wouldn't do anything unprepared. Let's wait patiently. She took a deep breath and smiled at Qing. Stop thinking about this. Solving your problem is more important. Come on, take off your pants. Let me treat your injuries properly. Yi Tianxi brought Wu Xingye to Zhang Xiaohu's ward. In the meeting room, Zhang Xiaohu's injuries were much more severe than Qing's. At this moment, he was almost entirely wrapped in bandages lying on the bed, the intense pain making it difficult for him to sleep. When Yi Tianzi saw Zhang Xiaohu, a hint of struggle couldn't help but rise in his heart, but he still respectfully greeted him, saying, Mr. Yi. Yi Tianzi raised his hand to signal him to lie down first, and gently said, I'm here to heal your injuries. Zhang Xiaohu nodded excitedly, gratefully saying, Thank you, Mr. Yi. I feel ashamed. If I were stronger, I wouldn't have let Rong Zidong and the others be so arrogant tonight, causing Miss Rong and Miss Han to be wronged. Yi Tianzi smiled and shook his head, saying, You have done a great job. If it weren't for you acting in time, the consequences tonight could have been very serious. Let's focus on treating the injuries first. We can discuss other matters later. At this moment, Wu Xingye volunteered to help Zhang Xiaohu apply the black jade wound ointment wanting to personally experience the miraculous effects of the ointment. Yi Tianzi agreed with a nod. Wu Xingye skillfully applied the black jade wound ointment to Zhang Xiaohu's injured area and rebandaged it. The whole process only took 10 minutes. Wu Xingye was a smart person. He knew Yi Tianzi and Zhang Xiaohu had things to discuss, so he took the initiative to say, Dr. Yi, I still have some matters to attend to, so I'll take my leave now. If you need me urgently, feel free to contact me. Yi Tianzi agreed with a nod. Take the rest of the black jade wound ointment with you. I will tell you the formula and preparation method of this medicine, so you can use it to help more people in the future. Wu Xingye was delighted. As an experienced doctor, he understood the value behind this medicine. Yi Tianzi's willingness to share the formula was far more precious than the small favors he had done for Yi Tianzi. He sincerely bowed to Yi Tianzi and then left the ward, leaving only Yi Tianzi and Zhang Xiaohu. Yi Tianzi walked to the window of the ward, gazing outside with a hint of contemplation. Then he softly asked, 
Do you still remember why you were captured and brought to the fallen city in the first place? Zhang Xiaohu's expression showed a moment of confusion. He candidly replied that five years ago, he participated in a black market transaction organized by the Dark Spider Organization on a small island in the Pacific Ocean. However, during the transaction, they were suddenly attacked by a powerful third-party force. This mysterious force was overwhelmingly strong, leading to almost complete annihilation of both sides of the transaction, leaving only him. At that critical moment, the guards of the Fallen City appeared and captured him, bringing him into the Fallen City. Yi Tianzi asked, Do you remember the name of your organization? Zhang Xiaohu recalled, Yes, our organization is called the Dark Spider, a transnational criminal organization involved in smuggling arms, kidnapping, and financial fraud. I was young and naive back then, deceived by my predecessors to join, and had to do things within the organization, or else the senior management would eliminate me. Young master, are you, are you planning to judge me for my past crimes? Zhang Xiaohu's emotions began to tense up. Yi Tianzi shook his head. I have already judged you for your crimes long ago. Have you never been curious about this? With your strength and position in the Dark Spider Organization, why were you imprisoned in the Fallen City? Zhang Xiaohu forced a bitter smile. This question had plagued him for years. The Fallen City is the highest level prison in the world, housing world class criminals. One must either have enough status and influence or possess enough combat power to be imprisoned there. He, Zhang Xiaohu, was just a small leader in the Dark Spider organization at the time, only with mid-level martial arts strength, not deserving to be locked up in the Fallen City. This resulted in his lowest status there, enduring bullying and only able to do menial work. Looking back, it still made him shudder. Yi Tianzi said, You were imprisoned here because of your involvement in that black market transaction. Zhang Xiaohu muttered softly, as if recalling something. Young master, do you mean that the item involved in that transaction was very important? Is that why I was imprisoned in the fallen city? Ye Tianze noted. Zhang Xiaohu sighed and said, Young master, I have explained this question before. Although I participated in the transaction, due to my low status, I had no idea what the item was. All I knew was that it was a white metal box about the size of a suitcase extremely hard, with a yellow skull logo on it. I have no idea what was inside, perhaps only the higher-ups of the Dark Spider organization and that mysterious force know. Yi Tianzi squinted and said, By the time the people from the Fallen City arrived, the third-party force had already fled, and despite our efforts to search, they seemed to have disappeared without a trace. Shortly after the incident, all members of your Dark Spider organization and the other party involved in the transaction were brutally killed. None survived. In other words, you are the only surviving party involved. Zhang Xiaohu nervously swallowed a mouthful of saliva. Although he had already known this news, every time he recalled it, he still felt a lingering fear. The Dark Spider, a renowned force in the underground world, was unexpectedly wiped out in a short period of time which sent shivers down his spine. Undoubtedly, this must be related to that mysterious force, showcasing its power indirectly. Therefore, after being released from prison, he was worried about being targeted by the mysterious force, so he chose to return to Jiangnan City and establish the Black Tiger Society to live a carefree life. However, Zhang Xiaohu did not know that the Fallen City had lost many elites in the investigation of the mysterious force, yet gained little useful information. At that time, Yi Tiance and his master both believed that the trade five years ago hit a huge conspiracy, possibly even capable of changing the world order. Suddenly, Yi Tiance's eyes lit up. He realized that Zhang Xiaohu had participated in that mysterious trade five years ago. At the same time, the martial arts action team where Su Changwei was located was executing a secret mission in the Pacific Ocean, and she was the only survivor. The timing and location of these two events were so close, could there be some kind of connection? Although unsure if the speculation was accurate, this line of thought was definitely worth a try. He took a deep breath and said to Zhang Xiaohu, Remember to keep tonight's conversation confidential and do not disclose it to any third party. Zhang Xiaohu nodded earnestly. Yi Tiance continued, It's getting late, you should rest. The Black Jade continuation ointment will be removed in three days allowing you to fully recover. 
Although your meridians were severely damaged this time, it's also a good opportunity to make a fresh start. Once your meridians heal, your martial arts strength is expected to break through to the perfect realm of a warrior, and your future cultivation speed will greatly increase. Excitement flickered in Zhang Xiaohu's eyes, and he gratefully said, Thank you, young master. I have longed to break through to the peak realm of a warrior, and I didn't expect this injury to give me this opportunity. If I had known earlier, I should have endured more hardships. Yi Tians reminded him again, Do not forget what I told you before. Your nephew, Zhang Chunlei, has a rebellious personality. Be careful in the future to avoid any trouble. Keep an eye on him. After saying this, Yi Tians left the ward, leaving Zhang Xiaohu lost in thought. After Yi Tians left, Rong Meiyan finished applying the Black Jade Continuation Ointment for Aching, and the two of them returned to the Zijin Tian Palace Villa community together. Rong Meiyan followed Yi Tians into his number one villa, took off her high heels, and walked barefoot on the floor. She stretched her body and exclaimed, Phew! So much has happened tonight. It feels like a dream. She sat on the sofa, crossing her slender legs, propping her chin with her right hand, her eyes revealing a hint of charm, slightly curling her lips. The look in her eyes made Yitians feel a bit creepy. Is there something wrong with me? Yitians asked, and Rong Meiyin shook her head. She beckoned, Come here, closer. Sit next to me. Although Yi Tianzi didn't understand Rong Meiyin's intentions, he still followed her instructions and sat down beside her. Rong Meiyin turned her head to gaze at Yi Tianzi's cheek, with a hint of infatuation in her eyes, and whispered, Honestly, I think you are becoming more handsome. Yi Tianzi smiled and replied, I have always been handsome, haven't I? Rong Meiyin raised her eyebrows and continued, Both Blood Rose and Han Royan have kissed you on the cheek tonight right? One on each cheek. Yi Tianzi nodded without denying it. Rong Meiyin leaned slightly closer, a hint of fragrance wafting into Yi Tianzi's nostrils. Her lips moved slightly, filled with temptation as she said, so I also want to kiss you. A real kiss. Can I? In the soft light, Rong Meiyin's beautiful face blushed, as captivating as a crimson sunset. Her slender, fair neck extended down to graceful collarbones, with the neckline of her evening gown slightly open, revealing a tall and snow-white chest. She charmingly and boldly expressed her love. And if Yi Tianzi didn't agree, wouldn't he be failing as a man? Without hesitation, he nodded and decisively accepted. Rong Meiyin closed her eyes, suddenly leaned in towards Yi Tianzi, and gently kissed his lips. At that moment, time seemed to stand still, and the world around them seemed to freeze. Rong Mayan's lips were soft and sweet, giving Yi Tianzi a feeling of warmth. Then, a soft, sweet tongue slipped into his mouth, smooth and slightly nervous. Yi Tianzi's heart raced, but he boldly responded, exploring without reserve. This response seemed to release a current that flowed through Rong Meiyin, making her unable to control herself, leaning weakly against him, almost losing strength. The sparks that had ignited between Yi Tianzi and Su Qiangwei in the martial arts action team office were reignited by Rong Meiyin, becoming even more intense. Yi Tianzi's kisses became more daring and unrestrained, and more skilled. Rong Meiyin continued to respond, feeling from a gentle rain to a storm. Yi Tianzi's right hand became restless, slipping into Rong Meiyin's collar, boldly kneading. Rong Meiyin blushed, raised her head slightly, tightened her legs, and swayed gently, as if in a trance. Her response fueled Yi Tianzi's inner passion even more. So he decisively broke through the defenses, exploring unknown territory without hesitation. Rong Mayan's body trembled, her hands tightly embracing Yi Tianzi, her legs tighter, her breath hot and rapid, enjoying yet shy. Yi Tianzi enjoyed this moment to the fullest, more exciting than the intimacy with Su Qiangwei in the office because now he was not only exploring boldly but also shaping as he pleased. However, the defenses became obstacles, so his right hand moved around Rong Mayan's back, ready to break the final barrier and delve deeper. Just then, Rong Mayan suddenly stopped, grabbed Yi Tianzi's arm, and shook her head, saying, Let's stop here tonight. Yi Tianzi retreated somewhat awkwardly, the fiery passion instantly cooling down. 
Rong Mayan's eyes sparkled with a hazy light, her cheeks flushed, disheveled hair, slightly loose collar, like an irresistible seductress. She adjusted her collar, lightly biting her lip, saying, We agreed before that I would belong to you completely only after I finish my revenge. If we continue now, we might both be unable to stop. Yi Tianzi's enthusiasm slightly subsided, and he said with a hint of embarrassment, Sorry, got a bit carried away. Indeed, Rong Meiyin's actions made Ya Tianzi's heart race, as if he couldn't control the surge of emotions within him. With a charming smile, Rong Meiyin casually indicated that there was no need for an apology, as it was a small reward he deserved. Gracefully standing up, she yawned gently, reminding him that it was getting late and suggesting he should rest early. Yet Tiantz, captivated by her charm, hesitated slightly and asked, Are you planning to stay here tonight? Rong Meiyin replied confidently, Why not? Ah Ching is in the hospital, and she would be scared staying alone in Villa No. 2. Besides, we've already slept together after getting drunk last time. So what's there to worry about? Trust me, I believe you can control yourself and won't do anything regrettable. Yet Tiantz's eyes twitched slightly, internally conflicted. Although you trust me, I'm not completely sure if I can control myself. What if I lose control and cause you harm? Rong Mei Yin seemed to realize something, glancing at Ye Tiantz before her gaze settled on his tense legs, a hint of smugness in her eyes. My goodness, am I really this irresistible? It seems I still have some tricks up my sleeve. After a moment of hesitation, she offered, If you're feeling anxious, I can help you relieve your worries. She playfully lifted her evening gown, skillfully removing her black silk stockings in front of Ye Tiantz and tossing them into his lap. With a mischievous grin, she said, These are for you to use as a towel when you shower. Once your mind is completely relaxed, you won't have any more wild thoughts. I'll go upstairs for a bath now. Good luck. With that, she ran barefoot up the stairs, leaving Ye Tiantz sitting on the sofa, holding the black stockings. He took a deep breath, gritting his teeth as he muttered, This woman is just too good at seducing people. Sooner or later, I will make her surrender and have her wipe for me with her own hands. In the corridor of a high-end private hospital, the sky was gradually brightening. Jibwa sat on a bench, looking exhausted with prominent dark circles under his eyes, smoking one cigarette after another. In the haze of smoke, he appeared extremely disheartened and lonely, lacking the confidence and arrogance he once had. At that moment, the lights in the operating room went out, and the door opened slowly as the chief surgeon walked out. Jibwa immediately extinguished his cigarette, anxiously inquiring about Rong Dashao's condition. The chief surgeon sighed, explaining that although his life was saved, his limbs were severely injured requiring a long recovery period. However, the more serious issue was the damage to his reproductive organs. Alas, it was truly tragic. Not only had he lost his ability to reproduce, but even with the option of installing prosthetic organs for urination, he would never be able to have offspring. Jibwa nodded, as he had already anticipated this outcome. After all, when Ye Tiantz kicked Rong Zidong, his reproductive organ was crushed into powder and could not be restored. The chief surgeon cautiously asked, Young Master Ji, who exactly have you offended? First, your brother Ji Ursheo's reproductive organ was destroyed, and now Rong Da Xiao suffered the same fate. What's going on? Who have you provoked? He was truly perplexed, especially since the hospital had not recently offered any discounted surgeries. Ji Bo's mouth twitched slightly. The doctor hurried back to the operating room, reminding Ji Bo not to inquire about things he shouldn't know and to quickly go check on Rong Da Xiao's condition. He was worried that Rong Da Xiao might do something worrisome after waking up from the surgery, and the consequences would be unimaginable if an accident occurred. Jibwa immediately said he would go, then turned to look out the window, trying to calm his restless heart by looking at the scenery. However, the reflection of Yi Tianzi appeared on the window, as if sneering at him mockingly. Jibwa was both fearful and angry, couldn't help but curse Yi Tianzi loudly and struck the window glass violently, causing it to shatter instantly. His fist was also pierced, and blood flowed continuously. However, Jibwa didn't feel as much pain as he thought, which made him determined to transform into a real man, no longer weak, no longer afraid. 
With a resolute look, he lit a cigarette and took a deep drag. Suddenly, a clump of cigarette ash fell on his bleeding fist, the intense pain making it unbearable for him. He jumped up in place, shouting in pain. At that moment, he was determined to be strong and not to back down anymore. As he cried out in pain, he suddenly felt a cold, invisible force approaching from a distance. His heart skipped a beat and he froze in place. Looking up towards the far end of the hospital corridor, he saw two figures slowly approaching. One was a slightly chubby middle-aged man wearing gold-rimmed glasses, a light yellow coat, and holding a folded paper fan with a gentle smile on his face. Beside him was a slightly stooped old man with squinty eyes, wearing a blue round hat and carrying a chestnut-colored small wooden box around his waist. The two men stopped in front of G. Boudouin. The middle-aged man with glasses spoke first, You must be G. Boudouin from the G family, right? His voice was warm and friendly, like a kind teacher. However, G. Boudouin felt an invisible pressure in his words, stronger than when he faced Zhao Wujie's guest officials before. Nervously, G. Boudouin replied, Yes, and may I ask who you are? The middle-aged man smiled and said, Don't be nervous. We are from the Rong family in the provincial capital. Ji Budwan breathed a sigh of relief, thinking these people were sent by Yi Tianza to assassinate him. The middle-aged man continued, I forgot to introduce ourselves. I am Luo Yuanliang, and this is Tang Bai. Upon hearing these two names, Ji Budwan's eyes widened with excitement he could hardly contain. He had heard these names many times from his father, Ji Wuli. Luo Yuanliang was one of Rong Tianli's two chief strategists, providing counsel for Rong Tianli and also a martial arts expert with unknown strength. Tang Bai, on the other hand, was a medical expert under Rong Tianli, rumored to be in the top five in the provincial capital and skilled in poison and assassination. It was because of this that Tang Bai could become Rong Tianli's worshipper. There was a clear distinction between worshippers and guest officials, with worshippers having a stronger position and more authority in the relationship than guest officials. Amazed but sensing something amiss, Ji Budwan felt puzzled. With such a serious incident involving Rong Zidong as a father, Rong Tianli should have personally come to Jiangnan City. However, whether it was when Rong Zidong was injured at the Han family last time or this time when his life was in danger, Rong Tianli only made a phone call and sent someone to handle it this approach was obviously somewhat illogical. Despite his confusion, Ji Budwan did not have the courage to raise questions. He respectfully bowed to Luo Yuanliang and Tang Bai, then truthfully reported Rong Zidong's condition. He suggested whether Rong Zidong should be sent back to the provincial capital for better treatment and rest, as the medical conditions there were better than in Jiangnan City. However, Luo Yuanliang firmly rejected his suggestion. Rong Dashao swayed his fan with a smile on his face. Second master's order was clear. He must stay in Jiangnan City. Either rectify the mistake or never return to the provincial capital again. Even if he were to die here, it would be worth it. Ji Duan widened his eyes in disbelief, never expecting Luo Yuanliang to make such a decision. Although Rong Dashao was second master's illegitimate son and already injured in such a condition, not only did he not come to take a look, but also had to rectify the mistake? Ji Duan asked in confusion, Mr. Luo, can Rong Dashao's body bear the consequences of rectifying the mistake? Luo Yuanliang smiled and said, That's why Ting Lao is here with us this time. Tung Lao touched the small wooden box at his waist and hoarsely said, As long as Dashao still has a breath, Tung can save him. Not only that, but also help him recover in the short term and even gain additional benefits. Of course, his physiological functions cannot be restored. Upon hearing this, Ji Duan was astonished. Tung Lao's medical skills were so brilliant, it was almost miraculous. He came up with a plan to invite Tung Lao to treat his younger brother, Ji Shao, as he had not fully recovered from the severe injuries suffered at the Han family the last time. However, Tung Lao continued, but the cost of Da Shao's recovery is the loss of 30 years of lifespan. Ji Duan was speechless. 30 years of lifespan? Such a heavy price to pay. He cautiously asked, Will Dashao agree? If it were me, I would rather take time to recover slowly than sacrifice 30 years of lifespan. After all, life is priceless and every day counts. 
Luo Yuanliang smiled and said, he has no choice but to agree because it's second master's order. If he is unwilling to pay even this price, then he holds no value to second master, and we can only send him on his way. Although his smile remained, the hint of killing intent in his words made Jibwa Duan nervous. He finally understood that in Rong Tianli's eyes, Rong Zidong had long become a discarded son, and even as an only child, he was insignificant to Rong Tianli. However, Jibwa Duan still felt that Rong Tianli was too ruthless, instilling fear in people. Just then, Tang Lao coldly said, I will treat him while Da Xiao is still unconscious. With that, he walked into the operating room with the small wooden box on his back. Luo Yuanliang smiled slyly and said, We came this time to help you inherit the position of the Jibwa family head and handle the 10 billion order, as well as for revenge. Do you understand? Jibwa Duan nodded. Understood. It shouldn't be a problem for the younger generation to inherit the position of the Jibwa family head, and the 10 billion order has been signed and can start any time. Yi Tianxi was taken away by the martial arts action team. It seems difficult to escape for the time being, especially hearing that the fierce blood rose may personally intervene. Luo Yuanliang shook his head. Then came the exact news that Yi Tianxi had been released unharmed. Yi Bo's eyes widened in surprise. He knew a little about Yi Tianxi's strength, but could he really surpass the martial arts action team? How could he be released so easily? Luo Yuanliang explained that the specific reasons were unclear, but it was said that Lin Yuanxuan from the Lin family had found the leader of the martial arts action team in Tianan province, and that's why Blood Rose released him. I see. Jibo nodded, finally understanding. Mr. Luo, do you have any plans to retaliate against Yi Tianxi and his group? My father is dead. Zhao Wujin is also gone. I can't bear this humiliation. Ji Bo's eyes flickered with the flames of hatred. His father, Ji Wuli, was killed by Yi Tianxi last night, and his body is still in the freezer. He decided not to hold a funeral, but to wait until he kills Yi Tianxi in the future before handling the funeral. Otherwise, he will never accept it. Luo Yuanliang shook his fan, squinted his eyes slightly. Your previous failure against Yi Tianxi was mainly due to being too impatient and blindly confident. Faced with an opponent with hidden cards like this, one must act cautiously, probe their strengths and weaknesses, and find their vulnerabilities in order to deliver a fatal blow. Although Ji Bo did not fully understand the meaning of this sentence, he knew that the other party was a trusted assistant of Rong Tianli, skilled in planning. With him around, there should be no problem. So he complimented and said with a smile, I will follow Mr. Luo's guidance, he. At 12 o'clock noon, inside Villa, one of the purple gold celestial palace, Yi Tianzi slowly opened his eyes. Last night, he had stayed up almost all night to complete a task, and now he was utterly exhausted. After taking a shower, he lay down on the bed and fell into a deep sleep. Just as he was about to get up, the bedroom door was gently pushed open. Rong Meiyin walked in, nonchalantly jumped onto the bed, and lay down next to Yi Tianzi. Since there were no women's pajamas in Yi Tianzi's house, Rong Meiyin was only wearing his loose white t-shirt and oversized boxers after her shower. The t-shirt neckline was loose, and with a slight tilt of her head, one could catch a glimpse of her enticing curves. Yi Tianzi couldn't help but recall their scene on the sofa last night, a surge of heat rising in his heart. Rong Meiyin noticed Yi Tianzi's reaction, her cheeks slightly flushed, and asked, didn't we already take care of that last night? Why? Yi Tianzi remained composed and calmly replied, It just shows that I'm in good health. No need to go to the bathroom again. It will behave itself. Rong Meiyin bit her lip, her eyes carrying a hint of temptation as she said, Do you want me to help you? Yi Tianzi's body tensed slightly. Was such a stimulating topic starting in the early morning? He hesitantly asked, Are you serious? Rong Meiyin earnestly replied, I always follow through on what I say. I've thought about it last night. As a man, you have needs, and I trust you. We both know what we want. I need your help for revenge, and this is the reward you deserve. Money and power mean nothing to you, so this is all I can offer. I hope you won't look down on it. Yi Tianzi swallowed hard, secretly praising Rong Mayan's stunning beauty and hot figure. How could he look down on her? After reading the letter left by his master, Yi Tianzi decided to accept these nine fiancés. 
The task entrusted by his master was of great importance, and he couldn't refuse. After his divorce, he decided to free himself from constraints. The nine fiancés left by his master were all beautiful, saving him the trouble of choosing. But that didn't mean he would be frivolous. He would cherish each relationship. Among these nine fiancés, Han Ruayun trusted him greatly and possessed the pinnacle he wanted to climb. Although Rong Mei-in used him to help with revenge, they trusted each other, and their relationship gradually became ambiguous. For Yi Tianzi, these two engagements have become a foregone conclusion, and he has no intention of canceling them. He has decided to go with the flow and accept this arrangement. As for his third fiancé, Lu Ruyin, Yi Tianzi doesn't have a particularly strong impression of this woman who is both arrogant and prejudiced. However, to his surprise, at yesterday's bidding conference, when Rong Zidong insulted Han Ruayun, she stood up to stop him and got into a dispute with Rong Zidong. This action suggests that she is not entirely bad. As for the other fiancés, he has not met or learned about them yet. The only one he has some information about is Lin Yuanxuan's son, Lin Yuyan, who is currently in the provincial capital and is said to be the most beautiful woman in Tianan province. Yi Tianxi knows nothing about her personality traits. Getting to know these nine fiancés one by one will obviously take a lot of time. He has decided to face it calmly and take it slow. In addition, his master reminded him in a letter that he must not have any relationship with Lu Yinji, or the consequences would be unimaginable. Yi Tianxi admits that Lu Yinji is the most seductive and captivating woman he has ever met. However, he also keenly feels that she is like a thorny black rose, hiding deadly dangers. He has decided to stay away from her and not let emotions cloud his judgment. But he doesn't understand what goals and secrets Lu Yinji is hiding that would make his master specially warn him like that. As he pondered this, Rong Mei-in suddenly interrupted his thoughts. Hey, what are you daydreaming about? Are you thinking about other women? Yi Tianxi awkwardly smiled and denied her speculation. Then, he felt his body stiffen, realizing that his little Tianxi was gently grabbed by Rong Mei-in. Although separated by pants, he could feel the warmth of her palm. Looking at Rong Mei-in, he noticed a mix of shock and shyness in her blushing face. Perhaps it was nervousness, fear, or even a hint of excitement that made her voice tremble. I, I haven't done this, can you, teach me? Such expressions and actions almost made Yi Tianxi lose control. He gasped and replied, sure, but first, you have to put your hand in, not through the pants, or it will rub against the skin. Hmm, Rong Mei-in replied with a slight tremble. Yi Tianxi reached out his right hand to hold her right hand ready to guide her to explore the territory of Little Tianxi together. However, just then, the phone rang, breaking the gradually heating atmosphere between the two. Rong Mei-in apologized, Sorry, I have to take this call. Yi Tianxi forced a smile, realizing that whenever he was about to enjoy some benefits, a phone call would always interrupt. It seems he must remember to turn off his phone in advance to avoid such awkward situations in the future. Rong Mei-in answered the phone. Hello? This is Rong Mei-in. After listening to the other party, her expression became serious. Got it. I'll be right there. She hung up the phone. Rong Mei-in quickly apologized to Yi Tianza, her tone filled with remorse. She informed Yi Tianza that there was an emergency at the company and she had to rush over immediately, feeling very sorry about it. She promised to personally help Yi Tianza clean his gun next time and asked him not to be angry. Yi Tianzi shook his head, saying he wasn't angry, but instead asked what the emergency situation was at the company. Rong Mei-in didn't hide anything, her expression serious as she told Yi Tianzi that there was an accident at the company that resulted in casualties. Yi Tianzi frowned and asked who had passed away. Rong Mei-in said in a solemn tone that it was the company's vice general manager, Diao Yele. The news of Diao Yele's death came as a surprise to Yi Tianzi. He remembered Diao Yele leaving triumphantly after the bidding conference yesterday. How could such bad news suddenly come? And their bet had not even been settled yet. Rong Meiyang furrowed her brows, her expression solemn. The HR manager informed them that Diao Yele had died from jumping off a building. As the vice general manager of Fengrong Group, his unexpected death would surely have a significant impact. Rong Meiyang decided to go to the company to find out more. 
Yitayan squinted his eyes, a gut feeling telling him that things were definitely not as simple as they appeared. So he decided to accompany Rong Meiyang to the company. Forty minutes later, they arrived at Fengrong Group. The entire building was surrounded by police tape, and many employees stood outside discussing in hushed tones. Why is Vice General Diao suddenly gone? I heard his body was in a terrible condition, extremely frightening. I even threw up my lunch. Although they said he jumped off, could it not be a murder? When Rong Meiyang appeared, the crowd immediately quieted down, but the fear on their faces could not be concealed. At this moment, the company's HR director hurried over, looking flustered. Rong Meiyang furrowed her brows and asked, What exactly happened? The HR manager replied, Just over an hour ago, during lunchtime, everyone was downstairs eating when a loud noise was heard, and Vice General Diao jumped from the building and died. I received the news immediately and informed you. The police also arrived at the scene quickly, and the body has been taken away. Rong Meiyang continued to inquire. Did anyone see Diao Yele before he jumped? Did he show any unusual behavior? The HR manager answered, Half an hour before the jump, everyone saw him. He seemed normal and even joked with everyone. Here, his expression became somewhat awkward, and he glanced unintentionally at Yitayans. Rong Meiyang pressed on. What did he say? Spit it out. The HR manager paused for a moment and continued, Vice General Diao mentioned that the bid at the conference failed yesterday, and Mr. Yi represented the company but lost a 10 billion order. According to the bet, he would become the new general manager and even mentioned holding a celebration party. Rong Meiyang snorted, a hint of displeasure flashing in her eyes. Yitayans felt somewhat disappointed, as he had planned to teach that guy a lesson, but he didn't expect him to pass away so soon, which was a bit anticlimactic. However, from the HR manager's words, it was clear that Diao Yele was happy not long ago, so suicide was unlikely. That leaves only accidental falling or murder as possibilities. At this moment, a female law enforcement officer stepped out of the police tape. She looked to be around 26 or 27, tall, with a cold and stunningly beautiful face. She was astonished to find that her bust size had reached a D cup. What a natural gift. She solemnly asked the HR manager, does your company have someone named Yi Tianxi? Yi Tianxi stepped forward confidently and replied, Yes, I am Yi Tianxi. She is Wu Muhan, the captain of the first criminal investigation team of the Law Enforcement Bureau in Jiangnan City. She looked serious, her eyes alertly scanning Yi Tianxi, and then introduced herself, We found a suicide note in the pocket of Mr. Diao just now. Mentioning the suicide note, people around showed surprised expressions. Did Vice President Diao foresee his own death and leave a suicide note? Wu Muhong continued to explain. In Mr. Diao's suicide note, it was mentioned that a man named Yi Tianxi suddenly called and threatened him to jump off the building or harm his family. Therefore, Mr. Diao had no choice but to jump off. Upon hearing this, there was a sudden uproar around. So that's the truth. Vice President Diao was really unlucky. I understand now. It must be that Yi Tianxi lost the bet, unwilling to lose the position of general manager. So he forced Vice President Diao to jump off. How ruthless. I didn't expect that Mr. Yi looks sunny and handsome, but his heart is so dark. Hearing the discussions around, Rong Meiyin frowned and said coldly, Quiet! Mr. Yi has been with me all the time and has never called Diao Yi Lei. Don't be misled. Most employees looked at each other and remained silent. But the middle-level employees who supported Diao Yi Lei angrily said, Rong Mi. In the crowd, a voluptuous woman in a super short skirt stood silently on the side, seemingly ignored. Suddenly, she took out her phone and sent a message. Yi Tians and Mei Yandong have already gone to the Enforcement Bureau. It's time to fulfill your promise, isn't it? The phone made a ding sound, receiving a reply. I have transferred 5 million to your account. Please leave Jiangnan City immediately and never return, or you will be destined to embark on the road of no return with Diao Yele. The woman looked at the message, a hint of complex emotions flashing in her eyes, as if her heart harbored many untold stories. At the Enforcement Bureau in Jiangnan City, Yi Tianxi and Rong Meiyin were brought to the interrogation room and immediately separated to provide their testimonies. Yi Tianxi sat in the interrogation room, 
facing the female enforcement team leader Wu Mu Huan and a young male recorder. Wu Mu Huan asked sternly, Please tell me your name. Yi Tianxi replied, My name is Yi Tianxi, 26 years old. Then Wu Mu Huan asked again, Gender? Yi Tianxi paused for a moment, then mischievously said, Why don't you guess? Wu Mu Huan scolded coldly, When I ask you a question, you should answer seriously. This is not a place for jokes. Yi Tianxi thought to himself, Is this woman in a bad mood? If it weren't for her D cup in front, I wouldn't bother with her. Where were you before this happened? What were you doing? Is there anyone who can testify for you? Wu Mu Huan asked. Yi Tianxi smiled faintly, raised his eyebrows, and said, Last night, I was sleeping at home with Rong Mei Yin. Wu Mu Huan frowned. Rong Mei Yin was a prominent woman, a queen of the business world, and the eldest daughter of the Rong family. Her background, appearance, figure, and talent were impeccable. How could she be involved with Yi Tianxi? who only seemed slightly handsome on the surface without any other outstanding qualities. It's like putting a flower in cow dung. Where were you before that? What were you doing? Wu Mu Huan asked again. Yi Tianxi casually replied, Last night, I attended a bidding business meeting at the Cloud Top Hotel. What I did specifically was just killing a few dozen people. Wu Mu Huan's face changed when she heard this, and the recorder next to her almost shook his hand and made a mistake in writing. Killing people? Dozens of them? Is he joking? The recorder said seriously, This is an interrogation room. Please be serious. If you really killed dozens of people, how could you still be standing here talking to us? Yi Tianxi calmly said, What I said is true, whether you believe it or not is up to you. If you don't believe me, you can call Lin Wanda and Deputy Director Wang. Wu Mu Huan and the recorder were shocked again. Does this guy have a mental problem? After killing so many people, he can still ask Lin Shu and Deputy Director Wang to be witnesses? Who would believe this if the news got out? Wu Mu Huan slammed the table in anger and said sternly, Yi Tianxi, this is the Enforcement Bureau, not a place for you to play tricks. I advise you to confess honestly, otherwise. Before she could finish her sentence, the door was suddenly pushed open. A middle-aged man with a square face walked in, looking anxious and worried. He was none other than Wang Guoqiang, the deputy director of the Enforcement Bureau in Jiangnan City. Wu Mu Huan and the recorder stood up and saluted when they saw Wang Guoqiang, deputy director. However, Wang Guoqiang ignored them and walked straight to Yi Tianxi, apologizing, Mr. Yi, I'm really sorry. It was a mistake on the part of my subordinates to bring you in for questioning as a suspect. Please forgive us. Wang Guoqiang's forehead was covered with sweat and he was internally anxious and uneasy. After all, Yi Tianxi was a respected guest of the Lin family. Even Lin Shishou and Lin Yuanshuan treated him with great respect. Yi Tianxi was taken to the police station? This is not good. If this news reaches the Lin family, he will face tremendous backlash. Not only that, based on Yi Tianxi's performance at the Cloud Top Hotel last night, it was simply unforgettable. Killing someone with a method simpler than killing a chicken, if he really wanted to deal with Diao Yele, there was no need to go through the trouble of forcing him to jump off a building over the phone. Obviously, they got the wrong person this time. Yi Tianxi smiled slightly. Deputy Director Wang, you are too kind. This Captain Wu also enforces the law impartially and has not made any mistakes, so there is no need to apologize. Yes. Wang Guoqiang nodded respectfully. This scene made Wu Mu Huan and the recorder next to him feel incredulous. Wow, this person named Yi Tianxi actually knows Deputy Director Wang? Did he really cause so many tragedies at the Cloud Top Hotel last night? It's unbelievable. Wang Guoqiang turned around and ordered, Mu Huan, the questioning about Mr. Yi ends here. I can confirm that he has nothing to do with the death of Diao Yele. Wu Mu Huan said somewhat reluctantly, Deputy Director, but the suicide note in Diao Yele's pocket, Wang Guoqiang interrupted, it's just a suicide note, not enough evidence. This matter ends here. Do you understand? Looking at Wang Guoqiang's serious expression, Wu Mu Huan nodded, although she still felt unwilling, but she nodded. However, her gaze towards Yi Tianxi still carried a hint of vigilance. Yi Tianxi stood up and said, Deputy Director Wang, business is business. I came to the Law Enforcement Bureau just to find out the truth about Diao Yele's death. 
Wang Guoqiang asked tentatively Mr. Yi, what do you mean? Yi Tianxi replied, could you please take me to see Diao Yele's body, Deputy Director Wang? This, according to the regulations, non-case handlers are not allowed to touch the body. But considering Yi Tianxi's identity, he agreed. Okay, no problem, I will take you there. The group walked out of the interrogation room and met Rong Meiyin coming over. From her, Yi Tianxi learned that Deputy Director Wang was contacted by her. Wang Guoqiang said, Mr. Yi, let's go. Wang Guoqiang and Wu Mu Huan walked ahead, while Yi Tianxi and Rong Meiyin followed behind. Wu Mu Huan couldn't help but ask, Deputy Director, what is the background of this person named Yi? Is it worth treating him like this? Wang Guoqiang replied, I cannot disclose his identity. Just know that Mr. Yi is a powerful martial artist and our law enforcement bureau cannot control him. In the future, you will have to learn to be polite to him. A martial artist? Hearing this, a hint of excitement flashed in Wu Mu Huan's eyes. Because she herself is also a martial artist, and now her strength has reached the later stage of a warrior, no one in the law enforcement bureau in Jiangan City can match her. Wu Mu Hong is a person who loves martial arts and often enjoys making friends with opponents to spar and compete. Wang Guoqiang quickly reminded her to be careful and not act recklessly. He believed that Wu Mu Hong didn't need to fear Yi Tianza at all because, in his opinion, Yi Tianza didn't seem like a true martial arts master. Wang Guoqiang could see through Wu Mu Hong's thoughts, but he also knew it wasn't the time to persuade her now. After all, what happened at the Cloud Summit Hotel last night was confidential, and Wu Mu Hong was unaware of it. So her current attitude was not a true reflection. Shortly after, they arrived at the morgue. A forensic doctor had already completed the examination of Diao Yele's body. The forensic doctor reported to them that Diao Yele died from a skull fracture and massive bleeding caused by falling from the rooftop. Wang Guoqiang nodded, signaling the forensic doctor to leave. He then asked Yi Tianza if he still wanted to take a look at the body. Yi Tianza nodded and walked to the iron bed. Diao Yele's body had been smashed beyond recognition, and with his obese body, he looked like a dead pig on a chopping board. Although such a scene might be nauseating to the average person, Yi Tianza seemed completely indifferent. He walked around the body expressionlessly and noticed some fresh blood stains still remaining on the iron bed. Yi Tianza picked up a piece of blood stain with his index finger, sniffed it in front of his nose, and his eyes suddenly narrowed. He recognized that it was. Facing this scene, Wu Mu Hong couldn't help but complain. Since the cause of death has been determined, why are you still lingering here? Yi Tianza asked in response, Who told you the cause of death has been determined? Wu Mu Hong replied, didn't the forensic doctor say that Diao Yele died from a head injury caused by falling from a building? Are there any other causes of death? Yi Tianza smiled faintly and said, Yes, Diao Yele's cause of death is indeed more than just that. Yi Tianzi's words surprised the three present. Wu Mu Huan frowned and said, Nonsense. Diao Yele clearly fell from upstairs and died from the fall. The forensic doctor has already concluded, and there are many eyewitnesses at the scene. How could there be another cause of death? Wang Guoqiang and Rong Meiyin also looked puzzled. Yi Tianxi calmly explained that although it appeared that Diao Yile died from falling off the building, he actually jumped because his body was controlled by poison, including the suicide note, which was also written under control. Upon hearing this, Wu Mu Huan immediately expressed doubt. You're talking nonsense. What kind of poison can make someone write a suicide note and jump off a building? It's ridiculous. However, Wang Guoqiang furrowed his brows slightly, recalling the incident at the Linsher Hospital when Yi Tianxi helped Lin Yuanxuan treat a patient, and Lin Jiaoyang suddenly went crazy, almost hurting someone, only to discover that she was under the control of a poisonous substance. So he asked, Mr. Yi, is this poison also a form of control? Yi Tianxi shook his head and said, No, this is a controlling agent called Mandala Water. After taking it, one loses subjective consciousness, and once the person who administered the drug issues a command, the person who took it will blindly obey. I detected the presence of mandala water in Diao Yile's blood, indicating that someone drugged him, ordered him to write a suicide note, and jump off the building. I never expected to see mandala water in Jiangan City. This substance is quite rare. Wang Guoqiang suddenly realized how incredulous this sounded compared to simple poisoning. 
Rong Mei-Yin furrowed her brows, pondering, If that's the case, who is the one poisoning him, and what is their purpose? Wu Mu Huan, still incredulous, said, Huh, Mandala Water? I've been working in the law enforcement team for so long, and I've never heard of such a powerful poison. Yi Tianxi calmly said, Not hearing about it only shows your lack of knowledge. Reading more is the right path. Wu Mu Huan angrily retorted, What did you say? Her eyes widened, her temper flared up, and she clenched her fists as if ready to fight. Wang Guoqiang quickly grabbed her arm and reprimanded, Mu Huan, calm down. Wu Mu Huan, displeased, said, Deputy Director, do you easily believe Mr. Ye's claim that Diao Yi Lei was drugged? Everything needs evidence. Where is his evidence? Wang Guoqiang, somewhat embarrassed, said, Finding evidence is simple. Mandala water can only be put in a drink, and its effects last for 10 minutes. As long as we investigate the drink Diao Yi Lei had in the 10 minutes before jumping, we will naturally find evidence. Wu Mu Huan sneered, I'll tell you. We sealed off Diao Yi Lei's office immediately after receiving the report. Nothing inside has been touched. To find out what he drank, it's a piece of cake. I'll have someone find it. She immediately made a call and her subordinates brought a sealed bag containing a blue thermos. The law enforcement officer said, This thermos was found on the deceased's desk. According to the staff, the deceased usually drank wolfberry water from it. Wu Mu Huan took the bag, opened the thermos lid, and there was still some wolfberry water residue inside. She sniffed it. A cold voice sounded, the wolfberry water was just ordinary wolfberry water, without any special taste. Could it have been drugged? Yi Tianxi took the thermos cup, gently sniffed it, furrowed his brows slightly, and the corners of his mouth lifted slightly. He said, If this cup of water is really laced with mandrik water, are you ready? Wu Mu Huan disdainfully said, Oh, are you challenging me? Yi Tianxi nodded in agreement, Yes, I can accept your challenge, as long as you can prove what you said is true. If I lose, then I will listen to one thing you say. Wu Mu Huan's eyes flashed with a hint of provocation. I heard you are a martial arts master, so if you lose, you have to spar with me. Yi Tianxi couldn't help but smile and nodded. All right, I promise you. Wu Mu Huan raised her chin high. Come on, how are you going to prove it? Yi Tianxi smiled and replied, You drink this cup of water, then I will give you a command. If you can't resist it, then it proves that I win. Wu Mu Huan unhesitatingly took the cup and drank it all. After drinking it, she stood with her hands on her hips, looking a bit disgruntled. She provocatively said, Yi Tianxi, if you have the ability, come and command me. I want to see what you can do. At this moment, Wu Mu Huan felt clear-headed and her body was normal. It seemed that there was nothing wrong with this cup of wolfberry water. Yi Tianxi smiled and said, Don't worry, you will soon find out. He picked up his phone, started recording, and aimed it at Wu Mu Huan. Why are you recording? Wu Mu Huan was a bit displeased. This is invading my privacy. Yi Tianxi waved his hand to quiet her. Don't speak. I'm just collecting evidence in case someone denies it later. Wu Mu Huan snorted and didn't speak again. She really wanted to know what Yi Tianxi was up to. Yi Tianxi walked up to Wu Mu Huan, leaned close to her ear, and asked softly, What is your name? Wu Mu Huan answered without hesitation, Wu Mu Huan. She was a bit puzzled why she was so obedient to his question. Yi Tianxi continued, How old are you? 27 years old. Wu Mu Huan answered without hesitation again. She was surprised to find herself so compliant. Yi Tianxi asked, Gender? Female, Wu Mu Huan answered, her cheeks slightly red. She angrily tried to close her mouth, but found herself unable to move. She was a bit confused, not understanding what was happening. Even Wang Guoqiang and Rong Meiyin beside them were shocked. Wang Guoqiang exclaimed, She's actually being controlled? Yi Tianxi smiled and said, Of course, just temporarily. To make Captain Wu believe, I have one more command. A hint of cunning flashed in his eyes, Wu Mu Huan. I command you to take a piece of paper. Right, I am a little dog, ten times. Wu Mu Huan felt uncomfortable but her body uncontrollably walked to the table, picked up a pen, and wrote, I am a little dog, ten times. After finishing writing, she fully understood Yi Tianxi's ability. 
She was about to give up, feeling defeated and embarrassed, not wanting to continue the humiliation. However, she couldn't bring herself to speak, only able to look at Yi Tianzi with a bewildered expression, filled with helplessness. Wang Guoqiang asked with some confusion, Mr. Yi, does Wu Han have something to say? Yi Tianzi stared into Wu Han's eyes, suddenly realizing, I understand now, she must still not believe in the existence of Mandala water. In that case, then, a sly smile crept onto his lips. Then, he teased, Next, I'll trouble Captain Wu to read out loud the content you just wrote. Wu Mu Huan was completely puzzled. She had already decided to admit defeat. So why did she suddenly become so unwilling to accept it? She suspected that Yi Tianxi might be intentionally retaliating, which made her furious. She vowed that she would never utter those words written on the paper, even if she were beaten to death. However, despite her thoughts, her body uncontrollably obeyed Yi Tianxi's command. Picking up the white paper, she loudly proclaimed, I am a dog. I am a dog. I am a dog. Her voice echoed in the autopsy room, repeating the phrase over and over again ten times. Rong Meiyin and Wang Guoqiang couldn't help but hold back their laughter, while Yi Tianxi couldn't stop smiling, teasing, Ha ha, Captain Wu is truly full of momentum. Shouting such words so convincingly, she is truly a pillar of the country, a model for women. Wu Mu Huan's cheeks flushed with anger, her chest heaving violently. Having been in the law enforcement team for so long, she had always been strong-willed and had never been humiliated. Becoming the captain of the criminal investigation team of the law enforcement bureau at the young age of 27, she was highly respected. How could she tolerate such humiliation? However, the effect of the mandala water rendered her immobile, leaving her with no outlet for her anger. Her eyes were red from holding back tears, almost on the brink of bursting into tears. Wang Guoqiang quickly stepped in to ease the tension. He said to Yi Tianxi, Sir, Mu Huan knows she has admitted defeat. Can we just let it go? Yi Tianxi also realized that it was time to end the joke. Since Wang Guoqiang interceded, he decided to let it go. As for the toxicity of the mandala water, the effect of the mandala water only lasted for 10 minutes, and most of the time had already passed. Once the drug's effects wore off, she would regain her freedom. Wang Guoqiang breathed a sigh of relief. After all, Wu Mu Huan was his trusted confidant, with a promising future. Her identity was complex, and if something went wrong, he would find himself in a very passive situation. Calming down, Wang Guoqiang analyzed, Now we can confirm that Diao Yele's death was caused by poisoning. We just need to find out who had the greatest opportunity to poison him. Rong Meiyin pondered for a moment and furrowed her brows slightly, saying, I thought of someone, Qian Rong. She was Diao Yele's personal secretary, and they seemed to have a relationship unknown to others. If we want to find out who had the greatest opportunity to poison the thermos, I think she is the prime suspect. Wang Guoqiang nodded and said, Good, I'll send someone to bring her in. He then turned to Wu Mu Huan and said, Mu Huan, this matter is up to you. Before he could finish his sentence, Wu Mu Huan suddenly trembled and regained her freedom. She then stood up abruptly and rushed towards Yi Tianxi. Bastard, you deliberately fooled me. I will make you pay. She threw a punch towards Yi Tianxi's face, but the seemingly swift blow was easily caught by Yi Tianxi. It was like an adult catching a kindergarten child's fist. Wu Mu Huan looked bewildered, filled with disbelief. Even though she knew Yi Tianxi was a martial arts expert and had considered his strength to be extraordinary, now it seemed unbelievable. Yi Tianxi couldn't believe that the other party easily defused her surprise attack without any precautions. He grabbed her fist and pretended to be disappointed, saying, this soft fist probably won't be enough to impress me. How annoying. It's not over yet. Wu Mu Huan, unwilling, gritted her teeth and kicked towards Yi Tianxi's legs. Wow, using a cheap shot like a groin kick, huh? No sportsmanship. Yi Tianxi quickly dodged the attack. Without hesitation, he directly grabbed Wu Mu Huan's right fist and lifted it upwards, exerting force to rotate her body 180 degrees in place, making Wu Mu Huan's backside face him. Huh. Before Wu Mu Huan could react, Yi Tianxi lifted his right foot 
and fiercely kicked towards her backside. Duong. This kick sent Wu Mu Huan stumbling forward and falling flat on her face. She looked like she had eaten something nasty. Ouch. Wu Mu Huan screamed in pain, feeling the fiery sting on her cheek. She wanted to save face, but ended up exposing a vulnerability. All she could feel was the burning pain on her backside, probably leaving a shoe print. How embarrassing. Gritting her teeth against the intense pain, she struggled to stand up, glaring at Yi Tianzi. Bastard. Let's go again. Wang Guoqiang quickly stepped in to stop them, reprimanding. Enough. You are no match for Mr. Yi. Don't invite trouble on yourself. Wu Mu Huan, unwilling to give in, said, But I? No, buts. I order you to apologize to Mr. Yi immediately, then bring Qian Rong over. Follow the orders. I won't apologize. Wu Mu Huan was defiant. Wang Guoqiang raised an eyebrow. Oh, you're defying my orders now? As a law enforcement officer, obeying superiors is a duty. Despite her inner reluctance, Wu Mu Huan could only bite her lip and apologize to Yi Tianzi, glaring at him before limping away, holding her sore backside. Wang Guoqiang sighed. Mr. Yi, that's just how Mu Huan is. She means no harm. Don't stoop to her level. Yi Tianzi shrugged indifferently. She's quite amusing. I won't take it to heart. Wang Guoqiang remarked. In the Enforcement Bureau, Mu Huan's tough attitude is well known. You're the first to give her such a unique evaluation. He suggested, let's not linger here. Come to my office and wait for the results? Sure, thank you. Vice Director Wang. Yi Tianzi and Rong Meiyan followed Wang Guoqiang to his office, where he made tea for them. Fifteen minutes later, Wang Guoqiang received a call from Wu Mu Huan. Soon, his expression changed slightly, and he said solemnly, continue to increase the search efforts, especially at key transportation hubs like the high-speed railway station and airport. We must not let her escape. After hanging up, Yi Tianzi and Rong Meiyan exchanged a glance. Yi Tianzi asked, Qian Rong ran away? Wang Guoqiang nodded. Yes, after Mu Huan went to the company, she found out that Qian Rong had left long ago. Some employees provided clues that before Diao Yele jumped off the building, Qian Rong had indeed been in his office, further proving she was the one behind the drugging. Rong Meiyin narrowed her eyes. Rong Meiyin seemed to have something on her mind, and she quietly said to Deputy Director Wang, Deputy Director Wang, we still have some matters to attend to so we'll take our leave now. All right, shall I escort you? Deputy Director Wang warmly offered. Rong Meiyin shook her head and said, No need. Please inform us if there is any news about Qian Rong. Of course. Yi Tianza and Rong Meiyin left the Enforcement Bureau. Rong Meiyin furrowed her brows and said, Don't you find this situation a bit strange? Qian Rong and Diao Yele were in a romantic relationship. Why would she suddenly drug him and order him to jump off a building? Yi Tianzi smiled faintly and said, It's actually quite simple. There must be someone behind the scenes instructing Qian Rong to do this. Rong Meiyin nodded in agreement. That's what I think too. After all, Qian Rong is just an ordinary person. She wouldn't have the courage to do such a thing on her own. But who is manipulating her? As they pondered, Rong Meiyin's phone suddenly rang. She glanced at the caller ID and answered the call. Hello, Elder Dai. What's the matter? After receiving the message from the other end of the phone, her expression immediately turned serious. Nodding, she said, I understand. I'll leave right away. After hanging up the phone, she sighed and said to Yi Tianza, There's been some trouble within the family. Elder Dai asked me to return immediately, so I have to head to the provincial capital now. Yi Tianzi raised his eyebrows and asked, What's wrong? Why the rush? Rong Meiyin explained that Dairo Yeliai's death had already spread to the family. As a senior executive of the company, his sudden death had caused an uproar within the family, with the uncle's people inciting public opinion and accusing her of using unsavory means to force him to death. Rong Meiyin shook her head and added, Not only that, but what happened at the Cloud Summit Hotel last night has also caused a stir within the family. Grandfather has instructed the elder to notify me to go back and explain clearly so I have to go back. Don't worry, I'll definitely be back in just a week. Yi Tianzi said after hearing, now your family is in chaos, it's too dangerous for you to go back alone. Why don't I accompany you to the provincial capital? 
Rong Meiyin shook her head and refused, no need. Although the uncle's power is strong, he dare not act rashly in front of grandfather and the elder. And you staying in Jiangnan City can investigate the mastermind behind the murder of Dairo Yeliai and also handle the 10 billion order. Although others don't know what your plan is, since you said you can secure the 10 billion order, even though the contract has already been signed by the Ji family, I still believe you can do it. Yi Tianxi looked at Rong Meiyin firmly and nodded. All right, I won't let you down. Suddenly, he remembered something. Let me introduce you to a WeChat account. In case you run into trouble, maybe she can help. Who? Rong Meiyin asked. Su Qianwei. Ye Tianji replied. Rong Meiyin felt slightly surprised. Her? She was puzzled. Didn't Su Qianwei let Yi Tianxi go last night because of Master Lin's relationship? How come now they not only exchanged WeChat, but also intimate? Perhaps they had known each other for a long time? Despite her doubts, the clever her did not ask more. She was clear about her position in Yi Tianxi's heart. She smiled and leaned close to Yi Tianxi's ear, saying, For this week, please bear with me, and when I come back, I will help you fulfill that promise. Yi Tianxi nodded slightly embarrassed. Soon, the driver from Fangrong Group came to pick up Rong Meiyin to go to the provincial capital. Yi Tianxi stretched lazily, looked at the time. It was already three in the afternoon. Just as he was thinking about what to do next, his phone rang. It was a call from Lu Ruyin. He hesitated for a moment, but finally answered the phone. Hello. What's up? Lu Ruyin on the other end of the phone breathed a sigh of relief. Sister, I thought you wouldn't answer my call. Can we meet? I have something to say to you in person. Can it be said over the phone? Do we have to meet in person? Of course, it has to be said in person. Sister, I used to be a big star, a super beauty. It's not too much to ask you to meet me, right? All right, send me the address on WeChat. Yi Tianxi finally agreed. Last night she helped Han Ruayun. He owed her a favor. He should give her some face. Soon, Lu Ruyin sent the address. Yi Tianxi decided to flag down a car to go to the Blues coffee shop. Twenty minutes later, he walked into the coffee shop and saw Lu Ruyin wearing sunglasses, elegantly sitting in the innermost seat. She was wearing an open-collared white shirt, showcasing her slender neckline and delicate collarbones. The tight jeans accentuated her charming leg curves, with clever shoelaces wrapped around her ankles, contrasting sharply with her fair skin. Lu Ruyin's toes were slightly curled, revealing a hint of sexy charm. She was undoubtedly an extraordinary star, with impeccable looks and temperament that captivated people. Although her E cup in front was padded and actually only a C cup, in real life, it was considered medium to large. Yi Tianxi sat down opposite Lu Ruyin without hesitation and asked her why she insisted on talking face to face. Lu Ruyin took off her sunglasses, gazed at Yi Tianxi for a moment, and sighed, saying that since she came to Jiangnan City, she couldn't figure out Yi Tianxi more and more. Yi Tianxi, puzzled, furrowed his brows and asked for her intentions. After hesitating for a moment, Lu Ruyin continued, saying that last night, Xiao Qingcheng returned to her room, looking lost and started crying as soon as she closed the door. The sound of her crying could be heard from outside. Yi Tianxi raised an eyebrow and asked, So what? Lu Ruyin rolled her eyes and said, That's Xiao Qingcheng, an arrogant, confident woman. If she cries, what does it mean? Do you understand? Yi Tianxi calmly replied, It means she feels wronged. Lu Ruyin dissatisfiedly said that was not her point. Lu Ruyin sighed and went on to say that Xiao Qingcheng was hit hard. Although unwilling to admit it, she realized that since the divorce, Yi Tianxi had become much more outstanding than she had imagined, even surpassing her. This huge contrast made it hard for her to accept, coupled with the continuous appearance of beautiful and outstanding women around Yi Tianxi, each one provoking and mocking her, who could bear it? Yi Tianxi drank his coffee indifferently, saying he didn't care. Lu Ruyin questioned him if he didn't feel any heartache at all. Yi Tianxi calmly said that in their three years of marriage, she had never let him touch her. So where was the affection between them? Lu Ruyin was speechless for a moment after hearing this, but upon careful consideration of Yi Tianxi's words, they made sense. Any man who had been married for three years without enjoying the pleasures of husband and wife, only to end up being divorced, would find it hard to let go. 
especially with the bevy of beauties around Yi Tianxi. Losing Xiao Qingcheng didn't seem like a big deal either. She felt sorry for Xiao Qingqing, as if she hated that she couldn't change the situation. As Yi Tianxi got up to leave, he was stopped by Lu Ruyan. Lu Ruyan stopped and said mysteriously, Last night after you left, a woman named Lu Yinji came looking for Qingcheng. This news sent shivers down everyone's spine, as if it concealed some unknown secrets. The sudden arrival of the news took Yi Tianxi by surprise. Last night, Lu Yinji found Qingcheng and poured out her heart to her. Afterwards, Lu Ruyan truthfully recounted the whole story to Yi Tianxi, without hiding any details. After listening, Yi Tianxi felt curious and asked, Why did you tell me this? Lu Yinji sipped her coffee and candidly replied, I can't explain why, but standing in front of her, I always feel completely exposed. A woman's intuition tells me that she is hiding something too deep and too dangerous, surely up to no good. I'm just worried that Qingqing will be taken advantage of. Yi Tianxi rolled his eyes and retorted. If she's taken advantage of, what's it to me? Despite this, he couldn't help but recall that Lu Yinji had approached him for cooperation, expressing willingness to work for her, and then suddenly turned to Xiao Qingcheng and said similar words. What is this woman planning? Lu Ruyan sneered. Oomph. If you don't care about Qingcheng, that's fine. But you, you once said we were engaged, so is that true or false? Just as Yi Tianxi was about to reply, suddenly, the door of the cafe was rudely pushed open, and then more than ten burly bodyguards in black rushed in, frightening the customers and staff. Faced with the overwhelming number of opponents, everyone felt fearful and dared not make a move. Then, a middle-aged man in a gray robe walked in, tall and sturdy, with a pair of shiny steel balls in his right hand. Seeing this, Lu Ruyan's face changed suddenly, thinking to himself that this is bad. How did he find his way here? Curiously, Yi Tianxi asked, Who is he? Lu Ruyan replied with a serious expression, He is the steward Zhou Tong of our Lu family, my father's trusted assistant. Saying that, the man in gray walked towards Lu Ruyan, slightly bowing and respectfully saying, Miss, it took us quite a bit of effort to find you. Lu Ruyan frowned unhappily and asked, What business do you have with me? I have already cut off all ties with the family, there is no longer any connection. Zhou Tong maintained his smile and said, Miss, you are the descendant of the Lu family, the blood of the Lu family runs through your veins, how can this relationship be easily erased? This time, I am here on behalf of the old master to take you back to the provincial capital, please come with me. Lu Ruyin resolutely responded, Please tell my father that I have severed all ties with the Lu family and I will not step into the Lu family in the future. You can leave now. Zhou Tong, seeming prepared, spoke sternly, Miss, we are here on orders. Please do not make things difficult for us, otherwise, we'll have to offend you. With that, he gestured to the people behind him. The black-clad bodyguards immediately stepped forward, displaying a tough stance. At this moment, the customers and staff in the coffee shop started whispering and gossiping as if witnessing a scandal unfolding. Wow, isn't that Lu Ruyan? What is she doing in Jiangnan City? I heard she is the young mistress of the Lu family, with a prominent background. She's indeed a big star, unbelievably beautiful. If one can marry a woman like her, it's worth sacrificing luxury cars and villas. Who is the man drinking coffee with her? He looks good. Could he be her gigolo? Zhou Tong walked up to Lu Ruyan, politely gesturing for her to come over saying, Miss, please come with me. Lu Ruyan, with a cold expression, clenched her fists tightly and coldly said, Are you trying to take me back just to force me to marry that man? Zhou Tong immediately corrected her, Young Master Tong comes from a prestigious family. Both in terms of ability and status, he is one of the top figures in the provincial capital, far from ordinary. Lu Ruyan raised her chin arrogantly and said coldly, any man I look down upon is nothing but trash. Do you have a problem with that? Zhou Tong, puzzled, asked, Miss, I don't understand why you disdain young Master Tong. Do you already have someone in your heart? He suddenly thought of Rong Zidong from the Rong family, but Lu Ruyin immediately denied, I would never be with that idiot. But there is indeed a man who has captured my heart. Zhou Tong furrowed his brows slightly, 
knowing that Lu Ruyin had very high standards for men. He didn't expect her to have a crush so soon after arriving in Jiangan City. Not on Rong Zidong. Then who could it be? Hesitantly, he asked, Miss, are you not joking? Lu Ruyin earnestly said, Why would I joke? Because the one who has captured my heart is him. Pointing towards Yi Tianxi, who was drinking coffee, with a hint of shyness and ambiguity in her voice, Honey, am I right? Yi Tianxi looked confused, almost choking on his coffee. What's going on? When did I become your husband? Zhou Tong frowned, looking at the young man in front of him. Although impressive in appearance, his demeanor did not match that of a wealthy family's scion. How could someone like him be worthy of the young mistress of the Lu family? Zhou Tong coldly said, Miss, please think twice before acting. Apart from young Master Tong, you should not have feelings for any other man. Lu Ruyin's face instantly turned as cold as frost. She was outraged by her family's arranged marriage and believed that in this day and age, she should have the right to choose her own love. She was determined to be with her husband and not be influenced by anyone. As she spoke, she tightly grasped Yi Tianxi's wrist, calling him husband in a charming voice, hoping he would support her. As a brilliant actress, Lu Ruyin portrayed her emotions to the fullest, displaying her helplessness and grievances. At the same time, she subtly kicked Yi Tianxi, hinting that she needed his help. However, before Yi Tianxi could respond, Zhou Tong placed her hand on his shoulder and issued a threat in a cold voice. She warned the young couple to think twice before acting, or they would face the consequences. This sent a shiver down Lu Ruyin's spine, realizing Zhou Tong's dominance and threat. In this tense atmosphere, Lu Ruyin could only hope for Yi Tianxi's support and assistance, wishing to smoothly exit the coffee shop. Zhou Tong's provocation made Yi Tianzi's expression turn cold. He looked at Zhou Tong, feeling a surge of anger within him. Zhou Tong increased the force of his hand pressing on Yi Tianzi's shoulder, taunting, Don't you understand what I mean? You are simply not worthy to be compared to our young lady. I advise you to be careful and not to seek trouble. As someone you can't afford to provoke, I have the unimaginable power of the Lu family behind me. Do you understand? Yi Tianzi smirked, shook his head, and suddenly pushed his shoulder upwards. Zhou Tong's hand was pushed away, and he took two steps back. Zhou Tong was astonished. As the steward of the Lu family, he was powerful, ranking in the top 50 of the tiger list. How could he be pushed back by a young man? Yi Tianzi took a sip of his coffee indifferently and said, Both you and the Lu family are insignificant in my eyes. Leave quickly and don't disturb me while I enjoy my coffee. Zhou Tong angrily retorted. How dare you say that the Lu family and I are insignificant? You little brat. But then he realized something. He asked, Your name is Yi Tianzi? Are you the Yi Tianzi who caused a sensation at the Cloud Summit Hotel yesterday? Yi Tianzi noted. Zhou Tong gasped, his face turning ugly. In recent days, especially last night, Yi Tianzi's deeds had spread among the major families and forces in the provincial capital. It was rumored that he had defeated the three honored guests of the Rong family at the bidding meeting last night, killed Ji Wuli, took down Rong Zidong, and eliminated a large number of thugs. This kind of behavior was big news in Jiangnan City. Zhou Tong began to suspect. Wasn't Yi Tianzi taken away by the martial arts action team yesterday and dealt with by the Bloody Rose? How did he appear here again? Yi Tianzi coldly said, You talk too much. I. Zhou Tong felt uneasy because his mission in Jiangnan City was to bring back Lu Ruyin to the Lu family. The consequences of failing the mission were unthinkable. He made up his mind to take Lu Ruyin away, regardless of whether Yi Tianzi was real or not. He warned Yi Tianzi not to meddle, then signaled to the black clad bodyguards beside him. The two of them approached, intending to forcibly take away Lu Ruyin. Lu Ruyin, pale-faced, struggled desperately, pleading for Yi Tianzi's help. The black-clad bodyguards remained indifferent, ready to take away Lu Ruyin. She cried out, Honey, please help me. Don't let them take me away. Zhou Tong saw that Yi Tianzi remained unmoved and smirked triumphantly, Young lady, come with us obediently. It seems he doesn't dare to interfere. Zhou Tong realized that the rumors of Yi Tianzi being a ruthless killer were exaggerated. At this bustling moment, Yi Tianzi sat in his chair, calmly savoring the aroma of coffee. 
Suddenly, he reached out and grabbed Lu Ruyin's arm, firmly expressing his desire for her to stay and have coffee with him. The black-clad bodyguards were overwhelmed by his presence, nervously swallowing their saliva, looking at each other, hesitant to make a move. Zhou Tong sternly reprimanded them, urging them to quickly take Lu Ruyin away. The black-clad bodyguards obeyed the order, preparing to forcibly remove Lu Ruyin, but to their surprise, Yi Tianxi decisively intervened, delivering a resounding slap that sent one bodyguard flying and another reeling from the blow. Lu Ruyin, rescued from the situation, was deeply moved, tears welling up in her eyes as she fell into Yi Tianxi's embrace, creating a dramatic scene. Deep down, Yi Tianxi felt that this woman was a bit too theatrical, but faced with her gratitude and fragrance, he chose to be forgiving. Seeing this, Zhou Tong's anger surged, warning Yi Tianxi not to meddle further or face the consequences. Irritated by Zhou Tong's reprimand, Yi Tianxi bluntly called him meddlesome. In a fit of rage, Zhou Tong ordered the black-clad bodyguards to attack Yi Tianxi. However, Yi Tianxi remained calm and effortlessly defeated them, displaying extraordinary strength. Just as the last bodyguard fell, Zhou Tong launched an attack, but Yi Tianxi, with astonishing speed and skill, deftly neutralized the assault. Astonished, Zhou Tong realized that Yi Tianxi not only possessed immense strength, but also lightning-fast reflexes, leaving him in disbelief. Zhou Tong's intuition warned him to evade, but it was too late. Suddenly, two steel balls hit his chest almost simultaneously, making a dull thud. The immense force instantly sent his body flying backwards, sliding from deep inside the coffee shop to the entrance, finally crashing into the wall. Zhou Tong felt a sharp pain in his throat, blood gushing out, and two large dents in his chest. He had at least seven or eight broken ribs. Onlookers widened their eyes, almost holding their breath, shocked. However, Yi Tianzi remained calm, gripping Lu Ruyin's wrist tightly, and walked straight to the coffee shop's entrance. When he reached the door, he seemed to remember something. He coldly said to Zhou Tong, remember to take the compensation for the damage to the coffee shop and settle our bill as well. If I find a single penny missing, no matter where you hide, Yi Tianzi will find you and make you pay with your life. With that, he left with Lu Ruyin, leaving behind a dead silence in the coffee shop. In the Blue Note Cafe, a quiet atmosphere enveloped the place for a while. The audience finally came back to their senses from the shock, whispering and discussing in low voices. Wow, it felt like watching a martial arts movie just now. That handsome guy was amazing, truly remarkable. No wonder Lu Ruyin is so infatuated with him, even calling him husband. I wish I had such a handsome and reassuring partner. What are you, a grown man, talking about husband? Shut up. But you shouldn't mess with the Lu family. After all, they are a prominent family in the provincial capital. Who dares to offend them? At this moment, two bodyguards helped Zhou Tong up, enduring the pain. A bald bodyguard asked with concern, Housekeeper Zhou, are you okay? Suddenly, Zhou Tong turned and slapped him, angrily saying, Do I look okay to you? The slap hit the wound, causing intense pain, making him grimace. Zhou Tong wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth, his face darkening. This guy's strength is indeed as powerful as rumored, and it's not looking good with the young lady following him. The bald bodyguard rubbed his slapped cheek and asked, What should we do next? Zhou Tong frowned and said, First, take me to the hospital to treat the injuries. Then I will personally report to the master and let him decide. Also, increase manpower, investigate the young lady's recent activities, especially her residence. Yes. Zhou Tong glanced at the messy cafe floor, hesitated for a moment, and said, Compensate the cafe for the damages, remember? Not a penny less. Also, settle the bill for the young lady's table. The bald bodyguard instinctively said, Are you afraid of trouble from that, Missy? It's not a big deal to pay the bill for the young lady. Zhou Tong slapped him hard, Idiot! Am I a coward? I represent the Lu family of the provincial capital, no matter where I am. I must uphold the family's reputation, with impeccable behavior, do you understand? In the crowd, Yi Tianzi and Lu Ruyin stood at the street corner. Lu Ruyin lowered her head, playing with her fingers, 
and softly said, Thank you. Yi Tianzi smiled and said, I didn't expect to hear this word from you. A bit surprising. Lu Ruyin raised her head, furrowing her brows and said, What do you mean? Do you think I'm an uncultured woman in your eyes? Yi Tianzi shook his head and said, That's not what I meant. I just think you've always been arrogant and biased. It's hard to imagine you would easily say thank you. Lu Ruyin fell silent, seemingly unable to refute. Yi Tianzi looked at the time and said, It's getting late. Let's go home separately. Wait. Lu Ruyin stopped Yi Tianzi. Is there something on your mind? Well, a hesitant light flickered in Lu Ruyin's eyes. Yi Tianzi raised his eyebrows and asked Lu Ruyin, What's the matter? Lu Ruyin hesitated and said, Um, can I stay at your place for a few days tonight? Yi Tianzi asked with a puzzled expression, Why? Don't you always live at the Xiao family? Lu Ruyin sighed and explained, Zhou Tong won't let me go back to the provincial capital. I'm afraid of being discovered, so I have to temporarily stay at your place. Yi Tianzi frowned, feeling doubtful. Don't you have other friends in Jiangnan City? Lu Ruyin shook her head, looking somewhat embarrassed. Yi Tianzi continued to inquire, Why not stay in a hotel? Lu Ruyin smiled bitterly and explained, My family's assets are frozen. It's inconvenient to borrow money, so I can only trouble you. Seeing Yi Tianzi remain silent, Lu Ruyin started to get anxious, a hint of helplessness in her eyes. Can you bear to watch me being bullied? Yi Tianzi stayed silent, and seeing this, Lu Ruyin's eyes flashed with determination. She suddenly hugged Yi Tianzi's arm, coquettishly saying, Darling, please, I will repay you well. Feeling uncomfortable, Yi Tianzi quickly broke free and agreed. Thirty minutes later, a luxurious car stopped at the entrance of the villa. Yi Tianzi and Lu Ruyin got out of the car. Lu Ruyin widened her eyes, unable to believe it, and asked, Is this your home? Yi Tianzi nodded, indicating that this was where he lived. Lu Ruyin looked at Yi Tianzi seriously and said, Hey, everyone knows that in Jiangnan City, Villa One of the Purple Gold Heavenly Palace is the legendary residence of the Jiangnan war god, Lin Feng. You say this is your home, this is no joking matter. Yi Tianzi candidly replied, It used to be Lin Feng's villa, but now it belongs to me. Lu Ruyin was a bit dumbfounded upon hearing this, finding it hard to wrap her head around it. The Jiangnan war god is a legendary figure in Tiannan province, and he actually gave his villa to Yi Tianzi? Despite Yi Tianzi's recent remarkable performance, this still sounded somewhat unbelievable. Yi Tianzi, however, paid no attention to her thoughts, walked straight into the villa, entered the password, and pushed open the door. Seeing Lu Ruyin still standing there, he frowned and said, Are you coming in? If you're not coming in, I'm going to close the door. Lu Ruyin quickly said, Of course, I'm coming in. How can I miss the chance to visit the Jiangnan War God's villa? She followed him inside, her mind still in turmoil. At this moment, she became even more aware of two things. First, Yi Tianzi seemed even more mysterious and powerful than she had imagined. Second, her best friend, Xiao Qingqing's decision to divorce initially seemed somewhat unbelievable, almost unbelievably so to the extreme. Lu Rian followed Yi Tianzi into the number one villa in Zijin Heaven Palace. Despite being a big star and coming from the Lu family, the luxury of the villa still left her in awe. This used to be the residence of the Jiangnan war god, truly amazing. Yi Tianzi has been living in such a high-end place, making the Xiao's small villa pale in comparison. Pointing upstairs, Yi Tianzi said, There are many bedrooms here, just pick one at your convenience. However, I don't have women's clothing here, you can buy them online or at the mall. Lu Ruyin hesitated and said, Sis, I'm a bit tight on money right now, can you lend me a little? Just enough for buying clothes. Shocked, Yi Tianzi replied, One million? So much? Although this amount was nothing to him, he found it puzzling to spend so much on clothes. Lu Ruyin earnestly explained, Sis, I usually spend millions on clothes, makeup, and bags. One hundred thousand is already very little. Yi Tianzi shook his head with a bitter smile, silently lamenting that her spending skills were more impressive than her acting. Lu Ruyin tried to persuade, Please help me. Consider this as a loan. I will definitely repay you tenfold in the future. Unmoved, Yi Tianzi watched as Lu Ruyin hugged his arm, 
tears in her eyes, coquettishly saying, Beautiful new clothes are my spiritual support. Can you bear to see me disheveled and downcast? She continued, Honey, didn't you say I'm your fiancé? Just lending one million to your fiancé, it's not like I won't repay. She then snuggled against Yi Tianxi's arm, feeling the soft and warm touch. Sighing, Yi Tianxi finally transferred one million to Lu Ruyin. Perhaps this was the reward for providing information to Lu Yinji to negotiate cooperation with Xiao Qingqing and speaking up for Han Ruaya. Whether she repays or not, it doesn't matter to him. This amount is insignificant. Upon receiving the one million transfer, Lu Ruyin joyfully jumped up, exclaiming, Yi Tianxi, you are truly amazing. I'm so happy. Maybe too excited, she unexpectedly kissed Yi Tianxi on the cheek, leaving a small, delicate lipstick mark. The atmosphere in the living room suddenly became awkward and quiet. Feeling embarrassed and shy, Lu Ruyin thought she was too impulsive. But then again, considering they had already kissed once before, this time could be seen as familiar territory. She cleared her throat and said with a hint of embarrassment, Ahem, um, don't get the wrong idea. I just want to thank you for standing up for me against Zhou Tong and the others. It's not like I have any other intentions. Yi Tianza wiped the mark on his cheek, hoping she wouldn't misunderstand. Lu Ruyin blushed and pouted. Bah, who said I wanted you to take care of me? I wouldn't even agree to it. However, her stomach suddenly growled, making her feel extremely embarrassed. Last night, something big had happened. After returning home with Xiao Qingcheng, he had locked himself in the room and refused to come out. She didn't feel like eating, nor did she have the money to go out for a meal, so she had been hungry all this time. Now she was starting to feel really weak. Yi Tianza asked helplessly, Are you hungry? Lu Ruyin nodded, Yes. Yi Tianza decided to make some food, so he turned and busied himself in the kitchen. Lu Ruyin remained sprawled on the sofa, busily making purchases on her phone. Over an hour later, Yi Tianza brought the prepared dishes to the table. Although they weren't made with extravagant ingredients, the savory aroma of seared steak, spicy chicken wings, and stir-fried pork filled the air, causing Lu Ruyin to sit up straight in surprise. Clatter! She ran barefoot to the table, exclaiming, Oh my goodness, it smells so good? Did you make all of these? Lu Ruyin asked in amazement. Yi Tianza knocked her chopsticks away. Wash your hands! Reluctantly, Lu Ruyin went to wash her hands and returned to grab the chopsticks, pretending to be serious as she said, If your cooking doesn't meet my standards, you'll be in trouble later. She picked up a piece of stir-fried pork and took a bite, freezing in place. Every dish was delicious, comparable to a Michelin-starred restaurant. Lu Ruyin exclaimed, Oh my! I never knew you were such a good cook. Did you cook for Xiao Qingqing when you were at the Zhao's? Yi Tianza nodded, secretly relieved that she finally recognized his culinary skills. After hearing Xia Qingqing's request for divorce, Lu Ruyin felt a wave of confusion and couldn't help but shake her head in disbelief. Nowadays, it's hard to come by a good man who knows how to cook, yet Xia Qingqing proposed a divorce? Her best friend's decision was indeed abrupt, making Lu Ruyin hard to comprehend. Suddenly, she thought of something, stood up, and took out a bottle of precious red wine from the wine cabinet, gently unscrewing the cap. Sis, let's have a good meal today. Have a glass of wine with me, will you? Lu Ruyin invited, and Yi Tianche nodded without refusal. While enjoying delicious food, they drank red wine. Although it was Lu Ruyin who suggested drinking, after two glasses, her cheeks flushed, and her head started to feel a bit dizzy. Suddenly, she asked Yi Tianche a question. Do we, as women, have to rely on marriage to pursue the life we want? Yi Tianche replied lightly, I'm not a woman. Why are you asking me this? Well, that's true. Lu Ruyin sighed, took a sip of red wine. As if determined, she gritted her teeth and said, Humph, if my family insists on me marrying him, I'd rather have a one-night stand with a random man. I don't believe he would accept second-hand goods. Upon hearing these words, Yi Tianzi's mind flashed back to the conversation between Zhou Tong and Lu Ruyin in the coffee shop. The person you mentioned, is it young Master Tong? He asked. Lu Ruyin nodded with a somewhat sad expression. Tong Guxio, 
His father is the chairman of the Four Seas Chamber of Commerce in Tianan Province, and his mother comes from a prestigious family background, even more prominent than us, the descendants of the four major families in the provincial capital. She recounted, with a hint of envy and helplessness in her voice. Not only does he possess outstanding martial arts talent, he made it to the top ten of the dragon list in Tianan Province a few years ago, becoming one of the youngest in the top ten, with limitless potential. In addition, he excels in business, character, appearance, and is hailed as one of the three outstanding figures in the provincial capital. People affectionately call him Young Master Tong, the white horse prince in the hearts of countless young girls. In order to expand the influence of the Lu family, my father has been trying to matchmake between me and him, and Tong Guxio has also expressed willingness to marry me, on the condition that I retire from the entertainment industry and live a life of raising children. Lu Ruyin paused, then continued. I rejected his proposal, causing a rift with my family. Now I have been blacklisted by the entertainment industry, and my family does not support me. They only want to force me to marry Tong Guxio. Yi Tianzi took a sip of red wine, pondered for a moment, and said, From what you've said, Tong Guxio seems decent. Why don't you consider being with him? Just because he doesn't support your career in the entertainment industry? In my opinion, the entertainment industry is indeed a muddy water. Better off not getting involved. Lu Ruyin shook her head and softly said, Actually, I have long been tired of the entertainment industry. Whether in or out doesn't matter to me. The key is, Tong Guxio seems too perfect, making people feel somewhat unreal. But the more perfect he seems, the more unsettled I feel. It all feels too hypocritical. So I don't want to be with him. Yi Tianzi blinked understanding Lu Ruyin's view on love for the first time. Lu Ruyin continued to sip her red wine, her eyes shimmering with a dreamy light. Tell me, you said we have an engagement and even showed the marriage contract, is that true? Lu Ruyin asked bluntly. Yi Tianzi nodded affirmatively, absolutely true, I don't have time for such jokes. Lu Ruyin stared into Yi Tianzi's eyes, unable to find any hint of falsehood after a long while. It's actually true. She sighed, her face full of confusion. If that's the case, why has the family never informed me? And still want to force me to marry Tong Guxio? Yi Tianzi also felt a bit puzzled, but after much thought, this engagement was set by his master five years ago. Times have changed, situations have changed. It's understandable for the Lu family to change their minds now. Lu Ruyin swirled her wine glass, saying softly, If this marriage is true, then heaven must make me choose between you and Tong Guxio, and I would rather choose you. Although Yi Tianzu may be a bit flirtatious, cunning, and fickle, he is overall a very genuine person. Suddenly, Lu Ruyin thought of something. Her eyes hesitant. She tentatively asked, Hey, are you sure you will divorce Qingqing Qing this time and never remarry in the future? Yi Tianzu nodded and said, A good horse doesn't eat the grass it has already passed. Besides, that grass is not exactly delicious. Why would I remarry? Lu Ru Yin, with a hint of meaning in her response, said, Oh. Then hesitated for a moment and continued, If, after you officially divorce Qing Cheng, would you consider marrying me? Yi Tianzu was eating and almost choked. He quickly coughed a few times, incredulously asking, What did you say? Marry you? If these words were said by Han Rua Yun, he might not have been so surprised. But coming from Lu Ru Yin, it was a bit unexpected. Lu Ru Yin quickly explained, Hey, don't misunderstand. I just don't want to marry Tong Gu Xiao. I believe that if we get married, he won't interfere in our marriage. She added, Of course, marriage is just a formality. It doesn't mean you can do whatever you want. We're just going through the motions. Yi Tian Su rolled his eyes and said, Are you using me as a shield? Just getting married like that? Hey, that's insulting. I'm a big star. With this look, this figure, who can't I match up to? He continued, Besides, you are not my only fiancé, just one of them. Lu Ruyin smirked and said, Ha ha, don't be all talk. I see you get along well with Miss Han from the Han family. She hasn't agreed to be your fiancé either. Yi Tianzu replied calmly, Because she is already one of my fiancés, just like you. Lu Ruyin was completely stunned for a moment. What? Han Ruiyun is also your fiancé? Yi Tianzu took a sip of red wine and continued, Not only her, 
Rong Mei Yin is also one of my fiancés. Lu Ru Yin felt her head spinning, completely confused. Yi Tian Su added, and Lin Yu Yin from the provincial capital, she is also one of my fiancés, just haven't met yet. Lu Ru Yin was dumbfounded. Ah, uh, Lin Yu Yin is the number one beauty in the provincial capital. How is that possible? She said sternly, Yi Tian Su, I'm telling the truth, not joking. Yi Tian Su calmly said, I'm not joking. I have a total of nine fiancés. You are just one of them. He continued to explain, so whether or not to get married, and who to marry, depends on me, not you, understand? Lu Ruyin felt like a knife was stabbed in her chest. She finally realized that this man named Yi Tian Su really knows how to show off. She has been adored by countless suitors for so many years, but has never been so disregarded by a man before. She furrowed her brows in anger, with a slight upturn at the corner of her mouth, muttering, I don't want to drink anymore. Disdainfully ignoring her sister's words, she decided to go upstairs to take a bath and rest early. With that, she staggered up the stairs. Yi Tianzu shrugged indifferently, a faint smirk playing on his lips. This little matter is nothing to worry about. Suddenly, his phone rang. It was a call from Zhao Hailong. Answering the call, Zhao Hailong respectfully said, Mr. Yi, I have some preliminary clues about the Lu family and Lu Yanji that you asked me to investigate. Are you available for me to report in person? Yes, come to Villa 1 at Zijian Tiangong. Of course. After the call ended, Yi Tianz picked up his wine, his eyes flashing with a chilling and intimidating light. Half an hour later, Zhao Hailong stepped into the Villa 1 of Zijian Heaven Palace. As he strolled into the living room and caught sight of the lady's sandals placed at the entrance, his heart skipped a beat. Oh, so Mr. Yi has a female companion living with him? But thinking about it, it's understandable, given Mr. Yi Tianzi's status and position, it's only natural for him to share a room with a woman. Yi Tianzi was seated on the sofa, and Zhao Hailong respectfully stood before him. At first, he flattered, Mr. Yi, last night at the Tindering Business Council, when you sanctioned Rong Zidong and others, you were imposing and awe-inspiring. Though I didn't witness it with my own eyes, the news was truly exhilarating. Yi Tianzi raised his hand to stop him and said sternly, Cut the nonsense, let's talk business. Zhao Hailong was startled and quickly continued his report. Mr. Yi, as per your request, I investigated the various movements of the Lu family in Jianan before and after the Yi family's big fire 15 years ago and found two strange clues. Firstly, seven days before the Yi family's big fire, your grandfather, Yi Shuangying, had a private meeting with the head of the Lu family, Lu Jianyi, once. The specific details are unknown. However, after the meeting, Lu Jianyi immediately left Jiangan city for the provincial capital and only returned seven days later, the same day the Yi family encountered the big fire. Yi Tianzi narrowed his eyes, his expression indifferent. This was indeed peculiar. Zhao Hailong continued, Secondly, the day after the Yi family's big fire, the entire Lu family shut themselves indoors and did not contact the outside world for a month. Although there were rumors of an internal family meeting, there were whispers that Lu Jianyi was actually seriously injured, on the brink of life and death, but never mentioned it to the outside world, seemingly deliberately concealing it. Since that incident, the Lu family's power has surged, becoming the most mysterious and powerful family in Jiangnan City. Yi Tianxi asked, What is Lu Jinyi's current situation? Zhao Hailong replied, He passed away five years ago, and now Lu Hongzhen, his son, is the head of the Lu family. Yi Tianxi frowned, Passed away? What was the cause? Zhao Hailong continued, This matter involves Lu Yinji. She rose to prominence, leading the Lu family to new heights, unstoppable, acclaimed as the empress of the Jiangnan business world, attracting attention throughout the Tianan province. But five years ago, she eloped with a man, abruptly withdrawing from the business world and living in seclusion abroad. Yi Tianjin. Oh? Who is this man? Though they knew each other briefly, his proud and aloof demeanor made it hard to imagine why she would give it all up. Zhao Hailong nervously replied, That man is Chen Qingdi and their relationship with Lu Yinji is not widely known. Chen Qingdi? Never heard of him. Is he exceptionally powerful? Zhao Hailong suddenly froze, 
at a loss for words. Mr. Yi didn't seem to care, as if he ignored everyone, treating unfamiliar names as if they were nothing. He calmly explained, Impressive. Of course, impressive. This Chen Qingdi, whose real name is Chen Qingji, is a legendary figure in the province of Tiannan. It is rumored that over 20 years ago, he began to struggle at the bottom of society, experiencing hardships and continuously striving. Due to his outstanding talent and charismatic personality, he became the leader of the underground forces in the entire province of Tian and 10 years ago. Leading the vast Qinglong society with tens of thousands of brothers under him, he can be called the emperor of the underground world and is therefore honored as Chan Qingdi. Not only is his power formidable, but his personal strength is also unparalleled. As early as 10 years ago, he broke through the legendary realm of the war god and was qualified to participate in the ranking of the divine list of the dragon kingdom, but for some reason, he never participated. There are rumors that when the southern war god Lin Feng rose to power, he privately challenged Chen Qingji and was defeated in just five moves. It can be seen that Chen Qingji, known as Chen Qingdi, is well-deserved. Defeating Lin Feng in just five moves? Is this his strength? And he dares to call himself an emperor? It's really unbelievable. After all, Lin Feng was just weak in front of him, Zhao Hailong continued. About five years ago, Chen Qingji met Lu Yinji. Although Chen Qingji was more than 10 years older than Lu Yinji, his brilliance was dazzling, forcing Lu Yinji to admire him and eventually choose to spend the rest of her life with him. Shortly after, the two announced their retirement overseas to live a secluded life together. Everything was going smoothly, but then, less than three months after they left the country, an accident occurred in the Lu family. The patriarch Lu Jianyi was suddenly kidnapped, and despite the Lu family's efforts to rescue him, when they arrived at the scene, Lu Jianyi had tragically passed away, and the kidnapping case remains unsolved to this day. At the same time, the Qinglong society under Qin Qingji also suffered setbacks, with some senior members dying in accidents one after another, leading to a significant weakening of their strength, no longer as glorious as before. Yi Tianxi frowned slightly. With such a big event happening, why didn't Lu Yinji and Chun Qingji return to the country to find out what happened? Zhao Hailong shook his head, they didn't. What's even stranger is that although they initially claimed to retire overseas, in this age of information explosion, are there really any places where they can truly hide? However, as soon as the two left, they disappeared without a trace, with no news at all. The Lu family and the Qinglong society have spared no effort to find their whereabouts, but to no avail. Therefore, at that time, the Lu family and the Qinglong society internally speculated that the two might have encountered misfortune in a foreign land, but for some reason, they chose to keep it secret. I see, it's indeed intriguing, Yi Tianxi squinted his eyes. In this world, there are still places like this, isolated from the world, unable to be contacted. The fallen city is truly a place of decadence. However, the two of them have never set foot in that city. Where did they go? Zhao Hailong continued, but just over a month ago, Lu Yinji, who had been missing for a whole five years, suddenly returned to Jiangnan City. After his return, he seemed completely transformed, seizing control within the Lu family with an extremely domineering and forceful attitude. Now, although Lu Hongjin, Lu Yinji's father, is nominally the head of the Lu family, it is actually Lu Yinji who holds the real power. Not only that, Although the strength of the Azure Dragon Society is not what it used to be, it now secretly takes orders from Lu Yinji. Yi Tianxi asked, What about Chun Qingji? Zhao Hailong shook his head. He has not returned to the country yet, there is no news about him, and Lu Yinji himself has never mentioned him. Perhaps, has he really met with misfortune? Yi Tianxi did not respond to his words, but fell into contemplation. At this moment, he seemed to vaguely touch on a clue. Five years ago, five years ago. Wait a minute. Last night, when discussing that mysterious transaction with Zhang Xiaohu in the hospital, that transaction happened five years ago. And both Lu Yinji and Chen Qingji disappeared five years ago. It was all five years ago. Could it be? Yi Tianxi suddenly had a bold guess in his mind. He was thinking, could the transaction that happened on a small island in the Pacific Ocean five years ago 
be somehow related to the mysterious disappearance of Qin Qingji and Lu Yinji? Although these two events seem unrelated, the mysterious organization disappeared without a trace after taking the traded items, as if they disappeared from this world. And Lu Yinji and Chun Qingji also disappeared suddenly five years ago. It can be said that there is some mysterious connection between the two. Regardless of whether these two events are related, what can be confirmed now is that Lu Yinji returned to Jiangnan City a month ago, seized power within the Lu family, and has recently started to show up actively, definitely not playing around. What is this woman really seeking? Did she know some secrets that Yi Tianxi didn't know during the fire 15 years ago? Various questions surged in Yi Tianxi's mind. Honestly, this is the first time in many years that he has felt unable to figure out a woman. It seems inevitable that there will be intersections with Lu Yinji in the near future. Yi Tianxi asked, Do you have any other intelligence about the Lu family and Lu Yinji? Zhao Hailong shook his head and said, I have only been able to find this information. Yi Tianxi nodded, expressing his thanks. You're welcome, this is what I should do. After all, without your guidance and cultivation back then, I wouldn't have achieved what I have today, Zhao Hailong modestly said. Then he mentioned, wasn't your electric scooter hit and damaged by Kai Kuen downstairs in our company building? I felt that riding an electric scooter was not very convenient for you. So I have arranged for a luxury car to be delivered to your garage by tomorrow morning. Also, I have taken care of this for you. So you don't need to go to a driving school for a special exam. With that, he took out a driver's license from his briefcase and respectfully handed it to Yi Tianxi. This surprised Yi Tianxi. After returning from the fallen city three years ago, he had not gone to get a driver's license, and recently, due to various busy matters, he had no time. He didn't expect Zhao Hai Long to have taken care of it for him. Yi Tianxi took the driver's license and admiringly said, Well done. Zhao Hai Long smiled and asked, Mr. Yi, now that Ji Wuli has passed away, how should we handle the 10 billion order? Yi Tianxi replied, G. Wooly's death does not mean that the supporters behind the G family have disappeared. This 10 billion order will be executed as planned. After all, this game has just begun, and we have to play it to the end. Zhao Hailong nodded in understanding, bowed to Yi Tianxi, and said, It's getting late. I'll go back to arrange the work, not to disturb your rest. After Zhao Hailong left, Yi Tianxi stretched and went upstairs. When he reached the door of Lu Ruyin's bedroom, he found it was closed. She must have drunk too much and fallen asleep. Yi Tianxi said softly, turned around, and went to the bathroom for a shower. After changing into pajamas, he returned to his bedroom and lay on the bed playing with his phone. At this moment, the sound of a WeChat notification came. It was a message from Han Ruaya. Han Ruayan asked, Hey handsome, what are you doing alone so late? Yi Tianxi replied, Just finished showering, getting ready to rest. Han Ruoyan looked at Yi Tianzi suspiciously and mischievously said, Are you secretly cleaning the pipes? With a naughty smile, she made Yi Tianzi feel a bit at a loss. Yi Tianzi replied seriously, I am an honest and healthy young man. How could I do such a thing? His expression was sincere and firm. Han Ruoyan, however, said distrustfully, I won't easily believe you. Then she mysteriously hinted that Yi Tianzi should wait and see. After two minutes, Han Ruayun sent a selfie. In the photo, she was wearing a JK uniform, with her long legs stretching out from the skirt, wearing a pair of over-the-knee white stockings. The details of the stockings outlined her graceful legs. She sat on the bed, with a seductive smile on her lips, which was irresistible. The clothes barely covered her full chest, almost revealing it. Yi Tianzi widened his eyes, stunned by the sight before him. Ding ding ding. A series of selfies showing various seductive poses arrived, making one's blood boil. These photos were more alluring than the private photos online, especially because they were of someone you knew, adding an extra thrill. Yi Tianzi felt his whole body boiling with excitement, his heart racing. Ding ding again, a text message appeared on the screen. Han Ruayan mischievously asked, After seeing so many welfare photos, are you feeling excited? Her mischievous smile sent a shiver down Yi Tianzi's spine. Yi Tianzi quickly denied, No, don't talk nonsense, this is slander. His expression was serious, but his mind was a bit unsettled. Han Ruoyan laughed, Haha, you must be excited. If you are, go take care of it, otherwise you'll feel uncomfortable. 
Am I taking good care of you? Her proud expression made Yi Tianzi sigh involuntarily. Yi Tianzi smiled bitterly. What kind of care is this? It's just perfunctory. He responded helplessly. Han Ruayun suddenly changed her tone, gently saying, Since I'm so caring, can you give me a little something in return? There was a hint of expectation in her eyes. Yi Tianzi asked in confusion, What do you want in return? He felt a bit puzzled. Han Ruayun bluntly expressed, I want to see a photo of you cleaning the pipes. She shyly smiled, teasingly. Yi Tianzi was shocked and exclaimed, This is too much. He realized that since his relationship with Han Ruayun had become more intimate, she had always been teasing him. Was this what they called flirting? Although he felt it was unhealthy, there was still a hint of excitement in his heart. Just as he struggled to figure out how to reply, suddenly, the door was kicked open with force. Yi Tianzi was startled and quickly put down his phone, covering his lower body with a blanket. Looking up, he saw Lu Ruyin staggering into the room. Her cheeks were flushed, with a lingering scent of alcohol, and her eyes were hazy. However, the most shocking thing was that she was only wearing a set of black lace-trimmed lingerie, walking into the room unabashedly. Yi Tianzi was startled by the scene in front of him. In the late night, it seemed like a magnificent fashion show was about to take place, or maybe something shady was going to happen. Yi Tianzi was at a loss for a moment. Hey, what's the intention behind this? Lu Ruyin looked slightly tipsy, complaining with a hint of grievance, muttering, Humph, you jerk, am I not good enough as your fiancé? Where is the charm of your sister? Look at these ample breasts, are they big enough? Are they round enough? And look at these long and slender legs, are they long enough? Are they charming enough? Yi Tianzi felt a bit helpless. So, the problem lies here. He helplessly responded. Is it only about having ample breasts and long legs that matter? Go back to the room and rest. Stop causing trouble. After all, he still had to continue building his relationship with Han Ruayun. Yi Tianzi's perfunctory response triggered Lu Ruyun's dissatisfaction, and she heavily patted his bedside. Yi, what are you really thinking? Are you not moved at all when I stand in front of you? Do you believe that I'll show you my whole body naked? Yi Tianzi helplessly said, You're drunk. Stop causing trouble and go rest. He didn't expect Lu Ruyin to become so crazy after drinking, feeling somewhat surprised. No. I don't want to. Hiccup. Lu Ruyin burped, holding her ground with the alcohol kicking in. Yi Tianzi sighed and asked, So, what do you want in order to behave? Hee <laughs> hee. Lu Ruyin looked at Yi Tianzi, revealing a mischievous smile and said, Sister wants to see you strip dance. Hee <laughs> hee. Do you want to surprise sister? Yi Tianzi said seriously to Lu Ruyin, Lu Ruyin, I advise you to maintain your self-respect and not embarrass yourself like this. If you're drunk, just go back to your room and rest. Lu Ruyin, with a drunken expression on her face, smirked and stubbornly replied, Who do you think you are? Why should I listen to you? Hiccup, hurry up and do a striptease for me, like in the driving test. She took out her phone, blurry-eyed, ready to record, urging, Hiccup. Hurry up. I love admiring the bodies of strong men the most. I used to sneakily watch videos under the covers before, but today I'm not in a good mood and need to see real people to cheer up. Just do as I say. Yi Tianzi's eyes twitched, feeling that letting Lu Ruyin stay here today was a mistake, and he was even more surprised by her unusual fetish, which she openly displayed after drinking. Seeing Yi Tianzi still sitting on the bed unwilling to leave, Lu Ruyin began to feel restless. She climbed onto the bed, holding up her phone to record, and unceremoniously pulled down the blanket covering Yi Tianzi's lower body. When the blanket was pulled off, her originally blurry eyes looked at Yi Tianzi's lower body, and she froze, her mouth slightly open in an O shape. She was surprised to find Yi Tianzi standing tall like a spear, but she felt neither ashamed nor avoided his gaze. Instead, she excitedly said, Hiccup, are you performing for me? This is what I want to see. Hurry up and strip. With that, she grabbed Yi Tianzi's pajama bottoms and tried to pull them down. Yi Tianzi's mind raced, remembering that he was the young master of the fallen city, at the top in terms of power, status, wealth, and martial arts. But now, being pressed by a woman on the bed to take off his pants? 
striptease, driving test? If this got out, his reputation would be ruined. He sternly warned, Lou Ruyan, let go of my pants immediately. Go back to your room and sleep obediently. If you don't listen, don't blame me for being rude. But the drunken Lou Ruyan was extremely agitated. Faced with the warning, she stubbornly said, I won't listen. If you dare, be rude to me. Hiccup, I don't believe you dare. Yi Tianxi coldly snorted, instantly flipping over to press Lu Ruyin beneath him, sitting on her. Smack, a loud slap landed on her buttocks, full of elasticity. He asked, are you going to listen now? Lu Ruyin was stunned by the slap, feeling the pain but not sobering up. Instead, she struggled and shouted, I won't listen. Ah. Yi Tianxi, determined, raised his hand again. Smack, do you listen or not? I won't. Smack, one last time. Are you going to listen? I won't. Ah. In the end, Lu Ruyin couldn't bear the pain, tears streaming down her face, feeling extremely wronged. She sobbed. You hit me. Hiccup. You actually hit me. I'm going to tell my mom. Hiccup. Lu Ruyin. At this moment, was crying and hiccuping, completely losing the demeanor of a national goddess. Yi Tianxi looked down at her with a mix of confusion and pity. Lu Ruyin was only wearing black shorts, with a few clear handprint marks on her smooth and white buttocks, red and tender, as if left behind by caresses, evoking a sense of pity. This scene was filled with drama and emotional impact, making it feel like being in a passionate movie. Yi Tianxi felt a hint of ambiguity, with complex emotions surging within him. Just then, Yi Tianxi received a WeChat call from Han Ruayun, hurriedly reminding Lu Ruyin to calm down. Shocked by the spanking experience, Lu Ruyin stopped crying loudly, only softly whimpering with slight trembling shoulders. Yi Tianxi answered the phone as if relieved, but was scolded by Han Ruayun for not replying to messages promptly. He hastily explained the delay, arousing Han Ruayun's suspicion and worry that he might be secretly involved with other women. As Yi Tianxi was about to explain, Lu Ruyin suddenly started singing, her voice clear and melodious, causing a stir in his heart. Han Ruayun curiously asked if someone was singing, and Yi Tianxi quickly made up an excuse to cover up. However, Lu Ruyin made another sound, putting Yi Tianxi in an awkward situation. Han Ruayun angrily hung up the phone, leaving Yi Tianxi feeling extremely embarrassed and anxious. Yi Tianxi wanted to reprimand Lu Ruyin, but found her already asleep, completely unaware. He shook his head helplessly, lamenting his misfortune. He decided not to let Lu Ruyin drink in the future to avoid any more embarrassing incidents. After settling Lu Ruyin in his room, he retired to another room to rest. He sent a message to Han Ruayun, attempting to explain the misunderstanding, hoping everything could be resolved smoothly. Yi Tianxi opened his phone and found that his messages had been blocked by the other party. A big red exclamation mark on the screen left him stunned. It turned out that Han Ruayin had actually blocked him. This sudden blow made Yi Tianxi feel angry, almost losing his composure, nearly smashing his phone. Anger and resentment surged in his heart, cursing Lu Ruyin, filled with hatred and resentment. Yi Tianxi decided, Lu Ruyin, you wait, I, Yi Tianxi, will not let this go. I will repay all of this with the same pain and torment. At the entrance of the office of the martial arts action team in Jiangnan City, the huge iron gate creaked open and two people walked out trembling. They were Zhang Huilan and Xiao Nan, walking unsteadily as if under immense pressure. A staff member coldly reprimanded them, demanding that they abide by the law in the future and not commit perjury again, or they would face severe punishment. Zhang Huilan and Xiao Nin quickly nodded in agreement, feeling relieved that they had only been detained for 24 hours, but uneasy about the psychological pressure and mental torment they had endured during this short time. Fortunately, they were forced to commit perjury this time. Otherwise, the consequences would have been unimaginable. Xiao Nin couldn't help but ask, Mom, little brother, are you okay? Xiao Qingcheng came over, asking with concern. Her eyes were red obviously having just cried. Zhang Huilan complained. Do I look okay to you? It's all because of that guy Yitians. If it weren't for him implicating us, we wouldn't have been locked up. Xiaonan echoed, yeah, 
Mom and I suffered inside, hungry and cold, all because of ye tyants. Xiao Qingqing frowned. If you hadn't helped with the false testimony, you wouldn't have been detained for a day. Being released is already lucky. Zhang Huilan said discontentedly, Qing Cheng, why are you speaking up for ye tyants? Don't forget you two are about to divorce. Xiao Nin gritted his teeth. Ever since this Yi Tiants gained some ability, he has been constantly opposing our Xiao family, ungrateful. I will never let him off. Hearing Yi Tiants' name, Xiao Qingcheng sighed, a sense of desolation washing over her. Not long ago, she was the confident and capable female CEO of Jiangnan City. Now everything has changed because of the divorce. The iron gate creaked open again, and Murong Fan walked out dejectedly. His eyes were dark circled, his face pale, and a look of fear flickered in his eyes. Exaggerating that he knew Vice Captain Du Song, he was interrogated by Blood Rose for a whole day, only to be released after confirming it was just a normal business exchange, now exhausted. The night wind blew, making him shiver involuntarily. Xiao Qingcheng walked up and asked with concern, Senior Morong, are you okay? Morong Fan pretended to smile calmly, I'm fine. They treated me fairly well, after all, because of my dad's connections, they didn't dare to do anything to me. Xiao Qingqing apologized. If it wasn't for saving me last night, you wouldn't have been involved. I'm really sorry. Morong Fan gratefully said, It's nothing serious. As long as I can help you, even if I have to face danger, I won't hesitate. Zhang Huilan and Xiao Nan, hearing this conversation, felt emotional. Zhang Huilan asked eagerly, Daughter. Is this the senior Mu Rong fan you mentioned? His father is the vice president of the Four Seas Chamber of Commerce in our Jiangnan city. Xiao Qingcheng nodded. Zhang Huilan's face lit up with joy, and she quickly reached out her hand, smiling. So you are the nephew of Mu Rong. Annie thinks you are talented and distinguished. If I could have a son-in-law like you, it would be wonderful. Xiao Nan also complimented. If I could have a brother-in-law like young master Mu Rong, even if I could live in a mansion and drive a sports car every day, I would be happy. Hearing the praises from both of them, Mu Rong Fan felt ecstatic. The fatigue that had been weighing on him suddenly disappeared. He humbly said, Auntie, you flatter me. Qingqing Qing is the most beautiful female CEO in our Jiangnan city, both in appearance and ability. I also admire her a lot, haha. <laughs> With that, he laughed heartily. However, Zhang Huilan, standing opposite, suddenly frowned and said somewhat disgustedly, Oh my! Where is that strange smell coming from? Did someone eat feces? Xiaonan also fanned her hand. Oh, such a bad smell. Hearing these words, Mu Rong Fan blushed and felt embarrassed, scratching his head. Due to his kidney deficiency causing severe bad breath issues and not being able to clean his mouth after being imprisoned for 24 hours, the unpleasant odor was naturally emitted. Even standing in an open space, people across could smell it. Zhang Huilan and Xiao Nin also realized that the smell was coming from Mu Rong Fan's mouth and felt awkward. Zhang Huilan cleared her throat and changed the subject, saying, Nephew Mu Rong, would you like to have a meal together if it's convenient? Consider it a thank you for your recent help to our family. Auntie appreciates outstanding young people like you. Mu Rong Fan naturally wouldn't miss this opportunity and agreed. I respect your wishes. Later, Mu Rong Fan suddenly remembered something and asked Xiao Qingqing, Qingcheng, did Yin Yin not come with you? Xiao Qingcheng shook her head. She sent a message saying she has some things to do these days and wants to move out. I'm not sure of the specific reasons. All right. Mu Rong Fan didn't think much about it and then left with Xiao Qingqing's family of three. Late at night, the clock pointed to midnight. In the eastern part of Jiangnan City, at the Lu family manor. The manor had various buildings arranged in an orderly manner, with artificial hills and fountains, presenting a magnificent scene. At this moment, in the living room of an independent villa, Lu Yinji, wearing a black suspender nightgown, elegantly crossed her legs on the sofa, her long black silk gloves complementing her long legs. She sat there, with a cold, proud, and inviolable aura. In front of her, a man dressed in black nightclothes and wearing a gray mask half knelt on the ground, respectfully reporting, the aides sent by the Rong family, Luo Yuanliang and the medicine attendant Tung Bai, 
have arrived in Jiangnan City to support Jibo Duan. A project worth 10 billion will officially start tomorrow. Diao Yele, the deputy general manager of Fangrong Group, fell to his death from a building. Rong Meiyin of the Rong family has been recalled to the provincial capital for investigation. According to reliable intelligence, Diao Yele was controlled by the Mandala water and jumped to his death. Liu Yanji calmly asked, What about Yi Tian Su's news? The man in black replied, Tonight. Zhao Hai Long went to his residence. I do not know the specifics, and I dare not approach his residence for fear of being discovered. After a moment of contemplation, the man in black added, Miss Lu Ruyan of the Lu family in the provincial capital stayed overnight at Yi Tian Su's residence tonight, and there were no abnormal actions observed between the two. After hearing her perform, the most dazzling ethnic wind. Hmm. It was really unbearable. I almost couldn't resist the sonic attack and had to leave the scene to prepare for a report. Liu Yinji nodded, understanding the situation, signaling the man in black to retreat. The man in black disappeared in an instant. Liu Yinji stood up and walked barefoot to the wine cabinet in the living room. Swish, swish, swish. She poured a glass of red wine, gently swirled the glass, and lowered her head in contemplation. On the wine cabinet was a photo of Yi Tianqi. She took a sip of red wine and murmured softly, There are still six days left. If Yi Tianqi doesn't cooperate with Yinji, things could get awkward. However, before that, Yinji was somewhat looking forward to it, wondering if you could overcome the current difficulties. Hee <laughs> hee. Early the next morning, Yi Tianzi was awakened by a scream in the number one villa of the purple gold heavenly palace. Just as he opened his eyes, the bedroom door was kicked open by Lu Ruyin. She was wearing a black lace underwear, with a face full of grievance and anger, her eyes red and tears flowing. She demanded of Yi Tianzi, What did you do to me last night? Yi Tianzi, puzzled, rubbed his head in confusion. Lu Ruyin, furious, said, Why am I sleeping in your bed, feeling sore all over, with a palm print on my buttocks? Yi Tianzi tried to explain, but Lu Ruyin became more and more aggrieved as she spoke, tears streaming down her face. As the young lady of the Lu family, revered as a national goddess, she had always maintained a dignified demeanor. If such rumors spread, how could she face herself? Yi Tianzi was accused harshly, and he tried to clarify. You barged into my room last night, and now you're turning the tables. Isn't this a distortion of the truth? Wiping her tears, Lu Ruyin choked out. Although I believe you are my fiancé, I did not agree to intimacy. Yi Tianzi was almost infuriated to the point of spitting blood. He hadn't even sorted out the misunderstanding from last night, and now he was under attack. Lu Ruyin threatened, either take responsibility, or I'll accuse you of rape. Yi Tianzi refused and decided to let the facts speak for themselves. He brought Lu Ruyin to the bedroom showing her the clean sheets as proof that nothing had happened. Lu Ruyin widened her eyes in disbelief. The bedsheet was spotless and tidy. Yi Tianzi said lightly, with a hint of indifference on his lips, no matter how hard I stabbed last night, there was no blood. Unless you're implying you're no longer a virgin? Lu Ruyin retorted, Umph, did you change to a clean sheet after bullying me? Yi Tianzi coldly scanned Lu Ruyin and suddenly picked up her phone, ordering, Unlock your phone immediately. Lu Ruyin asked fearfully, What are you going to do? Yi Tianzi replied coldly, If you don't obey, I'll force you to do it 800 times on the bed. Lu Ruyin shrank back in fear. Don't be so fierce. Just unlocking it is enough, right? She quickly unlocked the phone. Yi Tianzi took the phone, opened the album, and found a video, playing it for Lu Ruyin. In the video, she was filming herself in front of Yi Tianzi then climbed onto the bed, making various excited sounds. Lu Ruyin stood frozen in place, cheeks red, toes curling in embarrassment, almost wanting to find a hole to hide in. She never expected to behave so crazily last night and felt extremely embarrassed. Yi Tianzi sneered, You were so bold just now. How do you feel now? Fortunately, Lu Ruyin recorded the video. Otherwise, today would have been even more embarrassing. Lu Ruyin lowered her head, like a child who had made a mistake. I'm sorry. If she had known it would turn out like this, she wouldn't have misunderstood Yi Tianzi. Yi Tianzi said indifferently, 
What's the use of apologizing? Lu Ruyan's face changed. Let me move out. I won't stay here. She sat on the ground, holding onto Yi Tianzi's thigh. Master Yi, please don't be angry. I know I was wrong. I won't drink too much in the future. Please allow me to stay for a few more days. I don't want to be homeless. Lu Ruyan blinked her watery eyes, swaying Yi Tianzi's thigh, looking innocent and pitiful. She was only wearing underwear and her C-cup breasts were just resting on Yi Tianzi's thigh, making him slightly uncomfortable. Yi Tianzi helplessly operated the phone. I'll let you off this time. Lu Ruyin joyfully took the phone, looking like a happy child. Yi Tianzi hurriedly rushed out of the door, leaving Lu Ruyin to face the mess on the floor. Lu Ruyin couldn't help but feel helpless, thinking that Yi Tianzi was too overbearing. However, she silently started to clean up the chaos from last night. She felt a bit aggrieved but had no choice but to obediently follow orders. As Lu Ruyin was tidying up, she suddenly heard the sound of Yi Tianzi's car starting in the garage. She looked out the window and saw a variety of luxury cars parked in the underground garage today, dazzling her eyes. Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Bentleys, Rolls Royces, all lined up in a row, exuding extreme luxury. She couldn't help but sigh at Zhao Hailong's thoughtful arrangements. In the end, Yi Tianzi chose a low-key Volkswagen Touareg to leave, silently praising his modesty. Just as he drove out of Villa No. 1, Yi Tianzi suddenly stopped the car, rolled down the window, and gazed at the big willow tree by the roadside. Following his gaze, Lu Ruyin noticed a clear shoe print on a thick branch, directly facing the window of Villa No. 1. Lu Ruyin couldn't help but feel curious and puzzled, finding the situation increasingly intriguing. Yi Tianzi smiled meaningfully, then slowly drove away, leaving Lu Ruyin alone to ponder this unexpected turn of events. After being blacklisted by Han Ruyin last night, Yi Tianzi was feeling a bit down, so he chatted with Rong Mei-in for a while. He specifically asked about the situation after Rong Mei-in returned to the Rong family in the provincial capital. Rong Mei-in replied that the situation was even more complicated than expected, but she was still able to handle it properly. She told Yi Tianzi that the ownership of the company had been fully transferred to him, giving him the ultimate decision-making power to determine the future development direction of the company. As for the affairs of the Rong family in the provincial capital, she would try to handle them well. Finally, she sent some information to Yi Tianzi, indicating that he would need this information in managing the company in the future. It was because of this that Yi Tianzi drove to the headquarters of Feng Rong Group. Just as he entered the office area, he heard employees whispering and discussing, creating a noisy atmosphere. When he appeared in front of everyone, many people whispered and questioned, Can this guy really dare to come here? I heard he caused the death of Vice President Diao, was taken away by the law enforcement team, and now he's released again? Director Rong was called back to the provincial capital, and now this Mr. Yi is in control alone. Will there be any trouble? Yi Tianzi looked around at the employees present, and everyone lowered their heads and kept quiet. At this moment, the HR manager hurried over, looking flustered, and said, Mr. Yi, you finally came. Yi Tianzi raised an eyebrow and asked, Why is everyone not working quietly during working hours? Is someone going to jump off the building again? The HR manager smiled bitterly and lowered his voice, saying, No one is going to jump off the building. But the death of Vice President Diao yesterday caused a big reaction. Now many employees are feeling low and are demanding that you voluntarily resign as the general manager. Otherwise, they are prepared to resign collectively. What do you think? Upon hearing this, Yi Tianzi let out a cold laugh, then raised his voice and said, All right, if anyone wants to resign collectively, step forward now, and I will immediately sign and agree. This statement immediately caused a sensation in the office area. Everyone reacted differently. Is this too harsh? He's going to fire everyone who disagrees without discussion? The HR manager reminded him awkwardly, Mr. Yi, these employees account for nearly half of the company's staff. If they all resign, many of the company's operations will be paralyzed. Can you be more tactful? Yi Tianzi dismissively said, I have always believed in prospering those who follow me and destroying those who oppose me. Want to be gentle? Then they'd better go home to find their mothers. Under my leadership, those who do not follow orders will only have one outcome, and that is to get lost. 
As soon as he finished speaking, more than ten people stood up from their seats in unison, their eyes determined. Everything was unfolding right before his eyes. These people are familiar faces in the company's senior management team, gathering together to support Diao Yele. The manager of the marketing department coldly said, Hmph, you really have a big attitude. I have dedicated my youth and sweat to the company. Why do you have the right to dismiss us? The manager of the advertising department discontentedly added, As a suspect of killing Vice President Diao, what qualifications do you have to continue as the general manager? The manager of the public relations department chimed in, Exactly. The 10 billion order project you were in charge of failed, plunging the company into crisis. How dare you continue sitting in the position of general manager and expect us to follow your orders? With the provocation of these senior employees, many other staff members immediately joined in chanting slogans, expressing dissatisfaction with Yi Tianzi, and the office area instantly became chaotic. It seems that the situation has spiraled out of control. Suddenly, Yi Tianzi shouted loudly, Shut up, all of you. His voice thundered like a roar, instantly overpowering all the noise. The air around vibrated. Even the water in the cups rippled. Everyone instinctively covered their ears, afraid of rupturing their eardrums. After Yi Tianzi's voice faded, the office area immediately quieted down, everyone staring at Yi Tianzi with shocked and fearful eyes. How did he do that? Does he know how to use the lion's roar technique? Yi Tianzi scanned the senior management team and coldly said, You ask me what qualifications I have to continue as the general manager? Now I'll tell you, Rong Mei-in has entrusted me with all the company affairs. I have the power to act first and report later. I can do as I please. If you're not convinced, come forward and confront me. Ha ha, do you guys, who profit at the company's expense, not clean up yourselves before pointing fingers at others? He suddenly pointed at the manager of the marketing department, Huang Chenlong. You've been with the company for two years, using your position for illegal gains exceeding 8 million, extorting partners, issuing false invoices. Do you still have the nerve to talk about bleeding and sweating for the company? Huang Chenlong trembled, stuttering, How? How do you know? Yi Tianxi didn't answer, but turned to the manager of the advertising department, Zhang Tianshan. Last year you deliberately leaked company core secrets to competitors, causing a loss of 35 million to the company, while pocketing 10 million yourself and shifting the blame to subordinates. Do you still have the audacity to speak arrogantly? Ignorant fool. Zhang Tianshan trembled all over, feeling his mind go blank. How could Yi Tianxi know all this? Yi Tianxi then pointed to the PR manager. And you, Zhao Chongqing, have been sexually harassing female subordinates multiple times since joining three years ago. Earlier this year, you even impregnated an intern through rape, refused to compensate her, and threatened her to get rid of the child and not report it. With such despicable character, how dare you continue to stay here? Prison is where you belong. Boom! Zhao Chongqing instantly felt weak in the legs and knelt down on the spot. Yi Tianxi's verbal attacks continued. He casually pointed to a senior executive who had stepped forward and immediately exposed the person's hidden scandals. Embezzlement, abuse of power, personal illegal activities, all revealed one by one, leaving everyone stunned. These leaders may look respectable on the surface, but behind the scenes, they are worse than beasts. And all of these people are staunch supporters of Diao Yele. However, how could Yi Tianxi know all this? He hasn't been here for long. Little did they know that all these explosive news were provided to him by Rong Mei-in last night. Rong Mei-in had collected these materials to deal with Diao Yele and others. Unexpectedly, Diao Yele suddenly passed away. So the information was handed over to Yi Tianxi to use. With these handles, Yi Tianxi naturally wouldn't show mercy. At this moment, the senior executives who supported Diao Yele turned pale and trembled. With so much evidence exposed, being fired was the least of their worries. They might end up in jail. Yet, Yi Tianxi remained as calm as water inside. In the city of corruption, he had once severely punished the most heinous criminals, and now facing this group of incompetent people, he was even more at ease. He calmly told the HR manager, I have already sent you the materials on these disciplinary and illegal issues. Company discipline must be strictly enforced, and if it involves crimes, 
report it to the police immediately, spare no one. Also, check the surveillance footage, those who stood up against me, fire them all without mercy. You have one day to do it, if not, you can leave too. The HR manager hurriedly nodded in agreement. Afterwards, Yi Tianxi ignored the pleas of the senior executives and employees who were being dealt with and left directly. However, as soon as he got downstairs, he encountered a familiar face, Chief Inspector Wu Mu Huan from the Law Enforcement Bureau. Wu Mu Huan was first stunned to see Yi Tianxi, then his face darkened, gritted his teeth and said, Humph, it's you? What a coincidence. Yesterday, you? Yi Tianxi interrupted him and asked, Enough talk. Any news on the whereabouts of Qian Rong? Wu Mu Huan was taken aback for a moment and immediately replied, Qian Rong is no longer in this world. Upon hearing the news of Qian Rong's death, Yi Tianzi's eyes flickered slightly. Although the news was somewhat unexpected, it was also within reason. Qian Rong had always been a tool to be used, manipulated by drugs to harm Dia Yele. Now that Dia Yele was dead, she had lost her utility and was destined to meet a bad end to prevent further exposure of secrets. Yi Tianzi wanted to know, how did she die? Where? Wu Mu Hong was about to answer when he suddenly realized something. Wait a minute. You're not my boss or colleague. Why should I answer your questions? Instead, you owe me an explanation from yesterday. Wu Mu Hong was humiliated by Yi Tianzi in the morgue yesterday and even kicked hard. When she got home that night, she checked and found a big red swollen patch on her buttocks. It still hadn't subsided, and sitting down was painful. It was all Yi Tianzi's fault. Are you sure you won't tell me? Wu Mu Hong stood with hands on hips. No way. Do you still want to lay hands on law enforcement officers in broad daylight? Humph. I have other ways to deal with you without resorting to physical violence. Yi Tianzi took out his phone and opened a video. The video showed the scene of Wu Mu Hong and Yi Tianzi drinking the mandrake water in the morgue yesterday, culminating in Yi Tianzi's controlled image. Name? Wu Mu Hong. Bra size? 34D. Color? Purple. I am a little dog. I am a little dog. I am a little dog. As the video played, Wu Mu Hong's face alternated between pale and green. Oh my god. She suddenly realized that yesterday's embarrassing scene had been recorded by Yi Tianzi. Jerk. Give me the phone. She tried to snatch the phone, but Yi Tianzi easily dodged her. Wu Mu Hong said angrily, I command you to delete the video immediately. Right now. Yi Tianzi mimicked her posture. Hands on hips. No way. Do you still want to lay hands on law-abiding citizens? Wu Mu Hong was so angry she almost passed out. She gritted her teeth and said, you are violating my privacy. I warn you. I will arrest you. Yi Tianzi muttered. I'm so scared. But unfortunately, although Wu Mu Hong was the captain of the Criminal Investigation Division of the Enforcement Bureau, she did not have the authority to deal with martial arts experts. You should be aware of this, right? Alas, Wu Mu Hong blinked. That's the truth. She reluctantly asked, What do you want me to do for you to delete the video? Yi Tianzi smiled and said, I've already told you. Tell me the cause and location of Qian Rong's death. No tricks. Seeing Yi Tianzi's smug expression, Wu Mu Hong almost couldn't resist the urge to go up and beat him. It's so infuriating. She gritted her teeth and suppressed her displeasure. Humph. Since you found out the cause of Dia Yele's death, I'll tell you. She looked around to make sure no one else was paying attention to their conversation. Yesterday afternoon, the Law Enforcement Bureau went all out to search for the whereabouts of Qian Rong, but she seemed to have vanished into thin air, just like she disappeared from the world. However, this morning, they received an emergency call claiming that Qian Rong had passed away and provided the specific location before hanging up. The Law Enforcement Bureau immediately rushed to the scene and found Qian Rong's body in a dried well behind Xiangshan in the western outskirts of the city. This place is rarely passed by. And without the emergency call, it would have been difficult to find her. Yi Tianzi asked if the cause of death had been determined. Wu Mu Huan nodded and said that Qian Rong's neck was twisted to death before being thrown into the dried well. Judging from the force of the twist, the perpetrator must have been a skilled individual, committing the crime cleanly and efficiently. Furthermore, Wu Mu Huan continued, indicating that Qian Rong might have been violated after her death before being thrown into the well. But unfortunately, 
the culprit took measures to prevent DNA extraction. Yi Tianzi frowned, feeling sorry for what Xin Rong had gone through. In her career, in pursuit of advancement, she colluded with Diao Yele, only to end up in such a tragic situation. Perhaps this was just retribution for greed? Has the informant been found? Wu Mu Huan furrowed his brows and said that the informant used a public telephone booth to make the call. Upon investigation, it was found that the informant was dressed in black clothing with their face tightly wrapped, clearly intending to conceal their identity. As for the reason, it was speculated that they might have been afraid of retaliation from the perpetrator or had other undisclosed motives. Yi Tianzi narrowed his eyes thoughtfully. The deaths of Diao Yele and Xian Rong involved the Mandala Water, martial arts experts, and possibly even a third-party force. The whole situation was becoming increasingly mysterious. Take me to the scene. Wu Mu Huan, feeling displeased, said, Yi Tianzi, with a smile, reminded her, Captain, you wouldn't want your colleagues to see the video on your phone, right? Wu Mu Huan was almost driven to madness. If discovered by colleagues, he would likely be ridiculed for a long time and find it hard to raise his head in the future. Moreover, why did that statement sound like lines from certain adult films? A hymn? Did I reveal something? With a fleeting look of embarrassment, she reluctantly agreed to lead the way. Subsequently, Yi Tianzi drove with Wu Mu Huan to Xiangshan in the western outskirts. A red Maserati stopped at the foot of Xiangshan and Han Ruayun, wearing a denim skirt and a white t-shirt, got out of the car. Her tall figure paired with an E-cup chest, but today her eyes were reddened, evidently regretting impulsively sending revealing photos to Yi Tianzi last night. Unexpectedly, Yi Tianzi heard a woman's voice coming from the other end, and after careful analysis, it was very likely Lu Ruyin. This news made her extremely sad, and she immediately decided to block Yi Tianzi. She tossed and turned all night, feeling completely lost about the future. This shameless guy, actually fooling around behind her back with that C-cup woman, really made her furious. Looking up at Xiangshan, her purpose of coming here was to go to the top of the mountain to burn incense and pray at Wuxiang Temple. Although Wuxiang Temple is not the most famous Taoist temple in Jiangnan City, there are rumors that the temple master is a powerful fortune teller with accurate fortune telling and divination skills. Especially in the aspect of marriage, no one can compare. Han Ruayun came here specifically to seek advice on her and Yi Tianzi's future. If it's not suitable, she has decided to continue to be indifferent to Yi Tianzi and ignore him. If it's suitable, she will reluctantly wait for his apology. If Yi Tianzi behaves well, she will consider forgiving him and starting over. Shortly after Han Ruayun climbed the mountain, a Volkswagen Touareg stopped. Yi Tianzi and Wu Mu Huan got out of the car. After getting off the car, Yi Tian Su immediately caught sight of a dazzling red Maserati. Oh, isn't this Han Rua Yun's ride? How come she's here? Thinking about the misunderstanding from last night, Yi Tian Su decided to find an opportunity to explain things to Han Rua Yun. After all, if he continued to remain silent, how could he enjoy the benefits of matching fashion in the future? Just then, Wu Mu Han suddenly interrupted Yi Tian Su's thoughts. Hey, what are you daydreaming about? Hurry up and follow our captain. Oh, got it. Yi Tian Su followed closely behind Wu Mu Han, embarking on the mountain path together. Xiangshan has an altitude of only 3 to 400 meters, not steep and towering. For martial arts masters like Yi Tian Su and Wu Mu Han, it was a piece of cake. In less than 10 minutes, they arrived at the spot where they found Xian Rong's body. This place was located on the back mountain of Xiangshan, halfway up the mountain. The surroundings were barren with bushes and weeds, and the path leading here was rugged and uneven. Unlike the smooth mountain trails, so few people came here. Next to a crooked neck tree, there was a dry well, about a meter in diameter. It was surrounded by stacked stone slabs covered with moss. Wu Mu Han introduced to Yi Tian so that Qin Rong's body was found in this well, about five meters deep, and we pulled the body up with a rope. Where are your team members? My team members left after surveying the scene. In the past month, there have been several cases of young women missing in Jiangnan City, and teams have been mobilized to search. Everyone is busy. Another case? Yi Tian Su raised an eyebrow slightly. In this era of information explosion, urban areas are filled with surveillance cameras, 
making it difficult for cases of missing people, especially adult women, to occur. Could it be? Wu Mu Han interrupted his thoughts. Don't think about that for now. Why did you ask me to bring you here? Did you find something? Don't worry, let me take a look first. Yi Tian Su looked around the scene. From the scene, there were no signs of struggle. It seemed that Qian Rong had no resistance in front of the killer. However, two meters away from the dry well, there was a clear trace of a trampled lawn. It appeared that the killer murdered Qian Rong here, then assaulted her, and finally threw the body into the well. Yi Tian Su walked over, crouched down, carefully examining the trampled lawn. At the same time, he asked, since there are traces of the killer's activities at the scene, didn't you find any key clues from it? Wu Mu Han sighed, alas, this morning we brought police dogs to track the killer's scent left at the scene. But strangely, the police dogs behaved abnormally upon arrival, unable to cooperate, unprecedented. Hmm, that suits me just fine. Y que Tian se sneered. Wu Mu Han looked puzzled. What do you mean by that? Yi Tian Su pinched some black powdery substance. The reason for the police dog's abnormal behavior is because of this. This is just black soil. What's so special about it? Yi Tian Su shook his head, explaining. This plant is not ordinary. It is a black moon peony, which produces a powder when burned. Although it looks plain and odorless on the surface, it creates a different scene for animals. Animals are extremely sensitive to this plant, as its scent makes them restless and fearful, causing them to stay away. Therefore, some people carry this plant with them when traveling in the wild to prevent attacks from wild animals. Wu Mu Huan raised an eyebrow, his eyes revealing a hint of suspicion. Yi Tianzi narrowed his cold eyes and continued. Not only that, it is also an important component of mandrake water, meaning, Wu Mu Huan's eyes lit up and interjected, so, the person who killed Qian Rong is the one who gave her mandrake water? Yi Tianzi smiled slightly and said, he he, looks like you're smart. Wu Mu Huan thanked him and suddenly realized something. He widened his eyes and somewhat displeasedly said, Hey, what do you mean by that? Are you deliberately mocking our captain for not being smart enough? Yi Tianzi smirked, thinking to himself that this big-chested and brainless guy, isn't it already obvious? Do we still need to mock deliberately? He looked around, pondered for a moment, and suddenly asked, Is there anyone living near Xiangshan? Wu Mu Huan thought for a moment and said, there is a Wuxiang temple on the top of Xiangshan, where an elderly Taoist priest lives, who is said to be good at fortune-telling. Any plans? Yi Tianzi said, Take me to see that Wuxiang temple. Wu Mu Huan asked in confusion, Do you suspect that the old Taoist priest is the culprit? Yi Tianzi categorical denit, absolutely impossible. He is old and frail, unable to move well, even inferior to an average person. How could he commit a crime? Yi Tianzi said indifferently, Stop the nonsense. Just show me the way. No need for more words. Do you dare to blame our captain? Wu Mu Huan couldn't bear it and subconsciously rolled up his sleeves. Yi Tianzi quickly took out his phone, showing a harmless smile. Captain Wu, you wouldn't want your colleagues to see the video on my phone, would you? Ha ha. Wu Mu Huan was furious. Once again, he was caught by him. If he had known, he wouldn't have agreed to bet on mandrake water with Yi Tianzi, this despicable guy. At the Wuxiang Temple on the top of Xiangshan, Han Ruiyun sat on a yellow cushion, facing a thin, elderly Taoist priest. The Taoist priest, dressed in tattered Taoist robes, hunched over, looking somewhat weary. The old Taoist priest smiled and said, Little girl, what brings you here? Han Ruiyun shyly said, Master. I would like you to calculate my marriage fate. Can you help me? Marriage fate. This is precisely the expertise of this poor Taoist. Come, stretch out your arm. Let me feel your bones. Feel the bones? Although Han Ruayun had heard of this method of fortune telling, it was her first time experiencing it firsthand. She hesitated and asked, Master, don't you need my date of birth? The old Taoist priest said sternly, date of birth is too superficial to accurately predict marriage fate. Feeling the bones is the unique skill of this poor Taoist, always accurate. All right then. Han Ruayun extended her arm to the old Taoist priest. 
The Taoist priest gently placed his right hand on Han Ruayun's arm, as if caressing a precious artwork. This touch made Han Ruayun feel somewhat uneasy. She looked around and asked in confusion, Master, why am I the only one in the Taoist temple today? The old Taoist replied, This morning, a body was found by the enforcement team in the back mountain. After the news spread, many pilgrims were too scared to come. But don't worry, this temple is protected by the gods, and there is no danger. Despite hearing this, Han Ruayun still felt a bit uneasy. She pulled back her arm and urgently asked, Master, is there any result? The old Taoist nodded slightly, smiled, and then she couldn't wait to ask, What is the result? Instead of answering directly, the old Taoist limped to the altar and took a bowl of clear water, then limped back and handed it to Han Ruayun. He showed a friendly smile and said, Lady, please drink this bowl of purified water, and I will tell you the answer. Han Ruayun lowered her head and looked at the clear and transparent Fu water in her hand, as if she could see through to the depths of her soul. She was puzzled, wondering why she had to drink this Fu water. The old Taoist calmly explained that divining marriage and fortune-telling involved prying into the secrets of heaven, which would violate the heavenly laws with unimaginable consequences. It could result in poor financial luck, wasted life, or even endanger one's life. However, this Fu water could ward off the punishment of heaven for your own good. Oh, I see. Thank you for the reminder, Master. Han Ruayun picked up the Fu water, ready to drink it. However, a greedy look flashed in the eyes of the old Taoist sitting across from her. His gaze lingered on Han Ruayun's ample bosom, involuntarily fixated. Anxious thoughts urged him on. Drink it quickly. Just as Han Ruayun was about to bring the bowl to her lips, she suddenly raised the white porcelain bowl and forcefully smashed it towards the old Taoist's head. Caught off guard, the old Taoist was instantly drenched with a gash left by the bowl. In the old Taoist's moment of confusion, Han Ruayun had already stood up and rushed towards the courtyard at lightning speed. The old Taoist's originally kind expression turned into anger, and he leaped up, chasing after Han Ruayun with swift steps, showing no signs of a limp. Although Han Ruayun managed to escape early, by the time she reached the gate of Wuxiang Temple, the old Taoist had caught up and blocked her way. Where do you think you're running off to, little girl? The old Taoist questioned fiercely. Han Ruayun nervously took two steps back, her voice trembling. Please don't come any closer. With a flick of his hand behind him, the courtyard gate closed with a loud bang. How did you figure it out? I've never missed a trick. At this moment, he stood tall and straight, devoid of any air of a practicing Taoist. Han Ruayun gritted her teeth and said, I felt something was wrong when drinking the Fu water. The old Taoist raised an eyebrow. Oh, what was wrong? Han Ruayun said coldly, I have seen real Fu water before, murky and not at all clear like what you claim. It wouldn't conceal the punishment of heaven. You are not the emperor of the barren heaven. When I saw Master Gong Sun using Fu water, though unreliable, at least it had substance and was not as clear as this, like mineral water. She realized something was amiss and tried to escape, only to find that the old Taoist's limp was a disguise, his speed extraordinary. Han Ruayun was puzzled. The people of Jiangnan City all knew that the Taoists of Wuxiang Temple had been practicing for many years without any controversy. So why the unusual behavior today? The old Taoist sneered. Emperor of the Barren Heaven? Never heard of it. But you, beautiful as a flower with such a bosom, at least a sizey cup, right? His smile was cold and lecherous. Han Ruayun's heart raced, emphasizing her own identity. I am the daughter of the Han family. Release me at once. Otherwise, you will face consequences. She said contemptuously. Suddenly, a wicked man rushed towards Han Ruayun, mercilessly grabbing her by the neck and lifting her up. Han Ruayun struggled desperately, shouting, Let go of me! Let go of me! However, the man's grip was as strong as a vice, making it impossible for her to break free. Han Ruayun struggled to say, I am Yi Tian's fiancé. He is a powerful martial arts master. If you harm me, he will avenge me and make you pay. Upon hearing the name Yi Tian's, the man's eyes narrowed, a detail keenly observed by Han Ruayun. She quickly said, 
If you release me now, everything can be forgiven. Otherwise, once Ye Tyants finds out, the man sneered, since you are Ye Tyants' fiancé, I should play with you even more. There's still an old score between us to settle. Han Ruayun's heart sank instantly. She didn't expect the man to have a grudge against Ye Tyants. The situation was getting worse by the minute. The man firmly held onto Han Ruayun's neck, forcibly taking her away. He picked up a bowl of water and taunted, This thing may be precious, but you spilled it wastefully. Today, you must serve me well. He forcefully opened Han Ruayun's mouth and poured the water into her mouth. Han Ruayun coughed, struggling constantly, the water flowing down her chin, soaking her clothes. Through the wet clothes, one could even vaguely see the outline of the purple protective shield. The man licked his lips, smirking, Wow, what a beauty! I have never encountered a woman like you before. He released Han Ruayun, and she fell to the ground. Despite feeling sore all over, she immediately got up and tried to escape towards the door out of survival instinct. However, after just a few steps, the man coldly ordered, Stop. Han Ruayun was surprised to find that her body was uncontrollably stiff, standing still in place. Panic surged through her heart. Was it because of the bowl of water? The man walked slowly towards her, leering, Under my control. You can only obediently listen. While forceful acts are exciting, I enjoy ordering women to serve me, especially exquisite beauties like you, which excites me even more. He commanded, Take off your top. Despite her inner resistance, Han Ruayun's body uncontrollably obeyed the command, slowly slipping off her white top. Her upper body was exposed to the air, her chest wrapped in a purple protective shield, adorned with lace trim, exuding a seductive charm. The pair of snow-white breasts almost seemed to burst out of the shield, particularly eye-catching. The man licked his lips, his eyes gleaming with greed, almost devouring her. At this moment, Han Ruayun, with tears in her eyes, felt full of grievance and regret. She thought sadly, Ye Tyants, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have lost my temper. If I hadn't lost my temper, I wouldn't have ended up here, in the hands of this villain. If I am truly insulted by this pervert today, I would rather die. Just as she was sinking into despair, suddenly, suddenly, there was a deafening roar outside the courtyard. It sounded as if a wooden door was being forcefully pushed open. Following closely, a familiar voice echoed outside the courtyard. A sense of curiosity arose in his heart. Could it be that there were some secretive activities going on in the courtyard? Perhaps it would be better for him to go and see what was really happening. The sudden disturbance startled the old Taoist priest, furrowing his brow. He grumbled discontentedly. Goodness, why would someone come at this hour? and to kick open the gate of the Taoist temple. Where is their manners? Han Ruayun immediately recognized the voice as belonging to Yi Taiyans. Although she didn't know why he appeared at this moment, she felt a surge of excitement and relief in her heart. Whenever she was in danger, Yi Taiyans always showed up in time. Ah, she shouldn't have been angry with Yi Taiyans last night. At the same time, another female voice came, inquiring, Master, are you there? The old Taoist priest frowned and pointed to the corner of the main hall. Lowering his voice, he said to Han Ruayun, Quiet. Hide over there and don't make a sound. Han Ruayun uncontrollably walked to the corner of the main hall. The old Taoist priest took a deep breath, limped to push open the door, walked out, and closed the door of the main hall. He bowed in the middle of the courtyard, saluting Yi Taiyans and Wu Mu Huan, two benefactors. The humble Taoist greets you. His gaze paused when it fell on Wu Mu Huan. Goodness, it's actually a member of the enforcement team? But when he saw Wu Mu Huan's appearance and figure clearly, a greedy desire arose. This woman, although inferior to the one in the main hall, dressed in the uniform of the enforcement team, exuded a unique charm. The enforcement team uniform, even Brother Han liked it and personally took photos as souvenirs. It shows its great charm. He glanced at the young man next to her, feeling a sense of familiarity. He is, while pondering, Wu Mu Huan interrupted, Master, we have come to visit unexpectedly. Sorry for the disturbance. Ah? 
The old Taoist priest quickly shook his head and smiled. Not at all. I don't know what the benefactors need. Can I help? Wu Mu Huan said, This morning, we found a female corpse in the dry well on the back hill. I wonder if Master noticed anything suspicious from yesterday to today. The old Taoist priest shook his head. I have been practicing on the mountain and have not left the temple. I really don't know the situation. If you need to pray for the deceased, I can help for free. Wu Mu Huan nodded. Understood, thank you, Master. No need for prayers. Then she turned to Yi Taiyans and complained. Did you hear that? The captain said no need. But you didn't listen. Wasting time for nothing? Yi Taiyans rolled his eyes. Hee hee. Just praised you for being smart. And you became confused in an instant. With this level, you still want to be a captain? You'd better go home and sell sweet potatoes. Wu Mu Huan widened her eyes. Hey, what do you mean? Explain clearly. You'll find out later. Yi Taiyan strode towards the main hall room of the Taoist temple. The old Taoist priest's heart tightened, immediately reached out to stop him. Benefactor, please stop. The main hall is a sacred place, not to be entered casually. Yi Taiyan squinted slightly. Oh? Isn't the main hall just a place for worship? Why is it closed during the day? Are the deities inside sleeping? The old Taoist priest's face darkened. Benefactor, do not speak recklessly. Wu Mu Huan hurriedly pulled Yi Taiyan's. Our captain is here to handle the case, not for you to cause trouble. Apologize to the master. But Yi Taiyan's seemed indifferent, staring directly at the old Taoist priest, as if he had a realization. The old Taoist was embarrassed when Yi Tianxi pointed out the flaw on his body. Yi Tianxi noticed a black mark around the old Taoist's waist and asked about it. The old Taoist tried to explain, but his voice betrayed his unease. However, Yi Tianxi coldly exposed the truth, saying, The ink moon peony powder on your body is identical to the one near the dried well. Do you still want to deceive everyone? The old Taoist's pupils constricted trying to defend himself, but found no words. Upon hearing this, Wu Mu Huan was stunned, finding it hard to believe. How could the ink moon peony powder be related to him? Before she could finish her sentence, she suddenly felt a strong sense of danger. Without warning, the old Taoist pushed her with a palm, and she couldn't dodge, falling to the ground. Still feeling the pain from Yi Tianxi's kick yesterday, she almost passed out from this blow, tears welling up in her eyes. Despite this, she immediately warned Yi Tianxi to be careful. However, it was too late. The old Taoist took out a small white ball, threw it at Yi Tianxi's feet, and it burst open, releasing a green smoke that enveloped Yi Tianxi. When the smoke cleared, Wu Mu Huan saw Yi Tianxi still standing motionless. The old Taoist calmly explained that it was a drug made from ink moon peony pollen not as potent as the mandrake water but enough to immobilize someone in hallucinations. Wu Mu Huan anxiously called out to Yi Tianxi, only to receive silence in return. The old Taoist's eyes flashed with an unusual light as he confirmed Yi Tianxi's identity, sneering, So, this guy isn't as formidable as I thought, falling for such a simple trick. He compared a photo to Yi Tianxi, with a mocking smile on his face. Turning to the fallen Wu Mu Huan, he coldly stated that they couldn't leave now. He threatened Wu Mu Huan to surrender or face more torture. Furious, Wu Mu Huan stood up, enduring the pain, puzzled by the sadistic nature of the Five Spice sect leader. However, she was determined that he was the killer of Qin Rong and would not let him go. Without hesitation, she launched an attack, aiming a high roundhouse kick at the old Taoist. Believing in her strength, she didn't expect the old Taoist to dodge her attack, grabbing her ankle and delivering a harsh blow. Mockingly, the old Taoist said, A mere late-stage martial artist dares to be arrogant in front of me? A punch to Wu Mu Huan's abdomen left her in excruciating pain. With a muffled sound, Wu Mu Huan was hit in the abdomen, making her feel as if the whole world was turned upside down. Her body instantly lost strength and her legs gave way as she knelt to the ground. It turned out that her opponent was a masterful warrior. She was shocked. The opponent's strength had already reached the later stage of a warrior. While she was only at the peak, the huge gap in strength destined her to defeat. The old Taoist grabbed Wu Mu Huan roughly and threw her into a room in the hall, 
grinning wickedly. Ha ha. Now I have two stunning beauties at my disposal. How delightful. Wu Mu Huan's expression turned ugly. In the distance, Han Ruayun also looked pale. At this moment, both of them felt a surge of despair. Just as the old Taoist was about to take action, a mocking voice suddenly came from outside the door. Old man, do you want me to join this delightful game as well? Upon hearing Yi Tianzi's words, the old Taoist couldn't help but tremble all over, turning his head in fear. He saw Yi Tianzi standing at the doorway, leaning against the door frame, casually and mockingly sizing him up. The old Taoist widened his eyes, almost popping them out. He stammered, How did you? How did you get here? I clearly use sleeping pills. You should? Yi Tianzi scratched his ear, disdainfully saying, With the level of sleeping pills you used, it might work on others, but it's not even worth mentioning for me. The old Taoist felt like he was struck by lightning, standing frozen in place. On the other hand, Han Ruayun and Wu Mu Huan were both filled with joy. They breathed a sigh of relief, realizing that Yi Tianzi was safe and sound. However, in the next moment, a hint of resentment flashed in the old Taoist's eyes. He suddenly rushed towards Yi Tianzi, pulling out a dagger from his sleeve and thrusting it towards Yi Tianzi's throat. D. Yet, with just a casual slap, Yi Tianzi sent the old Taoist flying, crashing into the altar in the center of the hall, causing it to shatter with a loud crash. The old Taoist spurted blood from his mouth, barely propping himself against the clay sculpture of a deity, panting heavily, eyes filled with fear. A mere slap sent this martial arts master with full strength flying. This guy was truly extraordinary. Wu Mu Huan's mouth fell open. Although she had suffered a loss in her confrontation with Yi Tianzi yesterday, she didn't think Yi Tianzi was much stronger than her. However, the scene before her now completely shocked her. This seemingly ordinary guy was actually so powerful. In front of him, she might not even be as good as a little bird. After dealing with the old Taoist, Yi Tianzi turned to Han Ruayun in the corner of the hall, gently patting her shoulder, instantly dispersing the effects of the mandala water in her body. Han Ruayun trembled, regaining her freedom. She looked up at Yi Tianzi, eyes red, tears almost welling up. Yi Tianzi rubbed the back of his head pondering how to explain the misunderstanding from last night, whether he should apologize. However, in the next moment, Han Ruoyun directly threw herself into Yi Tianzi's arms, her voice choked with excitement and apology, shout CEI CEI. I'm sorry, it was all my fault for being willful last night, leading to falling into the hands of the bad guys today. Thank you for saving me once again. I won't lose my temper anymore in the future, sniffle. After the danger just now, she understood that the fate between her and Yi Tianzi was not something that could be calculated. Whenever she was in trouble, Yi Tianzi always appeared in time, resolving the crisis, which was enough to prove the bond between them. This lifetime is destined to be with him. Han Ruayun's words and actions made Yi Tianzi feel pleased. Well, since you have already apologized, should I also express my apologies? He friendly patted Han Ruayun on the shoulder and firmly said, in light of your sincere apology, I will reluctantly forgive you this time, but don't make the same mistake again. Han Ruayun obediently nodded, indicating that he would never dare to. Whether intentional or not, Han Ruayun's body moved slightly, and his full chest pressed against Yi Tianzi's chest, soft and warm. Yi Tianzi subconsciously looked down, the snow white skin as firm as a mountain, with deep contours. Truly, if only life could be as it was when we first met. This made his heart feel a bit agitated. Just then, Wu Muhan let out a sigh of relief, looking at Yi Tianzi and Han Ruayun, who were intimate together, feeling a bit awkward, like a third wheel. She cleared her throat and reminded, Gentlemen, save the cuddling for private moments. We have more important matters to attend to. Yi Tianzi and Han Ruayun reluctantly separated. Han Ruayun put back on the white t-shirt he had taken off earlier and quickly walked towards the old Taoist. Without hesitation, he kicked the old Taoist hard in the lower body. Pervert, shameless scum. Dared to have impure thoughts about this lady? I'll kick you to death. Although the old Taoist was a master, the intense pain from Han Ruayun's kick made him writhe in agony, 
exclaiming, Stop kicking. My manhood is going to break. The pain was unbearable. Han Ruayun didn't stop, continuing to kick relentlessly. Damn bastard. How dare you bully me? The old Taoist was almost fainting. Wu Mu Huan quickly pulled Han Ruayun back, reminding, Beauty, that's enough. Vigilante justice is illegal. Han Ruayun pouted discontentedly and took two steps back. Wu Mu Huan looked down at the old Taoist and asked sternly, As a monk, why did you get involved in criminal activities? Speak up. The old Taoist coldly chuckled and refused to cooperate by lowering his head. Wu Mu Huan, burning with anger, raised her foot and kicked the old Taoist's lower body fiercely. Are you going to talk or not? She shouted angrily, with much greater force than Han Ruayun. The old Taoist groaned in pain, but still refused to speak. Damn it! Wu Mu Huan was sweating on her forehead, her chest heaving up and down in anger. Yi Tianxi sneered, I was right about you. You're simply incredibly foolish. Sometimes, intelligence is needed rather than brute force. Wu Mu Huan asked discontentedly, Oh, do you have a better idea? Yi Tianxi nodded and said, Of course, how about we make a bet? Wu Mu Huan put her hands on her hips and waited. Yi Tianxi smiled happily and said, If you lose, you have to show a polite attitude in front of me. At least treat me like you would treat a leader, okay? No problem, the old Taoist provocatively replied. I want to see what you've got. Yi Tianxi walked up to the old Taoist, bent down to search his Taoist robe, and took out a small glass bottle containing a transparent liquid. Opening the bottle, he gently sniffed it in front of his nose. Ah, this is it, he said to Han Ruiyun. Get me a bowl of clear water. Han Ruiyun quickly handed a bowl of clear water to Yi Tianxi. Yi Tianxi dripped three drops of the liquid from the glass bottle into the bowl, then handed the bowl to the old Taoist. With a friendly smile on his face, he said, Old friend, have you heard of the phrase treat others as you would like to be treated? At the sight of this scene, the old Taoist's face turned pale, shaking his head in disapproval, Don't do it. However, Yi Tianxi coldly smirked and ruthlessly interjected, Enough talk. Even if you resist, it's useless. Today, you must drink this bowl of water. He tightly pinched the old Taoist's mouth and forcefully poured the bowl of water down his throat. The old Taoist coughed uncontrollably from being choked, but as the water entered his stomach, his eyes became glazed. Wu Mu Huan suddenly realized, Heavens, did you give him the mandrik water to drink? Yi Tianxi explained helplessly, If the captain of the law enforcement team is like you, then our Dragon Country's law enforcement system is truly in jeopardy. Wu Mu Huan felt ashamed and regretful, thinking to himself, I'm usually so clever. Why do I become so foolish in front of Yi Tianxi? It's infuriating. Yi Tianxi coldly stared at the old Taoist, sternly asking, What is your name? The old Taoist trembled as he replied, You young Fu, what is your identity? Yi Tianji Presedon. I am the hundred-faced wanton of the heavenly maimed gate, came the trembling response. Hearing this, Wu Mu Huan widened his eyes in astonishment and asked, He is the hundred-faced wanton? Yi Tianxi was also surprised and asked Wu Mu Huan, Do you know about this hundred-faced wanton? Wu Mu Huan nodded. The hundred-faced wanton is a notorious assassin of the heavenly maimed gate, skilled in disguise and deceit, despicable in his actions, even resorting to sexual assault during crimes, truly worse than a beast. Han Ruiyun's face changed, a wave of fear rising within him. If Yi Tianxi hadn't appeared in time, who knows what might have happened today? Yi Tianxi remained calm. Despite the twisted actions of the hundred-faced wanton, he was still not as vile as the criminals in the fallen city. He continued questioning, as the hundred-faced wanton, why did you disguise yourself as an old Taoist here? Yu Yongfu calmly replied, I am not a real Taoist. Over a month ago, I killed the old Taoist of the Five Fragrance Temple and took on his identity to stay here. Wu Mu Huan and Han Ruayun suddenly realized that the reputation of the old Taoist from the Five Fragrance Temple had always been good, but now his true colors were exposed, having been replaced long ago. Yi Tianxi muttered softly, reaching out to touch Yu Yongfu's cheek, and indeed found a faint gap. Without hesitation, he tore off the disguise, 
revealing a hideous face of around 50 years old, deeply wrinkled and freckled. This was the true face of the hundred-faced wanton. He continued, What was your purpose in coming to Jiangnan City? Yu Yongfu replied in confusion, over a month ago. I came to Jiangnan City, initially just for pleasure, kidnapping and killing eight women. Wu Mu Huan's eyes flashed with anger as he stepped forward and kicked him harshly. Despicable. So it was you causing chaos. In the past month, there had been multiple cases of young women going missing in Jiangnan City, with no leads in the investigation, and the culprit turned out to be him. All of this was actually orchestrated by Yu Yongfu. Han Ruayun clenched his fists beside him, gritting his teeth. Yu Yongfu continued, saying that after killing eight people, he was worried about being targeted by the martial arts action team. So he came to Wuxiangwen and disguised himself as an old Taoist. During this time, he used mandala water to drug and deceive four young girls who came up the mountain to seek divine help in matchmaking. They were all tender, but unfortunately not virgins. Yi Tianzi frowned and asked, Besides these, do you have any other motives? Mm. Yu Yongfu paused, then replied, I am also planning to avenge my junior brother Jawakin. Wu Mu Huan and Han Ruayun looked at each other in surprise. Who is Jawakin? Yi Tianzi explained with a wry smile, he is also a silver medal assassin of the Tianqin Gate. Initially, the Ji family hired him to assassinate me, but in the end, he was killed instead. It turns out that Yu Yongfu is actually his senior brother, truly colluding in evil deeds. Han Ruyun nu did in realisation. No wonder when she was caught by Yu Yongfu earlier, she mentioned Yi Tianzi's name as a threat. Yu Yongfu was very angry and said that there was an old account to settle with Yi Tianzi. The reason turns out to be this. Yi Tianzi continued to question, If your target for revenge is me, why did you kill Diao Yele and Qian Rong? Just to frame me? Yu Yongfu shook his head and said, I was also following orders. They said that as long as I did these things, they would help me avenge you. Yi Tianzi's eyes narrowed. Indeed, there are other people behind Yu Yongfu. Who are those people? I. Yu Yongfu was about to answer when suddenly his body trembled. Black blood vessels visible to the naked eye appeared on his neck and limbs at a rapid speed, wriggling and spreading rapidly as if they were worms. His originally lean body began to swell, his eyeballs filled with blood vessels bulging outward, as if they were about to burst. Not good. Yi Tianzi immediately grabbed Han Ruayun and Wu Mu Huan, running out of the main hall. The two women looked confused, not understanding what was happening. Bang! There was a sudden loud noise behind them. Yu Yongfu's swollen body exploded instantly, splattering a large amount of black and red flesh everywhere making a sizzling sound as it landed on the door frame and floor, emitting white smoke with strong corrosiveness. Fortunately, Yi Tianzi managed to evade with the two in time. Otherwise, they would have been corroded by the flesh. The air was filled with a foul smell. Watching the scene before them felt like hell. Han Ruayun couldn't hold on, turning around and running to a distance to vomit. Wu Mu Huan, as a captain of the criminal investigation team, had seen many big scenes. But at this moment, he was also in shock. What, what on earth just happened? Why did his body suddenly explode? Yi Tianzi squinted his eyes. This Yu Yongfu had been inflicted with a swelling gas curse long ago, and it just erupted, causing his body to swell and explode. What is a swelling gas curse? Wu Mu Huan said he had never heard of such a thing. Yi Tianzi explained, it is a rare type of curse poison. In the history of Southern Frontier, this thing would be used to cultivate assassins. Before casting the curse, the caster would set conditions for the curse to trigger. Once the conditions are met, the curse would instantly turn into poisonous gas, bursting the body, not only destroying the body but also causing harm to the surroundings. As expected, Yu Yongfu set conditions for the curse to trigger when asked about the mastermind behind him. It's truly a cunning and cautious method. After hearing this, Wu Mu Huan took a cold breath, feeling a chill down his spine. She nervously asked, Can you guess the identity of the mastermind behind the scenes of the Yufu incident? Her voice carried a hint of anxiety, and her eyes revealed a strong desire for the answer. Yi Tianzi fell into silent contemplation, with Wu Mu Huan's question lingering in his mind. As a silver medal killer of the Tian Kin Min, 
It was not surprising that Yu Yongfu sought revenge on him, a fact Yi Tianxi was well aware of. However, the mastermind behind the killings of Diao Yele and Qin Rong was clearly someone else. In the face of the current situation, what Yi Tianxi detested most was Rong Tianli from the Rong family in the provincial capital, as well as the Ji family's Ji Buodwan, Ji Buoxiao, and Ji Buoxiao brothers. Could all of this be their doing? Additionally, Yi Tianxi was particularly concerned about the swelling curse placed on Yu Yongfu, a method usually only used by Gu masters in the southern frontier. He vividly remembered finding traces of Gu poison when treating Lin Yuanxuan in the Lin family last time. Gu poison was not common. So were these seemingly unrelated incidents hiding a deeper mystery? Another key issue was that the main components of Moyo Peony and Mandala water mostly grew in the southern frontier region, requiring a considerable level of medical expertise to prepare these herbs. Yu Yongfu, as a creepy and twisted killer, did not seem proficient in medicine, so how did he acquire these things? As Yi Tianxi pondered, Han Ruayun, who had just vomited in the distance, hurried back. Her face was pale, eyes red-rimmed, and she anxiously said, Come quickly, over there, over there? Wu Mu Huan asked in confusion. What's there? Just follow and you'll see. Leading them forward, Han Ruayun, with Yi Tianxi and Wu Mu Huan close behind, quickly arrived at the side room of the Five Spice Pavilion, where they found a metal iron plate on the ground, resembling a cellar cover. There were some ventilation holes on the cover, giving it an old look. Pointing at the cellar iron cover, Han Ruyun's voice trembled as she said, After vomiting just now and rinsing my mouth, I heard crying coming from the cellar, as if someone was weeping. Her words left the three present stunned. Wu Mu Huan walked over, and effortlessly lifted the nearly hundred-pound iron plate cover. When the cover was completely lifted, sunlight poured into the cellar, and the scene that greeted their eyes left them incredulous. In the narrow cellar, there were four women dressed in tatters, covered in scars all over their bodies. Their hair was disheveled, faces dirty with mud, and they had patches of bruises and purple marks on their bodies. One of them even had dried blood between her legs. As they were suddenly exposed to the sunlight, they instinctively covered their eyes, trembling and pleading loudly, I was wrong. Please don't hit me anymore. Don't force me to drink the medicine. I'm willing to cooperate with you. I'm sorry. Please, please let me go home. Clearly, these four women were the young girls mentioned by Yu Youngfu who had been drugged by him before. It seems that instead of being killed or released afterwards, they were imprisoned here for his pleasure. Such behavior is truly despicable. Wu Mu Huan immediately spoke up to comfort them, saying, Don't be afraid. I'm from the law enforcement team. The bad guys are already dead, and I'm here to rescue you. Han Ruayun's eyes were also red with tears, fear rising in her heart once again. If it weren't for Yi Tianza arriving in time today, she would have fallen into the same predicament as these women. Wu Mu Huan said, Miss Han, I'll go down and rescue them. You help find some items for them to cover up with. The two women immediately got busy. Yi Tianzi did not participate, but walked out of the room and sat on a stone bench in the courtyard of Wuxiang Pavilion. After all, these four women were naked, and it wasn't quite appropriate for him, a big man, to stand there. And they had experienced such despicable things. Seeing a man could deepen their psychological trauma. It's better not to cause trouble. Wu Mu Huan and Han Ruayun rescued them immediately called the law enforcement team and medical personnel. In less than 20 minutes, everyone had arrived. Law enforcement officers cordoned off the scene for investigation, and medical staff took the four women to the hospital for examination and treatment. Wu Mu Huan and Han Ruayin walked over and sat beside Yi Tianza, one on each side. Wu Mu Huan sincerely said to Yi Tianza, I want to thank you on behalf of these four women. If it weren't for you, they would have no chance to turn their lives around, and their lives would have been ruined. Yi Tianzi shook his head. I just did a little insignificant thing. Wu Mu Huan asked puzzledly, I've always been curious. How did you suspect from the beginning that Daochang of Wuxiang Pavilion had a problem? Why did you insist on climbing up the mountain? Yi Tianzi replied, Isn't it simple? Since the killer is a martial arts master, after killing Qian Rong, he could easily dispose of the body nearby and it would be hard to be discovered. But instead, 
He took a big detour and threw the body into the dry well on Xiangshan, which is clearly illogical. The only possibility is that the killer lived near Xiangshan, and the only place to live on the entire Xiangshan is Wuxiang Pavilion. Holding on to this doubt, I decided to come up the mountain to take a look, and sure enough, I found that this so-called old Taoist had many loopholes. Wu Mu Huan sighed and exclaimed, We were all blinded by the old Taoist's poor health and limp leg, never thought the real culprit would use such a magical method of disguise. Without you, I don't know when this case would be solved. As she said this, she glanced at Yi Tianza inadvertently. Although she had not known this man for long, her impression of Yi Tianza had changed from confusion at the beginning to feeling very secure and reliable. No wonder even Miss Han, such a beautiful woman, was so infatuated with him. Does he still have other secrets hidden behind him? At this moment, Yi Tianza spoke up. Now that the investigation is almost complete, I'll trouble Captain Wu to continue the investigation, starting from the call records and other aspects of Yu Young Fu. Wu Mu Hong nodded, feeling a bit hesitant but suppressing his inner doubts. Yu Young Fu was truly a master of martial arts, and our Enforcement Bureau's authority is limited, making it difficult to handle. Yet Yi Tianzi remained unfazed, firmly stating, It's okay. Just contact Vice Captain Zheng Chan of the Wudao Action Team Office in Jiangnan City directly, tell him I sent you, and request his full cooperation with your investigation. When we left, Zheng Chun promised earnestly that we could always turn to him for help. This kind of connection is not to be underestimated. Yi Tianzi's words stirred up a storm in Wu Mu Hong's heart. Who exactly is this man? Yi Tianzi stood up, stretched his weary body, and said to Captain Wu, We're a bit tired. You carry on with your work. We'll take our leave now. All right. Wu Mu Hong nodded, his eyes full of gratitude. Yi Tianzi left Wuxiang Pavilion with Han Ruayun. However, no one noticed that in the room of the main hall of the Taoist Temple, the clay statue seemed to move slightly. Yi Tianzi and Han Ruayun walked down the mountain path, stepping on the ancient stone steps. The white rabbit on Han Ruayun's chest hopped around, causing Yi Tianzi's eyes to involuntarily drift forward. Suddenly, Han Ruayun stopped in her tracks, facing Yi Tianzi, biting her lip as if hesitating. She whispered, I. I want to discuss something with you, is that okay? Yi Tianzi looked at her, and Han Ruayun's eyes were filled with affection and anticipation. Tonight, I want to stay at your place, is that okay? Upon hearing these words, Yi Tianzi's eyes widened in surprise, completely caught off guard. He instinctively asked, why? Han Ruayun pursed her lips and said, humph, even that C-cup flat-chested girl, Lu Ruyin, can stay at your place. Why can't I? Although she is one of your fiancés, so am I. Yi Tianzi chuckled and suddenly realized. It was really unexpected that this argument was triggered by jealousy. Although a C-cup is not considered huge, it shouldn't be degraded to a flat chest either. Indeed, the strong ones with E-cups always speak with confidence. Han Ruayun glanced down at the space between Yi Tianzi's legs, her expression becoming somewhat sad and forlorn, as she questioned. Tell me the truth, was your weapon taken by that drunken Lu Ruyin last night? Not only did she waste your bullets, but also took all of you. Ye Tianze akartli replied, Hey, what are you saying? You are a girl. Han Ruayun insisted, I don't care, just answer my question. Ye Tianze helplessly chuckled and said, There's no such thing. Actually, this is what happened yesterday. He described in detail why he brought Lu Ruyin home yesterday and the situation after she got drunk. Han Ruayun skeptically said, Are you sure you're not lying? Although she and Lu Ruyin don't get along, objectively speaking, the other party used to be a big star, impeccable in appearance and temperament, truly deserving the title of a national goddess. Such a goddess figure actually behaved like that after getting drunk in private? It's hard to imagine. Who would believe it if it were told? Yi Tianzi smiled bitterly and said, I really didn't lie. If you don't believe me, I'll show you. He took out his phone, opened WeChat, found the chat box with Lu Ruyin, and opened the video she sent. Ahem, are you showing off your artillery to Sister Army? Hee <laughs> hee, I like to see this, hurry up and take it off. In the vast wilderness, my love, yes, this is the video of Lu Ruyin acting coquettishly to Yi Tianzi after getting drunk last night. 
After watching the video, Han Ruayun widened her eyes, showing a surprised expression. Oh my god. This flat-chested Lu Ruyan actually knows how to be seductive after getting drunk better than me? Not only men, but probably most women can't stand it. She raised her eyebrows and asked, Wait, I don't understand. Did Lu Ruyan send you this video? Isn't she embarrassed? Ye tian ze simirket. I secretly sent it to myself from her phone this morning and deleted the chat history. She still doesn't know. With this leverage, it will be convenient to control her in the future. Han Ruiyan said, You, Yi Tianza, turns out you are a bit scheming too. With that said, I will stay at your place tonight even more. I want that flat-chested girl to know that you are my man. Before I deal with you, she better not come near you, humph. Yi Tianza's eye twitched slightly, a sense of foreboding rising in his heart. He sighed and gazed into the distance. Although Shangshan is not very high, it offers a panoramic view of the scenery of Jiangnan City. Han Ruoyan suddenly remembered something and asked seriously, By the way, you were in charge of handling Miss Rong's 10 billion worth of order. Now that the bidding is over, are you sure you have the ability to turn this situation around? If you really fail in the end, Miss Rong may be disappointed in you, and you may only end up with me in the future. Yi Tianza slightly squinted his eyes, smiled and said, The stage has been set. You are now the audience. Just sit back and watch. With that, his gaze drifted towards the east of Jiangnan City, looking pensive. In the Tate Industrial Park in the east of Jiangnan City, covering thousands of acres. In the early days of the country's establishment, the earliest industrial park in Jiangnan City was established here. However, at the peak of the 1970s, there were thousands of employees in this park. But, as the tide of the times changed in the late 1980s, a large number of state-owned enterprise employees were laid off. Tate Industrial Park gradually declined and barely maintained. Ten years ago, an engineering accident triggered a big fire, becoming the catalyst for the decline of Tade Industrial Park. The fire burned for three days and nights, causing hundreds of deaths. This industrial park turned into a ruin, with broken buildings everywhere. Since then, there have been rumors of various supernatural events here. Some say they have seen ghosts here, some say they mysteriously disappeared after exploring, and some say there have been suicides here, and so on. In short, this abandoned industrial park is famous for its bad feng shui and has always been avoided by people. Until the beginning of this year, the Jiangnan city government auctioned it off, and it was eventually acquired by the Tianlong Group at a super low price of 1 billion, with plans to invest over 10 billion for development. Yi Tianza originally planned to hand over this 10 billion order to Xiao Qingqing to help solve the feng shui problem at Tate Industrial Park. But unexpected events like divorce happened one after another. Therefore, the feng shui problem at Tate Industrial Park has not been resolved. Early this morning, Ji Budwan, as the new head of the Ji family, brought the construction team of the family's company to the industrial park for the first phase of the project, demolition work. When the Tianlong Group issued the bidding requirements, it explicitly stated that the winning bidder must complete the demolition work within a week, otherwise the deposit would be deducted and compensation for breach of contract would be paid, or even re-sign the contract. With only six days left now, Ji Budwan attached great importance to this matter and decided to personally supervise the construction. At this time, the demolition work in the industrial park had already begun. Manager Ma respectfully said to Ji Budwan, Young Master Ji, we have mobilized all the construction teams. According to the current progress, we can completely demolish this place in three days at most. Ji Budwan nodded in satisfaction, then said solemnly, But remember, don't forget my identity in the future. Do you know how to address me now? Manager Ma immediately realized his mistake and quickly apologized, Head of the family, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have misspoken, and I won't make the same mistake again in the future. Ji Budwan with his hands behind his back, smiled satisfactorily. Although his father's death had caused him great pain, he firmly believed in the saying that a setback may turn out to be a blessing in disguise. Ji Budwan now holds the position of the head of the family, feeling a sense of achievement like never before, far surpassing the glory of being the young master of the Ji family in the past. With confidence, Ji Budwan said, as long as we finish ahead of schedule, not only can we get back the deposit, but also Tianlong Group will pay the first installment of the project fee. 
which accounts for 50% of the total order amount, that is, 5 billion renminbi. By then, you will receive the deserved reward. Manager Man nodded excitedly, expressing understanding, I got it. Looking around, Ji Budwan saw that the construction progress was smooth and couldn't help but comment disdainfully. In the past, people said that the feng shui here was bad, full of evil things. But now, it seems that it's just groundless rumors to scare people, hee <laughs> hee. However, just as he finished speaking, there was a sudden loud noise from dozens of meters away. Immediately after, someone shouted in panic, Ah! Something happened. Someone is injured. A piercing scream cut through the noisy construction site, instantly halting all work. An accident on a construction site is no small matter, and a group of workers hurriedly rushed towards the direction of the sound. Ji Budwan and manager Ma ran over in haste, only to be surprised to find the body of a middle-aged man lying next to a dilapidated worker dormitory. The man was bleeding from seven orifices, with a deformed head. The scene was quite gruesome. Manager Ma asked in a deep voice, What exactly happened? Who was killed? The project director replied in a panic, Just now, Hu Hansen suddenly said he wanted to go upstairs to check, and when he reappeared, he was already on the rooftop, and then? Manager Ma urgently asked, And then what? The project director nervously said, And then he jumped off the rooftop by himself? Ji Budwan frowned, displeased, and said, could this guy be intentionally trying to commit insurance fraud or extort money? He suspected that Hu Han San might have deliberately caused his own accidental death in order to claim a huge compensation from the construction site. The surrounding workers were discussing, Hu Han San is well off, he shouldn't do such things. I had a medical checkup with him last month, he was healthy, it's impossible for him to have a terminal illness. I can't figure out the reason why Hu Han San committed suicide. Could it be haunted here? I heard that during the big fire, someone was trapped in the worker dormitory and burned to death. It's too terrifying. The discussions of the crowd enveloped the scene in a strange and bizarre atmosphere, with many people showing tense and fearful expressions. Ji Budwan's face darkened, and he sternly rebuked, Stop making wild guesses. This is just who Hansen's own problem. The project manager cautiously asked, what about the compensation for Hu Han San? Ji Budwan said displeased, As long as he doesn't delay the project, I won't pursue it. Want compensation? Bury his body. If anyone leaks it out, I'll make them regret ever being born. The people around were scared into silence. Ji Budwan ordered, Everyone, get back to work. Time is of the essence. Just as he finished speaking, another scream came from a distance. Ah! The people around immediately turned and ran towards the direction of the sound. Some had already quickly approached. Ji Budwan furrowed his brow, thinking, What's happening now? He quickly rushed to the scene of the incident and, upon seeing the gruesome sight before him, couldn't help but gasp in horror, feeling his scalp tingle. Two workers were caught under the tracks of an excavator, crushed to death. One person's chest exploded, with most of the internal organs spilling out while the other person's head was crushed into pieces, blood flowing on the ground. The scene was so horrifying that many people present couldn't help but vomit. Ji Budwan clenched his fists, filled with anger, and said, Who did this? Does the driver have eyes on top of his head? How could he crush two people at once? Driver, get out of here. A chubby worker who had just been at the scene raised his hand trembling. The driver has tragically passed away and the one who was seriously injured is him. This news quickly spread and sparked public discussion. People were talking and speculating, all convinced that the driver who died was Lao Wang. How could a driver be crushed by the excavator he was operating? Could it really be a supernatural event? The atmosphere became more and more eerie, and Ji Bo Duo couldn't help but shout loudly, demanding everyone to quiet down. He sternly questioned the old worker about what had happened. The old worker nervously recalled and described the whole incident. Just ten minutes ago, the excavator suddenly stalled while in operation. The driver tried several times to restart it without success, thinking there was a mechanical issue, so he called a technician to inspect it. However, at that moment, a series of strange events occurred. The excavator suddenly started on its own, 
moved forward and instantly crushed the driver and the technician to death. This description made the scene even more unusual. People speculated whether there was something sinister at play, as how else could the excavator operate on its own? This job is just too dangerous. Some even suggested going on strike. Manager Ma looked panicked, worried if a supernatural event had really occurred. Ibo Duo criticized him harshly. He emphasized that this is a modern society with advanced science and should not believe in absurd things. Whatever happened, the demolition work must continue. Despite some unease, he was determined to persevere for the smooth progress of the project. He assured everyone that these were just random events and had nothing to do with the supernatural. As long as everyone continued to work and completed the demolition task, he promised to significantly increase everyone's wages, even double them. With these words, the initially fearful workers showed a hint of excitement in their eyes. Money talks. The workers no longer considered going on strike, but bravely continued to work. Jibo Duo discreetly arranged for the bodies of the three deceased to be handled, strictly confidential to avoid attracting official attention and risking an investigation shutdown. He would never allow such a situation to happen. There were no more accidents in the following work, as if everything was slowly getting better. In a dim underground room in the G family's estate, a slightly hunched figure wearing a blue wide-brimmed hat was mixing medicines. He was Tangbu Yi, the trusted assistant of Rong Tianli. On the table, there was a small glass bottle with a black, elongated worm wriggling inside. Suddenly, the worm began to rapidly expand and soon burst open. The glass bottle contained the explosion, and the viscous liquid spilled all over the floor. Tangbui frowned and blamed, Ah, there's trouble indeed. A slightly chubby middle-aged man with gold-rimmed glasses walked over, smiling and fanning himself with a fan. What happened? Tungbai explained that the gas swelling goo had male and female variants. Once paired, one of the goo insects would die, and the other would also perish. The male insect just died, which means the female goo injected into Yongfu's body has also passed away. Luo Yuanliang nodded in agreement. He said, It seems that Yongfu's identity has been exposed, and the outbreak of goo poison during interrogation led to his death. These people's actions have exceeded expectations. Tang Bai furrowed his brows slightly, lowered his voice and asked, Lao Luo, don't you think all this is developing too quickly? Almost unbelievable? Luo Yuanliang held a folding fan, gently swaying it with a slight smile on his face. This morning, the enforcement team found Qian Rong's body in the Xiangon well, and following the clues, they eventually located Yu Yongfu. The key to this case lies in the mysterious person who made the report. Based on my analysis, this person neither belongs to our side nor to Yi Tianzi's camp, most likely representing a third-party force. Tung Bai frowned and asked, Who is it? Luo Yuanliang smiled and replied, This question has not been determined yet, but whoever it is, it has nothing to do with us. After all, fools like Yu Yongfu will eventually reveal themselves, and we have already used him to complete the first step of our plan. His death is inconsequential. Now, Miss and Yi Tianza are forced to be separated, one in the provincial capital and the other in Jiangnan City. We'll leave the provincial capital to the second master to handle, while we'll take care of Jiangnan City. It's not difficult to defeat them one by one. Tung Bai nodded in understanding. Although the senior elders in the family favored Miss, and the position of the old master was somewhat ambiguous, their support alone might not be enough to help Miss through this difficult situation. In this vast provincial capital, apart from them, there's no other force that will come forward to assist Miss. Luo Yuanliang chuckled. We don't need to worry about the provincial capital. We just need to focus on our own affairs. The most important thing now is to successfully complete the 10 billion order and solidify the second master's power in Jiangnan City. As for Yi Tianzi, we have many means to deal with him. Just utilizing Yu Yongfu's death can create an opportunity. Tung Bai agreed with a smile. Although he didn't know what Luo Yuanliang's next plan was, he knew it would cause great trouble for Yi Tianzi. Luo Yuanliang then inquired about Rong Xiao's situation. The other party replied that Rong Xiao had fully recovered but at a great cost, needing some time to adapt. Luo Yuanliang nodded. Just then, his phone rang. It was a call from Jibudwan. Wasn't he supposed to be overseeing the construction site? 
Why did he suddenly call? After a moment of hesitation, Luo Yuanliang answered the phone. Ji Budwan's anxious voice came through, saying there was a big problem at the construction site and requesting him and Tung Bai to come for support. The call suddenly ended. Luo Yuanliang and Tung Bai exchanged a puzzled look. Demolishing the abandoned industrial park should have been a straightforward task. How could there be such a big problem? With doubts in their minds, they immediately set off for the Taida Industrial Park. Twenty minutes later, they arrived at the construction site in a hurry. They saw the site surrounded by hired thugs from the G family, not allowing anyone to enter. There were loud noises coming from inside the site, and when Luo Yuanliang and Tung Bai finally entered, they saw hundreds of people gathered together, each with a look of fear on their faces. Around the factory, snakes were everywhere, giving people chills. They came in various shapes and colors, hissing viciously as if guarding the territory, keeping people at bay. Outside the factory, a pile of brutally killed snake bodies painted a gruesome scene. G. Boating struggled to explain in the crowd, pleading with the workers not to go on strike. His bodyguards stood close, ready to prevent any conflicts. Luo Yuanliang and Tang Bai approached, witnessing the scene. Unable to contain himself, Luo Yuanliang stepped forward to question Ji Boating. Overwhelmed with emotion, Ji Boating almost collapsed, feeling relieved to see them as if they were his saviors. Without a word, Luo Yuanliang immediately slapped Ji Boating, snapping him back to reality. Trembling, Ji Boating promised to resolve the situation. He then recounted the strange events at the construction site. The mysterious deaths of Hu Hansan and others, followed by a sudden snake attack that caused multiple injuries and deaths, disrupting the site's normal operations. To cover up the truth, G. Boating prevented the injured workers from seeking medical help, leading to even greater disasters. Terrified, the workers demanded to go on strike and call the police. G. Boating had no choice but to seek help from Luo Yuanliang and Tang Bai. After examining the snake group, Tang Bai pointed out that the feng shui here was unfavorable, so the frequent strange occurrences were not surprising. Ji Boating's heart sank as he realized the seriousness of the situation. Mr. Luo and Mr. Tong, could you help solve this feng shui issue? It's only been a few hours since construction started, and already over a dozen people have tragically lost their lives. The workers are feeling low, and if this issue isn't resolved, the construction won't be able to continue. Mr. Luo Yuanliang and Mr. Tang Bai looked at each other helplessly and shook their heads. They only have a basic understanding of feng shui and are not experts. Ji Bo sat on the floor, feeling depressed and helpless, almost on the verge of tears. He had been confident in winning the bid for this project, but never expected to encounter such misfortune shortly after starting. The consequences would be unimaginable if they couldn't complete it on time. At this moment, Mr. Luo Yuanliang furrowed his brow and speculated. Could this 10 billion renminbi contract itself be a scam? The speech made Jibwa and Feng Bai puzzled. Jibwa couldn't help but ask, Mr. Luo, why do you say that? Luo Yuanliang squinted his eyes, shook his fan, and mysteriously said, I have a hunch that Yi Tianzi probably knew long ago that the feng shui of this place is not good. So, at the bidding conference, he deliberately raised the liquidated damages, trying to harm us. These words were like a bolt from the blue, leaving Jibwa shocked. Although it seemed far-fetched, upon careful consideration, it was indeed possible for Yi Tianzi to do such a thing. Jibwa felt heavy-hearted and asked, What should we do next? Are we just going to watch the project delay and ultimately pay a huge amount of liquidated damages to the Tianlong group? Even if we go bankrupt, our J.I. family cannot afford it. Luo Yuanliang replied with a smile, Don't panic. Yi Tianzi's idea is just wishful thinking. Although the feng shui of this place is complicated, it's not an unsolvable situation. Once the feng shui problem is solved, the project timeline will not be affected. Moreover, he cannot interfere with the Tianlong group's business. Solving the feng shui problem, Jibwa muttered to himself, suddenly thinking of a person who might be able to solve the feng shui issue here. I know someone who has been practicing Taoism for years, he might be able to solve the feng shui problem here. I'll call him immediately. Just then, the workers began to complain. How long do we have to work? I want to go home. We can't continue this work. Even if the feng shui problem is solved, 
We dare not continue working. Give us compensation for mental stress and compensation for our deceased colleagues. We want to leave immediately. Hearing the voices of the crowd, Jibo was about to erupt, but was stopped by Luo Yuanliang. He stepped forward, smiled, and said to the workers, I'm very sorry. I understand your fear, but the task of demolishing the abandoned factory must be completed on time. A burly worker said discontentedly, Why should we listen to you? What if we refuse to work? There's no room for negotiation in this matter. Luo Yuanliang sneered, suddenly flashed in front of the worker, and with a flick of his fan, the worker's throat was cut open, blood gushed out. The worker tried frantically to cover the wound, but to no avail. Soon, with a look of resentment, he fell to the ground and died. The workers at the scene were terrified, discussing in confusion. Can a fan be so deadly? Is this something a human can do? Is he a monster? Luo Yuanliang put away his fan, still smiling, and said, I order you to complete the task on time. There's no room for negotiation. Anyone who dares to resist, step forward. I will personally send them on their way. Seeing this, although unwilling, under Luo Yuanliang's threat, the workers could only choose to remain silent. No one dared to mention a strike again. Luo Yuanliang turned to Jibwa and instructed, Control these workers well. We must not let the outside world know what happened here. When Jian Kabajuan's admiration for Luo Yuanliang surged in his heart, he couldn't wait to contact a Feng Shui master he knew. In Villa No. 1 of Zijin Tiangong in Jiangnan City, the atmosphere was somewhat subtle. Yi Tianzi sat on the large sofa in the middle, with Han Ruayun and Lu Ruyin, two beautiful women, sitting on both sides. Their eyes seemed to emit sparks as they met each other's gaze. This situation had been going on for almost half an hour since Yi Tianzi brought Han Ruayun back. Yi Tianzi felt uneasy and felt the need to break the strange atmosphere. Just as he was about to speak, Han Ruayun broke the silence first. She sneered and said, Hey, isn't this the popular Dragon Nation movie star Lu Ruyin? The national goddess actually has a time when she has to rely on others. It's really eye-opening. Upon hearing this, Lu Ruyin just let out a soft snort. Yi Tianzi's villa was luxurious and spacious. What's the problem with me moving in? Don't you also have to live here? It's no big deal, he. Han Ruayun was somewhat surprised. It was the first time she learned that Yi Tianzi actually lived in Villa No. 1 of Zijin Tiangong, the residence of the legendary Jiangnan war god. She didn't know how Yi Tianzi arranged it. But at this moment, she didn't care about these details. The most important thing was to strike at the self-righteous woman opposite her. Han Ruayun provocatively crossed her legs, arms folded in front of her chest, arrogantly saying, I live here because I am Yi Tianzi's fiancé. Any problem with that? Lu Ruyin, unwilling to show weakness, retorted, What's so great about being a fiancé? Funny enough, I am also his fiancé. Han Ruayun continued provocatively, I am the first fiancé that Yi Tianzi cancelled the engagement with. You can only come after me, indicating that I am more important in his heart. Lu Ruyin, unwilling to show weakness, responded, That's just because you are closer to Yi Tianzi. If I were in Jiangnan City, he would definitely break off the engagement with me first. Yi Tianzi felt a bit confused. He didn't understand why canceling an engagement had to become a matter of comparison. Moreover, he had no intention of canceling the engagement anymore. Han Ruayun boasted, I am a E cup. Your C cup small board is nothing in front of me. Lu Ruyun sneered, Don't think having a big bust makes you superior. Wait a few years until it sags to your belly button then see if you still have the qualifications to speak. And I guarantee my bust will always remain firm. Han Ruayun stood up, provocatively saying, Say it again and see what happens. Lu Ruyun also stood up, coldly responding, Say it again and see what happens. The two's gaze was almost spitting fire. Yi Tianzi hurriedly tried to defuse the situation, saying, Ladies, let's not argue anymore. Calm down a bit. Han Ruayun and Lu Ruyun shouted in unison, Shut up! Yi Tianzi helplessly thought, Who did I provoke? Han Ruayun put her hands on her waist and directly unleashed her ultimate move. Xiao Pingban is the slightly immature best friend of Xiao Qingcheng, who used to look down on Yi Tian's. However, she has now decided to move into Yi Tian's villa. 
Such a change is bound to leave people feeling puzzled and even uncomfortable. When Lu Ruyin heard that sentence, her expression instantly stiffened. It hit a nerve in her heart. Because she and Xiao Qingcheng were best friends, and initially, she had a very poor impression of Yitaians. She thought Yitaians was just living off the Xiao family, useless, and relying on connections to get by. However, as time passed, she gradually realized that Yi Taiyans was not as Xiao Qingcheng had described. In fact, he was a capable, secure, and responsible man. Everyone who looked down on Yi Taiyans had misunderstood him. What's more, Yi Taiyans was her fiancé. Although she didn't understand the origin of this engagement, this commitment inadvertently added a new perspective to her view of Yi Taiyans. Compared to the highly acclaimed Prince Tong, she would rather wholeheartedly choose to be with Yi Taiyans. However, she realized that as Xiao Qingqing's best friend, being too close to Yi Taiyans would make her feel morally conflicted and pressured. Han Ruiyan looked at Lu Ruiyan, who fell silent, and continued to provoke, Little tablet, do you want to betray your best friend? He sneered, saying that if Xiao Qingqing found out, she would surely find it amusing. Lu Ruiyan suppressed her inner anger and retorted, Humph, I'm just temporarily staying at Yi Taiyan's house, not committed to being with him. Even if, even if we were together one day, it would have to wait until he breaks off the engagement with Qingcheng. After listening to this, Han Ruiyun's eyes flashed with cunning, and he sat directly beside Yi Taiyan's, grabbed his arm, hugged him, rubbed his chest, and proudly said, Ha ha, I don't need to worry about these things at all. Yi Taiyan's is mine now. Even if it makes Xiao Qingcheng wear a green hat, I have no guilt. He sneered, As for you. Wanting Yi Taiyan's to like you? Dream on. He has so many fiancés. Why would he choose you? Lu Ruyin was so angry that her eyes widened. She bit her lip, her mind racing. Suddenly, she had a flash of inspiration and coldly said, Because Yi Taiyan's once took my sister's first kiss. As a man, he should take responsibility for his actions. Han Ruayun widened his eyes, reached out and pinched Yi Taiyan's hard. He muttered, Hey, when did you take Little Tablet's first kiss? Why don't I know? Yi Taiyan's took a deep breath and explained, Don't listen to her nonsense at that time. I was just helping her out, and she kissed me on the cheek voluntarily. How can that be considered taking a first kiss? I haven't even said she took my first kiss. Han Ruayin breathed a sigh of relief and mockingly said to Lu Ruyin, Little Tablet, is this what you call a first kiss? It's enough to make me burst out laughing. However, what happened next shocked both him and Yi Taiyan's. Lu Ruyin took determined steps, leaned in close to Yi Taiyan's, and without hesitation, kissed his lips. Yi Taiyan's mind went blank, and he exclaimed in his heart, Is this for real? Han Ruayun's mouth hung open, dumbfounded. Lu Ruyin felt a surge of shyness when Yi Tianzi took her first kiss. She had never imagined losing her virginity in such a situation, and she felt a bit flustered. Despite appearing calm in the face of Rong Mayan's questioning, her heart was pounding rapidly in her chest. She felt bold, yet ashamed that Yi Tianzi had taken her first kiss and decided to show him her attitude. Han Ruayun, seeing the confrontation between Lu Ruyin and Rong Mayan, stood up angrily. Lu Ruyin, not backing down, expressed her desire to teach Han Ruayun a lesson. The standoff between the two escalated prompting Yi Tianzi to intervene and threaten to kick them out. The two beauties finally stopped, but still wore expressions of discontent. Yi Tianzi sighed inwardly, realizing that bringing Han Ruayun back had indeed caused trouble. Suddenly, a burst of singing broke the awkward silence. Lu Ruyun couldn't help but comment on the unpleasant singing, only to realize it was her own voice. She was surprised to find out that her singing video had become Yi Tianzi's ringtone. Feeling embarrassed and angry, she looked at the source of the sound. Yi Tianzi, puzzled by the unknown number on his phone, recalled Han Ruayun borrowing his phone to check WeChat, not expecting her to change his ringtone. He found it somewhat amusing and couldn't help but feel a bit speechless. Han Ruayun proudly admitted to her actions, while Lu Ruyun felt embarrassed and angry. Yi Tianzi could only helplessly ask them to temporarily stop arguing and answered the call. On the other end of the line, Lu Yinji's voice mentioned past events, stirring something in Yi Tianzi's heart. He hadn't forgotten about Lu Yinji, but at this moment, 
He was lost in thought, unsure of the purpose of the call. The mention of Lu Yinji seemed to stir a wave of emotions in his heart. Han Ruayun and Lu Ruyin were about to start a heated argument, but suddenly they stopped in unison. They both turned their gaze towards Yi Tianxi with a hint of wariness in their eyes. Lu Yinji nervously wanted to meet Mr. Yi, but was politely turned down. Yi Tianxi replied indifferently that it was not convenient. Faced with this response, Lu Yinji had no choice but to hang up the phone helplessly. Yi Tianxi furrowed his brows slightly, feeling something was amiss. Why would someone who actively sought him out agree so readily after being rejected? However, not long after, Yi Tianxi seemed to sense something and his gaze focused on the door. Han Ruoyin curiously asked, What's going on? Yi Tianxi replied, Someone's here. Who? Lu Yinji. Han Ruoyun and Lu Ruyin both expressed puzzlement. She just hung up the phone. Why is she suddenly coming to find us? What's going on? Just as they were about to ask, the doorbell of the villa rang, breaking the silence. The doorbell rang, and Lu Yinji's figure appeared on the monitor screen. Han Ruoyun exclaimed, Oh my! It's her. What could she be here for? Lu Ruyin asked Yi Tianza, Are you sure you want to let her in? Yi Tianza thought for a moment and said calmly, Since she has come to us on her own, I want to see what she is up to. He walked to the door and opened it. Today, Lu Yinji wore sunglasses, a slim black dress, exuding a mysterious and sexy charm. Her long and slender black silk legs peeked out from under the skirt, emitting a seductive allure. With black silk gloves on both hands and a black handbag in her left hand, she stood at the door exuding a noble and cold aura, as if there was a barrier between her and ordinary people, despite the sunny weather and early time. She took off her sunglasses, revealing a pair of bright phoenix eyes and a faint smile. She said, I thought Mr. Yi wouldn't open the door. So, what do you want from me? This was her first time visiting on her own initiative, yet Yi Tianzi didn't invite her in. Leaning against the door frame, Yi Tianzi smiled and said, Since it's your first visit, why didn't you bring me a gift? As Miss Lu, sending some famous wine or tea, or buying some fruits and drinks is also acceptable. This remark made Lu Yinji slightly stunned, with a hint of confusion in her eyes. She didn't expect such a high-ranking figure from the Tianlong group to make such a joke about gifts. Yi Tianzi continued with a smile, Just kidding, Miss Lu, since you're here. I certainly won't turn you away. He stepped aside to let Lu Yinji in. Lu Yinji walked into the room, took off her black high heels, and stood at the entrance without wearing the slippers prepared at the door, stepping on the floor with her bare black silk feet. When she saw Han Ruayun and Lu Ruyun in the living room, she sighed softly, Miss Han and Miss Lu are here too. Mr. Yi is indeed fortunate. Han Ruayun and Lu Ruyun glanced at each other, didn't speak, but felt a bit nervous. Although they felt they were not inferior to Lu Yinji in appearance, the queen-like aura emanating from her put pressure on them. Lu Yinji walked straight to the large sofa in the center of the living room, straightened her skirt, sat down, crossed her legs, and slightly swayed her black silk legs, as if scrutinizing everything. She said calmly, Let's all sit down. Han Ruayun and Lu Ruyun responded, and sat on the small sofas on the left and right. Yi Tianzi was speechless thinking, we were just arguing fiercely. Why are we so quiet in front of Lu Yinji? He walked over, hands in his pockets, showing no signs of pressure from the other party. He asked, Miss Lu, what can I do for you? Lu Yinji took out a cigarette from her bag, smiled slightly, and asked, do you mind if I smoke? Yi Tianzi calmly replied, it's up to you. Lu Yinji lit the cigarette, took a puff, blew out smoke rings, closed her eyes, seeming to enjoy this moment of peace. Her demeanor was elegant and charming. A few seconds later, Lu Yinji cut to the chase and said, This morning, Mr. Yi went to Wuxiang Pavilion. Must have been quite busy, right? Yi Tianzi squinted slightly. This woman even knows about that? She's quite well informed. Lu Yinji flicked the ash off her cigarette gently. Mr. Yi might be curious about how I know all this, and I won't hide it. Because the call reporting the location of Qianrong's body was made by my subordinate. Oh! Yi Tianzi raised an eyebrow, somewhat surprised by this news. Why did you do that? Lu Yinji said calmly, I have no ill intentions towards Mr. Yi, 
so I don't want others to have ill intentions towards you either. Some people are framing others behind the scenes, causing harm, and I can't stand by and watch. So I helped out. Is that not reason enough? She met Yi Tianzi's gaze directly, without fear. Yi Tianzi stared back at her. Miss Lu is unexpectedly kind-hearted, quite admirable, huh? Lu Yinji didn't care about Yi Tianzi's hidden meaning in his words. Mr. Yi has been busy for half a day, must have gained quite a bit. Can you share with Yinji? Yi Tianzi's mouth curved up slightly. Miss Lu, aren't you skilled in gathering intelligence? The female emperor of the business world in Jiangan City, you must already know this secret without asking me, right? Hearing this, Han Ruayun and Lu Ruyin both felt a slight jump in their hearts. They thought, is Yi Tianzi so brave? Daring to joke with Lu Yinji, a strong woman? Isn't he afraid of making her angry? Lu Yinji remained composed, gently swaying her black stockinged legs. These secrets are nothing to me. I just wanted to hear them from Mr. Yi. Since you're unwilling to share, I won't force it. After all, you have always been wary and suspicious of me. I can understand. She shifted her gaze to Lu Ruyin. If I'm not mistaken, Miss Lu should have told you that I've met Xiao Qingqing before and even suggested that she work with me, right? Ah? Uh? I. Facing Lu Yinji's scrutinizing gaze, the usually arrogant and prejudiced Lu Ruyin felt a bit shaky, as if sitting on pins and needles. This woman's oppressive aura is too strong, and every word she says hits the mark. Lu Yinji chuckled lightly and said, it's okay even if you don't say it, Yinji will say it. Mr. Yi, Xiao Qingqing truly lives up to being your wife. Her response to me that night was surprisingly similar to yours, quite interesting. Hearing this, Han Ruoyan muttered, Xiao Qingqing is already his ex fiance not his wife. Lu Yinji raised an eyebrow. Miss Han truly lives up to being Mr. Ye's fiancé, possessive indeed. I admire you, daring to love and hate, having a strong opinion, and... Her gaze shifted down to Han Ruayun's e-cup chest, adding, and quite well endowed. Oh, really? Thank you for the compliment. Han Ruyun blew head slightly. Although she had a mixed impression of Lu Yinji, Receiving praise from the woman known as the Black Rose of the business world was still quite satisfying. Seeing this, Lu Ruyin, for some reason, pointed to herself and asked, What about me? Can you praise me too? Please praise me. Unexpectedly, Lu Yinji's gaze skipped over Lu Ruyin and locked onto Yi Tianzi. Mr. Yi smiled as he listened to Yinji's question, a hint of mystery on his face. He pondered quietly, as if recalling the past. Suddenly, he softly said, I have a special connection with the southern god of war. We once fought side by side, experiencing many battles together. However, I am not the southern god of war himself, but merely played his role at a particular moment. There was a glint of determination and pride in his eyes, as if recounting a precious memory. Yin Ji couldn't help but sigh in admiration, realizing that the story between Mr. Yi and the southern god of war was so moving evoking a sense of indescribable reverence and respect. When Han Ruayun and Lu Ruyun heard this news, they were both shocked with wide eyes. Yi Tianzi turned out to be the rumored southern war god? Is this true? The southern war god is not only a legend in Jiangnan city, but also an unbeatable presence in the entire Tianan province. He is the idol pursued by numerous martial arts masters and the dream lover of many young girls. However, the southern war god has always been elusive, rarely showing his true face to anyone. Three and a half years ago, after the sudden disappearance of the southern war god, many speculated that he might have passed away. Who would have thought that the southern war god was actually among them? Han Ruoyan couldn't help but ask, Xiao Sais, is Miss Lu's words true? Lu Ruoyan was even more stunned, and she exclaimed in surprise, Sister, why are you so powerful? living in the number one purple gold sky palace villa? So this is your true identity, why didn't you tell us earlier? At this moment, Lu Ruyin felt that her fiancé's identity suddenly became more dazzling. The provincial city young master paled in the radiance of the southern war god. Yi Tianzi's eyes twitched twice, and he firmly said, I am who I am, not the so-called southern war god at all. Don't confuse me with him. That southern war god looks like Song Xiaobao, bald, 
and weak in strength. Comparing me to him is undoubtedly an insult to me. Lu Yinji lit a cigarette and said calmly, Mr. Yi, it's fine if you don't want to admit it. Regardless of who you are, I admire your abilities. I came here today just hoping you would consider my proposal. Yi Tianxi responded calmly, I reiterate, I will not accept your proposal, nor will I ever submit to anyone. Do you understand? Lu Yinji smiled coldly and said, as expected of you, but you have less than six days to consider. I will patiently wait. I hope you can perform this play even more splendidly. She stood up to adjust her dress, preparing to leave. Wait. Yi Tianxi raised his hand to stop her. Lu Yinji raised an eyebrow slightly and asked, What's wrong? Don't you want me to leave? Yi Tianxi shook his head, indicating that was not his intention. If you have that thought, you might be disappointed, Lu Yinji sighed. My heart has long been dead, and this body is even more fragile, unworthy of your favor. The so-called love between men and women means nothing to me. Hearing this, Han Ruayun and Lu Ruyun exchanged a glance. They both felt that there must be an extraordinary story behind these words. Yi Tianzi stared at Lu Yinji without blinking. In the relationship between Yi Tianzi and Lu Yinji, Yi Tianzi has always maintained vigilance and caution. The letter left by his master clearly warned him to stay away from Lu Yinji, especially to avoid any physical intimacy, as the consequences would be unthinkable. Therefore, Yi Tianzi has no other thoughts towards Lu Yinji. Facing Yi Tianzi's gaze, Lu Yinji displays a cold and aloof attitude, seemingly displeasing Yi Tianzi, as if he wanted to get rid of her. If that were the case, Yi Tianzi would have taken action at that time, considering he almost succeeded, leaving Han Ruayun and Lu Ruyun puzzled. They start to suspect what happened that night. Lu Yinji squints slightly, her voice cold yet alluring. She mentions the events of that night, seemingly still savoring the excitement. Han Ruayun and Lu Ruyun are shocked. They begin to suspect that Yi Tianzi is hiding some unspeakable behavior. Yi Tianzi furrows his brows, indicating that he just wanted to remind Lu Yinji to come directly to him if there were any issues, and not to harm those around him. Otherwise, no matter how special Lu Yinji is, he doesn't mind showing her the most terrifying things in the world. Lu Yinji feels as if she's being targeted by the Demon King of Hell, feeling a bit suffocated, but she remains composed. She coldly expresses her anticipation. Before leaving, she realizes it was impolite of her not to bring a gift, reminding Yi Tianzi that Miss Rong has returned to the provincial capital alone and the situation is not optimistic. Yi Tianzi stays behind, lost in thought. After Lu Yinji leaves the villa, she takes a deep breath. She finds Yi Tianzi even more suffocating than herself, and this pressure amazes her. A black Bentley pulls up, and a bodyguard gets out to open the door for her. After Lu Yinji gets in the car, it drives off. The bodyguard asks about her gains, and she shakes her head. The bodyguard remarks that Yi Tianzi doesn't know what's good for him. Refusing to follow her is his loss. Lu Yinji thinks Yi Tianzi is a rebellious person worthy of sympathy. She believes Yi Tianzi may be related to the legendary Jiangan war god, Lin Feng, but they are not the same person. She thinks Lin Feng's story might be connected to Yi Tianzi, but she's not certain. They discuss whether Yi Tianzi killed Lin Feng, and Lu Yinji looks out the window with a complex expression in her eyes. With deep affection, the war god, powerful as he is, is not invincible. In the presence of a true strongman, the gap is as huge as that between the faint starlight and the brilliant moon. Remember, the vastness of this world far exceeds our imagination. The bodyguard in a white suit felt a shiver run through him, his eyes flashing with fear. Could it be that there is a presence in this world even more powerful than the war god? It's almost unbelievable. However, although the lady is not a martial arts expert, she seems to know all about it. Despite being filled with confusion, the white-clad bodyguard wisely chose to remain silent. He understood that his sole responsibility was to protect Lu Yinji at all costs. Because he knew deep down that everything he had today was all thanks to the lady's grace. In Villa Number no. 1 of Purple Gold Heavenly Palace, after Lu Yinji left, Han Ruayun and Lu Ruyun finally breathed a sigh of relief. The presence of this woman made them feel a lot of pressure. Han Ruayun asked in confusion, How did Lu Yinji know that you live here? Has she been here before? 
Yitian shook his head. This was her first time here. Lu Ruyan also curiously asked. She just said you were too much that night, and you're still reminiscing about it? What's going on? Did something happen between you two? Yitian's felt very speechless. What are they thinking? It was only the second time I met her. The last time was that night at the bidding chamber. She talked to me about some things. Nothing else happened. Han Ruayun and Lu Ruyin exchanged a smile. Although Yi Tian's words sounded flawless, they both couldn't believe that he remained unaffected in front of such a remarkable woman like Lu Yinji. After all, the mature and fatal charm emitted by Lu Yinji was enough to attract any woman. Yi Tian's could actually resist it alone? This really made them puzzled. At this moment, Yi Tian said, Just now, Lu Yinji reminded me, I'm a bit worried about the situation with Rong Mei Yin. I need to make a phone call upstairs, you too. Don't argue downstairs. With that, he turned and walked upstairs. Han Ruoyin lowered his voice and asked Lu Ruyin, Xiaoping Ban, do you think there's something unusual between Yi Tians and Lu Yinji? Lu Ruyin sneered. Humph. That woman just thinks she's in good condition, arrogant and conceited. I can't stand it. Obviously, she's still upset that Lu Yinji didn't praise her. Han Ruoyin pondered for a moment and said seriously, let's be honest. Most of the conflicts between you and me are because of Xiao Qingcheng. That day at the bidding chamber, I was bullied, and you stood up for me. I remember that. Lu Ruyin was somewhat surprised. She didn't expect Han Ruoyun to suddenly bring up this matter. Is she trying to reconcile? She raised her chest and coughed. I've been struggling in society for so many years, always upholding justice and helping the weak. It's nothing worth mentioning. No need to thank me. Although she said so, the smug look on her face was hard to hide. Han Ruoyin continued, Now we all know that Yi Tians has nine fiancés, and we are one of them. I admit that I have feelings for Yi Tians, and I am willing to accept him. I know that Yi Tians' charm will attract other women. I hope to have him all to myself, but I also understand that this is not realistic. I don't think I have the ability to attract him unless he chose me three years ago. Lu Ruoyin blinked not expecting Han Ruayun's inner world to be like this. Han Ruayun went on to say, So I have already figured it out. If I can't have Yitian's all to myself, then the other women around him must truly care for him. Absolutely cannot harm him. Any woman who has ulterior motives towards him, I will make her pay at all costs. Lu Ruyun's expression was somewhat stunned. Previously, she thought Han Ruayun was narrow-minded and always targeting her. At this moment, Hearing the inner monologue of the other party, Lu Ruyin suddenly felt the broad-mindedness of Han Ruayun, which made her marvel at his e-cup magnanimity. Could it be that he is truly open-minded, embracing all kinds of ideas? No wonder he's called the Big Milk Cow, truly living up to his reputation. With this in mind, Lu Ruyin couldn't help but lower her head to scrutinize her own small chest, and she suddenly realized, as if a light bulb had gone off in her head. Han Ruoyin continued, Among Yi Tianxi's fiancés, the first one I came into contact with was Rong Meiyuan. She is cunning and calculating, seemingly alluring and unrestrained. But I know she absolutely trusts Yi Tianxi and won't pose a threat to him, so their relationship is close, and I choose to turn a blind eye. Oh! A hint of surprise flashed in Lu Ruoyin's eyes. So Rong Miju is also Yi Tianxi's fiancé? Although unexpected, it makes sense. Han Ruoyun pointed at Lu Ruyun and said, As for you, although you like to oppose me, I can't tell you're not that scheming, because women who are scheming are usually very clever. You just have some small ideas? Lu Ruyun asked in confusion, So are you praising me or mocking me? Lu Ruyun pursed her lips and muttered, So you trust me now? Han Ruoyun no did. I guess you can say I trust you, but I must remind you not to get drunk in the future. After all, that's just two. Lu Ruyin's face turned red, awkwardly wiggling her toes. Her embarrassing incident had leaked out. So, do you know who Yi Tianxi's other fiancés are? Han Ruoyun shook his head. Lu Ruyin continued, I heard from Yi Tianxi himself yesterday that Lin Yuyin from the provincial capital is also his fiancé. Don't know if it's true or not. Ah? Uh? Yuyin is also his fiancé? Han Ruoyun almost exclaimed in surprise. Lin Yuyin is the number one beauty in Tianan province. Lu Ruyin asked, Do you know her? Han Ruoyin nodded, Well, 
Due to my relationship with the Lin family, I've met Yin twice. She, how should I put it, as a woman, I'm quite confident in my appearance, but in front of Yu Yin, I feel extremely inferior. She's too perfect, almost flawless. So, what's the difference? Han Ruayun seemed to think of something, quickly shaking his head. Nothing, nothing, actually. I'm more concerned about another woman. You mean Lu Yinji? Han Ruayun no did. I can feel that the words and actions of that woman are unpredictable. My intuition tells me she must have ulterior motives. Lu Ruyin nodded in agreement. I also have the same feeling. A hint of determination flashed in Han Ruayun's eyes. So, our task is to draw out from Yi Tianxi. What is the relationship between him and Lu Yinji, and what does he think of her? We must not let them be together. Lu Ruyin nodded, feeling deeply worried. She was most worried that Lu Yinji was too cunning. If she and Yi Tianxi were together, then she would have no say? In front of Rong Miju and the big milk cow, she might still be able to maintain a bit of resilience. But in front of Lu Yinji, she didn't even have the courage to refute. Lu Ruyin said anxiously, But, if Yi Tianxi is tight-lipped, are you sure you can make him speak? A hint of cunning flashed in Han Ruayun's eyes. Hmph, of course I can. So next, you have to cooperate with me? In the bedroom on the second floor, Yi Tianxi and Rong Mayin ended their call. Yi Tianxi asked about the situation on Rong Mayin's end, and she honestly admitted that the situation might be more complicated, but she assured him that she could handle it. She also informed Yi Tianxi that she had exchanged contact information with Su Qiangwei, and they would keep in touch discreetly. Su Qiangwei promised to help Rong Mayin's needs to the best of her ability, especially ensuring Rong Mayin's safety. After the call, Yi Tianxi muttered to himself, mentioning Su Qiangwei, realizing that he needed three more medicinal herbs to completely detoxify her body, and decided to ask Director Wu if there were any updates. Suddenly, he realized that the two women downstairs had been quiet for a while. Were they about to start a fight? Yi Tianzhu Huriet downstairs. When he entered the living room, he saw Han Ruayun and Lu Ruyun sitting on the main sofa, very close to each other looking extremely intimate. Lu Ruyin teased, Ruyin, your skin is flawless, can you tell me your secret? Han Ruayun jokingly said, Ruayun, is your chest natural or enhanced? I'm so envious. If I had that size, I might wake up laughing from my dreams. They bantered with each other, appearing cheerful and happy. Yi Tianxi, watching this scene, felt somewhat surprised. Weren't they calling each other little flat and big milk cow before? How did they suddenly become so close like best friends? Women's minds are truly unpredictable. Han Ruayun noticed Yi Tianxi coming down and waved him over, indicating that they had ordered barbecue and beer to celebrate. Yi Tianxi simulate helplessly. Soon, the delivery guy arrived with the barbecue and beer. The food was placed on the coffee table in the living room, including lamb skewers, beef skewers, grilled oysters, and spicy crayfish. Han Ruayun and Lu Ruyin sat on the main sofa, while Yi Tianxi sat on the nearby small sofa. All three had been busy all day and skipped lunch, so this barbecue became their dinner. Han Ruayun handed a plate of grilled oysters to Yi Tianxi, saying they were all for him to eat. Yi Tianxi, puzzled, asked why there was so much for him to eat, but Han Ruayun grinned and said that oysters were good for men and eating more would benefit him. Yi Tianxi joked that he was perfectly healthy and didn't need these. However, Han Ruayun insisted and continued to push various aphrodisiac foods towards Yi Tianxi. At that moment, Lu Ruyun suggested playing a dice game to guess the numbers, with the loser choosing between truth or dare. Han Ruayun immediately agreed, and Yi Tianxi did not refuse, joining in on this merry game. Tonight, Han Ruayun, Yi Tianxi, and Lu Ruyun spent time together as if embarking on an unexpected spiritual journey. They sat together, savoring delicious food and fine wine, and the game began. In the first round, Han Ruayun rolled the highest number on the dice. She giggled while eating lamb skewers and mischievously asked Yi Tianxi, truth or dare, which one would you choose? Without hesitation, Yi Tianxi chose truth. Han Ruayun, with a satisfied look in her eyes, mischievously asked, so, tell me, are you still a virgin? Despite feeling a bit awkward, Yi Tianxi answered honestly, yes. Han Ruayun smiled triumphantly, 
suggested continuing the game, and the sound of rolling dice filled the air. Next, it was Lu Ruyan's turn to roll the dice. Without mincing words, she bypassed Han Ruayun and asked Detiance, truth or dare? With a mischievous smile and playful eyes, Lu Ruyan asked a personal question, you've met Lu Yinji twice. Hasn't her alluring charm ever stirred your heart? Or do you imagine her quietly sewing clothes beside you in the dead of night? Also, isn't she your fiancé? Yi Tians felt embarrassed. Why were these two ladies teasing him like this? He shrugged and firmly replied, I have no other thoughts about her, and she is not my fiancé. The game continued, and this time Han Ruayun emerged victorious, leaving Yi Tians sighing helplessly. Han Ruayun looked at Yi Tians with a smile and asked again, Truth or dare? Yi Tians, somewhat helpless, asked, Why do you always ask me and not Lu Ruyun? Han Ruayun replied smugly, Because I like you. Lu Ruyun made a funny face at Yi Tians and mischievously said, We are good girlfriends united. Are you feeling the heat? Yi Tians suddenly realized that the two beautiful ladies were teaming up to tease him tonight, deliberately making him uncomfortable. Well, if that's the case, then he wouldn't hold back. He gave a faint smile and chose truth. Han Ruiyun's gaze fell between Yi Tian's legs, her cheeks slightly blushing. How long is that part? Have you measured it? Yi Tian's almost spit out his drink, furrowing his brows and asked, Are you sure you want to ask such a personal question? Han Ruiyun nodded firmly, and Yi Tian's calmly replied, I haven't measured it specifically, but it's longer than a phone. Han Ruayun and Lu Ruyun stared in disbelief at Yi Tian's response. A phone is about 17 centimeters long, and Yi Tian claimed it was longer than that. For some reason, at this moment, all three of them felt their cheeks heating up, and their moods were a bit excited. Perhaps it was because they were thinking of things they shouldn't, or maybe the alcohol was starting to take effect. The game continued, and they seemed to be caught in a strange atmosphere. This time, when Yi Tianzhe was rolling the dice, he applied a little internal force, and as a result, all three dice showed 666 at the same time, achieving the highest score. Both Han Ruayun and Lu Ruyun had lower scores than him, so they had to admit defeat. Yi Tianzhe looked at Han Ruayun first and teased, Truth or dare? Han Ruayun pretended to be calm and said, Truth, go ahead and ask. A mischievous smile played on Yi Tianzhe's lips. He asked, have you ever found pleasure in walking alone on the shaded path at night? After listening to Yi Tianzi's words, Han Ruayun was a bit confused, not understanding what he meant by Lingyin Shaodal. But Lu Ruyun almost sprayed out the beer in her mouth, feeling shocked by Yi Tianzi's words. Yi Tianzi casually remarked, You said there are no outsiders here, so what am I asking considered? Han Ruayun asked in confusion, What are you guys talking about? Lu Ruyun quietly explained the meaning of this idiom, causing Han Ruayun to blush. She asked in astonishment, How did you guess the meaning of this idiom? Lu Ruyun awkwardly smiled and replied, It's purely a coincidence. But in her heart, she was wondering if Yi Tianzi also liked reading this type of novels. Yi Tianzi continued teasingly, To tell the truth, is it comfortable? With a slight blush on her cheeks, Han Ruayun answered somewhat embarrassedly, I've tried it, but only once. Yi Tianzi mischievously asked, Was it comfortable? Han Ruayun hesitated and replied, This is a new question, I won't answer. Yi Tianzi laughed and said, I'll win once again, right? The game went on, and Yi Tianzi won again. Han Ruayun chose to continue telling the truth, blushing and heart racing. She replied, It's okay, just a bit painful. Yi Tianzi looked at Han Ruayun's hand jokingly reminding her that trimming her nails could avoid the pain, making Han Ruayun feel embarrassed. Feeling a bit aggrieved, Han Ruayun said, Let's continue the game. I don't believe you can keep winning. However, Yi Tianzi effortlessly won again, leaving Han Ruayun somewhat helpless. Yi Tianzi asked, What scene was in your mind at that moment that led you to make that choice? Han Ruayun hesitated, but finally mustered up the courage to answer, That night when you saved us, I kept thinking about you while sleeping, so I accidentally made that choice. This answer caught Yi Tianzi off guard, finding it amusing. Lu Ruyin, on the other hand, was stunned, finding this game more exciting than reading novels. Han Ruayun glared at Yi Tianzi, 
expressing her dissatisfaction with the game. In the evening, Lu Ruyin sat alone in front of the tablet, feeling a bit lonely. Suddenly, she became alert and said to the big cow, Don't just focus on me. Look at this small tablet. Tonight, she's eating our two portions of melon alone. Don't you feel sorry for her? Lu Ruyin's voice carried a hint of grievance. Han Ruyin straightened up and said without hesitation, We are on the same team. How could you betray me? Yi Tians held a beer with a friendly smile, said, Don't worry. You both asked me questions. I will treat you equally. Let's play an exciting game. Lu Ruyin and Han Ruayun couldn't help but feel a sense of foreboding about tonight's game. Sure enough, under Yi Tian's manipulation, he easily won every round of the game. They were asked questions in turns, and even their most private matters were exposed. In a short period of time, the two beauties were almost stripped naked by questions. Han Ruayun was on the verge of tears. I can't do this anymore. I don't want to play. I have no secrets left. Lu Ruyin, her face flushed, angrily said, You must have cheated. Otherwise, how could we lose like this? Yi Tian shrugged and said, Don't accuse others without evidence. Lu Ruyin was so angry that she couldn't speak, feeling extremely unwilling. Yi Tian smiled and said, Since there are no secrets left, we can continue to play a game of truth or dare. The loser has to obey commands, like taking off a piece of clothing. Han Ruayun and Lu Ruyin shook their heads, just telling the truth was embarrassing enough, let alone dare to imagine a dare. Han Ruayun coughed and said, I'm full. I'm going upstairs to take a shower. You guys continue to play. With that, she ran upstairs barefoot. Lu Ruyin rubbed her head and said, I'm a bit tipsy. I'm going upstairs to rest too. Yi Tians took a sip of beer, watched them leave, feeling secretly pleased. Although they didn't get to the part of playing Dare, tonight's Q&A game was quite rewarding for him and gave him a deeper understanding of some things. He stood up, stretched, looked at the pitch black night outside the window, his expression gradually turning cold. At the same time, outside Villa, one of Purple Gold Heaven Palace, a man in black night clothes crouched on a big willow tree branch, holding a telescope, observing the villa. He took out a recorder to record the situation after Han Ruayun and Lu Ruyin went upstairs, confirming that the target Yi Tians was still in the living room. He yawned, rubbed his eyes, and loosened the recorder. Muttering to himself in a low voice, he felt his legs aching and silently calculated that after the task was over, he might as well go to a foot massage parlor and enjoy the 1988 package to relax. Just as he was thinking about these pleasant things, a indifferent voice suddenly came from behind, suggesting, Before going to the foot massage parlor, why not come to my place first and take a rest for a while? The sudden sound made the man in the black knight suit's heart race, his hair standing on end. He quickly turned around and threw a punch, but it hit nothing but air, not hitting anyone. Confused, he wondered, did he just have a hallucination? Perhaps the pressure was too great. He reassured himself, tightened his grip on the binoculars, and continued to watch the living room of the villa. Suddenly, he noticed Yi Tianza was missing. What? Where did he go? He muttered in astonishment. Suddenly, a figure appeared in front of him, looking at him with a cold smile. The man in the black knight suit was startled, fell from the tree, but stood up unharmed looking tense. Yi Tianza jumped down from the tree, furrowing his brow at the man in the black knight suit. It's you? Yi Tianza asked with a smile. The man in the black knight suit tried to conceal his surprise. You knew all along? Yi Tianza calmly applied it. The man in the black knight suit felt puzzled. Yi Tianza continued to expose. Lu Yinji sent you to watch me. What does she want to know? The man in the black knight suit trembled not understanding how he found out. Yi Tianza sarcastically said, You watched me last night, and today Lu Yinji came in person. Is there any other possibility? The man in the black knight suit struggled to understand. Yi Tianza walked towards him, no physical movement, but the pressure made the man in the black knight suit feel terrified, as if he was being stalked by a fierce beast. He realized he had to escape, without hesitation, he jumped onto the rockery and ran towards the back hill. The back hill was only 200 meters away. As long as he could hide there, even if Yi Tianza was powerful, he wouldn't be able to find him. In less than five seconds, 
he rapidly approached the back hill. Just as he was about to climb over the wall, he saw a familiar person standing on the wall, smiling. The man in the black night suit was being stared at by Yi Tianxi, feeling anxious and helpless. He realized that escape was no longer possible, so he resolutely decided to counterattack. With eyes wide like bronze bells, he unhesitatingly punched Yi Tianxi in the throat. Go to hell, he roared softly. Despite only being at the initial stage of the Grandmaster, he had no intention of giving up easily. Yi Tianxi muttered softly and slapped the man in the Black Knight suit without mercy. Smack! The man in the Black Knight suit felt like all his bones were about to fall apart, blood gushing from his mouth. The look of disbelief in his eyes, visible through the black face cloth, was evident. Although he had heard of Yi Tianxi's great strength and was somewhat prepared, he had never expected to be defeated so easily. More importantly, he could clearly feel that Yi Tianxi had restrained his strength when he struck. If not for that, he might have been a corpse by now. Yi Tianxi leaped down from the wall, looking down at the man in the Black Knight suit. Answer my question from earlier. The man in the Black Knight suit gritted his teeth and coldly said, Even if you kill me, I will never reveal any information. Yi Tianxi responded expressionlessly, Killing you would only dirty my hands. The information I want, you will never be able to hide from me. The man in the black knight suit smirked, somewhat doubting Yi Tianxi's confidence. Yi Tianxi bent down, quickly pulling off the face cloth on the man in the black knight suit, revealing the face of an ordinary middle-aged man. He then covered the man's mouth, causing a chill to run down the man's spine, sensing something was amiss. Then, he saw Yi Tianxi take out a small glass bottle. This stuff is perfect for you. Yi Tianxi opened the bottle, and poured the mandrik water directly into the man in the black knight suit's mouth. More than tin drops. Mandrik water usually needs to be diluted with clean water before use, but given the limited conditions at the time, Yi Tianxi had no choice. Although this could have adverse effects on the brain, even leading to dementia, Yi Tianxi paid no attention. The man in the black knight suit's eyes gradually lost focus. Yi Tianxi asked, What's your name? Gao Yang. The man in the black knight suit answered in a daze. Who sent you? Miss Lu Lu Yinji. Just as I suspected. Why did she send you to spy on me? To monitor your every move, record all information in the recorder, and report to her when needed. Hand over the recorder. Yes. Gao Yang respectfully handed over the recorder. Yi Tianxi briefly listened to the recording and found that no important information had been leaked. He had been cautious knowing what should be exposed and what should not. Yi Tianxi continued, As far as I know, most martial arts experts in Jiangnan City only reach the level of martial perfection, with very few at the Grandmaster level. Gao Yang was assigned the tough job of surveillance. Despite having the initial skills of a martial arts master, he did not complain. He knew very well that as a martial arts expert at the initial stage of a master, there were many strong people of similar strength around him, his position was not prominent, and he could only silently bear this task. Yi Tianzi's eyes moved slightly after hearing his answer, and he asked, Do you have any other identity? Gao Yang candidly replied, I am not from the Lu family, but an elite member of the Green Dragon Society. This answer made Yi Tianzi more curious and respectful towards him. Yi Tianzi raised his eyebrows slightly, curious about the elite members of the Qinglong Society. Zhao Hailong had mentioned before that the organization founded by Liu Yinji's man, Chen Qingdi, was the Qinglong Society. At its peak, the Qinglong Society was the most powerful underground force in Tianan province. However, after Chen Qingdi disappeared five years ago, the organization was left leaderless, and its power declined sharply, no longer the glory of its past. Yi Tianxi was filled with curiosity about what Chen Qingdi and Liu Yinji had experienced in the five years they disappeared. His eyes flashed with a cold light, revealing various doubts about Liu Yinji. Has your leader Chen Qingdi really disappeared for five years and cannot be contacted? Yi Tianxi asked. Yes, he and Liu Yinji disappeared together five years ago, and we have no idea what happened exactly, the other party replied. Yi Tianxi narrowed his eyes understanding in his heart. To unravel the mystery of Liu Yinji's disappearance for five years, he could probably only find out from her. 
Although he had little contact with Lu Yinji, Yi Tianxi keenly felt her meticulous thoughts. This level of scheming was unique among the women he had encountered. Therefore, the secrets of the Yi family fire 15 years ago, and everything Lu Yinji had planned in secret became the focus of Yi Tianxi's attention. Gao Yang, do you know what Lu Yinji has been through in these five years? Yi Tianji invited. Gao Yang shook his head, indicating that he was not sure. Yi Tianxi sighed, feeling inwardly disappointed. He realized that Gao Yang was unaware of these matters. After some questioning, Gao Yang could not provide any clues. Yi Tianxi sneered, doubting Gao Yang's value in his heart. It seems you can only provide this much information, Yi Tianxi said indifferently. Gao Yang's heart trembled, realizing that Yi Tianxi might take action against him. Although he had long been prepared to sacrifice himself at any time, when facing this moment, he still felt nervous. However, Yi Tianxi did not make a move but handed Gao Yang a bamboo stick. The stick was of moderate thickness, and Yi Tianxi instructed Gao Yang to take it back and convey a message. If he used unsavory means to monitor him again, let Lu Yinji bear the consequences herself. Gao Yang widened his eyes, never expecting Yi Tianxi to make such a decision. Despite his inner resistance, his body was still under the control of Mandala Water, and he obediently accepted the command. Yes. Gao Yang responded before quickly disappearing into the neighborhood. Yi Tianxi put his hands in his pockets, smiling coldly, thinking to himself, Miss Lu, I hope you can accept this surprise. After resolving this incident, Yi Tianxi returned to the villa, tidied up the remaining food and beer on the table, and went upstairs to wash up. Just as he lay down on the bed and closed his eyes, a message came through on WeChat. Guess what? What am I doing? The message was from Han Ruayu. Playing solitaire? Picking your nose? Ye Tianji replied teasinkly. Why are you saying such things? So rude. Han Ruayun replied with an angry expression. I knew you would bully me. Humph. Big pervert. Always asking personal questions. Han Ruayun continued to complain. You were the one who asked me first, right? I'm learning from you guys. Yi Tianxi replied with a mischievous expression. What are you doing now? Han Ruayun sent a new message. Just took a shower, now lying in bed, Yi Tianxi replied. Isn't it lonely to sleep alone? Smirking. Han Ruayun Tia said. If you're lonely, do you want to come and sleep with me? You flirt. Yi Tianxi teased back. However, there was no response from the other party. Yi Tianxi smiled slightly, closed his eyes, and prepared to drift off to sleep. He hesitated for a moment, wondering if he should take the initiative to send a message to test the waters. Suddenly, he felt the door handle move slightly. Someone outside was trying to open the door. Who could it be? Yi Tianzi quickly got up, opened the door, only to see a figure dart in like lightning. It turned out to be Han Ruayun. She was wearing a loose light pink pajamas with a slightly open neckline, revealing delicate collarbones and a yellow Pikachu pattern embroidered on the pajamas. The prominent e-cup on Han Ruayun's chest made Pikachu even more eye-catching, especially those big eyes, as if they were about to pop out. Why did you? Yi Tianzi wanted to say something, but Han Ruayun gestured for him to be quiet, closing the door softly. She complained softly. Why did you lock the bedroom door? I almost couldn't get in. Yi Tianzi explained with a smile, the behavior of Li Ruoyan after getting drunk last night is not reliable, so I have to be cautious. Han Ruoyan provocatively said, you don't seem drunk. Why did you come here? She added with a flirtatious smile, you said you were lonely, so I came to keep you company obediently. Her gaze fell between Yi Tianzi's legs, mischievously blinking. This move was just too cute. Yi Tianzi pretended to be serious and said, This is not a joking matter. I am a decent young man. Can't be easily taken advantage of. Han Ruayun angrily patted his chest and scolded, Humph, your words are so slick. I am still a pure girl. Do you think I would suffer a loss? Suddenly, she remembered something. By the way, Li Ruoyan took the initiative to kiss you today. Isn't that a loss? Yi Tianzi reminisced about Li Ruoyan's kiss, feeling happy as he said, As the national goddess, Li Ruoyan was my first kiss, such a fortunate encounter. Thinking back now, it still feels sweet. Han Ruoyan angrily said, Humph, 
I will show you what's even better now. With that, she stood on tiptoe without hesitation and kissed Yi Tianzi passionately. When Yi Tianzi went to the Han family for the rescue mission, Han Ruoyan had kissed him once, but that kiss was just a light touch on the lips, like a dragonfly touching the water. This time was completely different, perhaps stimulated by alcohol, or maybe due to previous experience, or maybe triggered by Li Ruoyan's actions. In any case, this kiss was passionate and affectionate. After a moment of hesitation, Yi Tianzi responded without hesitation, as if a storm swept them away. Han Ruayun was intoxicated in this passionate exchange, feeling her body soft all over, suddenly swaying, falling back on the bed. Her cheeks were crimson, her delicate body lying softly on the bed, her black hair scattered on the headboard. The mountains under the Pikachu pattern seemed to break through the neckline, her slender legs hidden under the skirt, leaving endless imagination. Looks like we need to change the battlefield? Yi Tianzi swallowed hard. Without hesitation, she bravely rushed forward, fearlessly facing the challenge. During a passionate moment, Han Ruoyan suddenly grabbed Yi Tianzi's right hand and gently placed it on herself. Yi Tianzi felt the soft and warm touch and could hear Han Ruoyun's rapid heartbeat. Surprised, he asked, What is this? He had once fantasized about exploring Han Ruoyun's fully cut breasts, but never imagined she would take the initiative like this. Blushing, Han Ruayun, with a tender look in her eyes, softly said, You deserve this, don't you? Yi Tianzi smiled and without hesitation, began to explore Han Ruayun's body. Despite having appreciated the alluring D-cups of Rong Meiyuan before, he now realized his horizons needed broadening. The charm of E-cups was truly extraordinary. The atmosphere in the room became increasingly ambiguous. Han Ruayun bit her lip, trying hard to suppress any sounds, while enjoying a pleasure she had never experienced before. Yi Tianzi whispered in her ear, You mentioned some pain on the shaded path, right? Han Ruayun nodded lightly, so nervous she could hardly speak. Yi Tianzi gasped, Let me help you with that. Don't worry, I won't hurt you. Han Ruayun's eyes were full of tenderness and haze, her cheeks flushed crimson. Yi Tianzi decisively began to explore further down. Han Ruayun tried to resist, but was quickly and easily conquered by Yi Tianzi. Just as his fingers were about to touch the forbidden area, a hurried knocking on the door interrupted them. Yi Tianzi and Han Ruayun's actions were halted. Lu Ruyun's voice came from outside, Yi Tianzi, have you seen the big busta girl? Annoyed, Yi Tianzi asked, what do you want with her? Lu Ruyun explained that she was a little scared sleeping alone and wanted some company. Yi Tianzi made up excuses to decline, but Lu Ruyun suggested sleeping with him. Han Ruayun immediately warned Yi Tianzi to refuse, and in the end, he firmly rejected Lu Ruyun's proposal. It's still early, why rush to sleep? Yesterday, Yi Tian Su gave Lu Ru Yin one million to buy clothes. Today, the clothes arrived, some of which are very sexy, even a bit see through. Playfully, Lu Ru Yin asked, Should I try them on for you to judge? Blushing, she confidently awaited Yi Tian Su's response. However, Yi Tian Su once again straightforwardly refused. You try them on yourself, I need to rest. If you disturb me again, don't blame me for kicking you out. Hearing this, Lu Ru Yin got angry and burst out, Yi Tian Su, is it because you have a big cash cow now that you're ignoring me? Fine, if you don't want to see, then when you do, I won't give you the chance. With that, Lu Ru Yin stormed out of the room, leaving Yi Tian Su relieved. He silently thanked his lucky stars for almost messing things up with Lu Ru Yin. Then, he turned to Han Rui Yun and said, She's gone. Let's continue. We almost succeeded. However, Han Rui Yun pushed his hand away angrily, complaining, Yi Tian Su, you spent one million on clothes for Lu Ru Yin behind my back, but you've never given me anything. Yi Tian Su was momentarily speechless. He awkwardly explained, that money was a loan to Lu Ru Yin. Not? Han Ru Ayun immediately cut him off saying, it doesn't matter. You must spend more money to buy better gifts for me, or don't even think about touching me. With that, she pushed Yi Tian Su's hand away and walked out of the room. Yi Tian Su quickly grabbed Han Ru Ayun's arm, smiling bitterly, don't go. I promise to buy you something. Can't you put out fires? not just start them? 
Han Ruayun looked down at Yi Tian Su and suddenly felt a surge of affection. She looked at him and thought to herself, this guy is indeed sincere. Then, she pulled away from Yi Tian Su's hand, muttering, I'm not a firefighter. Why should I put out fires? You figure it out yourself. Didn't you receive a lot of my photos yesterday? Bye. With that, she walked straight out of the bedroom, disappearing at the end of the hallway. Yi Tian Su shook his head helplessly, not blaming Han Rua Yun, but mainly feeling that Lu Ru Yin had gone too far. If she hadn't interfered, he might have succeeded tonight. He sighed, looking at the faint milky fragrance lingering on his fingers, thinking, Looks like I'll have to play the tough guy again tonight. In the villa at the Lu family estate, Lu Yinji was trimming the green plants in the flower pots. Her black long evening gown showcased her elegant figure, exuding confidence and beauty. Her long black hair cascaded over her shoulders, complementing the gown and highlighting her unique charm. Gao Yang hurried back to the villa, gently ringing the doorbell before entering the room to report important matters. Lu Yinji, with a cold and majestic emperor's temperament, shines like the brightest star in the night sky, captivating the entire world. Gao Yang approached her with measured steps, eventually kneeling two meters away from Lu Yinji, showing utmost respect. Gracefully bending down, Gao Yang spoke, Miss, I have found Yi Tians, Han Ruayun, and Lu Ruyin playing truth or dare. Lu Yinji raised an eyebrow slightly and asked, Is this the important matter you wanted to report? However, as soon as she finished speaking, Gao Yang suddenly moved, a bamboo stick appearing in his hand, ready to fiercely strike Lu Yinji's buttocks. In the moment when Gao Yang made a move, there was a fervent cry in his heart, trying to warn Lu Yanzi to dodge in time. However, controlled by the Mandarava water, he couldn't speak. Although he didn't exert all his strength, if this stick hit an ordinary person, it would definitely leave a minor injury. Miss Lu has delicate skin and would be seriously injured. Just as the bamboo stick was about to whip Lianzi's buttocks, an unexpected scene occurred. With a crack, Lianzi calmly caught the other end of the bamboo stick. The bamboo stick abruptly stopped just three centimeters away from her buttocks. How is this possible? Gao Yang was dumbfounded. As a master at the initial stage, his speed was as fast as lightning and his strength was strong. Yet he was blocked by the lady? Could it be? At the moment of his astonishment, Lianzi's scissors in her right hand were already close to his neck, emitting a chilling coldness. The speed was beyond imagination. It was at this moment that Gao Yang realized a fact. It turned out that the lady was not an ordinary person, but a martial arts master far superior to him. She had been hiding this identity, not only deceiving the enemy but also their subordinates. Why betray me? Lianzi's face was cold, her voice almost ruthless. Gao Yang tried hard to explain but couldn't speak. Lianzi stared at Gao Yang, then looked down at the bamboo stick in his hand, squinting her phoenix eyes slightly, as if pondering something. It seems your mission has failed, being manipulated by Yatayans with the Mandrava water. Using the bamboo stick to whip me as a warning? Gao Yang felt relieved, thinking that Miss Lu was indeed clever. The misunderstanding should be resolved now. Suddenly, Lianzi's scissors pierced straight into Gao Yang's neck, penetrating the trachea and artery, blood splattering. Some blood even splattered on Lianzi's skirt and cheeks. The hot blood emitted a rusty smell. Gao Yang widened his eyes, showing an expression of disbelief. At that moment, the effect of the Mandarava water in his body vanished. W. Y. His legs weakened, kneeling on the ground, hands covering the wound on his neck, uttering sounds of despair and shock. Lianzi looked down at him, coldly saying, Mission failed, death is deserved, not to mention, you have already learned some of my secrets, destined to die. Rest assured, I will take care of your family. Gao Yang's body collapsed on the ground convulsed a few times, then closed his eyes. Blood flowed out of the wound, staining the white marble floor with a large red patch. However, Lianzi's expression remained indifferent, as if killing was as ordinary to her as breathing. She picked up the bamboo stick on the ground, stepping on the bloodstains left on the floor. Tap, tap, tap. A string of red footprints was clearly visible. Her saws were covered in blood, 
blending with her black stockings, becoming even darker red, more eye-catching. Walking to the wine cabinet, she took out a bottle of red wine, poured half a glass, and elegantly savored it. She gently wiped the bloodstains on her cheek with her left hand, leaving a conspicuous mark. At that moment, she, who was originally cold and elegant, gained a touch of alluring fierceness. She gazed at the bamboo stick on the bar counter, whispering softly, contemplating spanking Yin Jishu and provocatively suggesting that if you have the guts, come over and do it yourself, the bamboo stick is right here. Maybe you don't dare at all. Suddenly, she raised her left hand and made a graceful gesture of pointing and striking. A figure emerged slowly from the corner of the living room staircase, blending into the surroundings as if one with it, hardly noticeable unless intentionally revealed. Master, the person said respectfully. She coldly commanded, clean up that fool's body, leave no trace. Yes, the person paused, cautiously asking, do we still need to continue monitoring Yi Tianche? Lu Yinji shook the red wine glass in her hand, her eyes gleaming, a hint of cold smile playing on her lips. No need. He has six more days. There might be a turning point. It's meaningless to stir up trouble further. Understood. She finished the red wine in one gulp, turned and walked upstairs, the red bloodstains clearly visible on the steps, leaving a deep impression. Late at night, the lights were dazzling in the Taida Industrial Park. In the center of the construction site, near the abandoned factory building, there was an altar. On the table were placed a pig's head, incense burner, fruits, steamed buns, and more. Daoist Master Gong Sun, dressed in Daoist robe, holding a peach with sword and whisk, chanting words. Yes, the Feng Shui master invited by Ji Duan is none other than Daoist Master Gong Sun. A group of worried workers gathered in a semicircle around him. Since the accident in the afternoon, they dared not work. Although there were no further accidents during this period, everyone was still on edge. A little further away, Jibwa Duan, Luo Yuanliang, Tung Bai, and others stood together. Luo Yuanliang glanced at Taoist Master Gong Sun and asked in puzzlement, Is this Taoist reliable? Jibwa Duan confidently patted his chest and said, Of course. Don't you know, Taoist Master Gong Sun is the most famous feng shui master in our Jiangnan city, proficient in feng shui physiognomy, and more, solving feng shui problems effortlessly. As he spoke, Taoist Master Gong Sun suddenly leaped onto the altar, brandishing the peachwood sword, and a yellow talisman paper ignited. The crowd exclaimed in surprise. Taoist Master Gong Sun shouted loudly, by decree. Then he threw the peachwood sword, accurately hitting the center of the snake group over 30 meters away. Bang! The snakes that were guarding the abandoned factory building seemed to be startled, one by one retracting into the building and disappearing in an instant. The people felt that the temperature around them seemed to have risen slightly, couldn't help but praise. Master Gong Sun, with his superb skills, has solved the Feng Shui problem, paving the way for safe construction. Jumping off the altar, he adjusted his goat beard and proudly said, Young Master Ji, the Feng Shui issue has been resolved. We can proceed with construction safely. Ji Budwan quickly expressed his gratitude to Master Gong Sun and promised a generous reward. However, Master Gong Sun modestly waved his hand, stating that as a monk, he only needed a small offering of incense money. Ji Budwan suppressed the urge to vent, his eyes twitching slightly. Curious, Luo Yuan asked, Master, are you sure the Feng Shui problem has been solved? Master Gong Sun showed a hint of displeasure and questioned, Are you doubting my abilities? Luo Yuan explained with a smile, Not at all, just need you to personally verify it. With a cold snort, Master Gong Sun turned and walked towards the factory where the snakes had disappeared. He walked around with his peachwood sword, then kicked a piece of colored steel tile that had fallen from the factory roof. Triumphantly, he said, Now I will risk my life. If no more snakes appear, it will prove that the feng shui is fine. As soon as he spoke, the peachwood sword suddenly made a crisp sound, shattering into pieces on the ground. With a click, the peachwood sword shattered, and a cold wind swept through, causing the temperature to drop sharply. Master Gong Sun stood nearby, 
feeling a bone-chilling cold that made him shiver involuntarily. Suddenly, a strong sense of impending doom surged in his heart. Just as he had kicked over the color steel tiles, a red poisonous snake darted out and swiftly attacked towards his legs. Ouch! Master Gong Sun dodged in a panic, narrowly avoiding a fatal bite, but leaving a sharp pain on the inside of his thigh. Soon, countless poisonous snakes, centipedes, scorpions, toads, and other venomous creatures emerged around, spreading like a tide, making it impossible to count, simply rampant with venomous beasts. This time, they were no longer confined to the vicinity of the abandoned factory, but wildly spreading in all directions. Master Gong Sun clutched his pants tightly, desperately fleeing, his face full of fear as if encountering a devilish presence. The surrounding workers scattered in fear, afraid of being engulfed by the venomous creatures. Ji Boudouan's face turned pale, trembling as he asked, How? How could this happen? What should we do now? Should we run away? Luo Yuanliang didn't hesitate to slap Ji Boudouan, causing blood to trickle from the corner of his mouth, with stars in his eyes, no longer daring to speak. He turned to Ting Bai and said, Tung Lao, please take action. Tong Bai decisively walked towards the snakes and scorpions, opened a small wooden box on him, and took out a gray cloth bag. He grabbed a handful of yellow and black powder and sprinkled it forward. The venomous creatures immediately stopped when they touched the powder, no longer moving forward. Tong Bai acted quickly. In less than two minutes, he sprinkled a circle of powder around, trapping all the venomous creatures in the middle, stopping their spread. The chaotic situation was finally under control. Ji Boudouan exclaimed excitedly, Tung Lao, you're amazing. What is this powder? Why are these venomous creatures so afraid of it? Tung Bai explained, This is a mixture of Rialgar powder and Ink Moon Peony powder, emitting a scent that can restrain these venomous creatures. However, the effect is limited. It can only last for 12 hours, after which they will adapt to the smell. To completely solve the problem, we need to start with Feng Shui. Hearing this, Ji Boudouan's mood became somewhat subdued. Master Gong Sun complained in pain. It hurts so much. He rolled and crawled, looking disheveled, lips turning purple. Ji Boudouan held onto his collar tightly. Ji Boudouan, burning with anger, roared, You deceitful swindler. You promised to solve the Feng Shui problem, but you messed up at a critical moment. I'm going to throw you into a pit of poisonous snakes and let them bite you to death. Master Gong Sun was scared out of his wits and quickly explained, Young Master Ji, the Feng Shui here is extremely fierce, and my skills are not enough to crack it. Despite Ji Boudouan's lingering fury, he ruthlessly kicked Master Gong Sun and roared, If the Feng Shui problem isn't solved, the construction cannot continue, and the Ji family will suffer huge losses. Master Gong Sun bitterly said, I've done my best, but I truly can't do it. Ji Boudouan coldly snorted. The Taoist Yunlong has profound skills. Find him to solve it. Master Gong Sun quickly agreed, and Luo Yuanliang's eyes lit up with excitement. Luo Yuanliang explained, Taoist Yunlong is an elder of Yuanyang Valley with profound skills, and he will surely resolve the Feng Shui problem. Ji Boudouan expressed out towards Taoist Yunlong, and Master Gong Sun awkwardly explained, Although I am just an outer disciple, I am indeed a junior brother of Taoist Yunlong. Luo Yuanliang nodded in trust. Master Gong Sun was about to call Taoist Yunlong when suddenly his face turned pale. He spat out black blood and collapsed on the ground convulsing. Everyone was terrified, and Tang Bai hurried to rescue him. Ji Boudouan cursed inwardly, hoping that Master Gong Sun would not cause any more trouble. The next morning, Yi Tianzi was preparing to go to the bathroom to freshen up when the door was pushed open. Han Ruoyan swiftly entered and greeted, Good morning. Yi Tianzi was startled and quickly finished freshening up. Han Ruoyan suddenly burst in and found Yi Tianzi in the restroom. She provocatively said, I just came to see you using the toilet. Any objections? Her gaze fell between Yi Tianzi's legs, feeling somewhat disappointed that she had missed seeing the truth just now. However, she joked, you moved so fast, and we can't even eat it. So what's there to be afraid of? Yi Tianzi walked up to Han Ruayun, gently pinched her chin with his right hand, 
and gazed at her tender and smooth lips. A slight smile played on his lips as he teased. I'm not afraid at all. If you like, I'm more than willing to let you taste it right now. How about that? Han Ruayun immediately understood Yi Tian's meaning. With a slight blush on her cheeks, she angrily said, Who said I wanted to eat it? And did you wash your hands before pinching someone's chin? Yi Tian's awkwardly smiled and hurried to wash his hands. Han Ruayun leaned against the bathroom door frame, with a mischievous look on her face, and asked, Tell me honestly, after I left last night, did you secretly do something? Yi Tian shrugged and replied, whether I wiped or not has nothing to do with you. Don't ask too much. Han Ruayin muttered, Your answer definitely means you did something, humph. If you did, why not just take a video and send it to me as a bonus? So stingy. Yi Tian said helplessly, Miss Han, please don't be so weird. Han Ruayin blinked mischievously and said, I'm only weird to you. Do you have the guts to be weird to me too? You said it yourself. Yi Tian suddenly reached out his right hand which he had just washed, and lightly pinched her e-cup chest. Startled, Han Ruayun quickly covered her chest. Yi Tian smirked and said, You asked me to be weird. I just wiped my hands. Regret it now? Can you be gentler? You hurt me. Angered, Han Ruayun said, Humph, if I use these huge cups to suffocate you, what then? I don't believe you. You said that too. Han Ruayun unceremoniously grabbed Yi Tian's head ready to press it down. Yi Tian's didn't resist. Han Ruayun, wearing the Pikachu pattern pajamas from last night, looked at Yi Tian's face, ready to embrace Pikachu, when an untimely voice interrupted, Hey, what are you guys doing? Needless to say, it was Lu Ruyun, the troublemaker again. Yi Tian's and Han Ruayun immediately returned to normal. Lu Ruyun walked over quickly, eyeing them warily. Suspiciously, she asked, Big Milk. Why are you in Yi Tian's bathroom so early? Facing her gaze, Han Ruayin calmly replied, Do I need to report to you what I want to do? Lu Ruyin muttered, Just because your chest is a bit big, you act so arrogant? Han Ruayun deliberately pushed out her chest and said, My big chest makes me arrogant, and you can never envy it. These treasures are specifically for pinching Yi Tian's. What about it? Why are you mad? My legs are several centimeters longer than yours. Enough to keep Yi Tian's entertained for two and a half years. Yi Tian's was speechless, thinking, Weren't you all a lies like sisters last night? Just one night passed, and you're back to being at odds? Women, truly fickle creatures. The vast horizon, my love. Yi Tian's phone rang. Hearing the ringtone, Lu Ruyin was immediately embarrassed, while Han Ruayun almost burst into laughter. Yi Tian's glanced at the caller ID. It was a call from Director Wu Xingye. Answering the phone, Wu Xingye respectfully said, Dr. Yi, I have good news for you. I have contacted the medicine king of Jiangnan. Yi Tianxi heard that Yao Wang had collected nine fragrance fruit and blue leaf wisteria, and his heart suddenly brightened. Perhaps by visiting, he would have the chance to obtain these two medicinal materials. He excitedly mentioned that the toxins in Su Qiangwei's body needed to be cleared and the antidote also required the addition of three rare medicinal materials, nine fragrance fruit, blue leaf wisteria, and green dragon vine. If he could obtain the first two from the medicine king of Jiangnan, the pressure for the last one would be much smaller. Gratefully, he said to Director Wu, thank you for your hard work. Immediately, he received the meeting address and prepared to meet with Director Wu. After hanging up the phone, Yi Tianxi turned to the two and said, I have urgent matters to attend to, you? Han Ruoyin immediately raised her hand and said, I want to go with you. I am going to handle official business, not the play, Yi Tianxi explained. I know, I won't cause trouble and besides, going out with a beautiful woman can add to the momentum. Han Ruoyin said with a smile. Faced with Han Ruoyin's firm stance, Yi Tianxi naturally couldn't refuse anymore and could only nod in agreement. Han Ruayun waved her fist triumphantly and glanced at Lu Ruyin. Xiaoping Ban, you stay and look after the house and take care of the chores while you're at it. Lu Ruyin said discontentedly. Why should I stay and look after the house? Are you planning to follow us like a shadow? Han Ruyun reto ted. No way, I have a date today. Lu Ruyin immediately denied, feeling a bit depressed. 
She had been particularly sensitive to Yi Tianxi recently, even starting to wonder if she had developed feelings for him. Could it be that I really like him? With that in mind, a blush appeared on Lu Ruyin's cheeks. Han Ruyin noticed this and asked with a smile, Xiaoping Ban, why are you blushing? Is your date today with a guy you like? No way. Lu Ruyin quickly denied, when in fact, she was going to meet Xiao Qingqing. Xiao Qingcheng had suddenly suggested meeting last night, and as her best friend, she couldn't refuse. Yi Tianxi told Han Ruayun, hurry up and change your clothes, don't delay Director Wu's time. Okay, Han Ruayun said excitedly. Before leaving, she patted Lu Ruyun on the shoulder and teased, Xiao Ping Ban, you should change your clothes quickly too, don't let your friend wait too long, haha. Lu Ruyun stomped her foot in anger. Twenty minutes later, the three of them changed into their clothes and went downstairs. Yi Tianxi was still in casual sportswear, looking handsome in the sunlight. Lu Ruyin wore a light blue camisole, showing off elegant lines, paired with tight jeans that highlighted her charming and well-proportioned legs. She used to be a popular celebrity and still exuded a sense of fashion, sexiness, and personality. Han Ruayun's outfit, however, surprised Yi Tianxi. She was wearing a JK uniform, a white shirt with a small bow tie, paired with a navy blue knee-length skirt, showcasing her long and beautiful legs. Particularly eye-catching were her white over-the-knee socks, outlining perfect curves, which paired well with her black loafers. She perfectly combined youthfulness, cuteness, and sexiness, making a striking impression. Yi Tianxi couldn't help but take a few more glances. Han Ruayan asked, Why are you wearing this outfit? There was a hint of mischief in her eyes as she continued, Don't you like it? Upon receiving a positive response, she smiled and said, Well, there you have it. Lowering her voice, she went on, Isn't this just to make it easier for us later outside? In case we want to try some exciting little games, add a bit of fun? Yi Tianxi shook his head helplessly. Ever since his relationship with Han Ruayun became closer, this girl has become more and more enthusiastic about driving. What's even more annoying is that she only knows how to start the car, but not how to turn it off. It's really exasperating. The three of them arrived at the underground garage of the villa. When they saw the garage filled with all kinds of luxury cars, even the young ladies from wealthy families couldn't help but feel surprised. Lu Ruyin couldn't help but sigh and said, Yi, I'm getting more and more curious about where you got so much money from. Are you the legendary god of war from Jiangnan? Or did the Rong family spend a fortune to support you? Yi Tianxi rolled his eyes and laughed, denying, that's just wishful thinking, none of it is true. You can choose whichever car you want to drive, pick any, Lu Ruyin said excitedly. Yi Tianxi added, but remember to drive carefully, or you'll have to pay for any damages. Hearing this, Lu Ruyin said somewhat disappointedly, got it, so stingy. Yi Tianxi continued to drive the ordinary Volkswagen Touareg, while Han Ruayun naturally sat in the passenger seat. Liu Ruyun shows a Porsche 911. The two set off on their own. President Wu gave Yi Tianxi the meeting address at Yaowang Valley in Jiannan City. This place is more than 50 kilometers away from the main city area, and it takes about an hour to drive there. Along the way, Han Ruayun kept smiling and humming cheerful songs. Yi Tianxi asked puzzledly, What's making you so happy? Han Ruayan answered without hesitation, Nothing. As long as I can go out and have fun with you, I'm happy, without a care in the world. Her attitude was very sincere, without any falsehood. Yi Tianxi then asked, Why were you only wearing a Pikachu pajama and this JK uniform last night when you came to my house? I had my family send them over, they sent me a lot of outfits. During this time I can wear them alternately, so I don't have to take so many photos anymore. Han Ruyun explained. She added, Did Uncle Han and the others know that you're staying at my place? Did they object? How could they? My parents have long regarded you as my fiancé. They hope I can stay with you all the time. Han Ruayun's face blushed slightly. She remembered when she called yesterday. Her mother specifically instructed her to find ways to get Yi Tianxi to marry her as soon as possible. Han Ruayun understood her mother's expectations, but there was always a stumbling block in her heart. That is, Yi Tianxi and Xiao Qingcheng have not divorced yet. She doesn't mind cuckolding Xiao Qingcheng, but handing herself over still makes her feel somewhat uneasy. However, 
Thinking that starting with love first, other things can come slowly, she felt at ease. Is driving a bit boring? Yi Tianxi asked. It's just driving, not a big deal, and it's less than an hour's journey. Han Ruoyan bit her lip and teasingly said, If you find it boring, you can relax and take a break. What? Yi Tianxi was completely shocked by her suggestion. Yi Tianxi felt a wave of contentment in his heart and readily accepted this unexpected surprise. He gently stroked Han Ruayun's fair and beautiful legs, secretly pleased that the entire journey would not be boring. Fifty minutes later, Yi Tianxi and Han Ruayun arrived at Medicine King Valley. This mysterious place was located near a small town in the outskirts of Jiangnan City. After parking, they met Wu Xingya, who had arrived early. Wu Xingya hurried over and respectfully said to Yi Tianxi, Dr. Yi, I apologize for my inefficiency in contacting Medicine King earlier. Please punish me. Yi Tianxi smiled and replied, Director Wu, you have done a great job. By the way, how are Qing and Zhang Xiaohu's injuries recovering? Wu Xingye answered, With the black jade resilience ointment you gifted, their injuries have been rapidly recovering. Coupled with their martial arts expertise, they should be able to leave the hospital in a few days. When mentioning the black jade resilience ointment, Wu Xingye couldn't help but get excited. Yi Tianxi generously shared the formula and production method of this miraculous ointment, leaving Wu Xingye extremely grateful. Yi Tianxi looked up and saw surrounded by mountains, with a straight valley in front of him and a gourd-shaped peak standing tall deep in the valley. The swirling mist gave a sense of mystery and liveliness. Yi Tianxi squinted and said, The feng shui of this place is good. That gourd-shaped peak is quite interesting. Wu Xingye smiled and said, Dr. Yi, if you're interested, I can introduce it to you as we walk. Great. So, the three of them walked along the stone steps towards the depths of the valley. Along the way, Wu Xingye introduced the legend of Medicine King Valley. It was said that a thousand years ago, during a stormy day with thunder and continuous rain for three days and nights, a huge gourd-shaped peak suddenly descended from the cloudy sky, changing the terrain and forming a valley. Since then, the herb gatherers and hunters living here discovered many precious herbs growing in the valley, relieving the people's suffering. The local villagers named this place Medicine Valley. With the growing reputation of Medicine Valley, it attracted many renowned Chinese medicine masters and royal physicians to come here for herb collection and exchange. The court even allocated funds to build medicinal food rooms and stone steps in the valley for people to climb. Yi Tianxi raised an eyebrow slightly, full of curiosity about this magical place. Han Ruayun widened her eyes, filled with doubt, and a look of shock was written all over her face. How is this possible? The Gourd Mountain Peak falling from the sky? This is really beyond belief. Wu Xingye patiently explained, originally, this was a medicinal valley. Later, because the medical masters in the medicinal kitchen were extraordinary, among them, one master would be selected as the strongest and crowned as the medicine king, certified by the court. After 15 generations of inheritance, the current medicine king is already the 15th generation. Countless people used to come here seeking medicine and treatment, even the royal nobles were no exception. So the medicinal valley gradually became known as the medicine king valley. However, with the introduction of western medicine, traditional Chinese medicine gradually declined, and the influence of Medicine King Valley is not as strong as before. In recent years, some events have occurred, leading to, leading to what? Yi Tianxi keenly sensed Wu Xingye's concealment, but chose to remain silent. They continued on, walking up the stone steps leading to the medicinal kitchen. They only saw a few scattered people coming to buy medicine, far fewer than the flow of customers in the city's pharmacies. Indeed, Medicine King Valley was no longer as prosperous as it used to be. As the three of them reached the entrance of the medicinal kitchen, a sudden scream rang out, followed by a person being thrown out and landing heavily on the stone floor in front of them. Yi Tianxi glanced down and saw a young man of similar age lying on the ground. The young man was dressed in fashionable brand name casual clothes, with a sparkling blue earring in his left ear, exuding a hint of roguish charm. Judging from his attire and demeanor, he was obviously a distinguished young master. However, at the moment, he was sitting on the ground, kicking his legs in distress and tearfully pleading, 
Ouch, it hurts. Are you so cold-hearted towards your own husband? Don't you feel a twinge of guilt in your heart? Just then, a pair of nunchucks flew out from the door and landed with a thud beside the young man. Surprisingly, there was a pink bow tied in the middle of the black nunchucks. Following that, a woman's voice roared from inside the door, Take your trash and get out immediately. If I see you again, I'll kick you out. The woman's voice was full of dominance. Faced with such a threat, the young man just grinned and gently said, Jing Jing, why are you driving me away? Please accept the birthday gift your husband is giving you. The shopkeeper said that the ends of this pair of nunchucks symbolize us, signifying an unbreakable love. The iron chain in the middle represents our eternal bond. I deliberately tied this pink bow. I believe you will like it. Please accept it, I beg you. The young man's coquettish tone made Etienne and others couldn't help but shiver. Han Ruiyan couldn't help but mutter under her breath, Wow, giving nunchucks as a birthday gift. This kind of macho move is the first time I've seen. Yi Tianxi also couldn't help but show an embarrassed expression. Sometimes he thought he was quite macho, but he didn't expect there were even more macho people than him. What's more, this guy seemed so despicable. However, the young man didn't give up and continued, Jing Jing, if you don't accept this gift, I won't leave no matter what. The girl angrily said, Get lost. Where did I get a husband from? Say one more word and I'll cut off your tongue. At this moment, a short-haired, neat-looking girl walked out of the door. She was dressed in black and white martial arts attire, with delicate features, almost perfect looks. There were a few freckles scattered on her face, not affecting her beauty but adding a touch of youthful cuteness. The young man quickly stood up, adjusted his bangs, and with a playboy look said, Jing Jing, you came out because you're worried about me, right? I know you love me the most. The girl gritted her teeth in anger, and the next moment, she suddenly struck out, a precise side kick hitting the young man's chest. He was instantly shot out like a bullet, flying over ten meters and falling on the steps. However, the young man seemed to act as if nothing had happened, sitting up on his own. He sighed, Oh my, domestic violence. I'm really unlucky. Is there anyone who can speak up for me? This scene attracted some customers who were buying medicine or hiking to stop and discuss. Someone said, Who is this guy? A grown man crying and wailing. Isn't he ashamed? Another person replied, Don't you know him? He is the second young master of the Zhuga family from Tianbei province, known as Zhuga Ruizhi. The Zhuga family, a prominent family in Tianbei province, is well known throughout half of the province. Their influence and power even surpassed the four major families in the provincial capital. However, the second young master of the family, for some reason, has come from afar and is specifically pursuing Miss Jingjing. Rumors of Miss Jingjing having a husband are unheard of. Regarding Zhuge Ruizhi, the infamous young master of the Zhuge family in Tianbei province, people are discussing and speculating, believing that apart from relying on the Zhuge family's prestige, he has no other strengths so his actions are not surprising. Yi Tian Su listened to the surrounding discussions with a slight frown. He is no stranger to such evaluations, but based on what he knows about Miss Jingjing, she is a strong woman with exceptional martial arts skills, already reaching the pinnacle of a warrior. Although a punch from Zhuge Rue, she left him unscathed, as the opponent is also a martial arts expert, even reaching the level of a grandmaster. While Yi Tian Su does not consider this level of strength to be outstanding, Achieving such a level at such a young age would be considered exceptional in Tianan province, yet being labeled as a useless waste seems unfair. Of course, Yi Tian Su has no intention of wasting time on idle gossip. He is neither obligated nor necessary to step forward to explain. Wu Xingye stepped forward and greeted the girl. Jingjing, long time no see. Left Jingjing politely smiled. Grandpa Wu, are you here to see my grandfather? Wu Xingye nodded, yes. Yesterday your grandfather and I agreed to visit today. Then, he turned to Yi Tian Su and introduced, This is Miss Left Jingjing, the granddaughter of the current medicine king left Shan Shue of the Medicine King Valley. Although young, she is quite accomplished in traditional Chinese medicine and martial arts. Yi Tian Su nodded, expressing his pleasure. Wu Xingye continued, Miss Jingjing, this gentleman by my side is the divine physician Yi Tian Su. His medical skills are superb, 
even I pale in comparison. I believe your grandfather will have a lot to talk about with him. Upon hearing the title Divine Physician, Left Jingjing furrowed her brows slightly. She scrutinized E.T. on Su, and although he was handsome, he did not look like a skilled medical practitioner. With a straightforward and somewhat arrogant personality, she skeptically said, Grandpa Wu, are you joking? He is a divine physician? How come I've never heard of a divine physician named Yi Tian Su in Jiangnan City? Wu Xingya felt a bit embarrassed, about to respond when Han Ruayun, standing nearby, frowned and said, Our little Su Su is indeed a divine physician. If you haven't heard of him, it's your own ignorance. Left Jingjing turned to Han Ruayun, who outshone her in both appearance and demeanor, making her feel the pressure of comparison, especially the pair in front, making her feel the inadequacy of her own a cup. Unexplainably, a sense of displeasure surged within her, and she coldly snorted, so-called divine physician, it's just wishful thinking on your part. In front of the Medicine King Valley, no one is worthy of the title divine physician. Just as she finished speaking, a hoarse voice came from the medicinal kitchen, Jing Jing, don't be rude. An old man in a yellow robe emerged, his white hair and kind eyes giving him a benevolent appearance. Behind him were two young apprentices. Seeing the old man, left Jing Jing immediately showed respect. Wu Xingye respectfully bowed to Zhu Shan Shue and greeted, Brother Zhu. The customers who came to buy medicine also politely greeted him, addressing him as Medicine King or Elder Zwa. Obviously, this is the 15th generation Medicine King of Medicine King Valley, Zwa Shan Shue. He looked gently at Yi Si and smiled, saying, Brother Wu, the young man you mentioned yesterday, is this young friend? Yi Tianxi, right? Wu Xingya quickly nodded in confirmation. Zwa Shan Shue's smile remained, as he continued, Young Yi, the two medicinal herbs you need, Brother Wu and I both have and can provide to you. However, I have a small request. Curiously, Yi Tianxi asked, What request? Zhu Shan Shui lightly stroked his beard, smiling as he said, It's simple. Just marry my granddaughter and become her husband. That's all. When Zhu Shan Shui suggested that Ye Tianxi become his granddaughter's son-in-law, the whole scene suddenly became eerie. Ye Tianxi looked incredulous as if he couldn't believe this sudden request. Han Ruayun immediately couldn't contain her anger and questioned, This request is too much. Why does Ye Tianz have to be your granddaughter's son-in-law? Zhu Jingjing was also shocked and exclaimed, Grandpa, what's wrong with you? You can't even say hello, and you want to casually marry me off? Wu Xingya also felt puzzled and couldn't help but say, Brother Zhuo, isn't this condition a bit hasty? Faced with everyone's doubts and questions, Zhuishan Shui rubbed his hands together and calmly explained. The reason I made this request is because as the owner of the Medicine King Valley, I have a responsibility to continue the inheritance of the Medicine King Valley. Jingjing is not young anymore, and her parents passed away early. What I am most worried about is the issue of the successor of the Medicine King Valley. Although Jingjing's medical skills are barely qualified, according to the rules of our ancestors, the Medicine King Valley can only be passed on to males, not females. Therefore, I can only look for a suitable match for Jingjing. Fortunately, Ye has the talent of a divine doctor. As long as he is willing to marry into the Medicine King Valley, he will become the heir of the Medicine King Valley. I will allow him to freely use the necessary medicinal materials without interference. But the condition is that within a year, he must have a great-grandson with Jingjing. I will personally teach him medical skills. After listening to this explanation, Ye Tianz looked at Zhu Shanshui speechlessly. He had just escaped from the Xiao family, and now he was supposed to marry into the Medicine King Valley, which was simply a huge joke. Why did they have to choose him as a son-in-law? Han Ruayun was even more furious, her chest heaving with suppressed anger. This is too much. I haven't even done anything to Ye Tianz, and you want him to have children with your granddaughter. What am I then? Zhu Jingjing earnestly stated, Grandpa, I object. Zhu Shanshui, however, with a stern face, said, Objections are invalid. I object as well. Suddenly, a voice broke the silence. Zhuga Rueji, who was sitting on the stone steps below, jumped up and hurriedly walked to Zhu Shanshui. Medicine King Grandpa, if you are worried about the issue of succession, 
Why not choose me directly? You may not know. I like being a son-in-law, and I am more than willing to marry into the Medicine King Valley. I promise to take on all the hard work, even more diligent than the production team's donkey. Yet Tyants blinked, thinking to himself that there are actually people nowadays who are eager to be son-in-laws? The customers who were watching the scene were discussing. I can't believe it. The second young master of the Zhuga family is so proactive. He's even competing to be a son-in-law. Yeah, if this news spreads back to the Zhuga family, it's going to be a big joke. Zhuga Rueji, however, pretended not to hear the discussions around him, still looking at Zhuashanshui with anticipation. The latter sighed and reluctantly said, Young Master Zhuga, I appreciate your sincerity towards my granddaughter, but the rules of our ancestors cannot be changed. The descendants of the Zua family have been passing down the medical skills through generations. For their future marriage partners, they must possess exceptional medical skills and the ability to save lives. When Zhuga Rueji was asked if he was good at medicine, he confidently nodded and mentioned that he once made his sick mother drink 999 gammailing for a cold. Everyone present exchanged glances, while Zhu Jingjing showed dissatisfaction and disappointment, scolding Zhuga Rueji as useless and hoping he would leave soon. However, Zhuga Rueji expressed his willingness to learn medical skills and do anything as long as he could be with Zhu Jingjing. Zhu Shanshui believed that traditional Chinese medicine is a profound knowledge that even the elderly only have a superficial understanding of and cannot be easily learned. He then turned to Yi Taiyans and asked if he would like to become his granddaughter's husband, but Yi Taiyans politely declined. Perplexed, Zhu Shanshui asked if it was because he thought Zhu Jingjing's appearance was not good enough. Zhu Jingjing muttered discontentedly, questioning Yi Taiyans' qualification to judge her appearance. Yi Taiyans admitted that due to a recent failed marriage, he had no interest in any marriage and had to decline politely. Han Ruayun secretly breathed a sigh of relief, thinking Yi Taiyans was still reliable, and if he had agreed, she would have faced an awkward situation. Zhuga Ruayji, on the other hand, expressed his admiration for Yi Taiyans, thinking he did the right thing. Zhu Shanshui sighed, thinking that Zhu Jingjing had finally met a young genius doctor and could have a happy marriage, but it was a pity. However, Zhu Jingjing insisted that she did not believe in Yi Taiyan's medical skills. Wu Xingye interrupted their debate and asked for their opinions on the nine fragrance fruit and blue leaf bauhinia. Zhu Shanshui firmly stated that he would not easily give away these precious medicinal herbs. Han Ruayun sarcastically commented on whether refusing to become a grandson-in-law was being stingy, suggesting they could exchange it for money. Zhu Shanshui emphasized that it was not about money, but the rarity of the nine fragrance fruit and blue leaf bauhinia, which were both rare medicinal herbs and unique, with only one of each in the Medicine King Valley, making them extremely valuable. Yi Taiyans and Wu Xingya both agreed with this perspective. Zhu Shanshui cast a deep glance at Yi Taiyans, with a hint of admiration in his eyes. After a moment of contemplation, he nodded in agreement to Yi Taiyans' proposal. And so, a medical skills competition unfolded. Yi Taiyans and Zhu Shanshui set up the scene for the medical skills competition in the clinic. Zhu Shanshui held a jade Rui scepter with a solemn expression, while Yi Taiyans showed a focused look, revealing his dedication and passion for medical skills. The competition began, with Zhu Shanshui first showcasing his superb medical skills. His precise diagnosis and unique treatment methods earned admiration from the onlookers. Then it was Yi Taiyan's turn. Facing a patient, he listened carefully to the symptoms, examined the pulse meticulously, and finally prescribed a herbal remedy. The combination of herbs in the prescription showed great care and thoughtfulness. Zhu Shanshui carefully read the prescription and a smile of approval appeared on his face. He knew that Yi Taiyan's medical skills had reached a high level, deserving of the rare medicinal herbs he presented as a gift. So, Zhu Shanshui solemnly handed over the two precious herbs to Yi Taiyans, wishing him further success in his medical skills. Yi Taiyans accepted the herbs, feeling deeply moved. He understood that the path of medicine is unforgiving, yet it has the power to alleviate the suffering of all beings. This medical skills competition not only brought him valuable medicinal herbs, but also deepened his understanding and insight into the medical field. From then on, he would redouble his efforts to cultivate his medical skills and become a true healer.
Yi Tianxi's remarks immediately stirred up a huge commotion. Many customers were buzzing with discussions, shocked that this young man dared to challenge the 15th generation medicine king, Master Zhuo, who was unparalleled in the entire traditional Chinese medicine community in Jiangnan City. It was simply crazy. But that's how young people are, daring to challenge traditions, which is truly admirable. Zhuo Jingjing was almost amused by the situation. What does this guy want to do exactly? Is he targeting me? Yi Tianxi calmly explained, I'm just stating the facts. I didn't mean to target you. You are too arrogant. Zhuo Jingjing clenched her fists in anger. Her flat chest did not diminish her domineering aura. Zhuo Shanshue furrowed his brows slightly. Yi, have you really thought this through? It's been over 30 years since I failed in a medical challenge. Many challengers have come during this time. All were defeated. Young people may be brave, but they should also act cautiously. Wu Xingya whispered. Medicine God Yi, how about challenging Jingjing instead? The chance of success is higher, and brothers was medical skills are superb. Maybe? Yi Tianxi chuckled and said, In my dictionary, there is no such word as failure. Faced with such determination, Wu Xingya stopped speaking. The other onlookers and Medicine King Valley's apprentices all showed mocking expressions. They believed that Yi Tianxi's insistence on challenging Zhuo Shanshue in medical skills was doomed to fail. Yi Tianxi will definitely fail. Saying that there is no failure in his dictionary is pure self-aggrandizement. Zhuo Shanshue nodded and said, All right then, since that's the case, I agree to challenge Yi in medical skills. It's not convenient outside. Let's go inside. Great. Led by Zhuo Shanshue, everyone walked into the medicinal food room. This room was built with the support of the court back in the day. It was spacious and bright, exuding a strong ancient atmosphere. Rows of wooden medicine cabinets were filled with various precious medicinal herbs, ranging from dark lingzhi and wolfberries to light chrysanthemum and lily, colorful like a beautiful scroll of medicinal herbs. Some ancient medical classics hung on the wall, with neat handwriting and a strong scent of ink. The air was filled with a faint herbal fragrance and the apprentices in the corner were earnestly brewing herbs. The reputation of the Medicine King Valley was well-deserved, with a profound heritage of traditional Chinese medicine culture. Han Ruoyan sighed, This medicinal room is really huge. It's the first time I've seen something like this despite my age. Zhuo Jingjing proudly raised her head and said, Of course, our Medicine King Valley has been passed down for nearly a thousand years, accumulating countless precious medicinal herbs and medical classics. How can we compare to the outside herbal stores? Zhuo Shue played with his beard and asked with a smile, Yi, according to the rules of traditional Chinese medicine challenges, it usually includes diagnosing difficult cases, identifying ancient formulas, acupuncture techniques, herbal identification and compatibility, and emergency treatment. We don't need to compete in all of them, just choose one for the challenge. As a guest, it's up to you to choose the method of the challenge. Yi Tianxi nodded and said, Since we are in the Medicine King Valley, surrounded by precious Chinese herbs, let's go with herbal identification and compatibility, simple and convenient. Hearing this, everyone around widened their eyes. Yi Tianxi, however, was not swayed by Zhu Jingjing's provocative words. He smiled and inquired about the rules of the competition from Zhu Lao, showing his calm demeanor. Zhuo Shanshue explained briefly that the rules of the competition were simple. Within the specified time, whoever could accurately identify more types of herbs would win. To ensure fairness, they would randomly select some herbs, and then both sides would identify them to see who was more accurate. Upon hearing this, Wu Xingye furrowed his brow. He realized that Yi Tianxi might be at a disadvantage because Zhuo Shanshue was very familiar with the herbs of the Yao Wang Valley. However, before he could warn him, Yi Tianxi had already accepted the challenge without hesitation. Seeing Yi Tianxi's performance, Wu Xingye could only helplessly give up on reminding him. Subsequently, customers, apprentices, and Han Ruoyan all joined in the process of selecting herbs. They randomly picked 100 types of herbs from the medicine cabinet, divided them into two portions in trays, and covered them with red cloth. Yi Tianxi and Zhuo Shanshue each had a tray in front of them, along with writing utensils. During the competition, both sides needed to identify the types and effects of the herbs one by one, and write down the corresponding information on paper. In the end, 
the side with higher accuracy and shorter time would win. So Shan Shue smiled and said to Yi Tianxi, On my turf, as long as your number of mistakes does not exceed 10, you will be considered the winner. Upon hearing this condition, the apprentices present were all shocked. The variety of herbs in the medicinal kitchen was vast, and many herbs looked very similar in appearance, making it easy to confuse them. Moreover, some rare herbs were rarely recorded in medical classics, and there were very few records of their compatibility and indications. In this situation, even for apprentices who had studied for many years, being able to maintain an accuracy rate of over 80% was already a remarkable achievement. Even the talented Zhu Jingjing could only maintain an accuracy rate of around 90%. Only Zhu Shan Shue, with his superb medical skills, could achieve an accuracy rate of over 95%, occasionally even reaching 100%. Therefore, requiring Yi Tianxi to reach a 90% accuracy rate was actually testing whether he could reach the level of Zhu Jingjing. Faced with Zhu Shan Shue's expectations and good intentions, Yi Tianxi remained calm in his heart. Yi Tianxi smiled and replied, I appreciate Left Lao's kindness, but if we are to compete, it should be fair and just. I don't need any special treatment. Left Shan Shui nodded in agreement. He thought that regardless of Yi Tianxi's medical skills, his straightforward attitude alone was admirable. With both sides ready, Wu Xingya, as the judge, spoke up, Well then, the competition officially begins. The trays are placed on two long tables, separated by about three meters. Left Shan Shue lifts the bright red cloth on the tray, revealing neatly arranged various Chinese medicines. There are a total of five rows, each with 20 types of herbs, totaling 100 kinds. The herbs of the two are arranged in the exact same order, ensuring fairness in the competition. Left Shan Shue picks up the first herb, taking only two seconds to wave his brush and write on the paper, one, honeysuckle, clears heat and toxins, disperses wind and heat, commonly used to treat cold and fever symptoms. He then picks up the second herb, also taking just a short two seconds, and continues to write, 2. Angelica sinensis, nourishes blood, promotes blood circulation, regulates menstruation, and relieves pain, commonly used in gynecology. This is followed by the third herb. In short, left Shan Shui's speed in identifying herbs is orderly and calm and the names and effects of the herbs he writes down are extremely accurate. The onlookers and apprentices nod in praise, secretly admiring. The title of Medicine King is well-deserved, and left Shan Shui's medical skills in the field of Chinese herbal medicine are unparalleled. Left Jingjing couldn't help but proudly say, Ah, as long as it is a Chinese herb recorded in medical classics, my grandfather knows them like the back of his hand. This competition was destined to be our victory from the beginning. In contrast, Yi Tianzi sits in his chair, not even lifting the red cloth on the tray on the table. Han Ruayun anxiously reminds him, Hey, the competition has already started. Why haven't you identified the herbs yet? Left Shan Shui has already written down more than a dozen. Hurry up. Yi Tianzi calmly replies, What's the rush? I just drove here and climbed the mountain. Can I take a short break? And. Yi Tianzi didn't continue. Since entering the medicinal food room, he has felt a strange sensation, as if something is not right. But he can't pinpoint exactly what the problem is. Left Jingjing walks over, with a sarcastic tone, saying, Take a break? I think this guy doesn't know anything about traditional Chinese medicine, unable to identify herbs, that's why he's pretending to be calm. Mr. Yi, you can still admit defeat now, there won't be any loss anyway. Thinking of Yi Tianzi's previous arrogance in claiming she posed no challenge, left Jingjing feels a surge of resentment. Now it seems that Yi Tianzi is completely bluffing. Han Ruayun immediately speaks up, Humph! Super airport, what do you understand? My little CC is just respecting the elders, letting Mr. Left take the lead. We won't admit defeat. Super tablet? This hits a nerve for left Jingjing. Where do I look like an airport? Even if I look like an airport, it's better than being brainless like you with big boobs. Han Ruyin smugly raises her chin and says, Thank you for praising this lady's big chest. As for being brainless, I admit it. Being brainless is just liking my little CC. Any objections? Left Jingjing, who usually focuses on studying medicine and martial arts, rarely argues with people. So in terms of verbal ability, 
she is no match for Han Ruanya. But at this moment, she is so angry that smoke seems to be coming out of her seven orifices. Seeing this, Zhuge Rue wisely steps forward. Luo Jingjing was filled with anger, and after hearing Zhuge's wise words, she couldn't hold back anymore. She kicked him out of the medicinal food room, causing him to cry out in pain for his parents. The people present were all surprised, wondering if Zhuge's name should be changed to Zhuge Dimwitted instead. After this little incident, Yi Tianxi finally took action. He first gently sniffed the red cloth on the tray, then picked up a pen and started writing down the effects of the herbs on a piece of white paper. He wrote fluently and effortlessly, as if he were reciting poetry from the depths of his heart. The apprentices and customers watching him went from disdain to amazement and finally to shock. They began to discuss and marvel at how Yi Tianxi's writing was almost identical to Master's was. It was unbelievable. Han Ruayun immediately retorted, pointing out that there was no sign of plagiarism or cheating by Yi Tianxi, leaving everyone in silence. Luo Jingjing was also impressed by Yi Tianxi's skill, her eyes widened in disbelief. She noticed that Yi Tianxi had identified all the herbs without a single mistake, and his calligraphy was powerful and smooth, giving great visual pleasure. This made Luo Jingjing start to doubt if she had misunderstood this young man. Zhuge, who was originally smug, was also impressed by Yi Tianxi's skill. After taking a closer look, the frivolous expression on his face disappeared instantly. An hour later, Zhuishan Shui was satisfied as he put down his brush, praising Yi Tianxi for being in good condition today and successfully identifying all 100 herbs. With a high probability of success in hand, Yi Tianzi set down his brush, stretched his shoulders, closed his eyes slightly, and silently celebrated the rewards of his hard work. I'm done too, he rejoiced inwardly. As soon as the words fell, the eager crowd surged towards him like a tide, eagerly comparing the herbal identification results written by the two. To their astonishment, they found that the content written by Yi Tianzi was exactly the same as Hua Shanshui's. Oh my god, did both of them make no mistakes? Are there really 100 correct identifications? Someone couldn't help but exclaim, unable to believe what they were seeing. However, at that moment, a sharp-eyed apprentice suddenly shouted, Wait, look, their 88th identifications are different. The crowd stared intently. Among the 88 herbs, what Zhu Shanshui wrote about was the Xianbing fruit. It has a cool nature, with the effects of clearing heat, reducing fire, moisturizing dryness, and generating body fluids, showing remarkable effectiveness in treating heat toxin diseases. The calligraphy of Yi Tianxi is almost identical to the first half of Zhu Shanshui's content. However, Yi Tianxi added that grinding the kernel of Xianbing fruit into powder and taking it can eliminate cold toxins in the body, with even more miraculous effects on symptoms like rheumatism and wind cold. The apprentices immediately commented, jokingly saying, Ha ha, this time Young Yi from the Yi family made a mistake. He got 99 right, but one wrong. Zhu Shifu wins. Indeed, Zhu Shifu is a bit more powerful. He still has a long way to go if he wants to surpass Zhu Shifu. Although they said this, in reality, Yi Tianxi's astonishing accuracy completely overshadowed them. Most people have this mentality when encountering someone much more talented than themselves, often expecting the other party to fail. Once the other party fails, they can make fun of it, even giving themselves some psychological comfort, thinking that the other person seems to be inferior to themselves. Currently, most of these people hold this attitude. Han Ruayun somewhat discontentedly said, Hey, why is it that just because the content written by Young Yi from the Yi family is different from Elders was, he must be wrong? Can't Elders will make a mistake? Zhu Jingjing snorted coldly. In terms of the characteristics of Chinese medicine, it requires focus and consistency. Since the Xianbing fruit itself is effective in treating heat toxins, its kernel cannot treat cold toxins, as this is contradictory. Anyone with a bit of knowledge about Chinese herbs can understand this. Indeed, someone surnamed Yi has been defeated. Han Ruayun's face changed slightly, feeling somewhat aggrieved. In her eyes, Yi Tianxi was an all-powerful person, absolutely incapable of making such small mistakes. Oh, who said I lost? Suddenly, the usually silent Yi Tianxi spoke up. All eyes were now on Yi Tianxi, and the result was clear. 
wasn't it you who lost? Are you trying to avoid responsibility? Left Jingjing pursed her lips and said, So you're saying my grandfather made a mistake? Yi Tianxi nodded, admitting that indeed he made an error. Everyone was shocked. How could the esteemed medicine king left possibly make a mistake? Left Shanshue smiled and said, Yi friend, although shimbing fruit is rare, it is indeed recorded in the Compendium of Materia Medica Annotations, just as this old man wrote. I don't know where I went wrong. Yi Tianxi smiled and said, The Compendium of Materia Medica Annotations does record it that way, but as a healer dealing with Chinese herbal medicine, one should not be bound by medical classics, but should explore deeply on the basis of past wisdom, even overturning and summarizing new knowledge, isn't that so? In other words, extracting the essence and eliminating the dross. This principle, old left should understand, right? At this point, left Shanshue couldn't help but tremble slightly, as if inspired. Left Jingjing frowned and said, it's easy for you to say, but to overturn past wisdom is extremely difficult, isn't it? Moreover, the content you wrote itself contradicts the basic logic of Chinese herbal medicine. Other apprentices also chimed in, saying, in other words, Xianbing fruit treats heat toxins, while the fruit kernel can treat cold toxins, isn't this contradictory new knowledge you summarized? As a traditional Chinese medicine practitioner, the primary task is to inherit the experiential knowledge left by our ancestors, not to arbitrarily alter it. Ancestors' wisdom must not be abandoned. Your ideas are dangerous, and traditional Chinese medicine will eventually be destroyed because of people like you. Faced with these criticisms, Yi Tianxi remained unfazed. A certain great man once said, Practice is the sole criterion of truth. How can you say I'm illogical without actual practice? What sense does that make? The people looked at each other in confusion. Left Jingjing gritted her teeth and said, Humph, you talk about practice, then let's put it into practice. Let's see if the Xianbing fruit kernel works. Does anyone have cold toxins in their body? Rheumatism will also do. Who wants to be the test subject? A slightly chubby middle-aged man immediately raised his hand and said, I will. The middle-aged man then said to everyone, I have been suffering from rheumatism for a long time, and it used to limit my movement. I came here today specifically to buy medicinal herbs. I am willing to be the test subject, is that okay? Yi Tianxi glanced at the middle-aged man and noticed that his fingers and wrists were slightly swollen, indeed showing signs of long-term rheumatism, and not feigned. Left Jingjing stepped forward to examine and confirmed that the man was suffering from quite severe rheumatism. No problem, it's you. Let's begin. She had already made up her mind to make Yi Tianxi take back his previous arrogant remarks and teach him a lesson. Yi Tianxi had the middle-aged man sit in a chair. He then ground the Xianbing fruit kernel into powder, added it to a cup of water, stirred it evenly, and handed it to the middle-aged man, saying, Drink it. Ah? Is that all? The middle-aged man said somewhat surprised. For many years, Yi Tianxi has tirelessly tried various Chinese herbal medicines to treat rheumatism and bone diseases. Each treatment was so complicated and cumbersome, leaving him feeling extremely frustrated. However, when he used this simple method, it seemed rushed. Is this rush reliable? Despite his doubts, driven by the desire to cure rheumatism and bone diseases, he resolutely decided to drink the cup of water without hesitation. Gulp. After drinking it, Zhu Jingjing hurriedly asked, How do you feel? I don't feel anything, just a hint of bitterness. The middle-aged man answered truthfully. However, just as those words left his lips, he suddenly felt a chill running through his body. His face quickly turned pale, lips turning purple, murmuring, So cold, my bones ache. It feels like my whole body is emitting a coolness. This sudden change shocked everyone present. Oh no, this must be the cold nature of the Xianbing fruit kernel causing trouble, exacerbating the condition. When I said it had no effect before, it wasn't because I didn't believe, but I was worried it would worsen the condition. Zhu Jingjing's face changed, urging the middle-aged man to spit out the water he drank so they could immediately use acupuncture to alleviate the pain. Wait. Yi Tianxi suddenly spoke up to stop her. Zhu Jingjing frowned. Why are you stopping me? Continuing will only worsen the condition, possibly even endangering his life. 
Yi Tianxi calmly said, If something goes wrong, I'll take responsibility, don't worry. You. Zhu Jingjing was so angry she trembled, but was stopped by Zhu Shanshue. Jingjing, listen to what young master Yi says, let's observe a little longer. With me here, there won't be any danger to life. Zhu Shanshue smiled bitterly, shaking his head, not saying much, his eyes always fixed on the trembling middle-aged man. After more than two minutes of trembling, the middle-aged man's condition began to change. His pale face gradually eased, becoming rosy, his lips returning to normal color, and even the swollen joints slowly subsided. The middle-aged man excitedly said, Phew! It's so hot. My whole body feels so hot. Wait, my arms, shoulders, they don't hurt anymore. No pain at all. In his excitement, he stood up and joyfully jumped a few times. My rheumatism and bone disease is cured. This scene left everyone present wide-eyed. It's so miraculous. The middle-aged man immediately knelt on the ground, tears welling up in his eyes, gratefully saying, Miracle doctor! You cured my rheumatism and bone disease. You're truly a lifesaver. I must kowtow to you. Yi Tianxi quickly helped him up. There's no need for that. It's just a small effort. No need to be polite. Besides, I didn't even use my medicinal materials, just exerted a little effort. After that, he turned to Zhu Jingjing, Zhu Shanshue, and the others from the Medicine King Valley, asking calmly, Is there anything else to discuss about this competition? Upon hearing this news, Zhu Jingjing and the other apprentices were extremely surprised. Who would have thought that the kernel of Xian ice fruit would have such a miraculous effect in treating rheumatism and bone diseases? Such news was truly unheard of. However, what surprised them even more was when Zhu Shanshue suddenly knelt down and bowed deeply to Yi Tianxi, tears almost welling up in his eyes. He said excitedly, Master Yi, I deeply admire and respect your medical skills. If you don't mind, please accept me as your apprentice. This scene shocked everyone present once again. The legendary medicine king of Jiangnan actually wanted to become a disciple of Yi Tianxi? This news was simply earth-shattering. Zhu Jingjing hurriedly intervened. Grandfather, please think twice. He only won against you by chance once. He is young, and you are of high status. It's really not necessary. Zhu Shanshue, however. Rural? Master Zhu is a kind-hearted man who is passionate about medicine, and the younger generation respects him greatly. In the future, they can learn from each other about medicine without the formality of apprenticeship, as neither party is interested in that. Zhu Shanshue was initially feeling a bit down, but upon hearing the opportunity to exchange medical knowledge, he became excited and eagerly nodded in agreement. Today, Dr. Yi has earned Zhu Shanshue's approval and the nine fragrance fruit and blue leaf bauhinia he needed were promptly brought to him by Zhu Jingjing. However, Zhu Jingjing reluctantly handed over the medicinal herbs to Dr. Yi. She had initially wanted to challenge Yi Tianza but was unexpectedly defeated, leaving the renowned medical genius feeling disheartened. After a moment, Zhu Jingjing brought the nine fragrance fruit and blue leaf bauhinia to Yi Tianza, packed in a box, and handed it to him. Zhu Shanshue reprimanded, Jingjing. Be polite to Dr. Yi and watch your words. Zhu Jingjing rolled her eyes, while Yi Tianza thanked Master Zhu for his generosity and promised to remember this kindness. However, at that moment, a cold voice from outside demanded that Yi Tianza put down the nine fragrance fruit and blue leaf bauhinia. Everyone turned to see two people entering the room. The leader was a middle-aged man in his forties, wearing a blue Taoist robe exuding a strong aura that made everyone feel pressured. Following him was a burly man who looked fierce. Zhu Shanshue's expression turned uneasy upon seeing them and asked why they had come. The middle-aged man sarcastically remarked that their presence was crucial for the survival of the Valley of the Medicine King. Zhu Shanshue's face darkened, showing some awkwardness. Zhu Jingjing clenched her fists, trying to defend the dignity of the Valley of the Medicine King. The middle-aged man mocked, Jingjing, your eloquence is still impressive. How about considering my previous proposal? Zhu Jingjing coldly replied, Dream on. The middle-aged man disregarded her response and demanded to take away five precious medicinal herbs, leaving Zhu Shanshue no choice but to comply. Yi Tianzi squinted, 
feeling puzzled about the self-important middle-aged man and the entanglement between them and Zwishan Shue. Zwishan Shue furrowed his brows, appearing somewhat uneasy. Taoist Hong demanded precious medicinal materials from Master Zwishan in advance, leaving Master Zwishan puzzled. Impatiently, Taoist Hong replied, We don't need to explain our affairs at Yuanyang Valley to you. With a stern attitude, he demanded that Master Zwishan immediately hand over the required medicinal materials, warning of dire consequences if he refused. Feeling bitter and hesitant, Master Zwishan said, I promise to give you five types of medicinal materials, but the nine fragrance fruit and blue leaf wisteria have already been given to the healer Yi. I can offer two other precious medicinal materials instead. Take them and leave. Suddenly, Taoist Hong kicked Master Zwishan in the abdomen, causing him to stagger back and eventually fall to the ground. His face darkening, Taoist Hong said, Old man, do you still want to haggle with me? If you don't hand over these two types of medicinal materials today, I will ruthlessly destroy your Medicine King Valley. Think it over. The scene fell silent all of a sudden, and everyone was shocked by this unexpected situation. Who on earth is this person? How dare he be so arrogant and brazen? How dare he openly assault Master Zwa in broad daylight? Sure. Keep your voice down. I heard that Daoist Hong is a disciple of the inner sect of Yuanyang Valley. Definitely not someone we can provoke. Yuanyang Valley? Never heard of it. What kind of place is that? Not quite sure, but I heard it has a very high reputation throughout the entire Tianan province. Even the four major families in the provincial capital have to show some respect to it. Murmured the onlookers in the crowd. The apprentices around hurriedly helped up to Shan Shue. Master, are you okay? Master, this guy is too much. Zhu Jingjing clenched her fists tightly, with sparks of anger flashing in her eyes. She stared at Daoist Hong, gritting her teeth and saying, Stinky Daoist, you're asking for trouble. Daoist Hong disdainfully said, Jingjing, do you want to fight? Ah. Uh. Although you are young and have perfect martial arts strength, as an early stage master, I can crush you with just one hand. You are no match for me at all. Even if I can't beat you, I will never give up. Zhu Jingjing was so angry that she was about to rush forward, but was stopped by Zhu Shanshui's shout, Jingjing, don't be impulsive. Grandpa, be quiet. Zhu Shanshui sternly reprimanded. He walked up, enduring the pain in his abdomen, and said with clasped hands, Daoist Hong, the nine fragrance fruit and blue leaf wisteria are what the old man promised to give away. Please don't continue to make things difficult. If you agree, the old man is willing to send two more precious medicinal materials. Hee <laughs> hee. Old man. At this time, you are still bargaining with me? Daoist Hong directly waved a palm. If this palm hits a person of Zwishan Shui's age, the consequences would be unimaginable. Grandpa. Zhu Jingjing anxiously shouted, trying to stop but it was too late. She watched as the palm was about to fall. Stop. Suddenly someone shouted. Huh. Daoist Hong frowned slightly and looked closely, only to see a handsome young man with a blue earring in his left ear standing there, slowly walking out. It's Zhu Garuji. He first cast a glance at Zhu Jingjing and said charmingly, Don't worry. Leave it to Big Brother next. With me here. The Medicine King Valley will not be bullied. He turned to face Daoist Hong, hands in his pockets, casually said, Hey, stinky Daoist, has no one ever told you that you are too arrogant? As he spoke, Zhu Garuji even slightly raised his chin. At this moment, he felt as if his soul was about to ascend. This confident and pretentious feeling, he believed would leave a deep impression on Zhu Jingjing. Daoist Haohong's face darkened. Damn it. How do you point fingers at me? Who are you after all? Zhuga Ruji coldly said, I am the second young master of the Zhuga family in Tianbei province. Jingjing is the woman I have taken a liking to. Her grandfather will be my grandfather in the future. I will not allow them to be bullied in any way. The Zhuga family of Tianbei province? Daoist Hahong's face slightly changed. That is the top family in Tianbei province much stronger than the four major families in the provincial capital of Tianan province. This is a bit troublesome now. Daoist Hong fell silent, not saying a word. Zhuga, with a cold sneer, pointed outside the door, firmly indicating the other party to leave immediately. He warned mercilessly, 
If you dare to set foot in the Medicine King Valley again, don't blame him for being impolite. Taoist Hong smiled and explained, Young Master Zhuga, you misunderstood. We are not bullying others. On the contrary, if we stop visiting the Medicine King Valley, Old Manswa will feel disappointed. Zhuga looked puzzled and asked, Old Manswa asked you to come? That's really unbelievable. Onlookers also expressed doubts. Old Manswa is not someone to be bullied. Why would he ask you to bully him? Exactly, forcibly demanding herbs and resorting to violence. It's outrageous. There must be a reasonable explanation, or we will call the police. Daoist Hong remained calm and said with a smile, If you want an explanation, let old man's was speak for himself, and everyone can judge for themselves. This statement caught everyone's attention, and they all turned to Zwishanshue. Zwishanshue's eyes fluctuated slightly, revealing a complex and helpless expression. He sighed and said, At this point, I can't hide it anymore. So, Zwishanshue revealed to everyone a little-known secret. It turns out that the Medicine King Valley's abundant production of herbs, rapid growth, and remarkable effects are all thanks to its unique feng shui advantage. Legend has it that this place gathers the spiritual energy of heaven and earth, making it an excellent place for herb growth. Generations of healers have planted herbs here, harvesting rare treasures like hundred-year snow ginseng and several hundred-year wild ginseng. However, five years ago, one night, all the herbs in the Medicine King Valley withered completely, lifeless, for unknown reasons. The newly planted herbs were also almost all affected, with poor effects even inferior to ordinary herbs on the market. This event caused a great stir within the Medicine King Valley, and despite Wishanshue's attempts to conceal it, the valley was facing an unprecedented crisis. After listening to this, Zhuga asked in confusion, So why does everything seem normal now? Daoist Helen coldly explained with a smile, This is thanks to the help of our Yuanung Valley. He continued, Our ancestors have a deep connection with the Medicine King Valley. When they learned of this, my father personally came to help. He is a master of feng shui formations, discovered the problem with the Medicine King Valley's feng shui, and improved it, allowing the valley to regain its vitality. Although the feng shui effect is somewhat inferior, it can still be considered passable. Yuan Yang Valley has shown such deep gratitude, only asking for some precious herbs as a return in the end. Is that wrong? Everyone suddenly realized. So that's the whole story. According to this explanation, it's understandable for Yuan Yang Valley to request some rare herbs from Medicine King Valley in return for their kindness. However, Zhu Jingjing immediately retorted, Humph, it sounds so nice. Initially, my grandfather agreed and met the requirements for the precious herbs your Yuan Yang Valley needed. But in less than half a year, your master came again asking for even rarer and more precious herbs, and out of gratitude, my grandfather agreed once more. Thinking it would end there, we didn't expect your master to be insatiable, coming every few days to demand more, with increasingly harsh and extensive requirements. If not given, he would threaten to destroy the improved feng shui formation. Helpless, my grandfather had to agree to let people from Yuan Yang Valley come every quarter to offer precious herbs. If we didn't provide the required herbs, we would be humiliated, scolded, and even physically assaulted, including the apprentices. For a whole five years, your Yuan Yang Valley treated Medicine King Valley as a freely available garden, almost draining everything we had accumulated over a thousand years. Isn't this your fault? Tears streamed down with Jingjing's face, her lips trembling slightly. The injustice in her heart was evident at this moment. Over the past five years, she had endured so much hardship and injustice. The disciples of the Medicine King Valley behind her were all burning with anger, their eyes staring angrily at the crowd demanding things. Onlookers were whispering and criticizing the unreasonable demands of the Yuanyang Valley, even resorting to violence, completely disregarding righteousness. Such behavior was no different from robbery. No wonder Miss Jingjing was burning with anger. She finally understood now. Yi Tianzi nodded slightly, finally understanding the ins and outs of the matter. He turned to look at the indignant Wu Xingya. Suddenly, he remembered that Wu Xingya had mentioned some unspeakable things happening in the Medicine King Valley in recent years when they first met. Yi Tianzi asked softly, 
Director Wu, did you know about this matter a long time ago? Wu Xingye sighed, yes, unfortunately, my strength is limited. I am not good at formations and feng shui, so I can't provide much help. I can only watch the Medicine King Valley be humiliated. Han Ruoyun sneered. With this kind of behavior, they still have the nerve to call themselves cultivators, really losing face. Yi Tianzi narrowed his eyes slightly, feeling emotional. Daoist He Hong's face turned iron blue. He said coldly, Old mans will promise to provide us with precious herbs from the Yuanyang Valley. What's wrong with us coming to ask for them? Moreover, if it weren't for my master's help back then, the Medicine King Valley would have been destroyed long ago. They don't know how to be grateful, and now they want to use righteousness to coerce us. Daoist He Hong's eyes flashed with a cold light as he stared at Zhuo Shanshue. Old man, do you believe that I will go back and report to my master? Ask him to revoke the improved feng shui of the Medicine King Valley? Let your Medicine King Valley's reputation be ruined and completely destroyed. Zhuo Shui's face turned pale, and he hurriedly pleaded, Daoist He Hong, please calm down. It's all my mismanagement. Please, I beg you not to report to Daoist Yunlong. If everything that the Medicine King Valley has worked hard for generations is ruined, it's more painful than death. I can't bear it. Daoist He Hong smirked, all right, then kneel down in front of everyone, apologize, and promise to supply the herbs needed by our Yuanyang Valley once a month. Regardless of the quantity, it must be on time. At the same time, half of the Medicine King Valley's future herb sales will belong to me. How about that? The room was filled with a deafening silence. Zhuo Shan Shui's body swayed, almost falling down. They had already asked for herbs in a high-profile manner before. And now they were asking for even more. It was simply insatiable. I, I. Zhuo Shan Shui's voice trembled. Zhuo Jingjing, with tears in her eyes, said angrily, Grandfather, you must not agree to such conditions. The more you give in to them, the more unrestrained they become. Daoist He Hong said in a deep voice, Zhuo Jingjing, this is not a place for you to interrupt. Be quiet. Zhuo Jingjing resolutely stepped forward, staring straight at him. I have lived in the Medicine King Valley since I was a child. This is my home. Why should my right to speak be taken away? The one who should really be quiet is this greedy villain. From today on, we, the Medicine King Valley, will never be manipulated by anyone again. These words echoed in the air. The other apprentices were excited and echoed in agreement with Jingjing's words. We at the Valley of Medicine King will no longer work for you for free. We've had enough of these weak days. Yuanyang Valley has gone too far. You all need to get out immediately. Daoist Ha Hong's eyes flashed with a stern light. A bunch of reckless fools. Today, I must give you a warning before you can experience my power. He suddenly exploded, kicking fiercely towards Zhuo Jingjing. Swish! The speed of this kick was astonishing. Zhuo Jingjing quickly crossed her hands to block. Although there is only one realm difference between a complete warrior and a master, this difference is not to be underestimated. Bang! Accompanied by a dull impact sound, Zhuo Jingjing flew out backwards. Crashing sounds. The medicine cabinet behind her was knocked down. Herbs scattered all over the floor. Puff! Zhuo Jingjing felt a sweet sensation in her throat, spat out a mouthful of blood, and was in intense pain all over. Jingjing! Sister Jingjing! Zhuo Shanshue and the apprentices all surrounded her, their faces full of worry and anger. Daoist Hong sneered and said, Humph! I used to overlook your actions because of your beauty, but today you have crossed my bottom line. Next time you dare to resist, I will make you wish you were dead. Shut up. Suddenly, a roar interrupted him. He turned around, only to see Zhugaruji's fist coming towards him. Oh no. Daoist Ha Hong's face changed color. This fist contained the power of the mid-stage master, and if hit, he would definitely be injured. Swish. A tall figure suddenly stood between the two. Bang. Zhugaruji's fist did not hit Daoist Hong, but hit the chest of a strong man. Huh. Zhugaruji stared ahead. The strong man standing in front of him was brought by Daoist Hong, tall and mighty like a small iron tower. More importantly, Zhugaruji's fist hit his chest, 
But the man remained unfazed, not even taking a step back. Roar! The strong man took a deep breath, shouted loudly, and even pushed Juga Ruji back two or three steps. Numb arms! A strong man in the late stage master realm? Juga Ruji's eyes showed a look of astonishment. This person's strength was two small realms higher than his. Daoist Hong smiled triumphantly and said, Zhuge second young master, you are no match for Zhong Tao at all. I advise you not to get involved in this matter. Who is Zhong Tao? Zhuge Ruji frowned, looking puzzled. Zhu Jingjing stood up, wiped the blood from the corner of her mouth and said, This Zhong Tao was just a nameless warrior in Tianan province in the early years, with only the strength of a late stage warrior. But three years ago, his strength suddenly skyrocketed, not only breaking through to the master level, but also ranking 97th in the Dragon Ranking Tournament a few months ago. I don't know why he would help you on Yang Valley. It seems we've really encountered a master today. Zhuge Ruji sighed. Tianan Province and Tianbei Province are adjacent, with similar population and economic development levels, and even the strength of martial arts experts is not much different. In the ranking of top martial artists in Tianan Province, ranked 97th, he is definitely a force to be reckoned with even in Tianbei province. Luo Jingjing, biting her lip, said firmly, Thank you for standing up for me. But this is not your concern. There is no need for you to intervene anymore. We will handle the matter with the Medicine King Valley ourselves. Zhuge Rue, however, showed a hint of a hearty smile. He said, Ha ha, Jingjing, do you think of me as a coward? If I don't even have the courage to protect you, then what right do I have to be your husband? He took a step forward, took off the earring from his left ear, and put it in his pocket. At this moment, his face no longer showed its usual frivolousness, but instead an unprecedented seriousness and determination. He coldly said, If you want to lay a hand on my woman, you'll have to step over my dead body first. Come on, let's see who the real tough guy is. Upon hearing Zhuge's wise words, Zhu Jingjing was struck with a sense of awe, realizing for the first time his hidden wisdom. However, in the next moment, Zhuge turned around with a mischievous smile and said, Hey, am I handsome now? Are you falling for me? Zhu Jingjing was speechless. If the situation was not urgent, she would have punched him right there. Daoist Hong squinted his eyes, coldly observing the Zhuge family. Although the Zhuge family held great power in Tianbei province, they were restricted in Yuanyang Valley. Since the Zhuge brothers wanted to intrude, they shouldn't blame them for being unwelcoming. Zhong Tao, attack, he ordered. Zhong Tao responded in a deep voice, leaping forward with a massive fist aimed at Zhuge Rueji. The punch generated a strong wind, shaking the air around them. Zhuge Rueji couldn't afford to be careless. He infused power into his right foot and kicked towards Zhong Tao's fist. Lower body strength surpassed the upper body, and he thought he could block the punch, but unexpectedly, Zhong Tao's fist was unstoppable like a cannonball. With a bang, Zhuge Rueji was punched back, crashing into a frame with a clattering sound. But in the next moment, Zhuge Rueji stood up, swiftly charging towards Zhong Tao, throwing a hook punch at his chin. The speed was fast, but not fast enough. Zhong Tao remained expressionless raising his thick right hand to grab Zhuge Rueji. However, in the next moment, Zhuge Rueji's figure suddenly disappeared. Zhong Tao's pupil shrank, and Daoist Helm warned, Be careful. Zhong Tao immediately became alert, turning around to see Zhuge Rueji by his side, leaping from above to attack, wielding a weapon. A pair of nunchucks with a pink bow in the middle. This unique style was truly imaginative. Bring it on. While Zhong Tao was still in a daze, Zhuge Rueji swung the nunchucks towards his head. With the strength of an early master, combined with the nunchucks, this strike could tear through granite. However, the nunchucks hit Zhong Tao's head, leaving only a faint red mark, not even a drop of blood. Zhong Tao sneered, good speed, but this strength is barely tickling me. Zhuge Rueji's pupils constricted as he expected his full force blow to cause more damage. Could it be that the opponent's physical resilience was even better than a typical late-stage master? Zhong Tao shouted, Next, you'll experience my power. He infused power, 
preparing to unleash an Iron Mountain charge. Zhuga, known for his wisdom, could not eschew the sudden attack and suffered it painfully. Blood gushed out in red, and his body was like a kite with a broken string, flying weakly backwards, finally crashing into the wall of the medicinal food room with a loud bang. The medical books on the wall were shaken and scattered everywhere. Zhuga, struggling, spat out a mouthful of blood, gasping for breath, his face pale, clearly seriously injured. Zhuo Jingjing anxiously shouted, Ruiji, how are you? She ran to Zhuga's side, full of worry and anxiety. Zhuga reluctantly squeezed out a smile, but the pain from the wound was unbearable. Seeing this scene, Zhuo Jingjing's eyes turned red, and with a trembling voice, she said, Fool, everyone says this has nothing to do with you. Why didn't you listen to advice? Zhuga smiled bitterly and said, If I can't even protect my own woman, what kind of man am I? It's not a big deal, it's just death. Zhuo Jingjing quickly covered Zhuga's mouth with her hand, saying, Don't say such things, and who said I'm your woman? Gross. Despite the complaints, the shyness on her face couldn't be concealed. Suddenly, a voice broke the silence. Daoist Helong sneered, I just thought about it carefully. I heard that the second young master of the Zhuga family in Tianbe province has a low status in the family. A true waste of a young master? Is that Zhuga Rueji? It seems so. Can you, Zhuo Jingjing, really look up to this kind of trash? Zhuo Jingjing stood up and said seriously, even if Zhuga Rueji is trash, he's still a hundred times better than a sneaky scoundrel like you. Zhuga Rueji asked in confusion, are you praising me or mocking me? Daoist Ha Hong's face darkened, saying, let's see, aside from this waste, what else do you have? Zhong Tao stepped forward as commanded, walking towards Zhuge Ruiji. Suddenly, Zhuo Shan Shui stood in front of Zhong Tao, saying, Wait? Daoist Hong sneered, Old man Zhuo, you want to join in too? An old man like you. A slap could send you to meet the king of hell. Zhuo Shan Shui's eyes flickered with anger and sorrow, as if he had aged several years in an instant. He took a deep breath and said, I agree to your conditions, please stop. Everyone was surprised, with regrets, helplessness, and sympathy. Zhuo Shan Shui's decision was undoubtedly the most painful choice in his heart. Daoist Ha Hong's eyes lit up, joyfully saying, Really? Then promise to give the two medicinal herbs to Dr. Yi. Zhuo Shan Shui nodded, I have one request. Let Dr. Yi take away these two medicinal herbs, is that okay? Daoist Hong smiled smugly and looked at Yi Tianxi, saying, Kid, for the sake of old man Zhuo, you can take away these two medicinal herbs. Aren't you going to thank me? The sudden change shocked everyone present. The famous Dr. Yi in front of him looked like he would express thanks for sure. However, what he didn't expect was that Yi Tianzi, with one hand in his pocket and the other picking his ear with his pinky finger, responded coldly, Who do you think you are? Do you even deserve my gratitude? Suddenly, a roar from Yi Tianzi shattered the previously calm atmosphere, like a thunderclap exploding on the scene. Daoist He Hong was stunned by his words, his arrogance disappearing in an instant. He couldn't believe his ears. How could someone dare to retort with such vulgar language? With a twitch at the corner of his eye, Daoist He Hong coldly questioned, Kid, do you even know what you're saying? Yi Tianzi sneered disdainfully, a hint of mockery playing at the corner of his mouth and contemptuously replied, Don't point your big nostrils at me. Your nose hairs are almost touching the ground. It's really nauseating. Han Ruyin couldn't help but laugh. Ha ha, this kid is so funny. Don't say such things in a serious occasion like this. Although Daoist He Hong's large nostrils were indeed a sensitive spot for him, few people dared to speak so bluntly, leaving him feeling both embarrassed and indignant. Pointing at Yi Tianzi, his voice filled with threat, he said, Give me ten seconds, kneel down and apologize immediately, hand over the woman next to you to serve me for three days and nights. Otherwise, you will regret angering the Yuanyang Valley. However, Yi Tianzi stood with his hands behind his back, indifferently replying, In my eyes, you are just a self-righteous little man. If you have the courage, let me see how formidable you really are. Daoist He Hong was burning with anger, 
his eyes flashing with rage and frustration. Just as he was about to take action against Yi Tianzi, he was further provoked by Yi Tianzi's successive retorts. Zhong Tao wanted to intervene, but Daoist He Hong stopped him, coldly saying, Just an ignorant and reckless guy. Today, I will personally make him taste the price of provocation. With a roar, Daoist He Hong turned into a shadow and pounced towards Yi Tianzi. The faces of Zhu Shan Shue and others changed drastically, wanting to stop it, but it was already too late. Daoist He Hong's palm struck directly at Yi Tianzi's chest with a loud bang, but to everyone's surprise, Yi Tianzi remained unharmed, standing in place as if nothing had happened. This scene left everyone present dumbfounded, especially Zhu Jingjing, who had thought Yi Tianzi was just an ordinary person, not expecting him to easily withstand Daoist He Hong's attack. Yi Tianzi said lightly, Everyone saw it. You hit me first. Now it's my turn to strike back. He casually raised his palm and slowly brought it down, appearing to move very slowly. However, in that instant, Daoist Hong seemed to be trapped in an inescapable space, completely losing control of his body, unable to dodge at all. Smack! The slap landed firmly on his cheek, the immense force causing him to spin several times before coming to a stop. His right cheek swelled up high, blood flowing from the corner of his mouth. You brat, how dare you hit me? Even my master has never treated me like this, I'll kill you. Daoist Heung glared angrily, preparing to punch Yi Tianxi in the face, only to be easily blocked. Yi Tianxi sarcastically said, Is this what you call a terrifying moment? It's really terrifying, I'm so scared. Daoist Ha Hong's chest heaved almost exploding with anger. He had never experienced such humiliation before. Han Ruiyun, on the side, coquettishly said, Shout Sisi, when you slapped this guy earlier. His Taoist robe fluttered in a funny way. I want to see it again, can I? Yi Tianxi indulgently smiled and said, Since you like it, I'll indulge you. Watch closely. With that, he delivered another slap. Smack. Ah. Daoist Heung let out a cry of pain, his body uncontrollably spinning in place. Before he could stop, Yi Tianxi delivered another slap. Daoist Ha Hong's spinning speed increased, and his blue Daoist robe swayed with the rotation, like an elegant dancing quail, comical and entertaining. This scene left the onlookers dumbfounded, completely flabbergasted. This guy is amazing, to display such skills while showing affection. Zhu Gu Rue Ji exclaimed in admiration. Zhu Jingjing tugged at the corner of her mouth, although she said, No one has the ability to learn anything. The scene indeed made the girls happy. P please, please don't hit me anymore. Daoist Hong begged intermittently as he spun. However, Yi Tianxi turned a deaf ear, gently asking Han Ruayun, How does it feel? Do you need a change of position? Han Ruayun shook her head and said, Forget it. It's getting a little greasy from watching too long. It's disgusting. Yi Tianxi lowered his hand, and Daoist Ha Hong's body lost control, spinning directly out of place, about to collide with the wall. At that moment, Zhong Tao suddenly appeared, catching Daoist Hong. Are you okay? Zhong Tao quickly asked. Before Daoist Hong could respond, he suddenly felt dizzy, uncontrollably vomiting the thick and nauseating vomit splattering all over Zhong Tao, mixed with red blood. Even Daoist Ha Hong's own nostrils spewed out many disgusting things. Damn it! Zhong Tao's face turned pale, almost vomiting. The others present also wrinkled their noses, looking disgusted. At the same time, the shock towards Yi Tianxi deepened in everyone's hearts. No one had expected that this young man not only excelled in medical skills, but also possessed such formidable martial arts skills. Where did this arrogant guy come from? How come we've never heard of him before? Master Hong struggled to stand up. At this moment, he felt dizzy and nauseous, with anger burning in his chest like a raging fire. This guy with the surname Yi had humiliated him today, and he was determined to regain his dignity. Roaring, he said, Today, you will pay the price. Zhong Tao, come out. Let him see how powerful we are. Gulu. Daozhang He Hong couldn't help but spit out on the ground again. This time, even two teeth came out with it. It was obvious that Yi Tianxi's consecutive slaps made him lose his teeth. Hurry up, 
Don't just stand there. Move quickly. Dao Chang Hong urged angrily. Got it. Zhong Tao took a deep breath, clenched his fists, and took two steps forward. With a burly figure, he exuded a powerful martial arts aura, making the whole medicinal food hall quiet and oppressive. Under his aura, everyone couldn't help but feel nervous. Zhu Jingjing nervously swallowed her saliva. Is this the oppressive force of a master in the later stage? It's too terrifying. Zhu Rue's face became serious. At this moment, the momentum emitted by Zhong Tao was much stronger than when he fought against him before. Obviously, he was now serious. Zhuga Rue's heart tightened and quickly reminded, Brother, this guy is not ordinary, especially his defense is surprisingly strong. You have to be careful. Yi Tianxi smiled faintly, Don't worry in my opinion. His defense is as fragile as paper. It will break with a light touch. Hearing this, everyone couldn't help but secretly mock. Defense like paper? Is this Yi Tianxi really capable or just bluffing? Be careful not to suffer a big loss. Just as everyone was doubtful, Zhong Tao had already rushed up. He was like a raging bull. His footsteps on the ground made a rumbling sound, as if he could smash everything in front of him. Facing Zhong Tao's attack, Yi Tianxi did not dodge, but instead went straight to meet him. Oomph! Seeking death. Zhong Tao roared and fiercely threw out a huge fist, aiming directly at Yi Tianxi's face, who, a full force attack of a martial artist in the later stage, already exceeded a thousand pounds. With this punch, even an iron plate would be dented. However, when his fist was only 10 centimeters away from Yi Tianxi's face, it stopped in midair and couldn't move forward an inch. Huh. Zhong Tao raised his eyebrows, then stared ahead. At this look, he almost popped his eyeballs out. Just saw Yi Tianxi just raised his right index finger, directly blocking this punch. Not even the slightest bend in his finger. How is this possible? Zhong Tao's whole body's hair stood up, and his scalp tingled. Just with one finger, he could block his full force attack, such a scene. He had never seen in decades of practicing martial arts. Ah! Zhong Tao roared stomping hard, but found that no matter how much force he used, he couldn't move forward a millimeter. Yi Tianxi said disappointedly, a top 100 master on the dragon list, is this your level? Hearing this, Dao Chang Hong shouted discontentedly, Zhong Tao, it's already this time, and you're still wasting time with others? Focus. Zhong Tao was almost about to cry. I'm already focused, when did I waste time? If you have the ability, you go up, all right, you already went up, but you were still defeated in seconds. Despite the inner complaints, Zhong Tao could only face it helplessly. Zhong Tao was easily stopped and mocked by someone, which made him feel angry and humiliated. Without hesitation, he launched a counterattack. Letting out a deafening roar, he raised his left hand high and fiercely slapped towards Yi Tianxi's forehead. The wind from his palm whistled as if thunder was rumbling. His palm's strength was unstoppable, as if it could shatter everything. Yi Tianxi remained unfazed, casually lifting his left hand and raising his middle finger to meet the slap accurately. Zhong Tao coldly snorted with full confidence. After years of martial arts training, his hands were as hard as rocks, even more powerful than the legendary iron sand palm. He believed this strike would crush Yi Tianxi's middle finger. However, when Zhong Tao's palm collided with Yi Tianxi's middle finger, his anticipation did not come true. Yi Tianxi's middle finger was like a sharp dagger, effortlessly piercing through Zhong Tao's palm. Blood splattered. The scene was extremely brutal. Zhong Tao let out a scream of agony, unbearable pain. Yi Tianxi sneered, arrogant, and then pulled Zhong Tao towards him, causing Zhong Tao to arch his body and bow his head. With a light laugh, Yi Tianxi curved his right index finger and then fiercely struck Zhong Tao's head. With a loud bang, Zhong Tao was sent flying backward, as if being blown up by a bomb. His body crashed into Daoist Hong, and they slid for over 10 meters before stopping. Zhong Tao rolled on the ground, holding his head, letting out a heart-wrenching scream. At this moment, his head was sunken, blood gushing out, a terrifying sight. 
The onlookers were stunned and shocked. Yi Tianxi's incredible strength was beyond belief. Zhu Jingjing and Zhu Gu Ruiji were even more astonished. They knew the terrifying strength of a grandmaster in the later stage, but seeing Yi Tianxi defeat Zhong Tao so easily left them extremely shocked. Yi Tianxi's immense strength left everyone feeling incredibly shocked and awed. Yi Tianxi felt deep doubts about the strength of that guy, as if he couldn't fully grasp it. Has he reached the pinnacle of Grandmaster? Or has he already touched the legendary realm of War God? However, Yi Tianxi was indifferent, looking relaxed. With his hands in his pockets, he walked towards the door as if nothing mattered. When will the terrifying moment of Yuanyang Valley come? Yi Tianxi sneered and shouted towards the door. Do we have to wait forever? If you don't show it to me now, I'm afraid there will be no chance in the future. He Hong, the Taoist priest, had long been scared to the point of trembling all over, his face pale. He kept backing away, sweating coldly, but still unwilling to show weakness, threatening, You? Dare to come closer. My master will definitely take your life. This is not a threat, because he is in Jiangnan City right now. Yi Tianxi looked down on him from a high position. Oh, who is your master? He Hong Daochong couldn't hide his pride and threat. My master is Yunlong Daochong, not someone like you can provoke. Be smart and let me go. Yunlong Daochong, is he powerful? Yi Tianxi raised an eyebrow slightly, indicating that he had never heard of this person before. Zhu Jingjing stepped forward and explained. Yunlong Daochang is one of the elders of Yuanyang Valley, with high status and great power. Not only is he strong, but he is also proficient in Feng Shui formations and is quite famous in Tiannan province. She frowned and asked He Hong Daochang, What is he doing here? In recent years, He Hong Daochang has been sent to threaten and demand medicinal materials from Yuanyang Valley. Yunlong Daochang has always stayed inside Yuanyang Valley and rarely goes out. I don't understand why this old man suddenly came to Jiangnan City? He Hong Daochang arrogantly said. Why should my master report to you on what he does? Who are you to deserve to know? He he. Ye Tianji called dissimilet. Without any hesitation, he took a step forward and directly stepped on He Hong Daochang's knee. Crack a crisp sound. He Hong Daochang's right knee instantly twisted and deformed, completely broken. Damn it. Ah. He Hong Daochang let out a hysterical scream, veins popping on his forehead, his eyes almost bulging out. He didn't expect that just a little tough talk would make Yi Tianxi show no mercy. Is there no compassion at all? Yi Tianxi coldly said, Answer me. He Hong Daochang felt his scalp numb. A wise man submits to circumstances, he knew that he wouldn't be able to regain face today, so he had to compromise. My, my master received a request from his junior to come to Jiangnan City, saying he needed to deal with a tricky feng shui problem. So I and Zhong Tao came along. Coincidentally, my master was lacking a few medicinal herbs for alchemy recently, so we came specially. I really don't know anything else, truly. Who is your junior? Gong Sun. Gong Sun Dao Chong. Him. Yi Tianxi was speechless. That old guy doesn't have much skill. Most of his abilities are focused on deception. How can a senior brother like him be powerful? However, from this information, it is not difficult to infer that Yunlong Daochang came to solve the Feng Shui problem of the abandoned industrial park through Gongsun Daochang's connection. Yi Tianxi didn't care much about it because, besides him, no one else could solve the Feng Shui problem there. It's useless no matter who you bring in. He Hong Daochang said bitterly, I've said everything I should. Can I leave now? Yi Tianxi said indifferently, Oh? You came here to cause trouble, threaten, and bully, and now you want to leave it at that? He Hong Daochang nervously swallowed and asked tentatively, So, what do you mean? Get your people and leave. You are not allowed to set foot in Yaowang Valley in the future, nor can you come here to demand medicinal materials. In other words, Yaowang Valley doesn't owe Yuanyang Valley anything anymore. Can you remember that? I, this? He Hong Daochang's lips trembled, looking conflicted. This matter was decided by his master, so he didn't have the authority to agree. But under Yi Tianxi's pressure, he didn't dare to refuse directly. For a moment, he didn't know how to respond. Just as he was hesitating for a few seconds, not going to answer, huh? 
Yi Tianxi kicked He Hong Daochong's left leg again. With a snap, He Hong, the Taoist priest, screamed in agony as his leg bone shattered. Muscles twisted, and bone fragments seemed to burst out. He let out a piercing howl and groan, rolling in pain. Covered in the sticky substance he had just vomited, he looked extremely dirty and disheveled. Everyone present gasped in horror. At that moment, watching Yi Tianxi's figure, they seemed to see a demon crawling out of hell. Ruthless and decisive. What has Yi Tianxi experienced to cultivate such a resilient mentality? The people from the Medicine King Valley, such as Wu Shan Shue and Zhu Jingjing, felt a sense of relief. For years, He Hong, representing the Yuanyang Valley, had never stopped bullying them. Now, finally, he got what he deserved. This sense of satisfaction was refreshing. He Hong cried out in pain his voice trembling with tears as he pleaded, I promise, please, stop hitting me. Have I not agreed to your terms? However, deep down, he cursed and insulted Yi Tianxi. Although he compromised, he swore to report this to his master when he returned, vowing to make Yi Tianxi and the Medicine King Valley pay tenfold or a hundredfold, wishing them a fate worse than death. Yi Tianxi looked down at him coldly. Since you say so, he paused, then said coldly, then go to hell. With that, he kicked He Hong in the chest. He Hong's body flew out of the medicinal room, crashing heavily on the stone steps, rolling several times before coming to a stop. He spat out blood, his eyes filled with disbelief. Why? He Hong didn't understand why Yi Tianxi suddenly attacked him when he had agreed to the terms to let him go. Did this kid sense my curses on him? But how is that possible? There's no such thing as telepathy in this world. Yi Tianxi walked out slowly, indifferently saying, Wanna know why? He Hong made a struggling sound. Yi Tianxi smirked innocently, Hee hee, I won't tell you. Are you angry? He Hong's eyes widened, anger rising, and with a splutter, blood gushed out, and he fell to the ground. He died in disbelief. The onlookers watched in astonishment. Some even exclaimed, he's killed someone, call the police. Another person advised, stay calm. They are all martial arts masters. We can't intervene in this. Why did Yi Tianxi kill He Hong? Was he too cruel? He had already apologized and begged for mercy. So why such a ruthless act? To die without knowing the reason was truly tragic, and some briefly felt sympathy for He Hong. Not only that, even Zhu Jingjing and Zhuge Ruiji's eyelids twitched. Zhu Shan Shui trembled as he ran out of the medicinal room, looking at He Hong's lifeless body, his face as pale as paper, confirming his death. Left Shan Shui looked despairing, with a hint of helplessness and fear in his eyes. Yi Tianxi curiously asked, What's wrong? Why do you look so hopeless? Left Shan Shui said bitterly, Dr. Yi, you may not know that He Hong, the senior brother, is the most beloved disciple of Master Yunlong. If he is killed, it will surely anger Master Yunlong, and by then? Yi Tianxi raised his eyebrows and asked, Are you blaming me for implicating Medicine King Valley? Left Shan Shui quickly shook his head and said, How could that be? After all, you stood up for our Medicine King Valley, and we are grateful. I am mainly worried about your safety, they will definitely come to retaliate against you. Yi Tianxi listened calmly, smiled lightly, and said, Retaliate? Let them come. It's just a matter of one for one, two for a pair. Even if they want to destroy the entire Yuanyang Valley, it's not a difficult task. Yi Tianxi's words shocked everyone present. How casually he mentioned the entire Yuanyang Valley. This young man indeed has an imposing manner. Despite his extraordinary strength, it must be admitted that his confidence is a bit over the top. But now, with this, the retaliation from Yuanyang Valley may come at any time so it would be best to leave quickly and not get involved, or else there will be deep regret. After someone reminded them, the onlookers immediately realized that now was not the time to stand by and watch. They hurriedly left in fear, not daring to look back. Soon, everyone present disappeared without a trace. Zhu Shan Shui and Zhu Jingjing exchanged a glance, feeling troubled and conflicted. They did not expect Yi Tianxi to be so resolute. Zhu Shan Shui sighed. Since Divine Doctor Yi has said so, I can't persuade you anymore. No matter what happens in the future, 
our Medicine King Valley will support you, and we will not stand idly by. Zhuge Rue Ji also stepped forward and said, Although my family's influence in Tianan province is limited, if Brother Yi needs help, just ask, I will participate in today's matter and will not back down. Yi Tianxi smiled and nodded. He was impressed by Zhu Shan Shue and Zhuge Rue Ji. Since he chose to get involved in this matter, he naturally would not allow others to bear the responsibility for him. His gaze fell on Zhong Tao in the distance. By now, Zhong Tao had stopped the bleeding on his head, and the tattered cloth on his head made him look somewhat ridiculous. Yi Tianxi said lightly, You, take that guy's body back, tell them I killed him. If there's a problem, come find me at Villa One of Purple Gold Heavenly Palace anytime. I, Zhong Tao's lips trembled, his face pale, still in shock over He Hong Daochang's death. His responsibility was to protect He Hong Daochang, but now he watched He Hong Daochang die in front of him. How could he explain this? Seeing Zhong Tao hesitate, Yi Tianxi raised an eyebrow and said, What? Don't want to go back? I can send you on your way, keep you company? I didn't mean that, no, I'll go now, I'll listen to you. Zhong Tao hurriedly replied. Enduring the intense pain all over his body, he staggered down the mountain with He Hong Daochang's body on his shoulders, limping down the steps. In his heart, he wished he had a few more legs. Zhu Jingjing suddenly asked, You mentioned living in Villa One of Purple Gold Heavenly Palace just now. Isn't that the residence of the legendary Jiangnan War God? Are you the Jiangnan War God? This question surprised everyone in Medicine King Valley from top to bottom. Zhuge, along with others, watched Yi Tianxi attentively their eyes filled with admiration. Wow, is he the legendary Jiangnan war god? The one who once dominated the martial arts world in Jiangnan city? Rumor has it that he disappeared three and a half years ago, but to think he's still alive. Watching him effortlessly defeat He Hong Daochang and Zhong Tao, he truly deserves his reputation as a powerhouse. Not to mention his unparalleled medical skills, his modest and humble character is truly admirable. Zhuge, excitedly exclaimed, Ah, Jiangnan war god, you are simply my idol. Can I take a photo with you? Let me be your follower in the future. You are my forever big brother. Yi Tianxi couldn't help but feel speechless. Why do people always compare him to that Lin Feng? Does that guy he knocked down with a slap even deserve to be compared to him? He wanted to clarify to everyone, please don't misunderstand. I am just myself. I have no connection with Jiangnan war god. Everyone understood. Super experts like to keep a low profile and hide their true strength. Hihizhuga had a look of sudden realization and said, Sigh. If only I had enough strength, I would also like to pretend to be a big shot. Brother Yi, can you teach me if there's a chance? Zhu Jingjing also bowed to Yi Tianxi, looking embarrassed and admiring. Jiangnan war god. I'm really sorry for my previous behavior. Please don't take it to heart. As a martial arts master, I have always admired you. You represent the martial spirit of Jiangnan City. Since you disappeared three and a half years ago, I have been very discouraged. I didn't expect you to still be alive. Seeing you today is really exciting. Han Ruoyun walked over, hugged Yi Tianxi's arm affectionately, but there was a hint of warning in her expression. Yi Tianxi is her man. Others can admire, but can't have other thoughts. Yi Tianxi could only smile bitterly. He understood that this group of people had already identified him as the Jiangnan war god. Any further explanation would only be misunderstood as a cover-up. It's really frustrating. Zhu Shan Shue breathed a sigh of relief, thinking that if Yi Tianxi really was the Jiangnan war god, then dealing with Yuanyang Valley wouldn't be so scary. After all, the Jiangnan war god is a top-notch expert, one of the best in Tianan province. Zhu Shan Shue expressed his gratitude to Yi Tianxi, Dr. Yi, you helped our Medicine King Valley get through a difficult time. We are truly grateful. We can only repay you with medicinal herbs. Apart from the nine fragrance fruit and blue leaf bauhinia, if you need other herbs, just let us know. As long as we have them, we will offer them to you. Yi Tianxi also straightforwardly said, I also need Qinglong Vine. Do you have it, Mr. Zhuo? Zhuo Shanshue sighed, To be honest with you, we only have the seeds of Qinglong Vine, not the mature vine. Wu Xingya asked in confusion, If you have the seeds, why not plant them? Zhu Shanshui explained, Qinglong vine has extremely high requirements for the growth environment, 
The previous Medicine King Valley had excellent geographical feng shui, suitable for planting Qinglong vine. The current situation is truly frustrating. Despite Master Yunlong from Yuanyang Valley trying to improve the feng shui of this land, the results have not been satisfactory. It is no longer suitable for the growth of the green dragon vine. Even if seeds are planted, they cannot take root and sprout. It's simply a waste of resources. Wu Xingye furrowed his brow and asked in puzzlement, What should we do now? Should we find Master Yunlong again and ask him to improve the feng shui of the Medicine King Valley once more? However, facing the current dilemma, this approach is simply not feasible. It may not be easy to find a feng shui master more professional than Master Yunlong. Just then, Yi Tian Su smiled faintly and said softly, Perhaps, someone more professional than Master Yunlong is right in front of us. Yi Tian Su stood in the gathering place, so as Shan Shui asked in surprise, Dr. Yi, do you also understand feng shui formations? Yi Tian Su smiled and replied, Just a little. So as Shan Shui was stunned for a moment and subconsciously looked at Wu Xingya. He didn't understand what Yi Tianxi meant by just a little. Wu Xingye knew Yi Tianxi better and quickly said, Dr. Ye's slight knowledge is already divine. We should ask for your help immediately. Zhu so Shui reacted quickly and knelt down in front of Yi Tianxi. He pleaded, Dr. Yi, please help solve the Feng Shui problem of the Medicine King Valley. The Medicine King Valley will forever be grateful for your help. Yi Tianxi smiled wryly as he helped Zhu Shui up, saying, there is no need for this. Solving the problems of the Medicine King Valley, cultivating more medicinal herbs, and treating more patients are what I should do. Zhu so Shanshui sighed, Dr. Yi, your kindness is truly admirable. Han Ruayun heard this conversation, and her eyes twitched slightly. She couldn't help but wonder. Is Yi Tianxi's kindness to ruthlessly deal with enemies, even to hesitate to kill them? Can this be considered kindness? Is it the kind of kindness that directly helps others transcend suffering? Zhu Jingjing curiously asked, Dr. Yi, do you have any way to solve the feng shui problem of the Medicine King Valley? Yi Tianxi looked around and pointed to the pumpkin mountain behind the herbal kitchen, saying, Can you take me to the mountaintop to have a closer look? I want to study it carefully. Zhu Shanshui nodded, Of course, I'll lead the way. So, Zhu Shanshui led Yi Tianxi, Han Ruayun, Wu Xingye, with Jingjing and Zhuger Weichi towards Pumpkin Mountain. Meanwhile, the apprentices of the Medicine King Valley stayed in the herbal kitchen. Pumpkin Mountain is about 300 meters high, covered with weeds, dried up trees scattered everywhere, with a chilling wind blowing, seemingly devoid of any life. The path up the mountain has stone steps and iron ropes, winding around Pumpkin Mountain leading to the summit. Zwa Shanshue explained, once, the entire mountain was covered with various valuable herbs. The most precious herbs of the Medicine King Valley grew here. Unfortunately, five years ago on that fateful night, all the herbs and even the animals living here died, leaving everyone in sorrow. Zwa Shan Shui sighed, revealing an unhideable sadness in his expression. Yi Tianxi furrowed his brows slightly, pondering to himself. The disappearance of Lu Yinji and Chen Qingdi the appearance of a mysterious organization on a small island in the Pacific, and the sudden departure of his master, all happened five years ago. Could these coincidences conceal some sort of connection? Perhaps he was being overly suspicious? Yi Tianxi pondered silently in his heart. When Yuan Long, the Taoist priest from Yuanyang Valley, arrived at Halushan, he found that the feng shui here was problematic, unable to absorb the spiritual energy of heaven and earth, leading to the withering of herbs. Despite setting up formations to try to improve the situation, the effect was minimal, only able to barely sustain the survival of herbs at the edge of the valley, while the whole Halushan remained lifeless. Every time climbing the mountain, it made people feel creepy and uneasy, and they would fall ill after descending. Therefore, in recent years, people from Yaowang Valley no longer set foot on Halushan, let alone allow outsiders to approach. Han Ruayun spoke up, could it be that the gourd seeds of Halushan were stolen by the pangolins, causing the feng shui imbalance and inability to absorb the spiritual energy of heaven and earth? Left Shan Shui was a bit surprised. Miss Han also knows about feng shui formations? But what are the gourd seeds you mentioned? Han Ruayun immediately said, It's the seeds hidden in Halushan from the cartoon Calabash Brothers. When planted, 
They grow into seven small gourds, very powerful against scorpion spirits and snake spirits. Left Shanshue fell silent for a moment. Everyone else looked embarrassed. Miss, have you been watching too many cartoons? Han Ruayun blushed instantly and pinched Yi Tianxi's waist hard. Ouch, why did you pinch me? Oomph, are you laughing at me for being childish? Yi Tianxi chuckled. The JK uniform looks good now. No need for other fancy stuff? Han Ruayun rolled her eyes and stopped arguing with Yi Tianxi. After a while, Everyone reached the top of Hallucian. They saw the dry, yellow, wild grass stubbornly growing on barren soil at the summit. As the cold wind blew, the dry grass swayed, making a rustling sound, as if telling endless loneliness. BRR, it's so cold on the mountaintop. Ashu. Han Ruayun sneezed, her fair arms covered in goosebumps. The others also felt a chill. This cold was not just natural coldness but an indescribable eerie coldness that made people uncomfortable all over. Only Yi Tianxi was unaffected. His gaze glanced towards the center of the summit, where he found a dry well standing quietly, covered with moss on the well wall and thick fallen leaves and dry branches on the well mouth. Walking over, he looked down and found the well dried up long ago. Only darkness and emptiness remained. Zhuge Rue, visiting here for the first time, curiously asked, is it true that Halushin fell from the sky a thousand years ago? And did this well exist back then? Left Shanshue smiled bitterly. The falling of Halushin from the sky is just a legend. Don't take it seriously. This well was built by a master a thousand years ago. Strangely, after the well appeared, many precious herbs grew on Halushin and the surrounding valleys. Hence this place is called Yawang Valley. Oh, I see. Who is this mysterious master with such amazing abilities? Zwishan Shue shook his head, indicating that he also didn't know. Even the past medicine kings of the Medicine King Valley did not have any records of this person's name. At that moment, Zwishan Shue pointed to a stone slab under a withered tree not far away. The stone slab was of medium size, with an oval-shaped stone in the center, covered with complex red runes and patterns. Around the stone slab, there were five yellow flags inserted. Zwishan Shue explained that this was a formation set up by the cloud dragon Daoist back then, which to some extent restored the Feng Shue of this land. Dr. Yi, do you have any ideas on how to improve this formation? I will do my best to prepare whatever materials you need. Yi Tianche did not reply. Instead, he walked straight to the formation. Then, to the astonishment of everyone present, Yi Tianche suddenly lifted his foot. With a bang, he kicked the oval-shaped stone on the stone slab into pieces in an instant. Yi Tianxi's kick left everyone present dumbfounded. Zwishan Shue widened his eyes and his lips trembled. Oh my, my formation. Just a moment ago, he was still asking Yi Tianxi how he planned to improve the original formation. But he never expected that the other party would directly kick the formation to pieces. Isn't this destruction a bit too domineering? Zwishan Shue felt like his heart was being twisted by a knife. Han Ruayun quickly walked over and lightly pinched Yi Tianxi's waist. Hey, why did you destroy someone else's formation? Isn't your kick a bit too much? Before, she could have taken the opportunity to show off with Yi Tianxi. But now, she ruined the formation that others relied on for survival. Isn't this asking for trouble and offending people? Yi Tianxi calmly replied, I kicked it because this formation was just too inferior, not even as good as a child's playhouse. It hurt my eyes to look at it. Why keep it there if it's so eyesore? After hearing this, everyone present thought this reason was a bit boastful. Although Master Yunlong was a famous formation and Feng Shui master in Tianan province, how could you say it's not even as good as a child's playhouse? Zwishan so Shue asked bitterly, Dr. Yi, then what kind of formation can you set up? Yi Tianxi smiled calmly and said, Since the formation is gone, I'll just set up a new one for you. Just step back a bit and watch. Everyone present took two steps back, giving Yi Tianxi some space. Yi Tianxi clasped his hands together, raised his right foot, and stomped down fiercely. Boom! The circular stone slab on the ground was shaken into the air. Yi Tianxi extended his palm and slapped it heavily in the center of the circular stone slab. Crack! With a slap, the circular stone slab split into five pieces from the middle, falling neatly stacked on top of each other. 
Zhuishan Shui couldn't help but gasp at the scene. On the one hand, he was amazed by Yi Tianzi's immense strength. On the other hand, he felt heartache because the stone slab was the five-element stone, said to be the core of maintaining the feng shui of the mountains. Master Yunlong had searched for three days and nights to find it. However, he did not question it and continued to watch Yi Tianzi's movements. Yi Tianzi took a deep breath, extended his index finger, and lightly touched the top stone slab. At that moment, his eyes became unusually focused, as if the world only consisted of him and the stone slab. Suddenly, he forcefully pressed his index finger down, leaving a deep and powerful mark like a winding river. The wind blew away the stone powder, revealing the runes and characters Yi Tianzi had carved. This, is this real? Zhuo Shan Shui widened his eyes and said in disbelief, My goodness, how could his finger have such immense power? Zhuo Jingjing covered her mouth and whispered in shock, Brother Yi, truly deserving of being my brother Yi. This power is too strong, unprecedented. Zhuge Rue's eyes shimmered with admiration and excitement. Just by using his finger to carve characters on the stone slab, this kind of power is definitely not something an ordinary martial artist can compare to. The crowd was stunned by Yi Tianzi's mysterious actions, even Han Ruayun and Wu Xingya who knew him well. They watched in amazement as Yi Tianzi, ignoring the shocked expressions around him, continued to focus on carving the runes on the stone tablet. Yi Tianzi's index finger was like a skilled sculptor's knife, carving intricate runes, as if performing a mysterious ritual. After a moment, he had carved runes on all five stone tablets, which were then neatly arranged next to the dry well. He closed his eyes, murmuring words, seemingly calling upon some kind of power. Suddenly, Yi Tianzi opened his eyes and let out a dragon-like roar. The energy around the dry well began to change, the cold air replaced by a warm and fresh breeze, making everyone present feel incredibly comfortable, all discomfort instantly vanishing. Zhuo Shan Shui eagerly approached, asking if Yi Tianzi had succeeded. Yi Tianzi shook his head, indicating the final step was yet to come. He pricked his finger, squeezed out a drop of blood, and dripped it into the well, triggering a series of shocking changes. The well began to shake, then clear spring water gushed out, rapidly filling the well. The water flowed down the long dry stream, irrigating the entire Hallucian, creating a beautiful rainbow like a fairyland. The energy field on the mountaintop instantly rejuvenated, bursting with vitality. Everyone present, except Yi Tianzi, was astonished, moved by the miracle before their eyes. Zhuo Shan Shui excitedly cupped the spring water and took a sip, tears streaming down his face, deeply grateful. He knelt down, looking gratefully at Yi Tianzi, saying that the Medicine King Valley would always be thankful for his kindness. Yi Tianzi smiled, helping Zhuo Shan Shui up, saying it was just a small matter. Zhuo Shan Shui decided to pledge the Medicine King Valley to Yi Tianzi's faction, expressing his gratitude. The scene was filled with emotion and awe, as if witnessing a miraculous wonder. Upon hearing Yi Tianzi's words, the people in the Medicine King Valley were filled with deep admiration and respect. They were willing to offer everything they had to the divine physician Yi, whether it be herbs, resources, or money. They were determined to wholeheartedly support whatever he needed. This declaration was not only driven by gratitude and reverence towards Yi Tianzi, but also tinged with a hint of self-interest. They hoped to leverage the strength of Yi Tianzi, a powerful figure, to free the Medicine King Valley from being manipulated by others. Yi Tianzi understood left Shan Shui's intentions, but he didn't mind. Instead, he saw the potential support from the Medicine King Valley a force that could provide herbal assistance in the future. Without hesitation, he nodded in agreement to left Shan Shui's proposal. Suddenly, Han Ruayun pointed at the well in surprise and exclaimed, Hey, everyone, look at that. What is it? Upon hearing Han Ruayun's surprised exclamation, everyone turned to look in the direction of the well. Floating in the spring water gushing out of the well was a black square wooden box, about three inches in length. The surface of the wooden box was carved with strange patterns, somewhat resembling formation runes, but not quite the same. Faint black energy emanated from the surface of the black square wooden box, 
making those around it feel extremely uncomfortable. Curiously, Han Ruoyan asked, What is this? It looks so eerie, sending chills down my spine. Yi Tianzi squinted his eyes and explained seriously, This is a cursed object. Cursed objects are items that have been nurtured in a place of yin energy for a long time and will release cursed energy after being eroded by yin energy. If a person comes into contact with it and the cursed energy enters the body, they may fall ill or face misfortune, or even lose their life. So it's best to stay away from such things. Upon hearing this, the others frowned and subconsciously took a few steps back. However, Yi Tianzi walked forward and picked up the black square wooden box, examining it carefully. He tried to open the wooden box but found it exceptionally sturdy and impossible to open. Yi Tianzi furrowed his brows slightly. With his strength, he could easily open even a metal box, but this wooden box was unusually stubborn. He noticed a keyhole at the bottom of the wooden box, indicating that it required a key to open. Worriedly, Han Ruoyan said, Hey, since this thing has cursed energy, why don't you just get rid of it? Yi Tianzi smiled and said, A mere cursed energy is nothing to me. Don't worry, I will control it. With that, Yi Tianzi bit his left finger and used his blood to write a few runes on the surface of the wooden box. The black square wooden box no longer emitted black energy, and the discomfort disappeared. This scene amazed was Shan Shue and the others. They had thought that Yi Tianzi was only skilled in medicine and martial arts, but they did not expect him to be proficient in formation and feng shui as well. Yi Tianzi said to Zhu Shan Shue, I suspect that this black square wooden box is the culprit that caused the imbalance in the feng shui of the Medicine King Valley five years ago. Zhu Shan Shue widened his eyes and asked, What do you mean? Yi Tianzi explained, the reason why Halushin has so many precious medicinal herbs is because a great master from a thousand years ago established this well here. In fact, this well is the core of a gathering spirit formation, able to absorb the spiritual energy of the surrounding tens of miles and infuse it into the spring water. That's why the herbs here grow abundantly, and drinking this water can also prolong one's life. However, five years ago, someone threw this black square wooden box into the well causing a strong curse to cover the gathering spirit formation, rendering the formation ineffective and turning it into a place of in energy. In Halushin, the extinction of herbs and strange illnesses have caused unease. However, Han Ruayun recently successfully broke the five-element stone, reconstructed the spirit gathering array, and alleviated these strange phenomena. Her intelligence and problem-solving abilities are admirable, especially in the face of such great trouble. This deepened her admiration and fondness for Yi Tianzi. Zhu Jingjing became curious about the origin of the black square wooden box and asked Yi Tianzi. Yi Tianzi smiled and explained that the owner of the black square wooden box might be an enemy of the Medicine King Valley, or someone else. Regardless, the rarity of this ominous object and proficiency in array formations demonstrate the extraordinary nature of the owner. Zhu Shan Shue and Zhu Jingjing were both puzzled. The Medicine King Valley has always been kind and rarely made enemies, so why would they provoke such a big shot? Wu Xingye broke the silence and said with a smile, Don't dwell on this. Being able to solve the problem smoothly is a good thing. Now that the Medicine King Valley has been restored to its former state, they can start planting the green dragon vine needed by Dr. Yi. Zhu so Shanshue immediately expressed his intention to plant the green dragon vine so that it can mature within a year. Yi Tianzi seemed hesitant, as he knew he only had half a year to control the toxins in Sun Xiangwei's body. Zhu Shanshui explained that the green dragon vine has very strict growing conditions and would take at least 10 years to mature elsewhere, making the Medicine King Valley the fastest option. Yi Tianzi understood the situation and could only wait for half a year. Zhu Shanshui promised to do his best to find mature green dragon vine. Although it is not available in the Medicine King Valley, he will contact other colleagues to inquire. Yi Tianzi expressed his gratitude, while Zhu Shan Shue stated that the Medicine King Valley would become his ally and be willing to share his burdens. Yi Tianzi decided to take the black square wooden box with him, and Zhu Shan Shue had no objections, even smiling wryly. He put the black square wooden box in his bag, ready to study it carefully. The feng shui problem in Halushin has been resolved, and the group left the mountain and returned to the medicinal food room. Subsequently, 
Yi Tianzi bid farewell to Han Ruayun and Wu Xingye, leaving with a sense of mystery and adventure throughout the whole process. Left Shan Shui and the others decided to personally see off Yi Tianzi to express their feelings, but they were politely declined by Yi Tianzi. As the three of them stepped out of the valley, ready to say goodbye, suddenly a familiar shout was heard, Brother Yi. It was Zhu Gu Rui Ji, panting and looking flustered as he rushed over. Then, he suddenly knelt down in front of Yi Tian Su, making a dull sound. Yi Tian Su's eyes widened, filled with confusion. Zhu Ge, known for his wisdom, suddenly knelt down, leaving Yi Tianzi and the other two stunned. What does this mean? Has the way of greeting changed like this now? Han asked in confusion. Hey, do you also want my little Tianzi to be your master? Zhuga, feeling embarrassed, scratched the back of his head and said, Although I don't have any special skills in daily life, I have a sincere heart. Even grandpa's what doesn't allow you to take on a master, let alone me. Then why did you kneel? Zhuga said seriously, I want you to marry me. Marry? Yi Tianzi felt confused and asked, What do I need to marry you for? Zhuga smirked, Yi, just now grandpa's was said that from now on. The entire Medicine King Valley is under your control. You are the new head of the Medicine King Valley. As long as you give the order, let grandpas will marry Jingjing to me, they will definitely agree. They dare not refuse. Yi Tianzi thought to himself, so it's for this. Zhuge continued, Yi, you heard it too. The Medicine King Valley has always stipulated that the bride must be proficient in medicine and have superb skills. I know nothing about it, and it's too late to learn now. So I can only do this, please agree. Han asked puzzled, with your high status, shouldn't it be easy to find a wife? Why pursue Jingjing? Zhuge sighed and explained, a long time ago, I met a fortune teller who calculated my marriage fate, saying that the girl destined for me is in Jiangan city, Tianan province, and even told me her zodiac sign and time of birth. The fortune teller said that only by being with this girl in my life can I have a brilliant and safe life. Otherwise, I will suffer misfortune and even die. So, Han continued, So Jingjing is the girl destined for you. You must marry her, even willing to stay in the Medicine King Valley as a son-in-law. Zhuge nodded, Yes, about two and a half months ago. I finally found Jingjing, confirmed that she is the one destined for me, and found that she is not only kind and beautiful, but also firm in my determination to be with her. However, I have tried many ways to pursue her, but have not been able to gain her acceptance, Sai. Yi Tianzi and the others had black lines on their faces, thinking, how many girls would accept a pair of nunchucks as a gift when pursuing them? Zhuge said to Han, Sister Yi, you must understand my sincere intentions. Please help me plead with Yi. I am grateful. Han was slightly stunned. What did you call me? Sister Yi, Zhuge said confidently. You are so beautiful and noble. Only an outstanding girl like you is worthy of ye. If not sister ye, who else can be? This made Han feel delighted. It seems that even outsiders think that I and Yi Tianzi are a perfect match. We are indeed a match made in heaven. She said satisfactorily, You have a good eye. I admire your character. You found the right person for this matter. She turned to Yi Tianzi and said, I think he and Jingjing are quite compatible. You should talk to Grandpa Zhuo about it, he will listen to you. Yi Tianzi helplessly said, It doesn't seem appropriate to do this, right? In today's rapidly developing society, arranging marriages and bestowing marriages seem outdated. Han Ruoyun glared at Han Ruoyun angrily, with a hint of helplessness and teasing in her tone. So now you know how to talk about this, don't forget, our engagement was arranged. You seem to be enjoying it now, huh? Always wanting to get close to me? Yi Tianzi coughed awkwardly and quickly intervened. Let's not make a scene. I don't oppose this engagement. I will talk to Master Zhuo and ask him to be more lenient in choosing a son-in-law. But most importantly, pay attention to Zhuo Jingjing's feelings and pursue her wholeheartedly. Remember, attracting a woman is the key, not forcing it. Zhuge Ruiji nodded in enlightenment after hearing Yi Tianzi's advice and thanked him. Taking the opportunity, Han Ruoyun pinched Yi Tianzi's waist and said with a smile, You have a lot of tricks up your sleeve, always pursuing women, right? Yi Tianzi simulate helplessly. At this moment, Zhuge Ruoyi stood up, 
his face full of admiration, and said, Brother Yi, from now on, you are my big brother. I am willing to be your younger brother. Whatever you need, just ask, and I will do my best to help. I will never let you down. Yi Tianzi jokingly said, Oh? Well, what I need most now is the blue dragon vine. Can you handle that? Zhuge Rueji smiled awkwardly and admitted that he couldn't, but he might know someone who could. Yi Tianzi asked, Who? Zhuge Rueji mentioned Xiang Hongda, the president of the Four Seas Chamber of Commerce in Jianan City. Han Ruoyin asked in confusion, He's not a doctor. How would he know about the blue dragon vine? Wu Xingya excitedly explained, Although Xiang Hongda is not a doctor, the extensive connections and information network of the Four Seas Chamber of Commerce can help us more effectively obtain information. His help may be more useful than Master's was. Han Ruoyin frowned in concern, thinking that Xiang Hongda was reclusive and not easy to approach. How could they persuade him to help? However, Zhuge Rueji revealed a big secret, saying, Xiang Hongda is actually my uncle. I live at his house in Jiangan City. Let's go see him now. I will help convince him. Ye Tianze nodded in gratitude. Before long, they drove to the Taida Industrial Park, with Zhuge Rueji leading the way and Yi Tianze carrying Han Ruayun following behind. Wu Xingya, busy with a hospital meeting, could not join them and could only be seen bustling around the hospital. In the Taida Industrial Park, an elderly man with white hair stood there, his spirit sharp, his eyes deep, as if possessing boundless wisdom. Master Yunlong. Standing there in the Yunyang Valley, with his fellow disciple, Master Gongsun, politely inquired, Senior brother, what is your conclusion? Yunlong squinted his eyes and coldly replied, No wonder so many murders have occurred here. It turns out that a large amount of evil energy has gathered, forming a deathly ground. Being in it not only affects the body and mind, but also attracts a large amount of evil and poisonous substances, which is very dangerous. Ah. To choose to construct in this place, it is simply foolish to the extreme.